Cage Champion Series. I love the sound of that. And EXO against the wall, and Team Peps will full cap. <laughs> Where did Pelican come from? Straight on top of their heads. Quartz won't let them stand much longer, kneecapping three in that fight. The new kings of EU have been crowned. Toronto defiant in an absolute shutout. Some kings were born to rule. WCS Stage 2 Groups. Zoe here, me and my girlies, Lemon and Necro, are going to talk OWCS this early till you're feeling otherworldly. Trying to Ooh. quote song lyrics here, anyone? Yeah, Le Seraphim, I was going to... Yeah, there we go, there we go. I made it sound like sure. really bad poetry slam, and that's my toxic trait. Uh, how are we feeling today, ladies? Well, good, now that you mentioned them. Um, they slayed at Coachella. Uh, I got to watch them from the comfort of my room. And uh, I'm man. so jealous. A, a true concert goer. I, I watched it from my room. We're the same people. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know to uh, dress. I, I can't even remember being at a concert. I'm, I'm busy watching video games and we got some of that happening today because we have a few more slots available for the main event, uh, which uh, will be in full swing a week from now. Can you believe that? Now, how did we get here? Well, very glad you asked. Uh, let me give you the Birds and Bees talk format edition. We started it off with the Swiss stage, uh, which feels like it was many moons ago. And from uh, this stage, 16 teams emerged. These 16 teams have been battling it out over the course of the last two weeks in a GSL style group format. Two, uh, the top two teams, of course, in each group they will continue their journey to the main event happening next week. And this is where they get an opportunity to play for the big box and many circuit points, which is very, very important. And of course, the team uh, will will also auto qualify the top team will auto qualify that is uh, for the dream hack in dallas our first lan event and guess what you too can auto qualify if you drop some coins so you can buy your tickets and now and join us for all the shenanigans over in dallas texas the link is on your screen type it type it fast we're gonna keep it up a few more seconds go 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 go, go. go. not to put any pressure on you but we'd love <laughs> to see you there and uh, of course, we will be cheering on all the teams. First things first, though, everyone has to qualify. So uh, we still have a few more spots, as I said. Let's take a look at the EMEA group standings to see where we're currently at and who is already through. Of course, everyone 2 owing is already in the main event, locked in and ready. Now, we still have a few more teams which have to fight it out. Group C and D uh, is where I got my eyes on right now. Which match are you the most excited about? Oh, Group B, of course, uh, Peps and a uh, Woman Army will also be battling it out. Any of these uh, tickling your fancy girls? Uh, Peps and One Man Army, that's a cool rematch we get to watch because speaking of rematches, if you guys missed yesterday, uh, Super Shy upset Ex Oblivione, and that was a rematch. So you can never count your, your ducks before they hatch or whatever, whatever. And we, we're not <laughs> seeing a top three team in the main stage. Ex Oblivione not there is insane. So uh, I, even though everyone would want to put their channel points or whatever into Team Peps against One Man Army, I don't think it's guaranteed. Yeah, I would agree with that. <clears throat> and I think for the, maybe some of the matchups that I think are maybe a bit more of a toss up, I gotta take a look at DM Pero versus Rockstars. I think those two teams, while DM Pero is one of those teams that's been touted as sort of like on the cusp of being able to be considered one of the top eight teams at EMEA, I think that Rockstars after their performance yesterday might have a chance of being able to take them out and head onto the main stage themselves. I'm just excited to see more of all oh, yeah as well. Uh, you know, ball and, Who isn't? And, and junk meta, like put it in my veins. I just want to see more of that. And now our first match though will be the group B decider you just talked about, uh, Lemon. It uh, will be fought out between Team Peps and a one-man army. Uh, of course, the former coming into this with a better map score, which is absolutely 
irrelevant, uh, but I said it anyway. Uh, what is relevant, of course, is that this is a rematch, as we already said. 3-0 is uh, how Team Peps won that first bout, and they played uh, a very close winners match against Enz uh, as well, taking them to map 5. I mean, this rendition of the Peps roster has been looking really clean. It's a difference of night and day from stage 1 to stage 2. Yeah, it's been a pretty big difference, and they only made a couple of changes. Uh, they ended up actually losing Hybrid and Cronus, and the two players they brought in to replace them with Exodial and Level 1 Crook, they've really shown up. I think as well, uh, sadly, having to see Ben Best take the bench for this one, Tread has been able to take up that helm really beautifully, and the Sarissa play has been way more dominant to be able to have that teamwork. We also saw, of course, uh, very few changes in the one main army roster from stage one to stage two, but uh, it's still kind of pretty much the same core. Uh, not kind of, it's actually exactly the same core. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing has changed. Uh, a lot of people do rate this team very high, though. Yeah, and the big core being Avo, Theomatic, and all, you may recognize a lot of these players from, well, maybe their time on the bench, and but, you know, <laughs> to be part of those big teams is still huge. Like, uh, Strabor played for Sheer Cold. Oli, I think, has the biggest uh, year last year, competed with Super Shy, but most notably known for his time on Team Finland at the Overwo Overwatch World Cup, finishing top three. And then Avo was on Team Peps uh, for the all all for one French championship, flash ops, contenders, like all of these guys have contenders experience and are making their way onto the bench for bigger teams. So there's so much potential on this team that is still developing. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope uh, they uh, took a lot of notes from that first uh, match uh, they played against Team Peps because that was quiet, uh, the crushing defeat they suffered on the hands of Peps. Let's see if they can uh, run it back, uh, get that revenge match and qualify for the main event. They are ready and so are we, so let's walk us through the maps. Awesome. Already going into our first match, bros. This is such a quick day already. Yeah. Uh, team Peps versus a one-man army, but uh, as I mentioned, Avo is facing his former team. Uh, Avo was on Team Peps at some point last year. Yeah, he was, and I think when you take a look at this matchup, not only is there that sort of revenge story, but also the chance for a one-man army to get that revenge after being 3-0'd in that very first day of groups. It's all going to start off here on Nepal, and then we've got Eichenwald and Esperanza following up after that, but I feel like when it comes down to some of these map choices and maybe what we expect out of these teams, uh, it's going to be a very Arisa-heavy meta. And you go to an Arisa-based control map like Nepal, very, very flat, and it's going to be great for Team Peps. And they got a pretty huge roster, a substitute on, on every role where it's been Naga and XOD all starting. That'll continue to be the case. And I just love to see the Naga Redemption arc. And I know that's been a long time coming from his time on Paris Eternal. Now he gets to prove that he is that star player and he's that star tracer. He, and he really has been, too. I think one of the most impressive things about Naga is just been how much he's really worked on his map awareness on Tracer. So I think being able to see the duel between Naga as well as Skitza is going to be really, really fun to watch. They're going to use the Symmetra Teleporters to get out of spawn, but both end up going back to... Or sorry, Skitza is going to go back to the Tracer. Naga's going to stay on the Symmetra. I'm super excited to see this. And this is cool because in this lane, the Symmetra can teleport your team to the other side and you can pincer from both ends. So one man army, you just have to be careful of their back and you don't have to commit to that Symmetra teleporter. You can even place it and force them to look behind and that could be your window to engage in. And here is that window of engage for Team Peps already pressuring a one man army back to their doors without really taking much damage. Tret's placing that shield beautifully right at the door so one man army can't do good damage to it and Skitza gets shut down on the flank. <laughs> I, this is what you can expect to see out of his teleporter plays because you kind of bamboozle a one-man army as soon as they move in. They are back, though, to be able to take this fight really quickly, but it's all about being able to work up to some of these alts. I, I feel like when we see Ollie being able to have this amplification matrix, a one-man army is just seconds away from being able to try to grab this point back. Yeah, Ollie from his time at the World Cup. I wonder just how much you get to learn from amazing players from Team Finland and if you can bring that leadership to here. And so far, Team Peps 
Well, it doesn't really matter who's leading on the other team when you just got XOT. All that gets to light back, have a little vacation, pick off now a second person in this fight. The Omatic gets an immortality, but it really doesn't matter. Team Pep's in the driver's seat. Uh, this is like just another Exodial show. Exodial, this stage has been able to show us this really dominant Sojourn in Cassidy, and it doesn't really matter what he's playing. It's always expecting like one to two picks with those railgun charges when that overclock is active, being able to put on so much pressure to the enemy team. We are going to see a one man army take a couple of swaps. So it is going to be Ollie heading over to the Kiriko instead, which will just be able to get the Kiriko into the mix a little little bit faster than the Baptiste that, while well, you have the verticality, can't make the same mobility changes as this Kiriko. And you can't play front to back against a Sigma. You want to take those off angles, and I think Ollie would would love to help Avo uh, have a more commanding corner to take against that Sigma. Deadeye gets cancelled there by the accretion, or maybe it just got uh, let loose, didn't really hit anything. Team Peps have all the ults in the world, using the overclock just to pressure a one-man army back, and Team Peps have the point. So they don't really care how long this fight goes. It's a one-man army that are left with one of their last chances. And Avo is dead. And Skitsa, uh, with a great pulse, gets negated by the immortality of level one Crook. Now Team Peps using what's left in the bank. Tread jumped off the map. I'm uh, not sure. I feel like there would have been credit to a player on one-man army if he got speared or no, something. No, I'm but pretty sure that was actually just like using the flux and maybe forgetting that you need to have some ground under you. There's no way you're in this level of competition and you're just falling off the edge. I refuse listen, to believe it. Listen, it Guys happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Wait, we have, oh. wait, hold on. We oh, have replay. it. Yeah. No, see, look. He's, oh, he's he, the he, ult. He, he is silly. He is silly. Okay, I you're told right. you. He used the ult and credit. then he just fell off. Listen, it's fine if you win the round anyway, which is definitely what happened a couple of seconds later, but you can still meme about it now. Uh, you know, I gotta say, though, outside of maybe that fumble with the Gravitic Flux at the end there, something that's been really impressive about Tread and their role in this Team Pep's roster is how flexible he's been able to be. He's played the Ramatra, the Sigma, the Orisa, the Winston in their matches so far this stage, and you're seeing that rotation in full force as it's going to be the Ramatra on this round. And I'm seeing Avo on Sojourn, which is what I wanted him to swap to last time because Tread was on Sigma, and that would have been great for Avo to uh, charge up and use those off angles a bit better when you have more mobility. You see that Avo's already having a bigger impact. Team Peps can't deal with all the angles that a one-man army is taking around them, so they'll have to retreat, and, you know, silver lining for them is that they didn't lose their Arisa. The Omatic got low at some points, but or Tread got low at some points, so Team Peps are still stuck in this corner. Yeah, Team Peps can come back into this, and, like, I think where their Arisa plays from on this point is once you've captured the objective, you just, you have a lot of agency to try to take a bit more to the enemy team and I mean this is going to be another setback is like the Arisa space that the Amata created allowed for Avo to be able to get that pick onto Exo deal and even still you can see how Avo feels so confident to play up close to a one-man army uh, before you know before team peps truly have to back off I, I'm not a fan of team peps uh, sticking to this high ground as soon as they come out they can get speared by theomatic now there's a shield so that helps out a little bit but there's so many angles that a one-man army can take around them if this doesn't work for team peps maybe trying main but this power position of the high ground is has been big for avo he finally gets forced off so team peps have done step one of taking back uh nepal village xod although responds with picks of his own the ant matrix from Crook sets up this Cassidy for success, and even if you try to escape, XODL will slap you around. Oh, I mean, sometimes those windows are just great for your Cassidy setup. You didn't even need to take an off angle with that if you're gonna have level one Crook behind you. Skitza, you walked into that. <laughs> you actually just decided to blink into XODL's face and uh, go back to spawn, I guess. But XODL, like, uh, one of the reasons why we see a lot of this Cassidy with the Baptiste is that both of them can play together. If you have the Sojourn, you want the Kiriko so that she can swift step over to you and provide some healing once you do see that power slide in. But this Baptiste and Cassidy, they have a much more static backline presence, but that's where you can see that amplification matrix and mortality field really come into play. 
Good assist by Shrebor because Schizo was looking like they were going to lose that Tracer duel to Naga after using the recall in such a vulnerable position. So Team Peps choosing the Deadeye to force a one-man army back to their shelter. Shred will uh, be brawling close range because he has the Annihilation. If the God will give him the sound barrier so that he can overstay his welcome. But Shredbore responded with his own sound barrier. And uh, Tread is looking very overwhelmed but has trust in his support. So maybe a little too much. The latest Annihilation I've ever seen. And now a one-man one army, now that they have the punish on the tank, the rest are history. It's really good progress from Team Peps to at least match that of one-man army, but this could potentially be the final fight for a one-man army to tie up this map and bring us into Shrine to finish it off. Uh, but they don't have anything. You're looking at Ollie to get this Kitsune rush online while Team Peps once again make this upper approach. Uh, but it's going to have to come up quickly. So at least it's here, but Team Peps, they've got to play this smart. Get to their rush to help the Omatic, and he's just staring down the barrel of this Ant Matrix, trying to take any cover that he can, but he bought enough time, and a one-man army, they took advantage of their tank being bait, and slaughtered the rest of Team Peps, and that was the last fight for Nepal Village, will be heading into round three, Exodial. He's a one-man army himself, but uh, not in a 1v5. Tread will maybe have one last touch, but... Yeah, we'll be settling this on Shrine. This ends now. Uh, I'm, agree I'm in agreement with you. I think that the high ground approaches from Team Peps just put them in such vulnerable positions, especially if they were tracking that the Kitsune rush would be online, then I feel like you wouldn't want to put yourself to have that amplification matrix, fall for that Arisa bait, maybe <laughs> just like jump down to the high ground uh, uh, quickly, but it requires you to be able to have those cooldowns on nine, like the amp it up in order to make that rotation. I think something else that like might have even been better to have is something like the Symmetra. It worked out so well on Sanctum, and we've seen those types of plays still be very impactful on a map like Village. So as we open the gates for Shrine, I'm interested to see if that is going to stay the course. It's not just the Symmetra teleporters out of spawn for both teams to get the tracers out. An early hinder onto Avo. Both Cassidy's out you don't really need the movement as much on this map it's very very small and already exodl proving that he's alpha he's already forced avo to drop off the high ground team peps will now cycle towards the point it is now unlocked and shred and theomatic are going to be mirrored on the orissa this time it's not a ram versus orissa where in the close range point like this the spears they can get a very valuable stun and avo and exodl yes the point is very small but that means you have to stay clear of those spears because you're going to be the most vulnerable target to go after whether it's from the opposing tracer or the Orisa that can uh, start Javelin spinning towards you the way that the Omatic is. Avo is being healed back to full. Skits is getting comfortable on the flank. Team Peps have captured the point first. They got to 20%, but now that Nog is missing, they don't have that flank pressure. And this is where Skitsa and friends of One Man Army can take over. And Oli got the Kitsune Rush. Level 1 Crook mashed as well, but uh, Exodio is not able to put, output as much damage. The Omatic is getting low, though, and it forces the sound barrier out of Trebor or Strebor in a one-man army with the Deadeye doing their best. And Team Peps are simply not dying. For a one-man army to con to uh, contribute that much to the fight and for it to take this long to develop is surprising, but a good 45% start for Team Peps. I mean, like, we saw the Kitsune rush immediately. The Lucio sound bears were both online for both sides. And the fight was so long that we ended up seeing all of those ultimates get traded. Uh, now, though, like, uh, Exodial maybe made himself a bit vulnerable having to go for something like the High Noon. But we're looking at the Amatic with a bit more of that advantage having the Terror Surge online. But yeah, T-Pest walked away with almost 50%. They're pretty happy with that, and Naga could really open things up with a pulse bomb kill. Ideally. And yeah, Suzu can help against the pulse. Immortality is a bit better in that regard, but the timing is everything for someone like Ollie and level one crook against these pulse bombs. At least Skitza will be there in a second. One-man army just need to keep one toe on this point. It's the 
Dramatic used the uh, Terror Surge to get the Fortify to live through that Naga Pulse Bomb. A heads up play, Katsune Rush to follow up. Level 1 Crook is 10% behind, and that could be a world of a difference. And it was. A one man army got to keep the point. They forced Team Peps into a corner, but retaliation is imminent. Here's a Katsune Rush from Level 1 Crook. Empty God waiting for the right moment to pop that sound barrier. Naga, he can play selfish, play around the Mega Pack. It's Tread that you have to support, and really, he doesn't even need the sound barrier and being able to conserve that for the next fight is huge for team pets it really is because this could be last fight if one man army they like have a chance to come back into this one win and then take this round in the map so team peps they cannot allow that having the sound barrier means that they will be able to match at least strepper's beat even get it a little bit later to stagger it so that gives them a bit of that barrier advantage but team peps they can also buy some time exodial has the high noon available and could just hit it now to keep one-man army from encroaching onto this point and then we would also be in last fight territory for them xodl now that a one-man army has come out of their shelter now the dead eye opportunity you talked about has been gone you don't want to be hit by a spear or get flanked by a tracer when you least suspect it oh the sound barrier didn't save Avo. it's a 5v4 to win the map for team peps and they have all the ults in the world starting with a sound barrier terror surge is plan b Naga with the pulse is just the cherry on top. Oh my god, I ripped that Naga with three. Now it's gonna sound like the stream is out of sync because I called the Naga pop off a little too early. A one man army will fall over and Team Pets will take map one. You were just looking into your crystal ball. You were saying that Naga was looking for the redemption arc. You had it on the mind. Naga was like feeling the good vibes and ended up getting the 3k to close out the map. But uh, it's so unfortunate that the sound barrier wasn't enough to be able to save Avo in that final fight because we could have extended that even further. But missing that one critical player meant that it was a 5v4 with the extra over health on the whole team. And that was all she wrote. But I, I think this was a very competitive map for our first map of the series so maybe it won't be so team pep's favor yeah it was very very close i think one man army looked best on village they had ava on the high ground they finally looked dominant when he was in a prefer uh, preferential position one man uh, army did get uh, kicked into uh, when it came to sanctum that's where they tied it up here on village and then when it came down to shrine uh just very small things. Skitza got shut down on the flank once or twice when he was on Tracer. Avo got pigged, didn't get the sound barrier, as you mentioned. And it was pretty toe to toe from there on out. Um, I think Naga had a bigger impact on the Tracer overall, but hence the pop off we called at the end. But also, to be fair, Team Peps had like five ults at the end. Um, they were able to extend a lot of fights. Even the very first one, Team Peps got up to 45%, just drawing out the fight as long as they can. So, one man army just have to improve the focus from an A- minus to an A+, plus, and then these fights will uh, just overall control will be better in their favor. I think it's hard too, though, because on Shrine, we actually got our first glimpse of what the Arisa versus Arisa matchup could look like. While a one-man army has been pretty one-dimensional in terms of running the Arisa comp and then switching what Avo is playing between the Cassidy and the Sojourn, Team Peps played Sigma, Ramatra, and Arisa. And so I wonder if that trend is going to maintain as we look into some of our next maps. But one thing's for sure is they're not afraid to change it up to feel like they can take a map advantage by having a compositional advantage. And we'll see if this next map will give an advantage to a one-man army. This is their pick where... Rickenfold is pretty hybrid. Well, yes, it is hybrid, but it's hybrid in the case of what comps <laughs> you can run. Because you think, oh, with the high grounds that reach uh, to the sky, you're like, oh, oh, me high, me see high ground, me go dive. You don't have to play dive on this map. A lot of teams still play Arisa. It's just uh, more of a journey. It's an adventure to cross all the way inside of Castle, go up the stairs and run around. But this is what the teams do. They practice the macro on this map. 
Yeah, you could just go on the Grand Tour. You still have high ground access for sure, but it just takes a little bit longer to get there. I still think that Team Peps is the type of team that if they see the opportunity to go Winston and try to get the jump on an Arisa Cobb from a one-man army, then we could really see that sort of counter strategy come through to play to that advantage of having that high ground and then maybe switch back to something on point C. But I feel like that begs the question of, is it better for a team to change their compositions based on the map that they're playing or just stick to something that has been working for them and they get to really practice that to a top level? Well, I wonder if the composition will change. How about the roster composition <laughs> at the very uh, that least? That sure does something. <laughs> Yoham will come in over level one crook, which tells me, I don't know, double flex, whatever that could mean. But it, like I said, Team Peps have a very huge roster. They have a substitute on every role, so they have a wealth of strategy that can come from this. That's really interesting because we haven't seen a whole lot of Yoham in this stage. So being able to come in here, maybe we see a different look on something like the Baptiste. Maybe if you want to run a Winston, we've seen a couple of dive compositions be enabled, like something like a Brigitta and an Ana backline. Uh, so I, I think a really exciting opportunity to see what Yoham can bring to this team. And uh, we finally got the stats uh, between the Tracer duel between Naga and Skitza. And actually, Naga, yes, did out damage by about 800. But what's interesting is the deaths. Um, Skitza has double the deaths of Naga from six to three, which, yeah, confirms that Skitza has to be more careful on the flank because ExoDL is just that guy. Uh, going from anyone from Sojourn to Cassidy, Skitza has to just be uh, playing his life a bit better. It's uh, it's really tough, I think, too, when you're facing up against a uh, Tracer like Naga. Uh, maybe you're getting a little bit more support. Like, once again, Naga's really been working on his map awareness, so it might just be beating uh, Skitza to the punch on some of these health packs as well. But we get a chance to, I think, see that duel once again as a one-man army gets set up on the defensive. I can fold. It's going to be their classic Arisa composition with Avo playing the Sojourn, which I think was the best look from Avo that we saw in that very first map. But Team Peps coming out here with an Arisa comp of their own. Exodial on the Cassidy, and Yohem's going to play the Kiriko. Sojourn versus Cassidy. And since Team Peps are going to take this inch by inch, it's okay to have uh, a ranged hit scan that's going to be less mobile. You don't need the Sojourn unless you're playing like this aggressive off angle where you need to reposition at a moment's notice. So ExoDL will be escorted by the whole family of Team Peps and can also play around this mini pack if things get a little hairy. But Team Peps so far have gotten a tick for free. A one-man army uh, waited for Skitza to get the health back to get some flame pr pressure established. And as soon as Skitza was healed up, a one-man army did take back the point momentarily. But Team Peps, this is a brawl that is not favoring Tread right now. At least he has a javelin spin so he can buy himself some time. But on this high ground is Avo, and this is a power position that XODL would be at a disadvantage against. So how will Avo be forced down? Well, he's just going to reposition Position. Team Pep's getting a little too close for his comfort. Still gets hit a little bit by that mag grenade, so it gets hindered for a quick second, but the sound barrier is already online for Team Peps to extend the fight. <laughs> Just the fight takes so long that you're getting Kitsune rushes, you're getting sound barriers, but Naga and Shred will work together to finish off those targets. That's what we needed! Focus fire so that these fights don't take for years, but great job by Team Peps at the end. That was great. You had to use t both support ultimates, which is a little bit expensive, but it's so worth it to know that you now have a four minute, 45 time bank to work with heading into the second point of Eichenwald. This is where things get a little interesting. Who's going to be able to get the high ground control? A one man army is already going to get set up there, but do Team Peps want to match them there? Maybe leave Naga on this card to keep pushing it? Uh, force one man army to come to them. Yeah, there's two approaches. Go inside of Castle or push the car and wait for the defense to come to you. But Team Peps play out in the open. It will be susceptible to damage. XOTL had a dead eye up the stairs and fell off the map trying to maybe tumble away from Skitza. So that's kind of hilarious. I hope we get a replay of that. Meanwhile, Team Peps have made some progress. Tread is pretty awful on the Orisa. Terra Surge from... 
the Omatic. Made Team Peps pretty low. With Yohim missing, that was maybe an opportunity for a one man army, but Team Peps live on. Is he switching? We've got a switch coming out from Avo, but the Amatic is gonna stay on the Arissa. I feel like that was a huge misplay to go for that Terra Surge when the rest of your team wasn't there to capitalize. Everybody on Team Peps was quite low, so maybe the Amatic just going for a big hero play, but it would have been nice to have that for this situation where you see all of these squishies sitting on the bridge. Oh, Terra Surge from Tread against the Sound Barrier. GG probably should have canceled that Terra Surge uh, two seconds earlier. Maybe it would have been fine. But Team Peps had the advantage here. Or, uh, sorry, a one man army had the advantage there. Sound Barrier's traded. Team Peps still trying to hold on to this bridge. And Avo got out in the open away from his Lucio. So, Team Peps have been really good at punishing Avo. And you even noticed that on Nepal. Team Peps get the chase down too, getting Skitza and maybe even Strebor. He manages to get away, but Team Peps will have to fight one more time before point B. It's gonna be layered Kitsune rushes. Okay, Kitsune rush, a one-man army! The Obatic beats all the healing he can get. He might have been in the corner and out of LOS of his supports. I'm not 100% sure, but Team Peps quite literally bulldozed them and this castle door. Now already heading into the castle with four minutes in the time bank. So you're feeling really confident if your team peps to be able to push this all the way to the finish line. Exodial is coming up on the Han Noon, has the dead eye that he can activate as like a zoning ultimate if you really want to, but it'll push them all the way back, uh, maybe even force them out into these really strange positions so that team peps can finish up the job. Another sound barrier on the docket as well as a pulse bomb from Naga. So. Uh, they do have to step back for now, but FT God will be coming back soon. Skitza did an amazing job shutting down that momentum. First, he picked off FD God, I believe, and XODL was late to the rotation to escape out of this attack. And a one man army even claiming more kills, and every kill you get is obviously more ult charge. And with Team Peps going into point C, with, uh, they started with three and a half minutes, one man army need every dub they can get. And this is going to be one way that they can get back on that ultimate rotation. They got a little out, out of sync there. The Amatic using that Terra Surge a little too early. Maybe not having necessarily the best answers to what Team Peps were throwing. But one man army, it's all about continuing to find value from your ultimates and seeing if that can turn the tables. But the fact that Team Peps have this sound barrier advantage, Strubber is in a race against the clock to get his own online. Team Peps have Theomatic in an off-angle position, and Theomatic has to be careful. He has the, of course, the Terror Surge, which will give him Fortify, and okay. Oh, Skitsa thought he was at a safe distance away from the Pulse Bomb, and just watched it go off in slow motion. Not ideal. Naga now with two, even takes care of the Immortality, giving Team Peps free reign to kill the rest of a one-man army, and just the one fight hold was all this defense could do, and this is now going to be a very intimidating time bank for Team Peps. Over two minutes is so much time to work with when you consider the hybrid point A. You get a chance to get quick resets with how close those spawns are, and that's plenty of time to get ultimates online. So Team Peps are definitely playing at an advantage. For right now, as we switch sides though, maybe a one-man army is able to match that, but it felt like they were just always on the back foot, whether it came to their ultimate rotations, when it came down to actually being able to have good answers for Team Peps' game plans. It felt like they were kind of out of touch with how to approach that. Yeah, and Naga also went crazy at the end, as he usually does. He's True. The Tracer, which is all the experience, whether it's in the Pro League or even just in Overwatch in general. And Naga has been around for years. So for Skitza to have to either check him, mark him, make sure that Naga doesn't have as much freedom while also Skitza pressuring Yoham and FD God. Because on Kiriko, if you can force that teleport out as a tracer, that is huge. Or even Suzu at the very best, that can open up the fight engagement. That's what you initiate off of. And if Skitza can't make that happen, then that's where a one-man army may not have the best of opportunities to take fights. Now, Skitza did a good job helping them win the first fight of point C, but then afterwards uh, didn't work out. Let's see how a one-man army are gonna approach this next offense. Yeah, same shot.
There's Luch holding left. Hello. Hey. Hey. No, no, it's Cass. Cass carry. I'm right swinging from right to left. Luch, you walk left. Okay. Yeah, can you guys actually put some pressure on left side? Yeah, yeah. Good. Walking in two. One. Oh, I'm low. I'm low. Yeah, I'm still walking. There, no one's left, watch out for them pushing yeah, out yeah. the left thing. Can we swing left? Yeah, yeah. Go left go base. Right. Just chill, chill here, guys. Chill, chill here. Yeah, I wanna go right side now. Cast some point. Okay. Oh, no, right. no, no, no. You know where it's right. Wait, Wait my own. No, 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 no. Cast a nade. Cast a nade. Oh. Have an oh, there is a timer. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> and it's so funny. When Ava's on Widow, everyone is like, okay, stop. I need to focus. No one speak. <laughs> And it was like, we heard all this planning, so we wanted to tune in. And of course, as soon as we did, everyone was silent to watch if Avo could get that pick. And that was funny. <laughs> hey, you gotta be locked in and loaded to get into the map. It's all serious business here. This is a spot in the main event on the line for both of these teams. And if you lose here, you lose out, especially on all those like juicy championship points that are up for grabs in the main event too, alongside that money. But yeah, I think like it's really interesting is like even after we had the silence to focus on that first pick, they were talking immediately about positioning. Where is Team Peps defending from? Talk about them being on the left side, have to worry about that health pack room and trying to take the territory that way. And I've always loved that type of approach because you get a chance to stay in that cover for like the health pack room as well as maybe even going through the tiny building on the left of point so yeah uh and we're just i know this isn't a caster listen in guys we we know we're not the interesting ones here but we had a disconnect from team pep side so we'll be checking in with them but um i think just both teams are trying to recognize where each other's either sojourn or cassidy's are most importantly that cassidy and even in the last fight or the last round team peps won the point because they as soon as avo dropped from the high ground they just ran after him and we're gonna see them do a lot more running as we get back into game it is going to be Cassidy on both sides, though, so no sojourn on the defense for Team Peps. Uh, but you're, that's why you kind of look at a little bit more of that static presence. But they had to back out, though, because poor Tread is the one that ended up getting yeeted out of the server. And so you have to give up this point right away if you don't want to get caught out like that. So FD God, Naga both going down. Feels like these are early, easy picks for one man army to chase. Uh, it's so unfortunate uh, that it's going to be your tank that got the disconnect yeah. there. Yeah, that's unfortunate because you know the potential that both these teams have to brawl it out for, for the ages. Like, growing out gray hair, that's how long the fight <laughs> is taking. So, unfortunate for Team Peps. Now, one-man army have already established themselves on the high ground. Be careful how these spears are being used, but Avo, late to the rotation. He needs to be on board, and really, Theomatic has to escort him as well if, he, if he's slower to the punch. So, Team Peps with a great punishing opportunity there. They're going to drop and see what else they can farm. This is a good place to at least get the defense to dig their heels into the sand because yeah, that card is kind of in a good position where you can play on that high ground, but then you can also sort of play towards the spawn room doors because of how far that card has moved. Like, it's just going to take a little bit of time for the one-man army to get there. Look at how sneaky they're trying to be. So sneaky. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're there. sitting here to avoid the poke and one-man army able to get to the high ground. And this will force Team Peps to play this cat and mouse game. Theomatic down the armor. Team Peps obviously don't want to push in there until they get terrorists. Speaking of that, Theomatic thought he could just zone Team Peps off of that, but at least brings out the sound barrier. And what a Suzu! Oh my god, from Molly to save the team from the pulse bomb and tread with the Terra Surge once the rest were too low, once the Suzu was out, once the sound barrier was expended, that was a Team Peps fight. That was so smart. Naga originally was looking for an opening where the Suzu had been used because if you hit that pulse bomb in that tiny room, that is everybody on one man army going down. Instead, you bait out the Suzu, allow Tread to use that Terra Surge instead, and then everybody is low enough for you to just walk in there and grab them. Exo deal at the spawn door is getting two with the dead eye, and that's gonna be another big reset. You look at over a five minute time bank that one man army had started out that second point with. And it's whittling away slowly. 
That was such a sick play. Like, XOGL on the high ground with the dead eye. Team Peps, the rest of them, evicting them from that house. And they walk into the dead eye. At that point, you're like, I'm hearing the whistles and the tumbleweeds and whatnot. I got bigger problems. I got multiple problems. Got 99 of them. But, uh, yeah, Team Peps is definitely one of them. So... Team Peps now on the high ground. They can have the jump at any moment. They get to dictate when this next fight will go down as one-man army just staying in shelter and relying on Theomatic to get progress. So Team Peps just can't let this go forever. And Naga is going to be the one to contest. So what is Skitza's reaction going to be? Or even Ollie, who can be on that off angle with Skitza if they wanted to go for a nasty flank. Instead, a one-man army are going to climb up to the high ground, see if they can make Team Peps uncomfortable. What? And... Uh, a one-man army dropped right into the hands of Team Peps, and this is quite a dance. Yeah, Ace it, is just like, a, it's oh like God, almost tread. like tread. <laughs> tread. <laughs> He's already dead. Leave him alone. <laughs> oh my God. I like at, at this point, like you have to look at this and go, like Team Peps are gonna have to be the ones that fumble if One Man Army want to get past this. It's going to be 1 minute 45 when One Man Army come back in. All of us switched over to the Sojourn. Theomatic is the first player that might be up to an alternate with Ollie very close behind with the Kitsune rush. But Team Peps, they still have the advantage. They've got five to their two ultimates. Yeah, I love the swap out of Avo. Needs more escapability. He's finding himself late to the rotation or isolated without a Kiriko or a Lucio to help out. So this will do a lot. And when I said the, that, not talking about the Terra Surges. Theomatic fully charging that down to like two health. And Team Peps will finish him off along with the rest of a one-man army, bringing them down to a minute five. There is actually a push from Skitza. Shout out to our observers catching that. Getting it past the bridge, sure, but a one-man army are still losing these fights. It doesn't matter. Team Peps can still just play up with these four alts towards the spawn if they want to, but they want to pull one-man army out into the open just like this, because that's where Team Peps can get the drop on them or force them to have to play Tiny Overwatch in the castle room, and you don't really want to be on the receiving end of either of the ultimates that's going to be coming through from Team Peps. Even this high ground approach feels so risky when Naga's got the pulse bomb and Yohem has this Kitsune rush ready to lay down on top of the bridge. Kitsune Rush, one man army by Yoham as well, but he's just so low, so FD God has to use the barrier. Shepard's gonna use his life, but it saves Theomatic. It's an all out brawl on this bridge. Theomatic first to drop Naga with the pulse to end it all. But someone is still pushing the cart that maybe skits uh, to keep this alive. Five seconds, and he's gonna leave. Someone has to touch, and he was trying to leave because of the dead eye. And Skitza will get back to start over time. So your C9 curse didn't happen this time, Necra. But uh, Team Pevs are still almost a little too comfortable. <laughs> they stopped moving. Shred is pretty BM in that regard. A one-man army will keep touching as much as they can when it comes to overtime and not really able to get the ball rolling. I think they've killed maybe two this fight, but it won't be enough. Team Peps are just that dominant and they will just go to match point. Team Peps are making this look easy, and this is what you hope to see out of a team that is considered one of the best in EMEA right now. The roster changes that they made in between stages one and two feel like it really paid off for them, and we get a chance to see the fruits of that labor in a matchup like this. We're seeing history repeat itself as we already saw at the beginning of this group at One Man Army. They've got a lot of work cut out for them if they want to bring it back in this series. Yeah, just great coordination out of Team Peps, like recognizing when Theomatic is low, Naga will redirect his attention there. Uh, I think Skitza has been living more, but isn't going for the big plays because he wants to play his life better. Like he is trying to be on the flank, but he's not bringing Ollie on the Kiriko with them. He's not having Shrev or the Lucio maybe facilitate that. If anything, I think the supports are trying to take better care of Avo, who was forced to go to the Sojourn to have better mobility escapability. This is the Tumble. I thought this was a tumble. Maybe he tumbled off the map, but it was actually he just naded himself. So thank you, Replay Ops, for catching that. I think the face on the Cassidy said it all when that actually happened. But I, we got a bit of a glimpse into the communication from One Man Army when we were looking at their attack start. It felt like we continued to see some of that miscommunication, maybe even just some 
lack of coordination when it came to those team fights. Uh, not everybody being on the same page of where to attack from. Even on I think the final fight of their attack push, poor Theomatic was on his own. And Both deaths saw like too. Uh, that's wild. But like really was on his own when like Strebber and Ollie did have to go pocket the sojourn on an off angle. And speaking of that sojourn, um, XODL versus Apple. Apple actually outdamaged him, not really by like a lot, like 1k, but the deaths is what is insane to me. Like I already kind of hinted y'all at the Theomatic 12 deaths, but Tread was BMing because he only died once. Like he's like, bro, I'm gonna have to stop moving so you guys know how to actually kill me. So maybe Tread did actually did jump off the map on Sanctum. I'm gonna let that conspiracy theory breathe. And Avo died, uh, died 12 times versus the XODL five times. So Avo needs to be like the Sojourn pick is going to help him a lot, but the whole team needs to be on the same page for rotations. I mean, it's also going to be tough too if like Team Pepsi just consistently winning the team fights. We're going to see like a way lower KD ratio for them. And it's it's just tough because I think in this position too, it's not just the team coordination. It's, it's also just like the target focus. When to use ultimates? Are you tracking to have the right responses in time and I think team peps are just giving us a master class on how we can actually see these Arisa comps and those the team synergy really working its best but speaking of the best Jen we're gonna get a <laughs> sub for team peps and Ben best now coming into the roster uh, Tread has already like given us everything and I'm excited for Ben best to give us more Ooh, I'm excited too when you get to and whatever happens him. Yeah, we all miss them. And, you know, whatever happens, win or lose, the series isn't over. So Ben Best better show us his best or he's going to be subbed out because Tread, I mean, made that look very easy for Team Peps. Uh, yes, it went to round three Nepal, but uh, Eichenwald was a one-man army's pick. And that's one of the most difficult hybrid maps when it comes to just macro understanding because there's so many ways to approach it and picking which one is best for your situation. It takes a lot of experience. Um, and one-man army really struggled in, in the macro regard. Um, but we'll see now that game is ready if Team Peps will get the sweep and if Ben Best will still be the best. And Best feels like the perfect tank to put into the map because on Esperanza, we typically see uh, some amount of the Winston dive, some amount of the Arissa, and Ben Best can play both of those heroes. So whether you want to make those quick swaps in the middle of the map, up to you. I think Ben Best can step up to the plate in that regard. But One Man Army has opted to play this Arissa composition more often than not. And it feels like if you try to play literally anything else into that, you're playing from a disadvantage. So we'll see. We'll see yeah. what we got. And... When it comes to me, uh, Ben Best, when I've watched him in the past, it's just been a clash of play styles like within his own team of Ben Best will be more aggressive than his supports are ready for or, or vice versa. And I'm assuming that with all the time they've spent together as a team, or at least the core of this team, that that has been adjusted over time. You're confident to feel Ben Best, to put Ben Best in. And now it's, I, um, now it's push. Ben Best just has to play this from front to back and really rely on Naga to make the big flank plays happen. He's been diffing Skitsa in that regard. Really has. I think one of the things that maybe we do see uh, more of a difference from if Ben Best is playing this role is Tread has been a very aggressive Orisa. So maybe this is going to be a little bit better to mesh those play styles together with Ben Best consistently having an aggressive play style as well. The team now knows to how to properly back that up. But a one-man army, they're playing the Winston here. So they're going to have a lot of mobility. It's about punishing that. When the Winston jumps in, Team Peps have to be ready in order to try to grab that pick. And Diomatic is playing very safe with his dives. He's really just placing the bubble and contesting the bot. Ideally, you're not going to want to just mess around with the Orisa. He wants to dive after Exodeal. That's a big win condition. But look at the way that Team Pets are playing. They're all stacked together. You can't go after Exodeal without Ben Best running after you. 
but maybe the punish will be to isolate Ben Best with the bubble. There's many ways that Theomatic can approach these fights as a Winston, um, just taking advantage of, hey, this is a tank being subbed in, so things could be looking weaker just at the beginning of the map. A one-man army have to be reading how they're playing together. Yeah, and what's really tough if you do put the Winston bubble down is Kiriko doesn't necessarily want to swift step into that bubble in order to help out the Arisa with the healing. It doesn't really matter though if everybody is dead, but just something to keep in mind if the Amatic is going to try to take that duel front to back, starting with Ben Best's Arisa. But as we get this card like, rolling, it's been rolling the whole time. There really hasn't been a standstill for this push bot. So we might just see Team Peps end up getting the the checkpoint now there's gonna be maybe a last second recontest no they just want to take this corner yeah they just want to take the tough. corner they, maybe Theomatic could have jumped in he was at the window maybe Skitsa could have stalled but team peps are on the high ground so one man army playing this corner just zoning away from the dead eyes Skitsa yes it's still active and I know that's the big question of is he still dead eyeing and you look and yes yes XODL still was Big mistake out of Skitza. One man army. Now with the Katsune rush, the Suzu beautifully timed out of Ollie to live through the Terra Surge, and FT God might have had his barrier canceled by Theomatic. So one man army will put a stop to this push and hopefully send it back where right where it came from. We had another battle over the midsection though, so Theomatic uh, having a little bit of uh, pressure. To grab Exodial, saw the kill, went for it, and this will buy One Man Army a bit more time to work with to get this set up. There was an Ajax? Yeah, FD God. Oh no. Oh, uh, <laughs> Theo just like bopped him in the head. But I get it though, right? Like, you already have an advantage, you want to try to keep it. Sadly, you lose the beat there, but, uh, you know, you, you still got the lead. FG God will have another yeah. one. No, no problem. 72 meters off the first push is very crazy. <laughs> so Team Pesh should be more than happy. Just don't get tilted. But these are very experienced players that have competed at the highest level of competition. So I, I'm not worried. Uh, every Lucio is going to go through that. Exodial is going through a lot himself. And a one-man army with the overclock forcing Team Peps into cover. And Avo tries to jump out. And Theo and uh, Ben Best was on the chase. Now that he's on the Winston, he's trying to show Theomatic how it's done. Yeah, like I said, Ben Best can play both. So being able to show off the Winston look here, and it is very coordinated with the rest of the team. I think they've worked out those synergy issues in between stage one and two, and it's really showing up in a big way here. I think this is also much better for the Kiriko to come in and provide some extra support to the Winston. When Ben Best dives in, places that bubble down, you have your own little sphere of protection while also being able to go in and make more more aggressive dive plays. Naga is on fire. He is making the aggressive plays. Oh my god, if Skitsa didn't recall, he would have been domed. Team Peps. Lost Exodio. Alvo gets a crucial double kill, and this part of the map is going to favor that defense of a one-man army. They have that nice half-high ground that they could sit Avo on, and Ben Best on the Winston has to focus that as much as possible and force out the jump. It's always going to be a bit of this back and forth between the Winstons. Do you want to try to give up your back line? Who's going to dive in first? Right now, where a one-man army is positioned, they're going to have a bit of that upper hand as Team Peps just walk right into them. And Naga tried to throw a pulse and died to Schizo, just dangled and broke his ankles. So he loves Schizo having a closer fight against Naga, but now that Ollie is missing, just this momentum that a one-man army could have had is completely stifled. Yes, Ollie can teleport, hence why a one-man army isn't going too far from this. But the Katsune Rush is what's going to kick things off for the friends of a one-man army. There you go. Uh, one-man army now having used the Primal Rage. They do have an opportunity here to use the Katsune Rush without Team Peps having one. But it's just going to be another standstill before we see those dives engage. But here's the Winston jumps. Oh, from the top rope, oh. Exodial with the dead eye is crazy. Apple also escorted the uh, the nade from the Cassidy into the team, forcing only to have to susu. So, 
a one-man army in shambles, just not able to recover after losing Ollie early, and then they didn't even get to Kitsune Rush. So great initiative out of Team Peps. It felt like they had to use the Pulse Bomb and the Overclock to kind of like just just try to stabilize that fight. And that's not what you want to do, having control or just being able to play that reactive style of dive. You do have the Kutsune Rush now, so it feels a little bit better knowing that this card is rending the corner and more into your territory. And Theomatic is already starting this off with a big pick. Yeah, one man army on the flank, taking care of that. And ExoDL was just too stubborn to want to give up that high ground. Uh, so that'll be tough. It goes back and forth where a one man army will be trying to reestablish the bot into the neutral position. Three minutes left, and they're down a significant amount. They haven't been able to win more than one consecutive fight. So that's a problem for them. It is a problem. It's still not unwinnable though and one man army they still have this kitsune rush it's a great engagement tool for this portion of the map the problem is that team peps now have one two and almost a full slate of five ultimates so one man army they've got their work cut out for them but they've got to win this next fight yeah, ollie using the nade or sorry using the suzu against the cassidy nade and that's a very important cooldown to expand and look how quickly team peps dive to capitalize on that moment once the suzu is gone there's not a lot of good answers you know and a sound barrier would be great but strap word and then go for it oh, and this is going to be even more progress that team peps get to make and it's even maybe about finishing the map at this point two minutes remaining not very far to go in terms of completing the map and then best they've got the primal rage to throw on top of this kitsune rush you're throwing some yes. quick hands Oh, did I? Oh my god, the Suzu and the Sound Barrier! Now all of Team Peps had to hide from the Deadeye, and Ben Best came out to a full charge. Cassidy ult and lost a chunk of his health from that, but a one-man army using five ultimates just to get the bot control back. They still have to win many more consecutive fights, and it's not necessarily going cleanly in their favor. There's still ExoDL being a menace. I think he might have claimed one or two, but every body Team Peps claims in this moment is a, a slower return for a one-man army. Ben Best, by the way, is still alive. One-man army are losing just unnecessary progress here. Now 101 meters for Team Peps. You know it's bad when Avo was using the Deadeye and they threw the sound barrier and the Suzu on top of that to try to save that ultimate and it still didn't work because everybody else was dying around them. And again, One Man Army can't get past this bridge point. If they can't do that, in fact the bot's moving without them by the way, uh, it's, it just doesn't look good. We have sub one minute territory and One Man Army have to make up about a 70 meter deficit that is a pretty big deficit and the using five volts there like, like you pointed out in just the nicest way possible was such a huge waste because <laughs> it didn't even uh, help them get the bot moving even back to its neutral position it got it halfway and there's many many more fights ahead of a one-man army if they want to make the comeback of a century one-man army i like that they're going on the opposing high ground to not make this totally a power position for team peps but exodiol has just been built differently he's uh, a one-man army are struggling but hey, some good wins in the 1v1 department, giving them some bot control. Skitza has to continue to be on this bot to keep Overtime Wick burning, and Skitza can't be in this fight anymore because the bot's gonna poof away regardless. It's really tough too when you're in this position having to play overtime with a dive because that means your tracer can't go on those flanks and it's up to the rest of a one-man army to try to get the setup. You can no longer play reactively. You've got to try your best to play from this power position, but watch out, the overtime wick, it is burning. Yeah, the bubble got popped physically and metaphorically a one-man army. Backhanded by Naga, who just is 1v3ing the back line. Team Peps are just different. They will take the series in a sweep and in a commanding fashion to put themselves in the main event. Congratulations, Team Peps. Able to get the 3-0 onto a one-man army again. And hopefully being able to right the 
stage that they had in stage one, they were still able to finish it like fifth or sixth, but they want more than that. And I think this is an organization that you hope and expect to see more from just as a team, as you know, those players are hungry for it too. So Zoe, I feel like they're off to a really good start, getting a chance to look ahead to the main event. Uh, they, they really are. And I am just also so glad for Ben Best's sake that this was a dub for him, because uh, it feels a certain way when your team is ahead, then you get subbed in, and then you lose, and you get subbed out, and you know, the spiel. So I uh, know it was dominant. I, I love what you pointed out there, Rose, uh, heading into this, when you discussed whether or not the Winston will be played from Ben Best. In the past, it did look like the team has not been on the same page. Uh, Ben Best dying, team didn't have his back, maybe the, the, I don't know what was going on, but it looked coordinated this time around. And I love to see them looking so dominant because those are just such quality players, the, the old and the new. I think this team is really mashing together and I love the changes they've mind, uh, made from stage one into stage two. And Naga is a huge part of that success. And, you know, the Schizo was starting to close the, da the gap in the damage department. I think uh, Naga was only winning by 600 damage on that final map. Exodial was out damage by 1k. But the difference is the deaths. And when the deaths are so drastically different between the two teams and the damage is the same, it tells me all about focus fire. And we're talking about just Team Peps looking more and more coordinated because they know, you said so, they have the talent. The talent is there to revive an old game. <laughs> But it's how you work Never together. Died. Overwatch is a team-based game, and Team Pips are proving that they worked a lot on that between stages one and two to improve that. It's not even just the team-based game, but this particular meta has been like heavily team-based and, and synergy-focused. If you're not on the same page, then you aren't going to be able to get those team fight wins. And I think we were able to see that firsthand, what it looks like to have that coordination versus not in this matchup. So uh, Team Peps like definitely feel like they're vibing and gelling together as a team and still able to have those individual moments where you go, right, like Exodeal, really great standout player brand new essentially to the competitive scene but still putting up some very impressive numbers oh exodeal yeah very impressive he was differing through most of that whether it was on the sojourn but even just switching to the cassidy he knew what hero to play on one on what map just understanding how much space he needed if it was a larger map he would go sojourn if there was high grounds he needed to get to a sojourn cassidy on the smaller maps and he delivered on those big plays and even when he would have maybe slightly less damage than avo it was him playing his life that mattered even at that first clip like he's not going out and trying to 1v5. Here, everyone is corre being corralled into the Deadeye. Exodial is being set up for success by his team, and he's never missed a rotation. No, and I think the other thing that's been so fun to watch about Exodial is like this guy has a physics degree or something because the arcs <laughs> on those magnates, just the consistent headshots and damage that he's been able to do really set up this team for success in the Tracer versus Tracer as well. You need to have those mag grenades those, uh, <laughs> and just to be able to help hinder the Tracer. Uh, you know, yeah, physics. <laughs> I got wide. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I do be wide. Why people I happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I completely agree, and it's just so great to see this opportunity in the OWCS for those new players to emerge and take the scene, uh, and you know go 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 step in no. step. Is that a word? Uh, with like <laughs> people that we know uh, or have known for a very long time uh, to play at the top of the game. I mean, Abel has been around for a long time, right? So for Exo to just come in and be like, I can do that too. Watch me. So, um, yeah, it's great stuff, great stuff. And generally, I just love those mixed teams with like new players, old players, everyone coming together. And with the power of friendship, they get it done. They have gotten it done, though. They are qualified for the main event. They didn't manage that last time. I think very much that Team Peps expectations were very high on this squad, just, you know, by name recognition alone for the org, but also for the players which are playing uh, for them. So them not making it to the main event in stage one, I'm pretty sure 
there was a lot of disappointment from everyone involved. So it's great to see them rocking up stage two, making the adjustments during that break and then coming out uh, swinging. They didn't have the easiest group either. Ensa is in their group or Ens or like, I'm not entirely sure who's <laughs> saying it, however, yeah. which way. I'm saying Ensa because I'm so European and I'm almost certain that's how you say it. Alas. Sure. Do, do, uh, you, do, I trust you. Do I, I'm just gonna trust, trust you. I, <laughs> please do not do that. <laughs> so, word, word of warning. Um, we are actually uh, now ready to have a quick chat with uh, one of the players from the winning team. I believe FD God is with us. He is FD God. Uh, long time no see. How are you doing? Hello, hello. Yeah, I'm doing good, and you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, we got very, very excited to see you guys rocking up at this stage and looking so very dominant. Now, this was a rematch. You've played against the one and army, of course, already in your opening match in the group stage. And that was also a 3-0 stomp. Uh, so I assume you must have felt very confident coming into today's match and assuming you knew this is going to be a win. Did you and the team even consider to maybe experimenting a little bit with your compositions, given the recent changes, or did you not touch any of that? Uh, no, we still came for to win the match. Uh, we knew it was a <laughs> quite easy match, but we, we still uh, come to win the match, and we had to put um, uh, UM and Ben uh, to have some playtime, because we knew it was uh, possible to, to, to beat them with, with Ben and UM. But uh, for the competition wise, uh, we just kept uh, to what we practice. Uh, it's glad to see Ben and the rest of the team do so well. Thanks for taking the time to do the interview, FD God. Uh, and I could tell you guys were having fun, but we have a conspiracy theory. Did Tread jump off the map on Sigma with the grab flux <laughs> on Sanctum? Or did he, was uh, that an oopsie? I, I need to know. I don't know what happened. I just saw uh, my Sigma just the flux and say, oh. And uh, just dead uh, into, into the map. I don't okay. know. <laughs> oh yeah, I can see it all, but I just did some uh, crazy stuff. <laughs> and Tread, Tread was shooting bodies too. Is he? Does that get him fired up to uh, BM the other team, or what's up with Tread? Well, I, I don't know. He's uh, he's a kind of guy that uh, do his own stuff. I I, I, I can't stop him. <laughs> okay. How has it felt, FD God, with some of these roster changes in between stage one and two? And how confident are you all feeling heading into the main event next weekend? Um, personally, I feel really confident with my new team. Um, we did some changes between stage one and stage two. Uh, I feel like I can we have um, a really strong uh, team right now with, uh, with the new teammates we have. Uh, we do a really good uh, result in scream, even in matches against ENS. And I think we can go really, really far uh, into, into this stage. Maybe uh, go for the Dallas uh, stage, Dallas to LAN, I hope. That's yeah. right, that's right. Yeah, we want to see you on LAN for sure. <laughs> and just one last question, just to follow up on that, because the team that knocked you out last stage from the main event was Ex Oblivione. Are you surprised to not see them in the main event this stage? Yeah, I'm quite uh, surprised, honestly. I didn't expect them to uh, to not qualify for top 8. I mean, they, they, they had uh, some trouble in Scream, but I didn't expect them to, to lose, like, an hour. Um, but it's good for us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> Probably not sad about that one. Well, we're super excited to see you and the team making it to the main event. Epigod, thank you so much for joining me, and we can't wait to see more of you in the squad next week. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. That was FD God. Team Peps made it to the main event. Uh, he said it himself as well. You know, they made adjustments. He's feeling very confident about uh, how the team is doing currently. It's great to hear also, of course, that they're doing really well in the scrims. The cohesion is showing. Like, uh, I feel like this team really has synergy to take it very, very far, showing us coordinated dive compositions. They're rocking the Orissa. They got all the fundamentals uh, down and looking solid. So they could take it very far in the main event. And we'll find oh, out very sure. soon. Of course, all of that is going to go down next week. For now, we still have some open slots to set main event. Up next, uh, the decider match of Group C between Dean Perro and Rockstars. See you after the break.
It all started with Talon stealing artifacts. But wait, who's that? Those boots, the drill, that perfect smile. It's Venture! Whoosh, flashback. I researched this artifact, last seen in my favorite place, Cairo, and the reliefs there led me all the way to the Shambali, who were kind enough to direct me, after a lot of digging, and I mean a lot, to the hideout. Oops, hi, Talon. They ran with the artifact, but I dodged their spikes and juked their darts and blasted my way through the base, and... Here we are. Artifact, safe and sound. That was a doozy. Swoosh, we're back on screen. We need sound effects. <laughs> Adventure, just, they just seem like a person I want to be friends with. So, I, just, yeah. I don't play I like, well in the dirt, but I can make a pretty I do, castle. I do. I hey. think I stopped eating dirt when I was like, I don't know, a teenager. So I think Venture <laughs> and I would super get along. My mom actually had to stop me from eating a worm once when I was like three. I was like out them? playing in the dirt, uh, and I just like I held up an earthworm and I wanted to eat it. So and then you went yeah. into like science for stuff. So yeah, exactly. Science is stuff. You it also did out. science is stuff. So <laughs> I didn't eat dirt. At least my parents haven't told me about this. <laughs> oh, I can as as a now mom, I can I can say with confidence that you probably did eat dirt oh. <laughs> and anything else. <laughs> Like, the amount of time I have to check what's in my daughter's mouth is not, it's very much <laughs> shut up more than zero. Uh, I don't be a it's, it's, it's rough out there, but my heart is full. Uh, my heart is also full because I get to watch a lot of great Overwatch and I get to see teams advancing to the main event. I get to celebrate with them. Two more teams going at it right now in our second match of the EMEA region. Uh, Dean Perro and Rockstars. Rockstars, we just got to see yesterday, but let's, uh, you know, refresh our memory about Dean Perro a little bit because both of those teams they lost to twisted minds and make quick work of like zodiacs so um that tells us nothing really uh they did face off against each other in the swiss stage though yeah they did and that ended up being a 2-0 in favor of dm Perro. but i think what's really interesting about this roster is they're still rated really highly there was a lot of really great moments for china on the tracer just being able to get a lot of sticks and quick picks and when it comes down to play against a roster like rock stars i think you're gonna have to bring that firepower i'm just my brain cell is like oh team from china no china on the team <laughs> yeah <laughs> the <laughs> and a lot of new names a lot of rising stars going up against the stars of rock stars i've been nice. i i am putting all my stocks into rojo i think this is gonna be like the next like big hit scan in the league if he's not already like that guy he's a sojourn to definitely worry about he could be the next guy if i'm gonna just overhype him but i, I really believe gas Rockstars him up take the series. lemon gas him i know do, do not let me go please. <laughs> all gas no glaze but <laughs> honestly though i mean obviously recency bias here rockstar's looking so dominant yesterday uh, yesterday against flick zodiacs um it was the new additions which impressed me uh, gucci really really showed up on the track are doing so much work and you need that consistent tracer player in your team skyline in the back line which is like fragging people on the server you know like that baptiste looking as dangerous as any dps uh, in the squad so i am i'm ready for this looks like our viewers are definitely also in favor of the impero here let's see if they can get it done and qualify into the main event we're about to find out the teams are ready and so are we so let's take a look at the maps Ooh, no sweet rights, because you and I were going uh, back and forth on who we think is going to take the series. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm with Chad on this one. I'm with the predictions. I do think that DM Piro should win this matchup, and I believe it will be a 3 0. Wow. Okay. Chad, join me on my cope train. Rock stars, you don't call them the stars for nothing. They looked great yesterday, but I also still need to get to know D Impero, and I'm excited to see who's gonna be recency right or wrong. bias. Recency oh, I bias. Know. I know. I'll admit <laughs> it. That's fine. That's fine. And we'll go to Nepal to see who's the better Arissa. <laughs> That's true, actually. I, I think that's a good point, though, right? Is that this meta is all about the Arisa play. I think both Crocs and TVNT have proven themselves in those roles. The one thing that I think makes this uh, a little interesting is that uh, Crocs has had to play the Arisa into the likes of Twisted Minds, which is not an easy opponent to have to play. They did sadly just lose to them 0 3 in the winner's finals of this group, but we're back here on Shrine 
trying to see if they can maybe right the wrong and make it into the main event. But you're right, I think Rockstar is, they do have an opportunity here to get an upset. The Baptiste Cassidy backline for Rockstar is going to be proved to be really detrimental on an off angle, especially if you're able to keep Gucci in check. TBNT is just dog walking at them with a spear and he just gets to hit that onto Kyo or Kyo for free. Like I was right about to set up, oh, the Rojo versus Kyo match or Gucci versus China. That's a weird sentence, but Gucci, you know, had like a mixed performance and I watched him yesterday. It was definitely felt like the Rojo show, um, but Gucci so far has done a good job and apparently TBNT is the alpha tank. Uh, what's really nice about this backline again, like not only do you have the Cassidy and the Baptiste that can play together, but you can also play a little bit more of a brawly uh, uh, unit. Sure. You have the Immortality field that will cover the whole team. If D Impera want to continue to take these buildings to get to the point, it will be a little bit more difficult for them to actually win that matchup if Rockstars want to play up close and personal. But that's where the Kiriko can come in. Kyo is also going to make a big difference. The revenge of Kyo did not care about being first blood last fight and is gonna give them a taste of their own medicine. TVNT just wanted a hug, man. Just said good job on winning the team the fight. Kyo just that close that much closer to the overclock too, and the imperil are back on the point. Just like that, I mean, Rockstar has were able to get 50%. And so we're coming back into this one with four, almost five ultimates on the board, gives them a really good chance to be able to take back control. The only problem is that now that D Impero is set up on this point, they can have Kyo play really far back with this Sojourn. And so how do you actually find access? Your team doesn't have the same amount of mobility or ways to get away as D Impero does. So these rotations will be a bit slower for Rockstars. Okay, that's a lot of good headshots onto Crocs and their Kitsune Rush versus Ant Matrix. A Terra Surge from Crocs to try and zone them off the Ant Matrix, but the AOE sound beer is what kept Rockstars anchored in as much as possible. Here's another Terra Surge, and it caught some of the Impera who are still trying to escape. Even dying on the point is where Crocs is trying to go, um, but Rockstars will be stealing that back now. Right, Rockstars with a really good attack there. Having to use the Amplification Matrix pushed the Impero into a weird position where they had to use a sound barrier. Uh, Kyo is still going to come back with this Sojourn Overclaw, though. Uh, so Gucci, a little bit more onus on this player to try to bait out this Suzu from EGS, and then... All right. Yeah, good Suzu. Uh, that Pulse was also right into the tank, so you might not even need it. So baiting out a Suzu for Pulse is... Not even that bad of a trade-off, um, but it's not like it's sparking a window of engage out of Rockstar as they're playing so far back. Kia with the off angle and the overclock and the immortality has been used by Skyle and TBNT reacts at a good moment, but his backline did get hit. So Rockstars don't have a good main healer. So D and Pero are back on the point, stealing that away and finishing off Rockstars who chased after one kill. It's going to be really back and forth between these two teams because you're looking at Rojo on Rockstars to try to get a pick. Same with Kyo on Diampero to open things up with these more long-range hit scans. But as we enter into Last Fight territory, Diampero, they do uh, get really close to having this Terror Surge. And this Kitsune Rush can be valuable to try to close the distance on the amplification matrix that Skyle is coming up with. You can't necessarily sit so far back if you are Skyle and Rojo because this Kitsune Rush will help Diampero get up in your face. China's close to a pulse bomb too. Don't think they're on the high ground. Okay, they got back up. They had fell off. But Rockstar's ready to engage. And the pulse right onto Rojo, but the mortality from Sky saves them. And AoE might have had the barrier canceled. I'd have to double check on the replay. Either way, Rockstar's just playing off the amp as best as they can. And Rojo was trying to deliver the big kills and it's just not working out. This is the difficult angle. Uh, you know, the half wall is quite tall, and Di Impero is just going to win it out 191. I mean, you can even see the angle from here. If you have the amplification matrix, you don't necessarily have easy sight lines down onto the point if the rest of Di Impero are going to play around those pillars. Uh, and so, uh, you know, a tough positioning for Rockstars to have to take, but Di Impero do win that very first round. I think I'm going to Sanctum. 
Marissa still plays really nicely here, but I think Rojo switching over to the Sojourn makes a lot of sense if you want to try to not only contend with the Sojourn that Kyo has been playing, but also just take advantage of the angles that are so easy to get with something like that power slide. Whether or not we actually keep the Symmetris though, different story, but we've seen it both ways, having to play the Symmetra over the Tracer in that role. Rockstars teleporting forward. It's a Sojourn battle where even our last series, we saw that some people like Cassidy on here too, but if you want to play an ag aggressive on angle, you need all the help you can need for mobility. And Crocs in dangerous spot, no Mega available, and AoE is trying to boop him off the map. So D and Pero have already lost Crocs, not able to save him in that position. He got surrounded there by Rockstars, and that'll be their cap first. All right, really quick take. Once again, Rockstar's just off to the races, being able to get the first capture. What a great spear from DVND. That's been one of the maybe more impressive things I've watched about this Arista play is always being able to get those spears. It's really hard to be able to angle that and get a good sense of when that projectile is actually going to land its mark. So uh, DVND just being able to get some big stuns. Crocs trying to do the same, but these straightaways here, Scowl's gonna be a little bit closer to getting this Kitsune rush up first. And there's a Tracer battle between China and Gucci off to the side. Whoever wins that could obviously go on the flank and add pressure, give the rest of the team a chance to play forward. Point still in Rockstar's favor, and again, the longer this fight goes, the better for them. So it's DM Pero that have to make a move, and with AoE on this edge, this is really annoying because you don't want to die to an environmental that really sucks bm or not tread <laughs> but rock stars are holding firm for now so a lot more percentage that they're able to grab too while rock stars are biding their time to try to win out this duel on the high ground and here's the katsune rush katsune rush it may just help tv and t win against crocs and crocs use the terror search to get the fortify and didn't get the finish he was hoping for, but it is three versus three. DPS gone for Rockstars, but no take and no heals for Demi or D Impero. 70% plus for Rockstars. Just getting hairy. TVNT just being the anchor for the point. <laughs> getting the finish on the chef. A three-man barrier for Rockstars engaging into the remnants of D Impero. But Keo kills TVNT, and this could be possible for D Impero thanks to Keo. And then right in the nick of time, too, because Rockstar's almost walked away with that entire round, 100 to 0. But Diampero of the word cut out for them now. Kyo, with all of those picks, was able to earn himself an overclock. And with these angles, if you have that power slide available, you might even be able to power slide over to the other corner and try to get an off angle that way. Overclock from Rojo and Croc being so aggressive in his face. Kyo unleashing on his own front. And TVNT is also body blocking that. Uh, China wins the Tracer 1v1 against Gucci. So keep an eye on what he could do on the flank. Maybe chasing down Rojo. Oh, he's been a menace so far. Here's China trying to do just that. Chef used the barrier to help the rest of China's team push from the front as China will disappear into the shadows. Rockstars hoping to still fight for this point back and all thanks to Gucci and AoA, they're able to do that. But while being split, Rockstars lost the overall fight. So getting up to 94 is nice, but Dean Perro are back in. Back in the driver's seat, EGS has the Kitsune Rush as well, uh, but I'm kind of looking at China right now to be able to land another big pulse bomb. It's the problem though. With the Kiriko on the other side, you either have to bait out the Suzu with the pulse bomb or try to find another way to do that. Maybe it would end up being the Kitsune Rush first. So is it going to be China engaging before we see that or is it going to be the other way around? Either way, we're about to find out. Last fight territory up on us. Yeah, Kitsune Rush putting Rockstar's backs against the wall. There's China from the back of the pulse. TVNT is literally body blocked by five people. He cannot escape. At least, you know, his little ducklings got to get out and splash in the pond for a bit until the Impero are coming out of the archways. Chasing down kills, they're almost touching the spawn room doors. The Impero have no chill at all. 
have no chill, uh, have no ults right now either. So maybe <laughs> Rockstars do have a chance to get back into this. They have one more attempt to do that uh, because of how quickly that fight did go. So uh, they got to just get past this choke, and that disruptor shot's going to do a bunch of dock damage. Uh, Rockstars got to touch the point here very soon. 97 plus for Diampero. Gucci may be on there, but just got shot there. And that's the disadvantage of playing on the point is that you are exposed to damage. There is no good cover that's also touching the point. Now, who will keep that overtime wick burning? At least TBNT and friends are starting to win the fight against the Impero. And Rockstars have a split approach trying to keep overtime going. The Impero caught off guard by this rotation. The Impero stuck in the closet next to the point, unable to escape because uh, their taxi chef has left the building. <laughs> so Rockstars taking the point, making a big comeback and forcing round three. Left the building or locked down by Gucci. I, I think that might be more the case there. That Gucci was able to just put so much pressure onto the back line that uh, the supports had no choice except to try to pocket each other and make sure that they were focusing on that. But hey, look at that. Round three on the cards for us on Nepal. And still kind of even when it comes down to how these fights have gone. Very close. I know I said it was going to be 3 0. I didn't say it was going to be a, a stomp 3 0. That's true. And yes, D Impero got the last laugh last time they met. Well, Rockstars have been leveling up ever since. And now we're in the group stage. Last chance to get to the main event. All cards are on the table. It's a Tracer v Tracer, but Cassidy v Sojourn. So Keo can take more aggressive off angles and rocks. The Crocs got a little too aggressive. Wore the shoe on the wrong foot. So Rockstar gets pushed into the rest of Dean Perry, who are now unprotected. So we're seeing a similar story, but we saw in round number one, where it's the Cassidy Baptiste for Rockstars versus that Soldier and Kiriko from Diampero. Rockstars can stack on top of each other, which is why they're able to win that front to back so much easier. And Diampero are going to have to watch out for that. I would not think it's a good idea to go that high ground approach. And in fact, they don't do that. Getting an opportunity to take out Skyle while Rockstars is split. Uh, China just one clip Skyle? and had a melee too, and China's still killing things. China's still killing things, Rockstars. Gotta turn around and deal with them, China kill three. This Tracer is going unchecked, and Sky, I don't know if he didn't have the immortality, but if you're in a bad spot, that has to be used. It's tough because it's a tough call, right? Because you know that that immortality field has such a large cooldown that you got to be able to use it for the right time. Even if you're using it selfishly, it might mean that you're still not gonna get that value if you still get taken out so i don't know it's always a little bit difficult to make that call but the Impero, they now have control of the point rockstars are trying to take this engage stacked up again as a team of five but the Impero are not letting them have that advantage playing on top of the point now you know that Kyo's charge shot is gone. This is where Rockstars are going to push in more aggressively. TBNT doing that, and then Crux just ignores him and just starts shooting Skyle in AoE. Like, you can't let this Orisa just gallop to past you like that. The Crux is insane for that. The Impera will be taking the point back, and they're starting to get a pretty serious lead now. That's a sign of a good Orisa, though. Orisas that are able to spot those small little openings where they can just walk past the Orisa, isolate the team backline, and take them all down one by one. The Katsina Rush definitely helped with that. EGS was able to pump a ton of healing into Crocs in order to chase down those low health targets. And you had China there as well to be able to help out in that regard. Uh, but Tia Pair are now playing from a deficit as Chef is taken out early. And there's no sound bear, no healing, no hope. The Impero at least are giving us an entertaining match. Uh, they're just going to try and die on the point as best as they can. Um, it's surprising to see how much these backlines are, are really suffering. Maybe that's the trade off of having these aggressive Arisas that aren't turning around to peel with a, a spear throw or anything. So I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Gucci in China. Hey, if it's going to be these aggressive fast-paced fights, then we get a chance to see a lot of them too, as they're going to finish up really quickly. Diampero, though, they are going to take this high ground approach, even knowing that Rockstars are able to play grouped up as a team, but they have a lot of tools to deal with this. Namely, it's going to be Kyo's overclock. And Chef not wanting to counter with his own barrier, maybe waiting for the more guaranteed play in the overclock with all the pit set from the terror. They were Chef. ready. It is very <laughs> insane. Diampero, great coordination, good combo. 
Now they're just gonna go yoink the point back. And that'll, it's coming down to last fight to determine our first map. That was such a good setup too. Knowing that Rockstars would play together as a group, the Immortality Field came out just a little too late and you saw the power slide from Keo to be able to sandwich the team while they were all clumped up like that. But we are gonna see a scatter as Rockstars come back, hit the Deadeyes, zone away D'Impero, but this is last fight for D'Impero. <laughs> Rojo's sense is gonna make me, my stomach upset. <laughs> that, never got to see it, notice that before. D'Impero had used Sound Bear, but were unable to save Croc. CVT in a similar dire position, but Skyle brings it back to full. Good play by TVNT. Slapping Keo around. Rockstar is stealing the objective back. We'll, we'll be bringing us to our final fight to determine our first map and see if your prediction is wrong or right. <laughs> At least on good track. Hey, uh, we'll see. Uh, I think it's really set up for success here for Rockstars, though. If they can play around this amplification matrix, uh, that's really what it comes down to. Where does Skyle decide to hit that? Can Diampero limit the amount of agency that that amplification matrix can have? Yeah, can you zone them off? I've seen Diampero do their best, but Rockstars are just too good. Even with the pulse from Gucci that kills Keo, you don't have a huge GPS threat from Diampero's side. And Gucci was let loose at the end, and that's why he's a high cost player to have on your team. Rockstars will be taking map one. Look at that, Rockstars with a, such a close map number one are able to pull the first punch. And so, hey, just maybe we are going to have a really, really close map in our hands. Listen, so. I'm the only one. I, I, we saw the chat predictions. That's all I'm saying is uh, now we're on to something. We still might be on to something. That was really close. I mean, round three, 99-99 throughout most of that. Sanctum can be a bit snowball-y because there's more uh, uh, tough choke points to get through, but yeah, Rockstar is pulling through at the end, and it's like in our last series, it can come down to these big tracer plays between Gucci and China, where you saw China had a really good start to, to a Village, and then trailed off in the end where Gucci took over. Kyo versus Roho aren't like, having these insane pop-off moments. It's really the Terra Surge with the overclock combos that have been cool to watch, but we'll see if y'all are still onto something about D'Impero and if they can come back next map. This is why we've got like the good cop, bad cop for the <laughs> matchup. Like you're clearly a Rockstars fan, but like I'm gonna be in the D'Impero camp and hey, we'll, we'll see who's gonna win out the prediction after that. But it's been close and I'm super excited to see how the rest of this series is gonna go because it might just come down to the wire in every single one of these maps. Let's listen to the winning comms from Rockstars as they closed out that first map. And you heard just really good identification of the cooldown. And when you see that Kiriko TP, everyone has to turn towards that support. That is target number one in those moments. So I'm already seeing Rockstars have good comms and things are gonna get hectic in those moments. They are. Uh, the fact that you can kind of keep your cool and still maintain the composure of marking all of those things really does mean good things for Rockstars. Uh, there were so many amazing moments in this even first map too. Not only were each of these rounds very close and very competitive, but you also saw bright moments in the coordination from both teams. Uh, I think like the, oh, the, the oi, the oi beat, uh, I'm still, I'm still uh, not entirely sure what happened to it, to be quite yeah. honest with you. But like, that's another thing where maybe if that goes off, that map ends differently than what it does, you know? Yeah, China being able to pulse that is huge, and it still went the distance. And TVT and Crocs, I honestly just want to put them in a 1v1 cage match. Like, no MAGA involved, just let them go at it. Because it's like, everyone else is an observer, and Crocs and TVNT are, are just crazy, just so aggressive. Which is sometimes has costed, you know, eggs or Skyle to be killed, like in this moment, where Crocs then ignores TVNT and just walks to the back line. Can't let that happen. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I thought it was like the Winston dives. It was all about trading the back line, but I think it's actually just the Arisas walking past each other, Spider-Man pointing, and then going and <laughs> killing the back line instead. <laughs> like, look how close it is! It does not get any closer than this in between these two teams, and that makes me so excited to actually see how this match is going to conclude. Yeah, uh, China diffed Gucci by uh, around 2k damage, so D'Impero with the W in the Tracer department. But when it came to the Cass versus Sojourn or that matchup, a very, very close Rojo uh, diffed by uh, 1k and having very similar deaths. So that's a W in the Rockstars camp for the range DPS, very si similar tank deaths. So this series really can go the diff the distance. Yes, D'Impero maybe won it, won it more one-sidedly the last time they faced, but this is a whole new ball game and there's a lot more stakes at, at hand. One goes to the main event, one goes home. Does not get any more high stakes than that, except maybe when we get to the main event and then... I don't know, we'll get there when we get there. One of these teams will, but Eichenwald coming up next. We have seen Rissa play here more often than not, and I think when we look at the rosters for both of these teams and what they have had a tendency to play, it makes sense that we're gonna continue to see the Arisa here. I don't think we'll see any deviations from this. Come on, do a dance. Team Huddle. Come on and dance. Oh, the Lys Seraphim dance is so good too. It's so good. And I found out that they actually do the dance in their song too, which just makes that emo even more special for me. So yeah. Rockstar is on the defense. See if they can dance away to another victory. And starting off on defense is always less pressure on your shoulders. <laughs> the Impero with the quick fake left to right, back to left. And Rockstars are so aggressive. They're just, okay, we're going to come to you. We're tired of this game. And TBNT just runs after them and then leaves his back line out to dry. Skyle can't be the first one dying. Immortality has to be used. Somebody needs to help the Rockstar's back on. Well, that's the issue sometimes of running the Baptiste and the Cassidy is they're so static. If you leave them alone, they don't have the same amount of mobility as the rest of the team has, especially if Oi is going to be there to speed the Orisa around. And you saw that in first hand, how the team got split up, and then Oi couldn't go back there to peel. So D'Impero was something like the Kiriko, Susev's over, maybe get a couple kunais, and that could be it. So really quick take there by D'Impero. They get the jump on Rockstars, and maybe oh. now vice versa? Crocs almost just gave him the Simba of just holding TVNT <laughs> up in the air and getting ready to This eat could him. be yours, <laughs> but it won't be. <laughs> Simba. But <laughs> Team Barrow, um, oh, like Scar. Oh, they're going to chase after them. Oh, yeah, Scar, true. Uh, we're trying to go up to the high ground now. This is a very fun game of Ring Around the Rosie, as you guys have noticed through the start of Eichenfold. Do Impero know? Well, the high ground's nice, but having the card is nicer. That's what actually wins you the game. So they have to drop in. Rockstars get caught out in the open. And Do Impero just have to take advantage of this moment now that there's no tracer. China can go on the flank. It is uh, scary to go past this archway, but still, Do Impero should be able to get some progress very soon. This terror search could catch a Cassidy, and it gets even more than Crocs with a huge double kill. That's huge. I mean, it opens up the fight in such a big way, too. We don't necessarily get a chance to see those Terror Surge have that many kills attached to them when they're used, but D'Impero turned a single Terror Surge into a full team fight win, and now they have everything else in the bank for this next fight. They gotta give up the card a little bit, though. They don't necessarily want to lose positioning, so they're gonna try to wrap around this castle, maybe try to take the high ground away from Rockstars who've beaten them there, uh, or they could just wrap around, too. But look at this, how much distance both of these teams want to keep it between each other so they can use those spears to the biggest advantage. Oh, Kitsune Rush from Egg, Sound Barrier first from D'Impero, and Aoi with the Sound Barrier second. Real Rockstars have that advantage and pulls from Rojo who rolls into his own team. He doesn't end up dying. Maybe there's an immortality. I don't know, but that was hectic. Gushi, though, has been let loose and he gets to get a 3k at the end of that fight. All right, the tables have turned. 
Gucci and China being able to play both of these matchups, I think it's really interesting to see how the Kiriko affects all of that. The Kiriko provides the Suzu not only to be able to engage a pulse bomb, but also to be able to switch up over to the Tracer if you want to. Uh, but the Cassidy mag grenades also play a factor. So it's going to be difficult for both Gucci and China to find that same individual value. Oh my god, TBNT uh, red. Oh! I said get down, Mr. President. <laughs> Just ate the spear for Kyo, who did I was cute and all, but TVNT quite literally being a human bulldozer <laughs> is even better. So that'll be a good stop for Rockstars. And the second once TV uh, gets up there, uh, they're still pushing. He's gonna just one v five, I guess. Uh, All right, give, that, give the ace, give the ace, give the ace. <laughs> get the, no, get the ace. Ace, Skyle, they'll steal it. Skyle, come on now. Oh, you too? oh, now we're getting more than an ace. Oh, wait, no, back out, back out, back out. Go, 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 go. TVNT is so greedy. It's <laughs> crazy for just Javelin spinning it. So into greedy. Yeah, you think it's this big bait for the Terra Surge, but the Impera were not ready for the, all that smoke, so. Oh, oh, goodbye. Uh, okay. Okay, that, see, that's not BM, that's tactical. Theo wants to also jump off the map. Uh, uh, I didn't want to give the kill over, but unlucky. Did anyway. He landed on the, he landed on, on the pavement, so. You know, yeah. Yeah. L plus ratio yourself better, honestly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but hey, Rockstars, they've put up a great defense now. D'Ampero, they had won that first round so fast that they had like five minutes of the time bank entering into the second point. So already so much time back. D'Ampero may be able to get the better of them now, but Rockstars, they can conserve ultimates here and then come back for the final f contest on this point. Yeah. D and Para win that, but Gucci's like, I got my one. I, I won the Tracer duel against China. I'm not the problem. Crocs oh. could have brought that pulse bomb somewhere, but thank God for eggs. With the with the uh, Suzu, Rox will have a re-engage. There's only four there. Okay, there's uh, there's Gucci. Dead Eye from Roho gets speared by Crocs and Chef has a sound bear and the Katsune rush. Rockstars are trying to match it as best as they can. And no, that spear. Did it catch Kyo? It might have. Rockstars can also use the cover of the cart, and they don't want to hide. They actually want to hunt. So D'Impero better respect that. They have to back out because they are hoping to take an eco fight here. They still have one more attempt at being able to finish up the second point. And Rockstars used everything else in that last fight outside of this Terra Surge. But D'Impero, they are biding their time and almost wasting it as they wait for the rest of their team to come back. But with 33 seconds left, they're gonna have to engage on this one, but Crocs is so low! Oh, big Terra Surge. D'Impero like losing up. China. Gucci can be on the flank. And it's evened up 4v4, but a Terra Surge comes out of Crocs and Rocks will just reestablish themselves on the car. D'Impero have been trying their best in terms of macro and sometimes losing the back line and getting separated from each other but Crocs is trying to fire back and leads everybody up as much as they can against the wall but Rockstars had a flank pull so D'Impero started to get pretty injured. This is last fight for the push of D'Impero and the Katsune rush left behind helped out China get the 2k and maybe almost cap. What's AOA? Dies? Guys, AOA is gonna die, right? The boop displays <gasps> D'Impero, so this is now winnable. Sky's immortality lived way longer than it should have. And Chef got away with a sound bear. AOA died before his could come out. So that sound bear gave D'Impero the edge to win point B. The most insane clutch? It looked yeah. like they had misstepped on the castle. Everybody got so low. Crocs was almost about to get taken down, and then you still had that 4v4. But uh, China had such an impact in that last fight, as did Keo, just to be able to bully away the Baptiste on the high ground, actually just bully their way through with raw damage. And, uh, you know, Crocs is Doomfist coming in clutch as well. It's going to be a switch back, though, to the tried and true Rissas for this map, but D'Impero buying themselves an extra minute is huge. And another point. Oh, D'Impero, yeah, don't have a lot of time, but maybe the glass half full. At least you capped point B. And whatever you get out of here is just bonus. Girl math, I guess. Boy math, I don't know. But it's sound barrier from Rockstars. Now they get to take over the fight. China gets checked on his flank before he could even get set up. And D'Impero is just going to die as a squad. So good hold by Rockstars.
Super good, and now the Impero only have one more chance. The cart has still gone farther than Hope would have looked like it was going to, so the Impero are walking away uh, winners in that regard, but they still have one more shot. EGS is so low, though, because Rockstars are chasing these picks. With 15 seconds left, the Impero may not get a shot at being able to approach this as a full team of five, but the split oh. pressure is working. The Impero has to get to the cart, though, and it's going to be on China to proc that oh. over time. Oh, oh, China was half health and couldn't dip dive and dodge, and Chef couldn't make it there. And Crocs also ran down Rojo, so you thought the Impero were in a great position to punish Rockstars for being too greedy, but then couldn't really race back to the cart in time. So, hey, getting halfway to point C is just bonus. This is a, a decent push out of the Impero. All right, it's it's. I think it could have gone even farther than that, though, had the overtime been activated, because you saw the Kitsune rush happen right after that, and it would have been able to line up perfectly uh, to take out Rockstars. But I think you still have that problem of Rockstars are the closer spawns over time, have to play on the point. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes it, it goes how it goes, but otherwise, great push out of DM Pero and even better defense out of Rockstars to make it that close. Goes how it goes. It is what it is. That's what I would be telling the Impero. Like, like, hey, that is winnable. It is always winnable. And you hope that there's a good mentality there. Rockstars will be attacking first. Now that we're sticking with the Cassidy's, you got to be careful of your positioning. Again, the tumble is very short. Yes, there's damage reduction, but you still need to be watched out for. TVNT sometimes only sees red, only sees W on his keyboard. <laughs> be careful for someone like Skyle. Oh, hey, listen. If a tank actually had access to the S key, I think, I think we just, yeah, you know, the tank, just take that out. Take yeah. that off of your keyboard. But let's get a listen in on Rockstars to see how they're going to approach this first point. I don't have armor. Oh, we have armor. Walk left, walk left, walk left, okay? We can walk, we can walk. Yeah, push left, left side, okay? Push left, left side. Yeah, I'm three. Oh, push left, push left. Oh, he's pushing down, you can't be under, you can't be under. Push him in, push him in. Run, run. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get uh, wow, <laughs> the target focus is really cool to see out of Rockstar. So what's important too is not just screaming out who is low, but really make sure the team is committed to that. You heard it towards Eggs and Crocs, and Skyle immediately turned his attention to Rojo too when he was low, so good cause. Yeah, I think EMEA just also has a little bit of a leg up on an A. I think they just can speak more words per minute uh, <laughs> than the, the rest of the world. So, hey, listen, it works. It was very concise. It was very effective. And they get a chance to keep moving this cart forward as D Imperio gets set up on the high ground. A ton of time here for Rockstars to work with. And staying composed too. Rockstars feeling confident, feeling calm. And Gucci just has to play a bit of dodgeball against bullets uh, to try to move this card across the bridge. They've got so and much free push. Where's China? Like, China needs to contest that. That's literally his job, is to look at the other tracer. Flanking. Where is China? China's flanking. Oh, there he is. Okay, China's now he's so anymore. late. He's so late to contest that, but... It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's what I see to every mistake. But Rockstar's lead now with a dead eye javelin spin to block the damage. The Imperial almost tossed up into the line of fire with that dead eye. And Keo exposed. Now the nade catching him 5v4. And the Diampero, it can't even play off this Katsune rush. It feels like they're pushed off the high ground they were trying to set up on. So Rockstar's took the space and they owned it. I hope the train hasn't stopped. The train has left the station, no and DM Pero is uh, nowhere to be found. He could be able to hold the door here. TVNT is just going to keep DM Pero back. Uh, they might not even get a chance to really come out and contest if you're just going to sit there and spear spin in front of their faces. Uh, there's no way. That's point. That's Where point. is China? How about, okay. Give me a dollar every time I say, where is China? 
because that is who should be contesting. You can't all come out through one door. That Orisa is a chonky horse that will body block the entire team, especially with the javelin spin. China needs to be coming out another doorway to contest, and now that's been capped. So, uh, a lot of time for Rockstars. I mean, Kyo comes in uh, with a dead eye to save the day, a two a two player dead eye. But Rockstars have four and a half minutes to get this card around a corner. This this should be their map. This should be theirs. They should have match point, and it might be now. Yeah, five v four for Rockstars. Big win for Gucci and the Tracer. One v one, and Crocs is just getting tossed. Boop from the front, javelin in the back. Like no fun. No fun allowed. And Rockstars with this fight win and all the progress that they have, actually. The box of victory is right there and Team Peril were close to so many ults to have this whole fight turned around. It all came down to a Tracer 1v1L and one last contest from Crocs, but pulses are just better out of Gucci. Rockstars will very dominantly take Eichenwald and go to match point. This has been night and day difference. I know we said that that very first time that they met each other in the Swiss stage, it was a 2-0 for DM Pero. And I think everybody had DM Pero rated more highly on their list of EMEA teams than Rockstars. But they've listened to all that feedback. Rockstars are like, absolutely not. We're here to be able to turn and rewrite that script. And they are staring down the barrel of doing just that, Jen. 2-0 so far, one more map for them, and they're heading on to the main event. And we heard it from their comms check that Rockstars just look so coordinated on their pushes. That's how they took the point so fast. There was so unnecessary, but also very necessary push out of Rockstars when Gucci got to sit on the cart, go uncontested, get uncontested progress, leaving Rockstars to only have to win one fight for point B. That's crazy. Which ended up being, in my opinion, a Tracer C9 to have that capped in front of them when all five of them were alive. That was definitely touchable, but you can't just all come out one doorway. So that fumble led into uh, pretty much an unstoppable force of Rockstars getting five minutes for point C or something crazy. And when the box of victory is halfway there, it's it's just a matter of time. But then there wasn't yeah. even one defensive hold when Gucci wins the Tracer 1v1. Yeah, like, I, on that on that defense, Dion Perro won, what, two fights? And just the card never, card never stopped pushing. I think that speaks volumes to just how momentum-based Rockstars has really played this map. Uh, they're feeling themselves as well. You heard those comms going off in the comm check. Yeah. Like, they really understand how to be able to play against this team. And it's very clear that they've put in a ton of practice between this last week in order to make these big changes. Because I think that was the big difference. This patch has nothing to do with how this team is functioning right now. In fact, we haven't seen many teams actually play around those patch changes, if at all. And instead of our wrecking ball friend. Uh, but <laughs> hey, I, I think that's great. It's all about team coordination and team synergy. And how better are you going to find that than playing scrims? Damage quite close. But like I've said in the past, it's all about focus fire and Rockstar is just having uh, a better job at that. And this is a meta where investing in your tracers is everything. They could be the make or break of these fights. But less about the pulse bombs, right? Because Suzu's and immortalities can negate through ideally most of that. But it's your flank pressure, it's your presence on the card, it's how you're pushing the bot on push maps. The tracer has such a huge role on these objective maps. And Gucci, even Gucci and China had similar damage, if not almost the same. But it was how Gucci was playing the map that was superior than China. It felt like they were taking two different approaches, right? China having to play a little bit more with the team versus actually going and checking Gucci that was just pushing the car and actually going off and trying to be a little bit more self-sufficient. It comes down to as well being able to have something like the, the Kiriko behind you versus something like that Baptiste. Uh, and so that does play a little bit different. But heading into our third map and potentially the final map of this series, we're going to Colosseum. We've seen Cassidy so far for the most part out of both Keo and Rojo, but when it comes to playing on Coliseo, you have better high ground to play around and also just longer sight lines. So it feels like the sojourn is what we see here more often than not to take advantage of those features. I wonder if we're still going to get Cassidy's here. The, this neutral point is very long range, so 
We've seen all all the ranged DPS on here, even Hans and all <laughs> things. So Sojourn's so long, long ago. I know. <laughs> and Orisa's the flavor for this map. And I'm wondering how Rojo and Kyo are going to face off now that it may be more up to them to determine how these fights will swing oh, off of... A lot of the time we're staring at each other very lovingly until a Sojourn kills something. And the Sojourn Railgun charge shots are not necessarily the most reliable. You have yeah. one chance and it's supposed to be a big snipe shot. It is not even actually a one shot anymore, thanks to a couple of patches ago for a lot of these heroes getting just a bit of extra health. So you've got to hit your shot and then you also have to have the follow up. So Rojo and Gucci, likewise China and Kyo playing together is going to be very important to follow up those big shots. Yeah, just getting the stats now. China out damaged Gucci by 50. 50 damage. That's how wow. close it was. Same thing with Kyo and Rojo. Uh, 100 damage is what separates the two. Rojo getting the edge there. So this is a DPS matchup that is so tight that it's all about focus fire and who can really follow up with these low HP targets. And the deaths are the biggest stat differences. But for now, Team Pero in a less healthy position and some initial bot progress from Rockstars. But Gucci gets the finish on the Crocs, who, yes, was low, but I didn't think in that much of a dangerous position, he didn't even get out of that closet area to get into a safer spot. So Eggs and Chef didn't realize that either, and that's what causes Rockstars to have the scales tilted in their favor. You lose your main tank, it should be easy pickings for the rest of the squad. Still a little bit of contest coming through from China, but it, it just feels like a matter of time before Rojo's gonna get another charge oh. shot. There you go, <laughs> speaking it. into existence. And that's gonna have to be another backup from D'Ampero as Rockstar starts around this corner towards that first checkpoint. Yeah, Kyo uh, needed more help holding that corner. That's the power position for Sojourns and should have given him the edge against Rojo, but the rest of uh, D'Impero rotated away, and Rojo is still catching Kyo. Just catching straight for no reason. D'Impero are not caring about Kyo at all, and Rojo is insane. He just got three for that fight, looking for the ace, and this has been an unstoppable push. This is going to be checkpoint. It's just checkpoint, it's just forward spawns. We still have seven and a half minutes left of this map. And if they keep up this pace, it really could be a full cap. They're gonna back up though. They don't want to give up too much pressure. And look at this, they're waiting for them underneath the bridge. Oh, the TBNT. Managing to escape, so does his tracer. They're gonna bring it back to a neutral point. And this is a point at 62 meters where Rockstars can just play to kill every fight out of D'Impero. Good luck though, because they got five ultimates. Rockstars with four. Kitsune rush advantage for D'Impero. Overclock gonna come out, but Rockstars can't hide away from this. And maybe that's the intention. I mean, the intention is to kill, sure. But getting free progress on the bot is always welcome. Now, Sound Barrier re engage out of Rockstars. What's that overclock is gone? Forces to jump out of Kato sound barrier from Chef. He got tossed up by the Arisa that could have been canceled. Good for him though that Dean Peril benefited from the overhealth. And then EGS Katsune Rush helps to propel the team to a victory that they desperately needed to catch up in the score. Good awareness from Rockstars to back away from the objective before they captured it. Even though it looks like, yeah, you maybe should have gone for that checkpoint, they didn't want to get caught with their pants down. D'Ampero, though, with that ultimate advantage, were able to get back that territorial control, uh, go ahead and take a better position at the end of that straightaway so that they could try to get some progress. But once again, now it's their turn to have the awareness to back away when Rockstars are coming back with ults. Oh, Skyle uh, used Suzu, so China went for Pulse, and Rojo turned and headshot him. Rojo is different. PC check on aisle four. What the heck is this Sojourn player? Uh, you know, I gassed him up in the pre-show, and I caster blessed him, so you're welcome, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm caster cursing, and we might actually see a 3-0 for Rockstars. So, hey, it's, it's looking good so far. I mean, now we should be able to get the checkpoint. Nobody can come in and touch it unless it's going to be China right in the nick of time, but it has to back away because the rest of the fight is happening up here. Oh boy, Rockstars 
can increase this lead even more. Once uh, butt scratch is all done, this is a pause. Gucci and China will face off for flat control. Rockstars are around the corner though, and Dean Perro have Crocs on the flank. Manages to spear Skyle, get the teleport out. Everyone has to converge on the Skyle, and Rockstars are in a painful position. And it was a great play call by Crocs. Dean Perro are not in the most healthy position either, but Rockstars couldn't get the finish on these targets, so it will only be a rounded up 70 meter push out of Rockstars, and Dean Perro are gonna try to match. Still a nice push, so we have yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Rockstars though, like they got they got the checkpoint, so they're happy. Now they also have a bit of a lead that they're creating when we have less than five minutes left of this map, all they have to do is play keep away. But the Empire are back in this position where they have the ultimate advantage heading into this next fight, and this may be what helps them break through the barrier to get started on their own push towards that first checkpoint. Five alts, actually. <laughs> They're, they're stuck at this pillars, and who's contesting is TVNT, and they're more worried about killing the DPS behind and worrying about TVNT later, and oh, someone ducked in time, because Kyo's overclock would have claimed and given a haircut for free to Rockstars. Now Kyo did force Rockstars to go into cover. Crocs is being aggressive, got the sound barrier almost too late from Chef. Pulls from Gucci and the Terra Surge, just trying to chunk through that overhealth, and Gucci on the flank is on the hunt. Dean Pair with the Katsune Rush. Crocs tried to pop the Terra Surge for some fortify and uh, for, for some cope, maybe. But the real cope is Dean Pair not able to continue that push. Still less than four minutes, though. Uh, yeah, you still have some time in the bank, and you did force out every ultimate from Dean Pero's pocket, but, like, that's the problem. You know, like, even though we still have three and a half minutes here for Dean Pero to try to try to make this push, like, what do they have? It's all now on Rockstars to continue to extend this lead, or maybe even, like, not even worry about that. Just say, we get to fight over this midpoint, keep these fights really long and really contested, uh, so that we can set up our sojourns. Yeah, how can you set up Rojo and Kyo for success? Rojo looks like he's kind of dominating that soldier in match. I want to see Kyo step up to this. Rojo's got the overclock and Kyo just jumps out. Mad respect. Uh, I wouldn't want to challenge Rojo either. He was an absolute menace in the Saudi E-League and will continue to be so. Apparently he's on the flank and Rockstar's pushing from the front. It's almost a little too chaotic for Rockstar's to deal with. Already one of their flankers got shut down. Gucci is gone. Bigger dent into Di Impero though, as Rockstar's will just make sure the bot doesn't go anywhere. Uh, China doing a good job of being able to wrestle the bot away from Rockstar's, even if for just a little bit. Buy some time for the rest of Di Impero to come back, and that's a huge pick onto TVNT. So Rockstar's, they've got it back up, and now Di Impero are able to take back a bit more area control. Setting up Kyo, uh, try to get this overclock online. Maybe even China to get into the back. You can see him sneaking back there to see if maybe a, a sneaky pulse bomb. Okay, wants. Okay, got the Suzu out, and there it is. Huge. Right the Skyle. Great patience out of China, and he needs help up here though. And Kyo maybe wanted to assist, and he gets taken out. China has to disappear into the shadows, and he had such an impact play at the start, but Di Impero didn't have the best to follow up. So the the numbers are pretty even. Di Impero though had the advantage of a late later Kutsune rush out of EGS, so that's how Rockstars are getting diffed at the moment. But EGS losing that to. Gucci means Di Impero don't have any heals, and Rockstars turn that fight completely around. Later, the Kitsune Rush, but an even better support ultimate in the sound barrier to come in and give that overhealth to Rockstars to finish up the job. So now, sub one and a half minute territory, Rockstars have already pushed it back to the checkpoint. They can play around this high ground, uh, and Di Impero now, like, realistically have to win two, maybe two and a half team fights in a row. But Rockstar is like, now sub one minute, they can draw out the clock, they can really elongate the, the pace of this fight and really put Di Impero back up against the wall. Yeah, Kyo, I know it's so difficult playing on the low ground against Rockstars who are gonna be on the high ground here in a second, but some Sojourns, they will jump up there and will do the best that they can to at least deliver on a kill, even if it means dying in the process, Crocs. 
with the Terror Surge pulls in rock stars from their hidey holes and the Impero would just work all together on those picks. So a great team kill. This will get them the forward checkpoint, but 30 seconds, the Impero have to have the push of a lifetime to win this. They've got to be perfect. This is the one team fight gotten out of the way. Now they got to win out the second one. They're not going to have time to get this checkpoint before the team is able to come back. And Rockstars are coming back swinging. Going to have this Kitsune rush up quickly, but it's about the sound barrier. If Oi can get this online by the end of this fight, it's over. Rockstars will win this map. Oh, a stick! Big! Huge for the Impero and a five versus four. And at least you still have bot control. Rockstars tried to steal it away. TVNT against Keo though. E numbers 4v4. But Crocs is pushing them on the low ground. Rockstars are split up from each other and trying to find each other using the Katsune Rush of Sky. But it's too little too late. The Impero with a huge comeback. The finish line in their sights. Rockstars will do their best with this one advantage that they have in the AOA sound barrier. But the Impero clutched up when it matters. Gucci with two is the last threat along with AOA. And this is not over yet. The Impero are losing this. China is one HP. One backhand to roll them all. And it's Gucci that comes out on top. Rockstars, could they Gucci for saving this? But Keo was back in time. It's a one versus two. Rockstars need to depend on TVNT. A teleport from Skyle. The number is back in favor of Rockstars. We'll have the closer response. The Impero could win it here if they can hold on this 2v1. One last touch from AOA. And this is an all out scrap. The Impero have done it. They'll send us to a map four unless Gucci can stop making me evaporate in my lungs. Okay, <laughs> Diampero, take Coliseo. <laughs> that was so scrappy. Like, you, you saw the panic pick comes, comes through for both teams. You got the Doomfist on both sides. Honestly, there was a two versus one at every step of the way through those final moments. It looked so back and forth. And with the respawn advantage, one would think that if they're able to extend it long enough, then Rockstars would be able to take it and take the whole series. But no, we're going to go to New Junk City and potentially settle things there to see if maybe we start a reverse sweep here for Dean Peril or Rockstars can finally close it out. I just need a, I need a water drink. I know, you need a second. That. The, both these second. teams need a second. What the heck was that last fight? First, he had a Doomfist swap out of the Impero. If that didn't happen, if there w I don't even know what the rollout is. I'll let a Doomfist expert uh, measure that. But the Doomfist getting back in time versus the Soldier, maybe Rojo, which was a last second swap from Rockstars to get back to the fight in time to the Gucci versus China. That was insane. Even Rojo got back and almost flipped it all around. Gucci was the tracer that even made that close. But it, in the end, the Impero just had more numbers in the end, the two versus one. All they had to do was deal with a tracer, I think. So what a final fight for that. It was so good. I want to give a huge shout out to like Keo 2 with just these amazing overclock kills. I think Keo and China, they really stepped it up in order to work together. And not only just like the, the big flashy plays, but just to be able to actually secure those pincers and, and get those low health targets. You're gonna play yeah. no fear sometimes with a doomfist in your face. <laughs> and China stepped up in the stats department too. We got word from stats that China out damaged Gucci by 1.1k. And that's starting that's to become lot. very significant, especially, you know, the pulses that he got in the clips that we just saw to extend that push to the forward checkpoint and to stay as alive as long as he did against Gucci. But I want to hear how hectic these comms got at the end. Coliseo was a mess. Let's listen in. <laughs> Man, 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 man. Just man. Nobody, nobody. You can win, you can win. I'm picking up. 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 Kiri, not. Keep touching, I can touch you. Yeah. I'm touching now, I'm touching now. Kiri, Kiri, Kiri. Shut down. 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 Shut Good job. Nice, oh nice, God. nice. Good job, good job, good job. They are They're way so less calm. excited than I was more excited than them watching. But they gotta stay calm. I think there was a mixed sense of can we actually win this? And when someone died and had this had a zoom out view of 
wait, this is winnable. The Impero clutch style. <laughs> Yeah, they really did. And I think, too, just like having the wits to still call out, like, okay, it's not over yet. Like, Tracer is still going to come in and touch, but now Tracer don't has, doesn't have recall. We got this. Let's go. Hipping heal, well, yeah. big comms. <laughs> like, <laughs> minus that, but hey, you got to have trust in each other in that moment. And yeah, both teams actually swapped to Doomfist, uh, not even just the Impero, so. That was insane. What a finish out of D'Impero oh, to extend us to a fourth map, and we'll maybe settle this on New Junk City? If you thought that the final moments of Coliseo were scrappy, get ready for our, uh, our Flashpoint course. <laughs> Uh, I feel like this is always like even worse <laughs> just because it's constant action at any given moment. Gucci's off on a flank, by the way. Do you see that? Yeah, I don't know. Not what with he's the going. team. Very far away. Although, uh, you have to just look at the Casty versus Sojourn. Kyo having more mobility, and now they'll have to assess maybe where Gucci went after all. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's not the problem, but Rojo, Cassidy versus Kyo, Sojourn. That'll be fun. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it'll be interesting because I think, like, a Sojourn will have more advantage on specific points, like maybe bomb flats when you have all of that, uh, one of those big pillars to play around. The power slides can help you get those angles a little bit more effectively. But then when you're playing on those flash points, like refinery or ducks, you're in so many more, in, so much more enclosed space that, uh, we'll see. I think the Cassidy just has a bit of a leg up there when it comes to those flash points, but. Yeah, Cassidy will maybe have an easier time against the Tracer. I mean, both both Sojourn and Cassidy have ways to deal with the Tracer, whether to just jump away? No, nope, for the best. I mean, Rojo was literally flicked and turned on to China. Like, Rojo does not care about Tracer flanks. Uh, and Kyo, well, he's had mixed reviews like, about Gucci in his... <laughs> in his experience but we'll see if everyone's okay uh tech wise before we get back into this but maybe we could I, i'm getting game five vibes with how dean Pero are composed in these fights i am too i really am i i, I think what's uh, so exciting about these two teams is they were already really close in terms of the overall standings that they came into the group stage with so hey i'm ex i'm always excited to to be wrong and get a map five if that's what <laughs> we're gonna be treated to and we'll see if that can kind of keep a pace chef got taken out really early and we saw maybe the flank from gucci ended up being really good but crocs also got isolated as the Arissa split off from the team means it's a little bit easier pickings and uh here we go yeah. Now, Gucci went off on the flank to just go get the point, actually. Is oh, okay, good. <laughs> ah, five head. Yeah. <laughs> that first point is really annoying because it's right in the middle of all the action. And there's nah, there's a tiny bit of cover, so that's all tracers or Orissa sometimes. depend. But it's really only one person. Even a Lucio could dance around there, so it's all about organizing who is contesting the point. Rockstars will be defending first. And the Impero are going to do this dance around this giant dome and see if the distance battle will favor them. And then eventually build up to an Ant Matrix, but so far Skyl is 4% away much farther ahead than EGS, and Rockstars are setting up to have a good angle on this and try to surprise them, and Crocs isolated itself Alone. from the team, and this is not good, the immortality buys time. Yeah, he has a Terra Surge. Wait a minute. Huh? Wait a minute. Crocs is based? Crocs? Wait, based and true? Crocs based? No glaze. They're actually so good, though. Uh, I, I'm also talking about the footwear, but yeah, hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> Crocs goes so low. Major credit to Chef and EGS to be able to keep him alive because, like, I swear Crocs was at, like, 10 HP and a dream. So the Vitality field came through and then all of that burst healing, getting those two big picks as well. I mean, the D'Impero were able to take back control at this point. But Rockstar's of 99% and the ults, but no Gucci. No Gucci? No Gucci. And no targets? Rojo very sad about this. 99% for Rockstars though. They only need one to take this point and win it. AOA with the sound barrier. And uh, I guess it doesn't matter when the Impero is just going to have superior poke. And then Crocs also helps them clutch in that last fight, which I'm still, my jaw is still on the floor that Crocs 
lived and killed two <laughs> when being by himself. But anyway, <laughs> uh, it's the clutch of uh, it's the clutch of DM Pharaoh. They know that they need to win this map in order to type the series. A trigger is set to a map number five of a shot. Gucci though, do they hear him? Do they scout him? Just do they know? Just they trying him? to know. Uh, China China's lacking the information. Gucci with the pulse kill. Oh, with the oh. Takes off AOA and the Impero are making the zero to a hundred comeback right now. And they got the sound bear advantage too. Five versus three. It's in the bag. They get it done. The Impero will win the first point. Oh my gosh, I, I think like China maybe like heard you or something giving all of that praise over to Gucci in the fourth map or third map and said Nah, I got this. I got this I, I think what's interesting too is just how the tracer has to play so differently with the Cassidy in the mix Because instead of trying to like set up on those flanks in order to finish off those picks that like the soldier is getting You're also having to pressure down the back line a little bit more. There's no Kiriko to worry about You're not gonna have to deal with those Suzu's. It's about forcing out the immortality field which is something that the Arisa and Cassidy can do and then going in to get the cleanup. Oh, Crocs, what are you up to? Terra Surge! Oh, Sky with the immortality! Crocs is real! The damage was already done! The Impero just believe in whatever shenanigans Crocs wants to go for. When it's not an int if all five of you are involved, it becomes a strategy! Yeah, uh, it's it's not stupid if it works, right? I think <laughs> I think is how that saying goes. <laughs> but you gotta play with a little bit of that aggression. That's how the Arisas get in there and make these fights competitive. You just walk past the enemy Arisa, go after the backline. You see those targets; they're really low. Kyo's putting in the work. Oh, but now it's TVNT's turn. No more fun for Crocs. And Skyle has been a target from the D'Impero's Diem side. And he's playing his life a lot better, trying to avoid getting speared and things like that. Speaking of spears, TV and T has gotten now back-to-back -back first picks, so Rockstars can use all the time they, they can get. I think this has a little bit more time. Uh, they, they, the map is still long. We, we still can flourish with the rest of the flashpoints on New Junk City. But the Imperial are being sneaky sneaky. I think with the mag grenade though, they know that the Imperial are approaching from that point. So like they're, they, they give up the sneakiness. And I say, let's go. Rockstars have four ults that are throughout this, but Amp Matrix first from EGS. Oh, uh, uh, oh, EGS! Immortality! It's gone! Oh! And so is EGS. But at least China traded with Skyle. Not a lot of healing left, but Gucci is hitting all of his shots. And China's coming back to keep Gucci in check, but takes an L, takes a sit, and Rockstar's close to taking the point. Gonna tie it up. I don't think that DM Pero can come back and touch. And in fact, Rockstars are gonna just move away from the point, set up for the next flashpoint, knowing that DM Pero is just not there. Right, so let's see where we're going next. Looks like we're going over to Refinery. I love that for them. I love yeah. that this is tied 1 1 2. And look who's first. Rockstars win the race, therefore they win the point. I don't, I don't write the rules. <laughs> You don't write the script. You just you just speak into existence. Uh, but yeah, with the with the high noon too, I think like training the dead eyes here could be really important. Rockstars has uh, a little bit less of an advantage in that regard because you can hit it and then keep the Impero away. But uh. TVNT says my point. It's out here and everything. Like, he fully charged that for what reason? <laughs> like, no one was there. Forced up the sound drive out of AOA. Rockstar's trying to take angles. Now Rojo's unprotected, unattended, and D'Impero are winning on every front. So, I might have cursed this point. I might have. Yeah. Which team gets there first and takes the point? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it's the team that's dead like, eyes. Whatever. No, it's, it's the dead eye. The dead eye is the difference. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it was funny how like TV and T stick the claim. Like the spear spin up top, the charge of the terror surge is like my flag is here. I am landed on the moon. I have claimed this for rock stars. <laughs> this is not a conspiracy theory, but uh, HES is dead, and Keo's gonna die too. TV and T is really hitting these spears. I know we don't get uh, insanely detailed stats, but his Spear accuracy must be crazy. That one got eight, so that's not his fault. But TVNT starting to dominate on that front line. 
both of these Arisas have really hit their marks when it's come to these Javelin tosses, and you have to, right? It's great to be able to stun uh, an ultimate. You can push somebody really far back. It means that they're a bit more isolated, especially if you have, like, the Cassidy and the Bap on the flank or the Tracer. So it feels really good to be able to know that you can be consistent with do those types of skill shots. Coming back into this, though, uh, Rockstars have built up a pretty considerable advantage when it comes down to being able to use this Ammatrix first, keep the Impera Bay, but EGS is going to have one to match that window. Oh! I'm surprised Rojo's not uh, rolled away. I thought the Deadeye would have outfit against the Amp, but it's, I think it was about who had immortality. And Rojo did not believe. Rockstars not believing in this fight either. Losing Rojo and Skyle so early. Great coronation out of the Impero. They can find Gucci. There won't be a good person to stagger here at the end. The Impero, see if they can take this. I don't think there's a contest that can really come through here. Uh, especially if you're able to maybe get a boop away. Rockstars are trying though. They're gonna have Lucio go in and touch, but it's so risky. Yeah, I thought that was shocked once Gucci died for, for the contest, but AI, good roll out. Uh, Rojo just in the middle between a, a horse and a hard place, and that's just not where he wants to be. The Imperil will now get the lead here on Flashpoint, and one point away from sending us to a game five. Even to use the Sarah Surge there, uh, it felt like such a lost fight after AI got so low, didn't get the sound barrier up in time, which would have been just a huge benefit to have for that fight. But at the very least, you Rockstars get to come back as a full team of five to beat potentially D'Ampero to the punch. Junkyard's up next. Uh, Tracer Pulse Bombs, you know the drill. See if the Impero know the drill, just follow the recipe from last point, never mind. They've strayed away from it, putting their own flavor on. Not having a Baptiste is not gonna taste good. The Impero will have to back away, not having the heals for this. I'm just gonna shoot at them at a distance, just kind of bark at them ac from across the fence, but Rockstars will be getting the point first. What kind of dogs do you think? You know how they say you've got that dog in them, but like, yeah. what kind of dog? Uh, I think pit bulls with uh, like rock stars are giving pit bulls. <laughs> like, <laughs> pit bull I'm trying vibes. to perpetuate the the stereotype of <laughs> pit bulls being aggressive. Adopt your local pit bulls, y'all, and rock stars still at this point pretty adopted right now. But the Impero are flipping towards it. Uh, it doesn't matter because as the Impero go for the point, rock stars go for the kills. So so far so good for them. Yeah, now nah, see, it doesn't matter the type of dog. They just got the dog in them. That's the <laughs> main storyline we're going with. And they're really close to being able to tie up this map. Feels good. Rockstars still have this amplification matrix to work with, so if they want to buy themselves even more time, just pop the window as soon as the Impero peek their heads out. Oh, the High Noon, too! Just keep them from uh, touching the points at all! Rojo is different for holding that, believing in the immortality that there's a Rissa in his space that usually equals death. And Rockstars back each other up, and they'll be sending us to our final point of New Junk City. Will we be completing the series? Will Rockstars be going to the main event, or will the Imperial force a deciding map? Well, the call comes down to Ducks as the final flashpoint. The Impero, they have a ton of things to work with to try to get this first. Amplification Matrix right in their face, but you've got to isolate T of ENT. Oh my god, T of ENT just ran into the Amp Matrix of Terra Surge to zone it off. And it was some pretty equal trades. The Impero is still very uncomfortable. I mean, look at EGS. He, he wins that dance against T of ENT with the assist of Keo. The Impero will be able to cap first, which is great for them. And they'll have ults to defend it too. It's so aggressive. It's like, I see window, I just smash through window, and I come at the other side, and I still die anyway. But it was a good attempt. The Impero, are, they, they thought about taking a brief switch over to the Moira, but I think the Baptiste, like, just stick to it. You can still come back with those moon boots and provide that value with the immortality field if you need it. And the Impero, they're still in the driver's seat for this. Okay, dead eye. Get away from me. Oh, good javelin spin. TVNT will live on through that. Oh, oh, Keo. What got low and Rockstars couldn't capitalize on that yet. And with EGS being first blooded a few times in this fight, this sets the Impero back. 
And maybe China can just go and contest the point just to extend the lead that you have and get it to ideally more than 70%. That would be good. And Crocs tried to do that. Here's China extending this. 75 plus means the Imperial are within one fight opportunity. But keep in mind, Rockstars can do that 0 to 100 comeback. And we even saw how possible that is on the first point of New Junk City. But Rockstars will have a lot of work ahead of them. Look at that, D Imperio, they're already happy with being able to get that 94% because one more team fight win, this map is theirs. We extend this series to a map number five, but Rockstars, they need to win two more fights here in order to finish out the job. First up is going to be the Deadeye, TVNT, though playing with no fear. With this Terror Surge ready, you can force out the Immortality Field from EGS to make sure that that Terror Surge is going to be even more impactful, but you want to potentially play it just these close quarters. D Imperio, no that this is ready though so they can't give tvnt too much space tvnt needs to hold that space for this dead eye rojo is 100 oh he got pulled by the terror search from crocs and that could have been awful the impero with pulse and sound barrier and more completely take over this fight rock stars they could be reverse sweeped they started off 2-0 in the series and the impero just took flashpoint they send us to game five it was all coming up Rockstars at the very beginning of this series, but after a very hard-fought Coliseo and a very scrappy New Junk City, I can't believe we are at this point where we have a map five on our hands. I'm uh, pumped. I'm pumped. Uh, I could see that Rockstars don't look as comfortable as they did on previous maps. And we even heard maybe some, not mild arguing, but just like, we need to focus. And when that has to come out, there's distractions. And I could tell that Rockstars need to get Rojo and TVNT on the same wavelength of if I go for Deadeye, Arisa needs to be in a healthy position, has to have the right cooldowns to protect you, because that's the person who is, because Deadeye puts you in the most vulnerable state in the game. So TVNT needs to have that dance between him and Rojo on how they hold space and when they give it up. And I was complimenting TVNT's uh, spear accuracy, but the Imperial were just a better team unit. And it did come down to the final point, though, so I'm not going to discount the work that Rockstars did, but the Impero are, are on a comeback. I think you called out something really important, is that TVNT was playing so aggressive that it was something that the Impero were really taking advantage of. There were a lot of times that TVNT got split up from the team, and the Impero are just not a team that's going to let that go unpunished. If you aren't being able to follow up the aggression that your Arisa is putting down, then it does make it way more easy for like the Arisa to sort of body block the healing or just like the rest of the team from being able to help you out. So yeah, I think DM Pero, they've gotten really wise to the antics that Rockstars want to oh, get wow. up to. And I don't know if it's going to maintain in this fifth map. We just heard from our stats team, Rojo is doubling the deaths of Keo. And I felt like Rojo was coming into this with such an edge against Keo in terms of experience and mechanics that I've seen in the past. But Rojo started off fire hot and that's starting to diminish and Keo is picking things up. They have pretty similar damage. Keo is, uh, has the edge by about 1k. China and Gucci. Gucci is winning by about 200 damage so very very close egs versus skyle is a surprising diff egs is out damaging on baptiste by 2k um the deaths so egs and skyle have been in painful positions due to their aggressive erisas but this is where d and Pero are improving as the series goes on and despite playing from an o2 position they don't they're not looking like they're playing from an o2 position no, they, it's all about that team synergy, right? And oh, here's where you can really see those differences outlined and sort of just like the KD between Keo and Rojo on the Cassidy. Uh, and when it comes down to like looking forward to what we have ahead of us for our map five, we need to continue to see just this incredible play coming through from the Cassidy for Shambali Monastery. But this one's tough, right? Shabali Monastery is very defensively favored. Uh, so I I think it's going to be Diampero that's up to defense first, if I'm not mistaken. And so they have an opportunity here to, to shut out Rockstars if they can just get the full hold. I'm imagining we go to Ramatras, but Arisa's playable, Sigma's playable. And if we show so much. 
if we shift to different tanks, uh, the, the Robotra helps when you're an aggressive Orisa. Sigma, you want to measure that a bit better. And just noticing that Roho is doubling Kyo's deaths is, yes, it's on Roho, but it's also on TVNT. And just to reiterate that TVNT and Roho really have to communicate well with each other on what space they're taking, holding, and giving up. Because if there's a desync even for one second, uh, using a Cassidy's tumble cooldown or going for a dead eye or using javelin spin and needing to go for a push, um, any desyncs can cause rock stars to fall in fights. And this is their last chance to kind of clean that up. Yeah, it is. It really does come down to this. So Diampero coming out of the gates with this Arissa composition on the defense. So uh, Crocs and Keo, they get a chance to set up on the high ground. Maybe play a little bit with uh, Keo and ETS, uh, being able to play kind of around those walls. What I'm really interested about is that this team doesn't want to take this close hold, because usually we will see even like a, a Romatra composition come up and try to get the close hold here. But if you're playing the Orisa, you want to win the Pope War. Uh, so they are going to play on this high ground instead, but that does mean they only have two opportunities to contest rather than three if you have that close hold. You see China ready on the right side. Can go through that building, go on the flank. For now, Gucci's trying to get progress, and Gucci's uh, overstayed his welcome. Rockstars didn't get around to the hallway to uh, be a distraction in time, and Gucci may have costed that in that moment. But it's a great retaliation from Team Pero to not only take care of the tracer pushing the uh, the cart, but to push into the rest of Rockstars in that moment. They have to give it up a little bit, but like, uh, there's still no progress from Rockstars. They have to wait. I feel like, oh, Rojo's playing so aggressive. Just sitting there trying to get the shots with the Cassidy. I feel like it's so tough if you don't have your tank in front of you, but Rojo really is sort of leading the charge to uh, try to get the poke damage. Doing the best that they can. Rockstars start to sit up on the high ground and DVNT gets shot in the back. So Isolated. Can't happen. Yeah, TVT is being aggressive, and Rockstars thought they had a handle on this, but you can't see what's behind TVT because he's in a room, and Rockstars couldn't help that. So half the time bank almost gone, and uh, uh, not really much progress. Yeah, see, like, that's a great example of TVNT just going in too aggressively without the rest of the team for backup, and then Diampero completely shutting him off, isolating him, and taking him out. Rockstars are going to take the same approach up these stairs, and there's even a little bit of a high ground advantage for Diampero as they start to shoot down the barrel of this ant matrix. Oh Wait, Rock Jeez. Crocs! Oh my god, the Crocstar! That's what I'm going to call it! <laughs> I mean, you should rename the team at that point. He, pull, he pulls a terror search to pull Rockstars out of that cover. Huge ult. Pulls him out of the cover and then um, alleviates the uh, opportunity to actually use that amplification matrix that Skyle had placed down as well. Now it comes down to these sound barriers. We're still taking these fights relatively quickly, so Rockstars has a lot of time left to work with. But the Deadeye is just a zoning ultimate at this point. He even gets speared out of it before he can hit those shots. And finally, maybe a bit of progress on the board here for Rockstars. Uh, China and friends finding themselves behind the bot or the cart. And Rockstars have a good angle to play. And Rockstars will also have a better access to this high ground. And you see China's trying to contest that as best as they can, not wanting to give Rojo a power position. But Rojo is playing next to TVNT, who's trying to be out aggro with the Terra Surge. TVNT doesn't want to go for it, but now the Crocs is low! It's hit by the Pulse, Immortality's out by EGS, forces out the Bear of, EG, uh, of Shep 2, and Diampero, through all of those resources, couldn't sustain through this fight. It is only four versus three for Rockstars, but with Gucci on fire and everyone feeling good, Rockstars will still get progress. They get progress, but they're running out of time. It's gonna be sub one minute, and Diampero still have a chance to come back in and recontest this before they get that first checkpoint. And it's gonna be uh, Crocs just kind of taking this high ground and take a look at the drop that they're able to get to. Keo can use this dead eye, and in this tiny room, well, he's gotta get in the fight. Uh, if you use dead eye, it's like the come look at me ult, and oh my god, <laughs> just look what happened. He said, everybody look at me, and Rose shot him in the face. So, Rockstar's meters away. Once you deal with Crocs, this should be over. But the Ant Matrix from EGS made that a problem, and now that that's over, Crocs is not getting as much help. The Terra Surge was cute, but Rockstar's capping the point is cuter. With eight seconds left, less cute. 
but still the job done the job done and that was the hardest part getting past that very first chokehold on this first point and now they've bought themselves some extra time while it's not a lot who cares right because this is still a very defensively favored map you should be able to get the second checkpoint but it's about being able to make your way into the third if you can and on also having to traverse this wide open space it's not easy Okay, Crocs, but it's just running into the back line solo. Gucci will push the car, and that means China gets free reign to throw pulse bombs. And Rockstar is now, Gucci is last in the death note list. Uh, less than two minutes left. And Rockstar's probably should have just converged as five there. Um, and then go for the cart push. Um, maybe? <laughs> Sorry, I posed that as a question, but it was like a... I, d I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how do I actually answer this without feeling like I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, being rude. Anyway, uh, I, here we go again. Rockstar's uh, making another approach with a minute and a half left. You have the pulse spot, maybe terror search combo to try to attack this wide open space. Okay, Rockstar's uh, the face down the barrel of an amp matrix. Skyle tries to place his zone and the terror surge from TVNT to zone them off. The EGS uh, amp matrix was a solid, solid play. Sound bear from AOA to help Rockstar's break out of this nest and TVNT couldn't get to safety in time because Chef countered with an even better barrier. So D and Pero have just had an answer to everything. Yeah, these beats have been really good. And even looking at that defense, I think if they had used their ultimates in a different time on that first point, maybe we wouldn't even be here. Uh, but Rockstars are still doing great work with the extra life that they were given, but now this is where the going gets really tough. Because Rockstars heading into this next fight, they're really worried about getting something online. Uh, just even withstanding the Terra Surge and the Pulse Bomb that Diampero are sitting on. No sound barrier for that means that they just have to sound sustain with just raw healing. And it might be very difficult depending on if they can actually get this immortality field out. Uh, with the raw healing, how are you going to do this? Terra Surge Crocs hiding, waiting for a surprise opportunity to ja javelin spin in if needed. But no, he just needs to be a consistent anchor. You gotta measure that aggression. Rockstars don't have Robo! Keo! There's just one cowboy left in this town and an immortality from EGS to save Keo in that moment. What a play and what a team. The Imperil will close out this offense for Rockstars halfway to point B. And up next, it'll be their turn to see who moves on to the main event. It's still not over yet. Rockstars up on the defense have a chance to be able to get that full hold that Diampera were looking for in that first point. But it all starts with that first win. If they're able to get the like the first win on that like first corner, then you're feeling really good about their chances to actually do that. But this is coming down to the wire, Jen. I still don't know who's gonna take this. Oh, Kyo versus Rojo, China versus Gucci. And Kyo stepped up massively on Coliseo and did so in the final moments of that fight. Whoever took that fight was going to get point B or a defensive stop. And Kyo really showed up. And Rockstars need to show up or show themselves out because they did a very good job at the start of this series. Very, very commanding on Eichenwald. But where is that fire from Rockstars? kind of needing to face their mistakes head on in the, the heat of the moment, in the heat of the series, and maybe starting to crumble under pressure. Well, here's one way that they can prove themselves. It's going to be a close hold with this Rumatra composition on their defense hold. So it's gonna, it's either gonna work or it's not. This is very all in the basket here for Rockstars to try to get this very first defensive hold. Maybe this will allow TVNT to try to play a little bit better with the team, but can Diampero break it? It all comes down to this first fight. So let's hear what Diampero are gonna do about it. All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I'd go, I'd go. You can go. Simon, no? No. Sorry, I'm going to I'm going to say. Yes, 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 that's good. Shoot, 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 shoot. I'm going. Uh, oh, back, back, shoot. Uh, we can take uh, first shot. Nice. Just show, just show, just show. Nice. I'm on the buff, I'm on the buff. Exit, exit, exit. I'm on the buff, I'm on the buff. Chill, buff, chill, buff. I'm on the buff. I'm on the buff. I'm on the buff. Nice. Nice, they're panicking, guys. We got in the brain. Three cards, three cards. Three cards, three cards, yeah. Oh, the mind games. Do you paranoid? Oh, the reverse. 
first wave, Necro. Oh my god. It could I happen. Mean, it really could happen. Look at that. TVNT giving the Ramatra all ready to switch over to the Orisa. And that's what I mean about this all eggs in one basket. You're giving up that progress from the Ramatra having to switch over to another tank, rechange up how you're going to approach this match. And D'Ampero, they're already got the upper hand in terms of building up to these ultimates. You started to see the weaknesses out of Rockstar is when Rojo had double of Kyo's death. That's so uncharacteristic for Rojo to be put in those positions. And he's scaling back, trying to play safe and away from D'Impero, away from any spears from Crocs. Now the M Matrix can hose down Rockstar's forces them into cover. Immortality from Sky, but he Sky, but he had to sacrifice himself to place that down to save his team. And Rockstars don't have a great healer without him. So Rockstars are gonna try and die as a team, but with the progress the Impero made, I don't know if there's a recontest. There's not. You can't. Not without the Lucio there to speed through the team, and you're not going to be able to get there as a full team of five. So Rockstars, they have two more chances of being able to stop this cart, and they're standing up against a four-and-a-half-minute time bank and four oh. ultimates out of D'Ampero, and Rojo's down again. Oh, Rojo, like... There's nothing he can do. He's just trying to play the game and he's getting spear and shot at. D'Impero at least forced the retreat out of Rockstars. One final fight to determine who is going to the main event and D'Impero have all the time in the world. That's the huge issue with that being such an early pick. Rockstars, they don't have a choice here except to try to take this in D'Impero territory. Oh, a dead eye for Rojo! He got speared by Crocs! Where is the protection from TVNT? Well, there's a the protection of the sound bear for the moment as Gucci heads for the flank, forced out the immortality out of EGS. He's in trouble, he's been stunned, and there is the finish that Rockstar's needed. Main healer from D'Impero gone, but Crocs and friends are still doing significant damage to Rockstar's, but all they have to do is play back, and Rojo gets slapped around by Lucio of all things. But D'Impero have already disengaged. They know they have plenty of time. They could take this one step at a time. And now you can see where Rojo is having all these problems because Crocs and Chef are just saying oh, we're gonna go after you so go help your Cassidy or just leave him alone and come deal with us in the front line. D'Ampero they have Rockstar's number right now and they are right at the cusp of being able to get this golden box of victory. Oh wait Sky's in trouble! Crocs is gonna kill him! You can't let that happen! TVNT fumbled and let his backline die! There is no one left to heal this team! Rockstars! Oh, the glimmer was there, but it dies out at the end! D'Impero will have the reverse sweep once the pause is undone. Somebody left. Rockstars are tilted. The series is done. D'Impero, what a comeback! That's a huge comeback. Rockstars being able to get those first two map wins, it felt so winnable. Listening to their comms on Eichenfault, you could hear it. They were locked in, they were ready, they had the communication and the synergy down, but then something happened on Coliseo to change the tides. And you heard it from Dean Perro at the very beginning of their attack push, were in their brains. They have tilted them <laughs> and they took full advantage of that. Not even waiting for the winner's screen is not being able to, not able to face defeat like that is tough because it hurts so much more when the defeat comes from within. I, something happened yeah. within Rockstars that made it so they knew they couldn't play at their peak anymore. Something was preventing that, and, and so we, what a series this ended up to be. <laughs> Honestly, though, I was a little, I don't want to say disappointed, but like, you know, a little worried that we're going to look down the barrel of a 3-0 here. However, the Impera brought it back, and it was honestly, I think, the biggest joy to watch those uh, the ebb and flow of the individual matchups. Rojo versus Kyo, Gucci versus China, TV and T versus Crocs. Throughout the series, you saw the ebb and flow of those kind of individual matchups. You know, you, you mentioned uh, Rojo obviously heading into this series. We had our eyes set on uh, this uh, Star Cassidy player. But then we saw Kyo stepping it up as the series uh, went along, and it just kept on happening in each and every single individual position of both of those teams. 
Well, you can Rojo see what was happening, much, right? Yeah. Like, that's why. Rojo is carrying, and so TVNT, uh, like, Oi, they, they had kind of left him on his own, and so Crocs and Chef were like, okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna go after it. You know, whether it's gonna be isolating TVNT or isolating Rojo, they knew that, like, that was gonna be a win condition for them. Get the main tank out of the way or get a main source of damage. What, what an upset. Another upset. And we had already hinted that when Ex Oblivione didn't make the main event yesterday, Rockstars got top eight last time. Yes, under the banner of Rock Esports and with uh, Checkmate and whatnot, Izayaki. But this roster still was very capable of making the main event. But mental is the thing that will crush your team. And it's not just about mechanics. It's not just about the work you do behind the scenes. But also on a personal level, how do you deal with losses? And Colosseo was so heartbreaking. Uh, not only for Rojo and how much work he did in that regard, but just for how how they kind of choked at the end. And not being able to punish Crocs in this moment, and that fight got turned around. There were so many frustrating moments for rock stars that they couldn't get over, apparently. I, it's like, you're, you were right there. I, I can totally see where that tilt could have happened. It's like, you were right there. You could have won. Coliseo, it felt like the wind got taken from them almost with that Diampero clutch because they had the lead for most of Coliseo as well. Just being like letting it slip through your fingers like that. I wonder what the comms might have looked like in that yeah. moment. To it was that heroic. Kind of lost so. that. I mean, like rock, like on Coliseo especially, they did have the the spawn advantage even, right? So it's gonna feel very devastating to lose that just based on heroics from individuals. And speaking of individuals, EGS getting themselves the player of the match in this one. Yeah, in the damage department, he was doing really well, just consistent overall. He became more of a target of focus, but really in that last fight was whose backline was going to fall first with these aggressive Arissas. Uh, me and Necker were talking time and time again. These Arissas were going to cost the fights, either, I guess, make or break. I'll give them some credit that at some moments when you had a donk walk Arissa just go in, they would kill backlines and make work done. But for TVNT to leave his backline in the last fight to get Skyle killed, it was unforgivable that that really costed that game five, but that's where EGS was not uh, was able to protect themselves better against uh, aggressive Arissas on the other side. And now I back to support too. I think like when you see like the backup there uh, coming in for the aggressive plays from Crocs, it just makes it look that much better to actually go for those big aggressive plays. And I didn't think the TVNT was getting enough backup in order to try to do the same. I'd actually love to listen into the winning comms here to hear how uh, the Impero got it done in the very end. I got behind, 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 behind. I'm dead! Behind, I'm low. Oh, it's always, 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 Oh, let's <laughs> effing go, guys. Let's go. Let's effing go, indeed. Dean and get the dub, and Crux is out joining us for a winner's interview. First, of course, congratulations to you in the squad. You officially qualified for the main event. Now, heading into this match, we talked about this being a rematch. You already faced off against each other in the Swiss stage. Uh, that was also a 2-0, but it was a very close match. Once again, a very close match. Why do you think they always managed to take you all the way? And also, what were the cons like after you went down 0-2 first things? Oh, well, don't think we can hear Crocs. Don't think I'm kind of... I'm really good at lip reading, but I will not. Oh, attend. you muted yourself, silly. <laughs> <laughs> at least he looks happy. He looks very happy. <laughs> he heard <laughs> the cops too, how excited they were. Right. You know, we don't hear you quite yet. One, two, one, two. Oh, oh. is it good now? Yay! Yay! Oh, sorry. Have we tried uh. plugging it in and out again? <laughs> it always works. Yeah. You were just so excited. Exactly. You like pulled the cord or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, then walk us through the excitement. Like, what was going on through the series? It was, again, such a close one. Why was it so close, and how did you guys edge it out in the end? 
I guess it was so clear just for the content. We wanted just to reverse sweep to have fun, you know? Love that. Uh, I, I had it. fun. <laughs> uh. No, I think joke aside, joke aside, like they play really good and like uh, we play into their game, like the two first match, the two first maps, sorry. And after I just say like, fuck it guys, Colosseo is my map. I just do whatever I want and uh, we win the game. And I did it and like, uh, yeah. that was actually close to lose because I still get fucked a bit, but after I flank with Orisa and like, this is how I play the game, it's win. You won the last fight running into Skyle like that when TVNT left him, so you, you were a huge part of that success and apparently getting to do what you want. But we heard in the comms check, we got to do some listenings during uh, Shambhali, and I remember hearing your team say, they're tilted, they're tilted. What was the moment that told your team that Rockstars were off their game? I think that's me that said that. I say they tilted because they test stuff, uh, because through the map, through the game, they were just playing the same comp, like uh, Bap and uh, and Cassidy, when usually you play Kiriko Sojourn. And I was just like, oh, they're trying stuff, they tilted, we do straight line, close to full hold, like easy, go next. <laughs> Uh, there you go. I, I mean, like, it, it kind of looked like you guys were about to get the full hold on Shambali anyway, and then you're able to still draw that line. But how excited are you, Crocs, to get a chance to go to the main event? And what do you think, like, your chances are against the rest of the teams that are already there waiting for you? Uh, I'm actually really happy because it's been a long time I didn't play in Contenders, even though now it's different. But, like, it's back in 2020 or 2021, if I remember well. So I take a long break and now I'm back from Overwatch uh, Stage 1 and Stage 2 and I make Top 8 and uh, I'm ready to face uh, SSJ if we play them. Maybe they lose first, so I don't know. I don't know who we're gonna play, but I'm happy. <laughs> it's only good people, well, so I'm down to try yeah. again. Well, we're very excited to see you in the main event and uh, Sarperly Popette, if we're gonna see more matches like this, I am <laughs> in for it. Crocs, thank you so much for joining us for a quick chat. Best of luck in the main event and we hope to hear again from you very soon. Thank you and vive la baguette, sacre bleu. <laughs> Woo, merci beaucoup! <laughs> Peak Frenching right there, um, because why not? Uh, I love that, I uh, love the confidence. And I mean, did we say it? Did we say it on broadcast? Did we, three say something. They, did we say that they rage quit at the end? They we, totally rage quit they, at the end. They rage yeah. quit at the end. That's, that was, that Are we was supposed a rage to quit. mention that? Because I feel like I need to mention it. I, what, what else do you call it, right? Like, I, the fight is over, but you left the server, so... But, but our stats, it's fine though, because this is another insane upset to me. No EXO, no Rockstars. Like, this is opening up the True. throne for so many new teams to come up. And you heard in the comms, like, how much this meant to Dean Pero. So, Rage quit aside, uh, I'm raging in happiness, if that even makes sense. Same. <laughs> it does make sense. You're and just I'm right so there happy. with you. <laughs> and I love for Crocs. I love for Crocs. I didn't interview as well. You know, uh, Crocs took a break from Overwatch, now back in the fray uh, alongside a lot of other newcomers and also you know old and trusted ogs so it's great to see them back in the mix let's see what they can get done in the main event now our last match for the emea groups is featuring fan favorites oh yeah and the well-known ataraxia squad you don't want to miss it all of that is going to go down after this quick break oh yeah
Heroes, this is your game, your team, and now this is your league. This is your community's future, and this is your prize pool. Win your matches, battle for your progression. Go far, go further, even as far as the Esports World Cup. It is your time to shine. Build your team, register your team, go the distance with your team. Face it, Lee. Powered by you. That's right, powered by you. So we want you to sign up right now. Uh, the signups are open until April 25th. So you still have, I'm like checking my imaginary four clock. Days. Checking was like, well, four days. Four days. Let's go. More hype, more competition, more Overwatch. Always a good thing. Also, lots of money on the line. 170k. And of course, uh, it is the road that leads to EWC with 60 million dollars. Yeah, it's on my sphere. I live in Vegas and they, they got it on the big sphere. And Overwatch they mentioned actually? on big... Yeah, it's like Overwatch on the Wait, big this sphere. Is cool. So I'm going to go take a sphere. selfie with the big planet that's in my town. What's that thing? Is that just a billboard? Isn't it like an eyeball? Is there anything inside? Actually, like what, what's happening? Uh, they have shows on the inside. inside. Yeah. Oh, they do? Yeah. It's like a fun it's coconut. Like... It's a fun <laughs> coconut. <laughs> I'm <don't know. laughs> Uh, uh, moving on, <laughs> moving on to other things. <laughs> Let's talk about the last EMEA match, shall we, ladies? Uh, this yeah. is a good one. It has to be a good one. Make it a good one. I'm speaking it into existence. I'm manifesting a good match between Ataraxia and oh yeah. Starting with Ataraxia. I mean, this is a squad sporting a lot of OGs, lots of name value on their side, with a bunch of former OWL players, of course, as well. Uh, very well known contenders, uh, star power. They have to be considered one of the favorites. You would think, uh, with the yeah. name value that you have, and with a s there's a lot of tracer players here too. Like Fi and Sana can trade on that role. I forgot what Shax is into these days. I know he has tracer somewhere in his hero pool, but it, it is such a diverse hero pool. When you have four DPS on your team, how many more do you need? They can cover all the heroes and all the strats if they want. They really can, and we've seen them go through a pretty big transition of different rosters um, and just different styles. So like you had the Winston that you saw, you also have the Orisa, but how is that going to stack up against the team of, oh yeah, they've got the Wrecking Ball the one trick, they've got the Junkrat one trick, and of course they have their all-star lineup of Ken, Cool Boy, and Saipei that are going to help to make sure that they are all geared up and ready to go. And this was a team that ended up giving so much trouble over to their opponents that we saw counter picking from Amelia on the Roadhog, we got the Far or the Echo from Fake Jake, and still not able to get the job done. So Meta Boys eliminated yesterday. But like I think Ataraxia is really set up for success in this match when you take a look at like Fi on the Cassidy, Shax on the Tracer. I feel like they just have the pieces. They just gotta put it together. Also Bear with me. Uh, DPS player Ken used to be on Ataraxia. Grudge match? Nani? Ooh. Ooh. Nani? Storylines? <laughs> hey? So I'm they know <laughs> what's being cooked. That's right. I mean, I know Ken, Ken was with them up until like two months ago or something. I mean, it might have absolutely no bearing, but I'm just gonna, just gonna beat the dead horse. Why not? <laughs> it's it's dead. Distance. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, all for the sake of broadcast, broadcast stories. That's what we're here for. Now, I am very, very excited for this match. Let's see viewer predictions. All right. Oh, yeah. Not being called a favorite. Surprising. Little upsetting. But that's okay because the players are ready. Sorry. Ladies, walk us through the map set. Oh, we're ready. But is that Araxia ready? Go. They might have chosen this map, but this is one of the most friendly ball maps minus university but still i make maybe ken knows about or ataraxia know what oh yeah or cooking but you don't get to scrim it against this kind of comp often do you, does it matter if it's a ball friendly map i i think chasm's yeah, sure. gonna play it anyway actually no matter where we are but that's a Thing that makes this matchup so interesting is that Ataraxia have a really good idea about what Aya yeah are going to play. If Kazim and Kaya are both in the roster, you can expect to see the Wrecking Ball and the Junkrat. If you see anything else, then 
maybe they're cooking. Maybe they're cooking. We did see Kaya play a little bit of Sombra yesterday, if only to be able to have a bit more counterplay to the counterpicks that were happening. But Ataraxia, they feel like a team that counterpicks just aren't their thing. They're going to stick with something that's really solid, very team oriented, like the Orisa, and, and try to manage this matchup that way. Oh, so uh, unfortunately for all, yeah, they go to the least favorable <laughs> ball round of university. But that's fine because this is a more enclosed area for Kaya to be a junk rat menace. So I would imagine they'd want to play off with a mini because it's such an enclosed area for Kaya, and Ataraxia would ideally want to avoid that. But also, this pseudo high ground is best for your Cassidy's to be in. So all, yeah, are going to claim that for Ken. Oh, look at this. It's going to be the, the Cassidy, yeah, on the on the high ground, but it kind of immediately uh, bullied away here. So, uh, oh yeah, going to be able to take that control as Ken gets that angle. Dunraxia, though, they got to be careful. They don't want to get knocked off the edge by a wrecking ball going bowling. Yeah, and that's probably why uh, Chasm took the high ground, so you could swing around that corner and get a pile drive going, and Ataraxia would ideally want to counter-rotate inside of Mini, and then that's where Ken and Kaya will be waiting for you, so maybe there isn't really a safe position for Ataraxia to take. And Tracers have been having a hard time, all of them, against Aw oh, Yeah, because flanking against a Cassidy Nade or a Junkrat Trap is... Oh, there's all types of threats to worry about on Aya's side, so Ataraxia might have the point, and Chasm still has uh, some ground left. <laughs> yeah, so he's still got his life. He gets to get out of that one before he is dropped off the map. But Ataraxia taking control first. They've already worked up to 32% and counting, and a full slate of ultimates coming up for them. Uh, it's going to be this terror surge, too, that I think is a lot of potency dealing with so many mobile targets. But they gotta get themselves into a position for that first, and oh, poor Eric is just gonna get flopped around. That spear could have been deadly from Eric Heck onto Kaya. Who's still vulnerable, but he's got all the attention of someone like Saipei and Matrix for all yeah, and I don't even know where Chasm died. Just off into the distance doing ball things. Riptire in front of a uh, Cassidy that obviously he did not see coming. And Sun is still hasn't fully won that. Deadeye from Ken didn't get to pull it before the. Whoever, I think that was Shax that dipped into the hole there, so... Uh, this has sure been a scrap fest of a lot of 1v1s happening at different areas of the map. Sure is the nature of a ball composition like Aw oh Yeah is playing. 75% for Ataraxia before the flip comes through. Casma is getting punished a lot more than what we saw yesterday. Well, the magnates from Sauna are just hitting a target, hindering that wrecking ball, making him more susceptible to all of those uh, full clips coming through from the Cassidy. And wow, we did see Aya oh, yeah, take back control of the point from underneath Ataraxia's noses. Ataraxia got it right back. They could close it out here. Sauna, oh, great TP by MCD to help Sauna against Chasm. And that was what the big question we had yesterday was. How do you punish Chasm? Everyone has to focus them down, and there needs to be some chase down potential, and that's why you play a Tracer like Shax, and Chasm hasn't been able to get away with what he did yesterday. Oh yeah, we'll have the point. And after Adaraxa used a good amount of ults, uh, oh yeah, are happy with this to try and close the gap in the score. Rip tire at a distance, available for Kaya. He will throw this out. Suzu for MCD. We wonder if it's gonna come in on time, if he has it at all. Really just forcing Ataraxia too high. There's the rip tire and a good reaction out of Ataraxia. I mean, you just eat it, I guess. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, be able to knock that rip tire back. And uh, while Kaya is able to take out Shax, they're kind of going hunting when Kaya is so vulnerable. Ataraxia, they still got some game in this with this Kitsune Rush. Kitsune Rush trying to help Eric kick there in that tiny hallway, but against uh, a junk ride and whatever else that was in there. Uh, I don't think Eric Heck appreciates that. So 89% for Ataraxia. I'll be able to break through this without their Orisa being back. Hassan is heading for the high ground with a dead eye. As long as he's careful that Ken doesn't shoot him out of his dead eye or he doesn't get Javelin. Actually, that's something he has to worry about because Chasm is ball. Yeah, but that bought so much time for Ataraxia to come in and steal the point back. So last fight territory and it's on all yeah to have to get back in and contest this. Yeah, good zoning out of Ataraxia. Now, oh yeah, at full force, hoping to punch, uh, punish and also punch Arakek, which works out for oh yeah's explosive power. But Ataraxia getting set up on the flank. Shax and Sauna work so well together, and oh yeah, 
I'm now missing two crucial members in this. Now swapping the Lucio and Tracer to get back quick because this is the last fight. Oh yeah, I have the rip tire. They've got their Wrecking Ball Nines. So many explosions waiting to happen. Oh, just dancing around this Arisa puts, or sorry, around the uh, Diva this time. Eric Keck swapping to that. Sound beer from Dala to help out the team. But oh yes, DPS is just on fire and Shax is out of the picture at a crucial moment. And Adoraxia can't buy time for Shax to come back into the picture. So oh yeah, we're gonna take this back over and we'll be winning the first round of university also on a less ball friendly map so that's huge for them that's really big because now you've got two uh, very very friendly wrecking ball maps ahead of you based on what we go next and uh Ataraxia, it felt like they were off to such a good start to deal with this composition they were playing super reactively to the pathing that a ball could take being able to strafe away from all of those grenades but Oh my wow. god, that's insane! The skill shot to hit the Lucio when they're mid-air? And oh, then and the, the concussion combo. blast for two. Wow. That's fun. That's why Kai is one of the best Junkrats. Yeah, and 99% of the time you should be able to dive onto a Junkrat and like make him uncomfortable. It's it's inconsistent escapability to mod, like concuss mine yourself away. And as soon as you get close to Kaya, you're just making it easier for him to land the nades. And even at medium range, he does a good job. So a complete comp swap up from Ataraxia to go for a Winston on a combo. Watch out for those Nana Blues. Probably gonna have Eric Hex's name on it. Unless Sana has the overclock, but oh uh, yeah. I'll have to just rely on Chasm to roll into this high ground, get the pile drive onto someone like Sauna, and hope that Ken can deliver the final blow. And also a sleep from the Ana to stop Chasm. There's a lot of things he has to worry about, including escaping, which Chasm barely does. But now that Chasm's out of the picture, Ataraxia get control of the point, and Chasm's still not that healthy coming back into this fight. Yeah, a lot of old charge for his team, I guess. And they're not even hard diffing MCD and Dala quite yet. So, oh yeah, been shut down on multiple of these openings. Immortality being used to help Kaya hold this corner. Now that the Winston bubble is gone, and oh yeah, I can feel more comfortable moving up. And uh, Chasm swings up and gets flailed and whip shot by Dala, so Chasm shut down, and meanwhile Shax is on the flank, and ah uh, yeah, can't be safe, just constantly poking. Chasm finally makes his way into the back line, and 1v2's Dala in MCD, so ah uh, yeah, can work with this. Adoraxia can still work with this too, though. Even though their healers are down, you still have pretty self-survival uh, tank, as well as Shaxx just having the recall. They have to give it up now because they've lost too many members, but look at how long it took for Aya oh, yeah, to get into a position to actually take down Dala and MCD. It took some really good focus fire from Kaya and the finish from Chasm to be able to remove that duo, all the while Adoraxia walk away with 50%. But this is where it gets a little bit tougher for Ataraxia. They have to dive in. They have the Nano to help enable this Winston. But you've got the Wrecking Ball Mines and Kitsune Rush you're walking into. Oh, I got Ken so low and oh yeah, just nading Dala at a distance. MCD's 1 HP. Saipei must have teleported in with Chasm to help him not only well, not die, but to add damage to that equation good pulse by shacks i don't think this really matters it's 1v4 for eric Keck right now and and the primal rage is cute but oh uh, yeah they're just better they're finding ways to crack the egg of dollar and mcd that's almost a double kill too Shax almost got that we've seen a lot of uh, uh tracer attaches actually slide into a teammate but uh not to be this time Really nice save there as well as Chasm is able to get the overhealth for himself and the team with that Wrecking Ball change. But Ataraxia strike back. Yeah, Dala with the rally. Maybe he was trying to stun Chasm, who really can't be stopped. Now that he has Saipei TPing in and Kaya can still put down suppressing fire at range, like, oh yeah, have started to not get stopped consistently. They found those openings, but this time Ataraxia escaped and played off the rally really well. And there's a sleep, there's a whip shot, there's lots of things to protect the back line. But for how long can you do that? Because you only have that once, and then you've got that cooldown to worry about before you have a second shot at it. So you gotta hit your mark. 
Uh, but the, the nice part is that, like, Anoraxia, they're still kind of playing around. Like, if the if the ball is going after the back line, then Erekek is on the back line for all, yeah. It, gotta trade cool. it out. Sana's just having a hard time having a safe position when Chasm is constantly suppressing the high ground. Now that Chasm got slipped, Ken steps up, shuts down the overclock from Sana. When Chasm got slipped, Sana thought he was safe. There is no safety around a team like, oh yeah, but it is out of Ataraxia that have the point at 99%. This will be lost eventually, and oh yeah, will take us the distance. Another team fight ahead of us. Sana actually switched over to the Sombra to try to get back. Curious to see if Sana's gonna stay on that, but you know, we've seen Sombra as a counterpick to the Wrecking Ball before, just being able to get those hacks, and if you can shut down the mobility, it feels nice. But Chasm's waiting in the wings, has this Wrecking Ball minefield to lay down. Oh, Bataraxia, don't want to take this hallway anyway, where the mines would have been more effective. With the Winston, you want to play main, but... He wants this backline so bad. Yeah. Can you really isolate them though? MCD gets pushed up next to Sauna and waiting for this sleep to come out. Needs to be usually during this pile drive moment and he misses it. And that is the end of Dala and MCD. And this is last fight. A huge play out of Chasm, but Cool Boy and Ken also got traded. This is not safe. This is a 3v3. Without Araxia still needing to flip the point. And here comes Erekek to clear the mines with his primal rage. And he got Kaya down for the count. Oh uh, yeah, they, they might be good at attacking the back line, but there's a suffering too. And Chasm stunned by Dala. Erekek with the nano. Araxia will be closing out the round two to send us to a third one. Kaya's Riptire can't contest, unfortunately, but it was a good attempt. <laughs> Can you imagine just a 4K right now with the rip tire? Be sad if it was uh, too little, too late. But going on for to another round that's really good for the wrecking ball. But Ataraxia changing up their composition has allowed them to deal with this wrecking ball even better. So something that's really nice about Erekek being in this roster is we saw the Arisa composition earlier on in university, but the Winston. We, when we see the dive versus dive, it's all about trading that back line. I mean, you see, you see Chasm going after Dala and MCD, uh, too bad for them, I guess. Uh, they kind of do have to sacrifice themselves a little bit in order for Eric Kick to try to get the dive onto Cool Boy and Saipe on uh, yeah. Big switch Araxia, up here. Yeah, and Anoraxia winning that when Sauna was as suppressed as he was is so surprising, and Sombra to try and be elusive against that and play a double flanker setup to help Shaxx a little more in Ken, uh, just a one-man army. I know it's a different team, but oh uh, yeah, with a fire start to City Center. And both rounds so far have gone 99 to 99, and we'll see if this one will be as close. Ken is going to be playing the Tracer for the first time in the series as well. And so maybe a little bit more firepower with like Ken and Kaya together being able to get these big picks, but it's like more dive versus more dive. Like each team leveled that up to include extra pieces to help enable the Winston or the Wrecking Ball specifically. And so uh, it's going to be a lot of solo picks back and forth. Yeah, all he has backline is suffering right now and more. Immortality came out from Cool Boy, but no help <laughs> came back for Aw oh, Yeah. They're just a very front facing team. And Aw oh, Yeah are used to being able to assassinate other people's backlines, and Ataraxia have done a great job at, at trading back and forth. So hoping to flip the point, though. It will take a second. Aw oh, Yeah are contesting forever, and here's Ataraxia hoping to finish the job. But Chasm got healed back to full, getting Saipei that much closer to a Katsune rush, and the longer this goes, the better for all. Yeah, and that's the beauty of playing Hammond. He can't contest forever, but Shaq doesn't want to let that happen. He's chasing down everybody. <laughs> Everybody's going down, but like, oh yeah, saw that so much. Oh, the virus kill as well to Kaya. There was a little bit of a change to Sombra. Still was able to charge up those EMPs relatively quickly, but the virus damage over time is a little bit less. I think 90 now instead of 100. Um, and you, you're still have the hack is like the biggest form of utility which is why the Sombra is going to be super powerful to shut down a player like Chasm on this wrecking ball but the EMP is ready they weren't ready oh, oh that's so painful oh my god EMP plus the Goomba stop from Eric Keck are you serious oh yeah just gonna get thrown into the highway too 
fast becoming insect food at that point, but hey, that means Adoraxia have taken back the lead. Adoraxia can still play from his forward position as well, uh, just knowing that they still have that sound barrier and that Kitsune Rush to work with. And Aya had to expend it in last, that last fight. Cool Boy also sadly did not have that sound barrier ready, and that's going to be a big problem keeping these uh, ultimates together. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Kaya really AC 130 inbound blew up Shax. Still even 4v4 as Kaya got punished after that, but no TPS for all, yeah. So Chasm, all up to him. He pins down Shax, displaces Arakek, and no uh, Mega Pack for him to use, thanks to Sana's hack. So, oh, uh, yeah. They don't have control of the points. All the stalling is worth nothing, but Kaya opens it up with a rip tire. Now Kitsune rush from Ataraxia. Arakek brought back to full. And this is a very healthy Ataraxia team, hoping to close out this fight to take map number one. And oh yeah, still have a sound barrier in the bank. So Cool Boy will activate the extra resources. Chasm can, can be aggressive. Ken and Kaya following up. But all the attention of Ataraxia is on Chasm, who escapes and grabs the Mega, no longer hacked by Sauna. Speaking of Sauna, he's got EMP. Chasm will go down shortly, and Shax can help out with the EMP execution. Yeah, the EMP is, is so ready to go. As long as Erekek is in a position as well, there it is. And Saipei in trouble, uh, trying to teleport out. Thinks he can 1v1 Shax, forced out the recall, just needs one headshot, but there is MCD with the assist coming back to help Shax. And over time, gonna go away quite soon. Chasm's got a lot of health. He's got a pulse bomb on him, so not so much anymore. And Ataraxia, slowly but surely, will be winning City Center and the map 100 to 66. So unfortunately, it won't be a, a 99 to 99 third round, but it really has gone the distance. And Ataraxia might have found the secret sauce to breaking down the anti meta. Oh, yeah. Well, we talked about the Meta Boys and the Aya yeah match yesterday. It's kind of like, well, if you're going to be playing against two players that are probably the best at those heroes and you don't get a chance to practice against the Wrecking Ball Junkrat combination a whole lot, how are you actually going to break through that? And one thing is just good fundamentals. I think you're right. And Ataraxia already were very set up for success in terms of the skill for each individual player. But you put that all together and a very coordinated dive and good target focus. And that's the kind of result that you can get is that 2-1 to kick off the series. So I don't know. It, it, it's hard. <laughs> It's like, do you want to get the practice against it, or do you, and you do you want to counter pick, or do you want to just try to go for the the good basics? Well, I think Ataraxia brought more than the basics. They brought a really advanced plan to deal with. Oh yeah, like this Winston Ana stuff is prepared just for them. The Ana to sleep, um, the the ball. You have the Brig to peel for the Ana, the Winston to dive the backline, and they executed it well. They were trading uh, with Aya's backline a lot on Gardens, and University, yeah, was won by Aya, yeah, but I think it's because Ataraxia were trying to dive or go after Kaya so much, who performed really well in the Junkrat. He peels for himself. He's a one-man army. But then the round three could have gone either direction, but again... Ah, yes, dives aren't converting as consistently due to the peel of an Ana and a Brig. Well, the dive for the Wrecking Ball also takes longer to get set up. You have to deal with the grapple hook. That has a certain amount of time. The velocity of a Winston versus that is just a little bit quicker. Uh, and so you can initiate just more and more over the Wrecking Ball over time. Feels good to, I think, have a little bit of a game plan if you're Ataraxia into this. And as we saw from Aya oh yeah yesterday, if the Wrecking Ball and the Junkrat don't work, they have the tools on their roster to switch and maybe make some adjustments. And while the KD is a little bit better for Chasm there, um, I'm kind of looking at the fact that a, a lot of that is just due to him being able to roll away and find a health pack. Yeah, he, he tries to, and sometimes that got hacked by when Sana went to the Sombra. I wonder if that was another sort of counterpick of, yes, I don't want to be dove on as much anymore when he was on Sojourn on Gardens, but also gets to deny the Mega Packs from Chasm, which is, um, forces Chasm to play around the team, which the new changes to the patch would encourage him and players to play more around the team. But Chasm doesn't have as much freedom. So we'll see if, uh, what else, what other strats Ataraxia have cooked up? I'm heading over to Hollywood. I'm hearing that we're not getting any substitutions. So while we might have pondered, okay, 
we have an opportunity on all yeah to, to switch things up and not play the wrecking ball if it comes down to that so it seems like they're gonna continue to stick to it if chasm is gonna stay in the roster and maybe even get a chance to see some more junk rat which is exciting but both of these heroes, uh, especially when you call out some of the difficulties that Ataraxia had on University to try to get through to that Junkrat, Junkrat has so many hidey holes that it can play in on this map too. Tons of buildings like the General Store to play through, you have the Cafe, you don't want to get stuck in the Sparewell on this first point either against the Junkrat. So Ataraxia are going to have to coordinate these dives really well. Yeah, and you might think with your small silver plat brain, not you, Necra, but anyone watching, that it's like, oh, why is this guy going Winston against a junk rat? He's stupid. And it's, <laughs> you can play any hero. It's who you choose to take your engagements against and when you do so, that matters. Ataraxia won playing this Winston comp because their backline is staying alive longer than Cool Boy and Saipei. And Saipei has been trying to teleport on angles to help Ken, to help Chasm especially, and that's been more successful for Aya, oh, yeah, but Sonic can deny Mega Packs, which will deny uh, deny Chasm's chance to be back into the fight quicker. Yeah, and Saipei doesn't have the same type of sustainability that a Brigitte does to be able to keep that Ana topped up. With the Inspire healing as well as the Whip Shot and the Shield Bash, you're just able to help deal with the ball just a little bit better. Nice sleep on Takaya as well. It just stalls out this push for Aya oh, yeah, to buy some time for Ataraxia to get a reposition and a huge nade. Yeah, you're sad as an Ana player if you sleep something like a, a vulnerable target like that and no one can go after it, but Ataraxia don't want to dive Kaya as best as they can. There's hinder nades, there's a Baptiste, there's a lot of layer protection from AES side. So Ataraxia more focused on, well, they wanted to defend the point. In past tense, they wanted to. They, once that explosive power of Aya gets close, there's no living that. I think it's tough when you also have a payload oriented map because it's like it, it's not a static position you don't have the same setups for every single point there's a nice recontest though as Shax is going to be able to get a pickup on Takaya oh a nice hack of the health back too to make sure that that's going to be up for Shax to get topped up before coming back into this fight but the job's not done yet Ataraxia can hold this Ooh, good Suzu from Saipei. Ken still anteed and in a bad spot. Shax with the execution and really the retake out of Ataraxia is what's impressive. I really thought at once, oh yeah, had wiped them that this was going to be pretty much capped and it still could be. There's Chasm looming around and takes the elevator once he was hacked to avoid being shot at as now Erekek has primal so he could constantly be chasing after Chasm. He leaves the mines behind so it's a no man's land and oh yeah, want to have this final cap happen while those mines are down. But Erekek uses the primal to clear, to try to clear some of those mines. The rest of the ults from Ataraxia come out. Both support ultimates. The rally doesn't last long. MCD with the nano. Sauna with the EMP. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah still have presence on the point. It's still a really good stall attempt from Ataraxia, and they got a lot of alts out. That is actually, like, everything. Um, a really good attempt there. Oh, uh, yeah, though, able to get the upper hand, which means that they also get to go in with a bit of momentum. You can keep the ball rolling with something like the Amplification Matrix from Cool Boy, uh, but you gotta keep the... Oh, Kiriko has to be on card duty. That's unfortunate. This uh, is so excited. <laughs> No, 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 not with Shax on the other side. They're just high-fiving on top of Saipei. Yeah, that's no fun for him. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll have to. They, they're, they're running double flex support, so they're still a very good... There was a good healing option, but Cool Boy is also dead, and Ataraxius dies, man. They're no joke. That's the... Well, you left your Kiriko on the cart alone. Um... I don't know. It, it feels a little deserved that the Kiriko can't get away from a hack. <laughs> Um, but uh, Kasim has a different job to do, and that's to go harass the backline of Ataraxia, keep them busy. And that is, it, it's getting accomplished, but the card not making any progress here doesn't feel great when you were able to come in with such a big time bank. Right, oh yeah, just pushing the car now trying to swing around, deal with MCD and Dalo, shield bashes into Kasim's way. And as soon as MCD misses that sleep, Chasm can just stay there. And you saw how important that cooldown was on Oasis. But for now, Chasm redirects his attention towards his own team to help guide this card along. Nataraxia are missing an action. 
How do you actually have this set up, though, with the EMP? And just everything else has come back online as well, but the EMP is just such a big deal when you have all of these highly mobile targets on all, oh, yeah. Makes them much easier to pick off, and the dives have been good from Erekek to follow up on those big plays. So you can see as Sauna gets set up, hunting for Cool Boy and Saipe and just all these smaller targets. Oh, EMP! The virus on the Saipe! And Cool Boy couldn't drop the immortality until this point, and he is in a dangerous spot. Still trying to 1v1 Sauna. The immortality almost helped him win that because that wasn't dealt with until Shax got into the... got involved, so... Oh, yeah. Getting hit by really good executed ult combos or just ult rounds in general out of Ataraxia. That was not very expensive either, so... with all of this time bank starting to whittle away... Uh, Ataraxia have yet another cycle that they can go through. The Primal Rage is nice to bat everything away. And especially as a response to something like this Wrecking Ball mine. Just uh, get them all out of the picture. <laughs> this body just went to the moon! Go yeah. back home! And Chasm just tried to C9 the card there. We'll have to leave and the sleep from MCD made it tough for Chasm to escape. And with the mines, with Saipei TPing in, with the rip tire, this is winnable for all. Yeah, they even had the Deadeye from Ken forcing Ataraxia into cover. And all, yeah, we'll get to push this to point B. That's unfortunate. Erika got stuck in a Junkrat trap. It just became a giant ult battery. So there was an opportunity there to go get the recontest, but if your Winston just gets stuck, you can't use the Primal Rage, it's better saving it for this next fight. Uh, oh, now... yeah. Ooh. They're on the high ground. Oh no, Kaya's on fire. This is the Junkrat spot. He's behind the defense! Erekek is diving towards the cart, but what about your back line? What about the children? Oh yeah, I just have no chill. Oh! Taking a nap. Did his job. Back okay. on his feet. Kiriko is he there. Lives. No worries. Swift step. But this is it. Sana is looking to get this EMP just to stop this car progress. Oh yeah, is running out of a little bit of time, but this EMP could really stop them in their tracks. Hey, oh yeah. Got an amp to work with, but an don't EMP with it. their name on. Yeah, they don't have it yet. Close. There you go. Sana, EMP, waiting for a nice group up, and okay. maybe want to head to the high ground, but they have to make sure Kaya isn't up there. And guess what? He is. And that's super annoying. Dalla is a very sturdy shield. That, well, sturdy if you say cardboard is protective. And we'll see how Dalla and MCD last against Kaya raining it down. And EMP from Sauna is all yet tried to follow up with Kaya. Ken is the only victim, though, so that's a silver lining, I guess. Saipei teleports to high ground. And all here are mostly into safety. Eric Heck with the primal is hoping to knock them down from this or to corner them and get kills out of it. So close. Saipei was one and Eric Heck annoyed with this. His attention is being taken away by all the action happening all over the map. It's still scrappy. Still 35 seconds left. Kaya still hasn't been taken down yet. And all the while, maybe being a sacrifice for Aya to finish up the map. And yeah, that will be a map finish for Aya. 26 seconds. Ataraxia just couldn't dislodge Kaya, which gave a teleport opportunity for Saipei, which give, gives another angle for Aya. And you saw how Ataraxia just... They were overheating a little bit, worrying about so many different things. Okay, you gotta, gotta follow up with the EMP, you gotta do something with the Nano, gotta use the Primal to push Aya around, but then also they got low, and Eric Kick didn't know how deep he could go, and I don't blame him. As a Winston, you think you're invincible up until you're against a Junkrat Kiriko. Winston has a very big hitbox. I'm glad that Junkrat can't crit. Yeah. I like, at least, like, yeah, like, <laughs> it still hurts, but like, I don't know, that'd be, that'd be like the, the most dominant form of junk rap play is just constantly hitting shots in the head. Yeah. Catch. Feels like I'm getting critted when I just explode and, uh, Kaya can also one shot, like, with the nade and the concussed mind combo, we saw a cool double clip, uh, a double kill clip of on Oasis, and... Yeah, oh yeah, are, are definitely a beatable team, but getting to full cap Hollywood is a very difficult challenge, so... I feel for Ataraxia having to go all the way. At least they're run already running a dive comp, which is great for Hollywood, hence why they chose to be here.
Or no, that was all he has picked. But still, happy with uh, the map. Everybody, everybody likes a dive. You get a dive, and you get a dive. And, what? and we get to keep <laughs> on junk rat. Woohoo! Everybody's Woo. happy. Oh, oh, yeah, pretty happy with it too, being able to get the full map completion. Ataraxia coming out of the gates is actually going to put Sauna onto the soldier. Looking for that one pick potential with the charged railgun shot would really open things up for Ataraxia to get this attack moving. And if Kaya, I'm glad he's always keeping a concussed mind for escapability because Shax has been a thorn in his side for, for too long. So always have to have something in the bank to get out with, but gives Kaya that one shot opportunity with, with the nade and concussed combo and he's trying to go for it. For now, Anya haven't had that opening pick quite yet. They are on the defensive side, so they're taking shelter next to the point. Ataraxia! Uh, they are getting dove on by Hammond, and Eric doesn't know what to do with all that. But he is going to try and draw it. Oh, yeah, to go and assist Chasm. And that's where Eric Heck did scare them, got some important cooldowns out, comes back to deal with Chasm, and Eric Heck has a lot to juggle. Eric Heck has a lot to juggle, but it was so close to being able to get Kaya down. It was a really big healing opportunity for Cool Boy and Saipei to take advantage of. But now Cafe is his gonna take a jump over there and try again to get that defense out of that stronghold but uh kaya has shax's number right now and there is really no way for this tracer to get into the mix i i see kaya and ken marking shax a lot better so sauna really needs to step up and duel against ken and just help finish off targets for ataraxia so Eric Heck, I know he's got a lot to, to juggle, but they have to be decisive on these pushes or this will just never end. And nothing makes this more decisive than a Nano Winston jump. And to not go for the kill on the Kaya's, Eric Heck is almost playing too safe. And I don't, I don't fault this because Chasm is also on the flank. So it's, Eric Heck doesn't want to be an inter. <laughs> I'd really, I, it's tough because like you have to respond to Chasm going to attack the rest of your team, but Erekek would rather be creating the space up on the cafe in order to just like bully Kaya, Cool Boy, and Saipe to actually use cooldowns. But all oh. time, all okay, time, all time, Saipe, go kill, hit Sune Rush, Chasm, go bowling, looking for the strike. What against Sana? Okay, a little more difficult than imagined, but uh, Sonic gets baited and didn't know the Junkrat was around the corner. Less than 90 seconds. Ataraxia, the keyword is kill. They get targets low, but don't come in deep enough to actually finish them off, and then you can commend uh, Yaz disengage in those moments, but Ataraxia should not be full health. They really shouldn't, but they might. It could happen. We only have a minute left, and uh, maybe the Riptire has something to say about that. Ah, oh, Sauna. Sauna. Just a bit of a whimper on the Riptire. Is that Araxia Ooh. playing with the overclock and Sana. burning and burning on the Kaya? Pulse right in that immortality from Cool Boy saves Ken, and the Dead Eye stops Ataraxia from following up. Now, Ataraxia focused on getting two ticks, almost getting that. Oh, yeah. Still being. Pushed back as Ataraxia sends Shax on the chase. And he gets to chase down all the Chasm, who didn't grab a, a health pack in time. So Ataraxia finally get the point. Wow, that took a long time. But just being able to get the job done, you know that with all Yao yeah, only having 26 seconds left in the bank, get the full map completion, you're still feeling really good. Maybe you get a chance to do it again. Shax is out of the picture right now, though. Has to be able to start pushing this cart and let the rest of Ataraxia try to get the setup for this dive. Oh. But Aya's not letting up. Hello. Eric Kick was like 2 HP, and Aya overextended to get that kill, and that's something that Ataraxia hasn't done yet, so that's why it's taking Ataraxia forever to get the metaphorical ball rolling. But I guess for now, we can look at the nano from MCD. Kaya's on the high ground. Yeah, that could be a target. I, I would want to go after it. I might be scared, and I'm a tank mate too, so I'm I'm empathizing. I'm an empath watching Erekek play. <laughs> but, oh yeah, I also have you know the immortality. Pain. I know, Amp Matrix and a Kitsune Rush. And Ataraxia, they'll pull the trigger on the nano boost dive out of Erekek, and Shaxx is there with the pulse bomb. It's a 5v3. It's all rainbows for Ataraxia so far. 
finally working with a little bit more stability. Uh, having the ults is, is always super nice, just to give you a little bit more breathing room. Sauna hopes to try to get this overclock to at least grab this high ground. But now you gotta worry about the big tire. That's why you don't open the door to strangers. Sometimes there's a rip tire on the other side. Nataraxia's uh, backline is dead, which is unfortunate for them because they had already won the initial fight and a huge part of the point B push of Hollywood is to carry momentum. Yeah, Shax is still lingering around and has started to even up those numbers. Oh uh, yeah, not looking so comfortable anymore. Dalu and MCD should be on their way back pretty soon, and that's where Sauna Shax can be selfish, can play off of Mega Packs and, and Health Packs in general. And with a primal from Aircat, they believe this is a winnable fight, and they almost pin down Aw oh, Yeah. Great retreat out of Aircat to preserve his life, give MCD a closer chance to Nano as Dala activates the rally. Now diving on top of Jail to get Cool Boy out of position. Now the Rocks here are taking good power positions, but again, killing is a whole different ball game. And it's Chasm with the double that gives all yet the edge. They were really hoping to take advantage of the ultimate economy there, but Anoraxia just falling short. Now they only have one more chance to try to get the second point, and oh yeah, it could shut them out here. Chasm has the wrecking ball mines when Anoraxia come back, and because we're about to be in overtime, Anoraxia have to play on this point. No rally, no primal rage, no clear way to be able to clear those mines off, so you're gonna have to go in there with raw power. All right, Shax gets a touch on the point, and there the Nano to Dala to be that secondary tank to look for anything they can to bully, and he gets Dala gets shoved into the mine, still placed by Chasm, and the Katsune rush from Saipe was the all oh, yeah needed to overtake this fight, and what a stop they've had. I mean, oh yeah, we're this close to full holding Ataraxia on the point. The fact we even got this far is a miracle, and oh yeah, we'll tie the series. They look so much better being able to play around basically a wrecking ball playground. And that's something that I think gives Oh uh, yeah, just a little bit of a leg up is the chaos that ensues. You don't have enough time to work with on some of these more attack and defensive delineated sides. Uh, so you kind of got to work with what you got. And if you keep getting staggered, keep getting picked. Um, not fun. Yeah. Anorexia. This Ataraxia were, were close. They had the right ideas. They knew where to dive, how to dive with what ults. But sometimes the focus gets a little crazy when all oh, yeah have heroes that can have, be so mobile, can run away in all these different directions. And Ataraxia, their focus gets shifted too many ways and they don't get to finish off the kills that they so beautifully set up. And great moments out of Ataraxia when they had those ults. Comboing off the EMP, the Nano Winston dives, Shax is still a very good tracer. Uh, just having to be careful of how you round, how deep do you want to go for these kills, and when do you go deep? At uh, there's some points I thought Aerokek could have been more aggressive as the Winston, and then he didn't. Yes, he stayed alive, but then you don't win the fight and you don't do anything at all. So sometimes you do have to risk it for the biscuit. I think it was tough when Eric Heck was trying to set up for the dive with Shax. If Shax, get, Shax gets eliminated immediately, especially on those attack pushes, then Eric Heck doesn't have the support to back them up. I was a little bit surprised that Sana wanted to play the Sojourn instead, because the Sojourn looked really good, and having the EMP felt like a fight win every single time that they had that ultimate, and Sana was charging up really fast on the defense. I understand the idea of trying to just have that one pick potential, but... I don't know. Maybe they have to consider the Sombra to help shut down the Wrecking Ball again. 28 KD. Are we serious? One death? Oh, Chasm. Yeah. That's the uh, goal. You, you could call this a Chasm now, can't you? Yeah, a canyon a little bit. Uh, chasm got denied off a lot of Mega Packs on Control, which gave him a harder time. But on more open maps like Hollywood, Sonic can't hack everything. Um, and also, he got off of Sombra eventually. So... Yeah, Chasm has leveled up. Really has, and the power of the Wrecking Ball was felt. Like, that backline couldn't move. They were getting tossed up everywhere, they were jumping into mines, getting batted around, and uh, getting stomped on by the Wrecking Ball, so it doesn't feel 
doesn't feel great. That 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 was hard to watch. If you are going to be a backline support, having the empathy for, for them, um, but we we are going to go up to Coliseo next between these two teams. Not the like easiest wrecking ball map, I feel like, but maybe still able to get the job done. Fi, though, coming into this roster over Shax. And when we've seen Fi on the Ataraxia squad, it's always been to play something like the Cassidy. So maybe Sauna gonna get our... Also can play the Sojourn, but like Sauna maybe double hit scan or switching over to play the Tracer because Sauna can play both. For sure. And both options are viable at the double hit scan versus like a tracer hit scan hybrid. Um, Coliseo chosen by Ataraxia. Um, the least friendly uh, ball map, I would say. Um, Esperanza way friendlier for the ball in terms of the, the central pillars that you can swing off of and things like that. So this uh, Coliseo, very narrow, very straightforward, and uh, it's still possible for a ball for sure. A lot more difficult if we even see the ball, but we haven't seen Chasm play anything else. But I I'm feeling Ataraxia, uh, depending on Fi here. I've watched Fi play for years. This is a yeah. veteran in the scene, and his hit scan is undeniable. It's always been fun to watch Fi, especially over the past few years, and still continuing to put up very impressive results. So hopefully able to turn things around here for Ataraxia heading over to Coliseo. Because on Coliseo, you need to have a strong sojourn, and you also need to have some strong, just in general, hit scan pressure, just because of how much of the fights happen over this midway point. You know, I'll give some credit to the Wrecking Ball, though. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> He'll never think it's broke, no matter how many counters never. or nerfs or anything. <laughs> Ball no, gets. Pita, Sombra, who cares? I got this. He's a paid actor, though, for showing us how the new ball works, even though the overhealth that he would be sharing is not really sharing it with anyone else. Uh, unless Saipei's down to clown, which sometimes he gets his funny up, but <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't quite look like uh, we're gonna see anything too different here from Aya. Uh, yeah. More of the same, but Fi coming in to play the soldier in here, and then Sauna was hovering over the Echo for a little bit, but yeah, okay, just wants to be able to get some really easy pressure there onto the Wrecking Ball, especially with the tracking that Sauna has. You could just go in there after the Wrecking Ball gets chunked and go in for one of those big beam kills. I love locking Orisa against a uh, ham, and you can spear them, push them around, activate fortify so you don't get piled, drove, piled, drived, whatever. And piled driven? <laughs> piled driven? Yeah, it's like, verbs. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> Adoraxia, and also, Erica can be an anchor, leaving the rest of his team to take angles around. Fi can play next to his Orisa if he's worried about any, any ham and dives, and uh, I guess he has to worry about Nate. Those still hurt, and Chasm stomps down onto Dulla. It's a 5v3, and oh yeah, it's a slow burn, but it burns nonetheless. It'll be fun to watch these dive setups, and that's a little bit of a, a disadvantage for this Orisa, is it's gonna take a little bit longer to actually get into the position too. Yes, you can stack on top of each other, which is a very, very good thing, but you're slower than something like a Winston to initiate a team fight. Oh yeah, getting some free push, and as soon as that Araxia drop from the high ground, Chasm can swing off the arches and get a pile drive going. Or MCD has also a teleport to get away from this. Just used it to you now get Kitsune Rush going, and maybe because they spotted Saipei being in a corner, and okay, he gets the teleport in time. What a spear from Arakek, but not the finish that he was hoping for. Still. It's just locking down every member out of all, yeah, who I can't even believe they managed to escape with their lives. And now Ken, back up on his feet, ready to give a seat back to Ataraxia with the Deadeye. And all, yeah, have the number advantage, despite the ones being run into at the start of this fight. And Fi overclocks, but there's no point. The fight is dead. Wow, honestly. I, it was just all an investment from Ataraxia, and oh yeah, we're able to find those weird off picks, not even having to do the front to back damage because the one thing that Wrecking Ball likes to prey on is the chaos. And so Kaya, Chasm, 
Uh, cool, I don't know. Ken is also kind of going off right now. It's going to be tough for Anoraxia to focus fire onto any one of these mobile targets. Oh, goodbye. Oh, Just no. let it rain on the fire. I can't believe he pulled out of that, actually. Insane Suzu out of MCD to probably enable that. So the mines are really just blocking off Ataraxia from the bot, and big pick out of MCD going up against Kaya. You just gotta do everything you can against that junk rack. I can get a first pick at any moment from a pie in the top rope. Sana with love sends Ken back, and oh yeah, won't be able to keep this push going much longer. So calculated. You saw when the duplicate ended. So I was like, I'm about to just fly behind you and still focus beam you down. A really nice play coming out from Sauna. Always a pleasure to watch Sauna play this hero. Now Ataraxia though, maybe finally starting to get some meaningful progress. Doll has a sound barrier and MCD does have the Skutsune Rush, so we can at least match that on the side of all yeah, but the sound barrier just gives such an advantage for Ataraxia to try to sustain through this explosive firepower from all yeah. Aww. I want to cast him to commit onto Sauna there. Very killable. Got scared because Sauna had friends. Ooh, friends. This all oh, yeah, the Katsune Rush. They can get the drop anytime they want. But Ataraxia have taken back the lead. Six minutes left. Dead eye from Ken. Ataraxia takes shelter in the pillar side. Fight back with the Katsune Rush. They're trying to emerge. And Erekek will lead the way as the train conductor. And all oh, yeah. Don't want to be part of any of those stops as Ataraxia extend this lead even more. Saipe will not be staggered, so that's good for them. Hey, talk about just being able to hit those javelin shots. Eric Kick, like single handedly was able to take out Ken. That felt really good, I'm sure, to be able to get a bit of revenge. And we are going to see a switch up. Ken going to go over to the Ash and Saipe now heading over to the Zenyatta. You see if those can be big difference makers, but they can't get there before that checkpoint gets activated for Ataraxia. And now, oh uh, yeah, yeah, they, uh, yep, it sure is. This is getting even more unfortunate. Oh yeah, we're still getting set up. Chasm could have definitely uh, contested. I'm seeing him contest the wall right now, though. Unfortunately for him, Air Kick has been really good at locking these players down. Oh yeah, I could have contested. I think they were still trying to plan out their comp with the Zen and the Ash, hoping to have more poke. And with the bridge, they were ideally trying to have a bridge high ground for Ken to throw dynamites off of, and. Now this lead is getting seriously out of hand. It, it, like, especially when you still have sub, what, five minutes of the map left? Uh, that's so much time for Ataraxia to potentially even just finish this. Sauna's getting set up for the duplicate as well. Needs to go back and get a health pack, so Ataraxia are going to be a little bit patient trying to make this contest. But MCD getting taken down means that Ataraxia have to back off. Okay, better late than never from from all yeah well maybe late is bad still though because 103 meters is very respectable and it's not actually over now that ken picked off sauna it's 4v3 and yeah oh yeah we'll take it back over but oh yeah have so much work ahead of them at least with this composition they're not limited by low like they're not limited they can go to the high grounds and really shake up the power positions from ataraxia very true one thing that's gonna make that harder though is that sauna is going to switch over to the Sombra. So talk about having fantastic access to the top ropes. Sana could just throw the translocator up there and be able to do just that. Oh, oh, that would have been a cool moment for Sana to, to catch that. But oh, yeah, we'll lead off with a first blood. They only have Zen heals. So if Saipid thinks this is winnable, Transcendence needs to be used. And yeah. Knew that that was going to be their best chance to get going. Great job from Sauna to force out that ultimate. And the bot is still moving and getting progress from all. Yeah, shout out to our observers while all this action happens on the other side of the planet. <laughs> it was a good attempt, though, to for the Zenyatta to, to hold on there. But being forced out of the Transcendence so early does not feel good when Sauna is so close to being able to have that EMP. And we're going to see this happen a lot. Just so many fights happening and not the bot. Wow, Sauna is assassinated. Forced out the Saipei Transcendence. Killed uh, is pressuring Oh yeah, And this flank has been a nuisance for Aya to deal with. And what, once that is taken care of, once Sauna has done his job and left, Adaraxia can't really pick up the pieces. So Aya... Oh, yeah. <laughs> happy to be able to get some progress going but chasm will have to sit on the bot the dead eye will force chasm to stop that progress and take a bit of a hit not too much to worry about if anything saipe wants to build the transcendence the bot uh, thrown as a 
kind of jingle some keys and hope that the babies of Ataraxia just clap their hands and get distracted. It wasn't really serving much for all. Yeah, if anything, they're slowly losing this fight because they just can't keep Chasm alive. Oh, now the EMP's not going to help anything with that either, right? Because uh, Chasm can't get away. Uh, you don't want to invest any more resources into a fight that you know is already lost. But we're now two minutes left. Oh, you have so much ground to have to make up in this map and heading into a terror surge. There might even be another EMP online by the time that the time bank starts to whittle down. Kai is Sona's, dead. Sona is killing everything. What the heck is going on? Ataraxia, sound barrier. They lost MCD in the progress too. Chasm just has to do it all on his own. And Ken at a distance picks off too, so it's not going to let Ataraxia get any push going it'll keep the bot at neutral ataraxia doesn't even need to get any more progress either there's only a minute and a half left they want the cmp to finish things out and if they can at least just stop all oh, yeah from getting any more progress like that's the win condition right saipei has a transcendence and kai is going to have this rip tire but win condition here get saipei to use the transcendence before you use the emp rip tire Kaya is usually, Kaya has been able to convert all these before and catches Sona, and that is exactly the opening all yeah needed. 41 meters to 106 with one minute left, and only one team can come out of this map with a win. And Chasm gets speared, and what a great job from Erekek, but Chasm may be able to help Coolboy get close to the Ant Matrix because he lives through that, and there's still a transcendence, and Kaya just pops around corners and one shots people. Dalin wants to contest, he won't be able to, and MCD uses the Suzu to protect himself. That's not really helping the situation. At least Saipei gets his Transcendence Force out. I imagine that's Sauna's doing. Checkpoint. And, oh uh, yeah, I got Checkpoint. Checkpoint, checkpoint, any touchers? Ataraxia's dead. They were taking the fight underneath the bridge. So uh, so here is the, the other win condition, right? Like, yes, oh uh, yeah, get a chance to win this fight. But what are they gonna have now if Sana just hits the EMP? Oh, Ken can leave behind the, the next generation of players, aka this Bob to help the fight, and oh yeah, gotta go all the way. It has to be perfect if they want to make a comeback on this map from a zero to 106 meters. Oh yeah, they've lost some members through this war, and Ataraxia with the Dead Eye trying to protect themselves, but Eric Kent got away from the flock, and oh yeah, have Team Wipe. They just actually have to worry about Fi. Easy for. This rip tire to deal with and getting MCD is even better. You leave five for the insects and oh yeah, meters away. The finish line is in their sights. Only an ant matrix and that could be what zones them off. One last touch from Sauna, but Ataraxia need to step up and their tank is nowhere to be found. And oh yeah, have done it. They take Coliseo. That was a, an Ataraxia fumble. They had, they were so far ahead. They had the EMP. They only got the Bob and the Ash and they even still couldn't convert that over. Like that could have been so big to finish out that map had that EMP gotten more value. And it's so tough when like the team isn't necessarily in a position to take full advantage of that. And the, the, the healing output's been insane from that all yeah back line. Yeah. Uh... Oh yeah, I think it was a snowball that turned into an avalanche. Ataraxia were never afforded a full reset, like a full five-man yeah. take. That, And that was just really good awareness out of all, yeah, to keep pushing. They're following the game type name, push, push, push. And it was exciting to see the different looks out of Ataraxia to bring Fi in, to play the Sojourn, while Sauna got to focus on Echo, going to the, um, the Sombra 2 to have some flanks going. A lot of options came out of Ataraxia but at the end, it's just an avalanche, a storm that they could not negate. This went the distance, though. It looked like Ataraxia were going to get the full cap, and then they just lost so many team fights in a row. I, I, I still got to give credit to Kaya being able to just get pick after pick onto people like Fi, that huge concussive mine onto Dala, but that you didn't have that main source of healing either, and then just that's when the dominoes started to fall into place for Aya uh, yeah, to be able to win this map. And now they're on match point. Kai went crazy. Shout out to our replay ops for catching just how much work he did at the end. I would have strained my vocal cords if I had caught that. Like, Kaya was a monster. And an unchecked one at that, where he had a fun little poke war uh, against MCD, who was on Kiri and got the... And then 
Kaya got the last laugh at the end. So that'll put Anya oh, yeah, on match point on, I would say, a map that doesn't favor ball, but who cares? I don't even know why I mention it at this point. It doesn't matter. Just play their, just, just play Wrecking Ball. It, it's Junkrat favored. That's what it is. Well, let's listen in because oh yeah, had the push of a lifetime, and I can't wait to hear how it went down. Can you stick up? Stick up, please stick up. I'm on card, I'm on card, I'm on card. You guys can go, you guys can go, I'm on card. Nice, nice. I have window, so. Lucio on me, Lucio on me, Lucio on me, close. Yeah. Let's touch whatever touch. Stop. Summer, 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 <laughs> so happy with Pat themselves. On the back. Yeah, not as intensive comms when it's just a 5v1 all the time because that's just, oh yeah, staggering, staggering, staggering and having this this insane push at the end. Did you hear that too though? They're so worried about the C9. They're like, please stay on the please. card, please, for the love of God, stay on the card. <laughs> and I that's a Zen that. duty too, but hey, yeah. he actually had the tracer with him too, so oh. yeah. That's so good. Well, we got some roster updates heading into New Junk City. We're going to check out the Ataraxia roster updates first. Gala coming back in uh, to the roster. Gala saw a lot of playtime in Ataraxia's most recent match. It's kind of the first time that we've really seen like MCD and Dala have so much time together in a match uh, as the back line. So maybe Gala can be a bit of a difference maker there just to give a fresh perspective to that back line. And for all, yeah, we're going to see a substitution we've seen before on these Flashpoint Max Dark Side Phil coming in over Chasm. So you, you talked about uh, this not being a great Wrecking Ball map. Well, here's the ace up their sleeve, having Dark Side Phil to come in to play that Arissa. Yeah, and he's super solid, so it's nice to have a, a backup in, in cases where Ball is really unplayable, aka New Junk City. But exciting day, Gala Dala. The, the synergy is there. <laughs> in terms of the names. Wondering if they're going to stick to the double flex or if they are going to go to the very necessary Lucio to make these rotations easier. And there's the Lucio. Yeah, the Lucio is nice. But I think you have to have a Lucio on the Flashpoint maps just because of how quick this action can be. You want to give yourself as many opportunities to be able to get in. But when, when we do end up seeing sort of like Ataraxia play together uh, with this with this type of backline. I lost my notes. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Where'd they go? Um, you know, somewhere in my in my inbox. But like Gala can come in to play the Kiriko, uh, which gives us a, a little bit more firepower to this backline. That's what they need. The MCD did a good job of getting some picks onto Kaya, but now needing to switch things up. Uh, fire reaching for the stars there. Sataraxia will back away and it's a ring around the Rosie. Who will be the person to touch the point? You can send your Lucios to kind of wall right around. If your Arisa goes, yeah, you're unkillable on the point, but then you leave the rest of your team open. Um, then the Tracers can do that. If you had one, oh yeah, shakes fist at not playing a Tracer. And maybe that's why, because Kaya, he frags. Hi, Frags. Can I get another 4K rip tire on this map, please? And thank you. Add it to the highlight reel. Darkside Phil is just so good at being able to set up those opportunities as well for the DPS. Because as we've seen from some of this aggressive Orisa gameplay, just walk past the front line, go after the back, keep Gala and Dala busy so that they are not able to heal your own tank. And, and Kaya can kind of do the rest of the work there. Look at all this Junkrat spam coming down this corridor as well. Nataraxia are going to take so much damage before they even get back to this flashpoint. Oh, and then these tiny choke points. This is so big for Kaya. Oh yeah, love New Junk City. Saipei is gonna love the spot room doors. But how many times he's being sent there, all thanks to Ataraxia. And oh yeah, halfway to completion. Hoping to deny the flip and too little too late. As Darkseid feels more focused on the war than an objective. Silly objective. But Ataraxia are kind of matching punch for punch and managed to edge out the fight there. Adaraxia just now uh, get a chance to play from that defensive position too. Especially having like the Kitsune Rush, um, everything, like Terror Surge, maybe even the Pulse Bomb. 
Saipei, though, with the Kiriko has been so good with these Suzus that these Pulse Bombs have felt so ineffective from Sauna. Oh, Riptire! And okay, well, the Urus is gonna Ooh. kill you, but what can this Riptire do? It travels, it goes far and wide, waiting for the Sound Bear to expire, and it gets Sauna! So at least Kaya goes one for one in that case, but Ataraxia not having a not, uh, a not healthy tank here. Arakek doesn't care. He still has armor. Oh yeah, go to the point to force the flip, and Ataraxia don't even contest it. And this is where Oh yeah can now draw this out as much as they can. You have the Riptire out of the way, though, so when Ataraxia come back, they can still actually use this Terra Surge, but still, once again, about trying to get that Suzu out of that Kiriko's pocket. It's so tough because Saipei's been hitting them every single time, just keeping the team alive. And because, oh uh, yeah, we're not running a tracer, uh, Darkseid Phil has to be the one to contest against Sauna, and oh uh, yeah, will keep the point and forces Ataraxia in an uncomfortable position where they're playing on the low ground and oh uh, yeah, surround them. So Ataraxia just walked right into the trap, the metaphorical junk crap trap, and point one will go to oh uh, yeah. Really quick take from them. Now they still get to work towards setting up on this next one, and Arakek has not come out of spawn yet. Uh, looks like a little bit of a positional advantage here for Aya as it's over to Bomb Flats, much closer to them. And the Junkrat spam again over the wall. Ataraxia, they really don't have that many different ways that they can go through, and it's an easy spot of a pivot as Kaya now finds the mark over there. Like, look, 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 Fai is like <laughs> almost dead. Yeah, he's getting bounced around by these nades. He's still alive though. So glass half full situation, dead eye from Ken to stop the follow up of the Katsune rush from Ataraxia and Ken slaughtered in the process. Does Ataraxia clear the point? And yeah, oh yeah, had the initial um, poke as you said with the nades, but Ataraxia got around it. That's going to be what it's about, though. Just the not falling victim to multi Junkrat nades in a row. You have so much explosive power with just the headshots through from Cassidy. And even still, don't forget the chunk from the spear of the Orisa. It's hard to navigate that. Oh, Riptire? Riptire? Damn, Sound Bear is always in the way, but somehow Kaya always gets a kill. But he is getting killed during the Riptire animation, so Ataraxia can at least go one for one. And this Terra Surge hurt a lot. But so does this initial score by Ataraxia getting a 60% plus before the flip. So, oh yeah, can't afford to lose any other fight. I'm getting so much out of Anya's pockets. Like the, the Rip Tire, the Terra Surge, they're both gone with that combo out of the way. Uh, and, but the Sound Barrier advantage is still in their favor. It's going to feel really nice to have that against just everything else that Ataraxia is packing. But they're back into the front. I uh, get Cool Boy out of the way. Dude, Fi walking up, so much stress in the Arakek. Javelin spin, Terra Surge, just doing everything for his team. Arakek needs his team to do everything for him, though. He's one HP and surrounded. Sauna trades with a Pulse Bomb, though. It's not unwinnable for Ataraxia. No other ults, though, they can depend on. And Saipei is Katsune Rush. And he's managing to use the Suzu to keep himself up. And Sauna will hunt him down, but he falls into a Junkrat trap. And oh, yeah, didn't punish that in time. Ataraxia still in the same position now that Sauna has out of his trap and out of his cage. He finishes off the fight, and with less than 20% left, I don't think Aya can contest. Not with a Dark Side Phil still being in spawn as well as Cool Boy. The mobility is just not there to get there fast enough. So Ataraxia, they know they've got this point. They are going to head to the central area so they can figure out where this next splash point is going to be. And that is a very quick taxi over to the next one. Ooh. Match point for Aya. Oh yeah. Now rounds tied 1-1. One, one. Next up, the Katsune Rush push with Ken closer to Deadeye, which could be a zoning to- Oh, never uh, mind! A spear? Kaya ate that for breakfast! And Aya oh yeah, to be eating the pavement unless they don't get out of here quickly. Now the Raxi are on the chase, but they also care about capping the point, so not gonna get too far. They can just stick to holding this choke as Aya oh yeah, have to rethink this approach. Free pick means that Gala gets to hold on to this Kitsune rush for this uh, next very quick engage. Saipei can layer that though, and Ken's gonna try to zone them off with this dead eye. Yeah. 
You saw the javelin spin to protect him in case any weird spears or oh my god a pulse! How did Ken sense that? Well, Sana still hunted him down in the end. Four versus four. Kitsune Rush is expiring shortly, and the air kick is getting bullied. This ducky. There's only room for one ducky in this pond. And this is an aw oh, yeah point that they will be retaking. Good boop out of cool boy. Yeah, 42% for Ataraxia to kick off. I saw it coming as soon as the Lucio came up. I'm like, ah, uh, bye. <laughs> Goodbye, Erica. You're gonna have to go back to spawn now into the drink with you. But, oh yeah, now with uh, control the point, gets to have Kaya set up in like a sneaky position. The Rift Tire is gonna be back on the table. And what a nice combo with the Terra Surge from this Arissa. But Ataraxia, like, they're still doing a good job of being able to mitigate a bunch of this poke coming through, whether it's from the Junkrat strafing away. Gala not so lucky, again! Bye, got his ult canceled. Uh, that's unfortunate. Oh, Terra Surge and a great barrier on a cool boy to save his team. And they got the punish on the Arakek, who got caught with his pants down. So, uh, yeah, one fight away from going to round point. Feeling like it could just be a be a flashpoint completion here. Sana has an opportunity to come through with this pulse bomb, but oh, really rip of the rip tire. Someone has to touch, guys. You're gonna touch, right? Oh, sound barrier. Someone's gonna touch, right? Sana, Sana, watch check. Okay, Sana is there and Dala is there. So the sound barrier to live through the rip tire, but he can't live through the rest of the nades. Kaya is raining down on the Ataraxia's parade. And oh yeah, we'll be going to round point shortly with Ken and Kaya putting on a show. And this uh, whole series, who goes to main event, comes down to this potentially final point. Oh yeah, with this flashpoint, get a chance to move forward and Ataraxia would go home in an upset. Ator Ataraxia was favored on paper heading into this match. You have so much name star power on this roster and it's so much veterancy. But Aya oh yeah, have so many skills continue to show us here. They got very close last time. They have an opportunity here to close it out with this Kitsune Rush to at least get control of this point first. Yeah, and Saipe had the edge against Gala by 10% on this Kitsune Rush and look how much of a difference it makes. They got the first pick. They have Ataraxia against the wall. Fai is able to get a trade. Still a one-man advantage for Aw uh, Yeah. Narakek and Sana working together. But against Dark Side filled out with the Terra Surge and a Fortify. He doesn't get to live on. Great disengage out of Ataraxia. As Fai and Erekek have made this fight so close. But Ken and Saipe get the final laugh as Ken's dead eye. Oh, oh, and the headshot. Ken is clean with it. Get us clean with it, and that's the first fight win out of the way. Aw, uh, yeah, just need one more to be able to secure their spot in the main event and close out this map. And Sauna's gonna switch over to the May, hoping that this May wall will be enough to help isolate some of these members of Aw, uh, yeah, or at the very least, shut down this Junkrat spam that has been so difficult to get past. Around every corner, Kaya's been able to get a stray pick, and that has opened up these fights so much for Aw, uh, yeah. Final fight potentially on the table. And Sauna has to be careful where he ice blocks. That will be everything. He can be punished by a junk rat if he's not careful. There's an early ice block protected by Erekek. Terra Surge, but no space for Ataraxia. Oh yeah, have a sound bearer in the bank. And another Kitsune Rush. Saipei is building these so quickly. Kai has a rip tire. Does he have a safe place to use it? Apparently he does. Around the corner. Hiding. Dip dive. Dodgers! No one touch him because of the rip tire! Oh yeah! Go to the main event! Riptire is the more powerful force, I guess. Way to go, Necra. You cursed it. You, you Not what have, do you mean? You were going to have a C9 eventually. Eventually. May. You didn't get to see the May. Like, I'm kind of pissed. Someone, <laughs> someone needs to make, like, the Arisa meme with, like, the the horse instead and, like, man and the Riptire, like, coming through. I don't know. And that's unfortunate. I'm sad. That's not the way I, I wanted that map it. to end. Oh yeah, we'll go to the main event off of a Riptire C9. The power of Junkrat compels you, so yeah. I, I gotta bring this to my ranked games. Uh, hey, don't on behalf of everyone in your ranked games. Please do not. I'll let you guys know when I'm online if you want free SR, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the party. Honestly, I want in on that. I mean, it feels a little anticlimactic. 
But is it though? Because this is exactly what we wanted to see from our yeah. And even though you know what shenanigans they're throwing at you, and even though it did look like the opposition had a good idea of how to deal with it, because quite frankly, first round oasis, that ball junk combo worked really well but then we saw the adjustments coming out from Adaraxia they started playing that uh, playing into that you know uh, switching up their compositions they seem to have a good idea alas I even if on paper you have the right comp to counter it yeah it's just it's so annoying and you do not have any opportunities to really practice this and I think that when we were talking about the ice block on that last fight, that was probably the make or break because the ice block is the one thing that would have survived the rip tire and he used it before the fight started and before the rip tire came out. So Kaya is just really good at identifying and those those type of cooldowns when he can go for rip tires. And yeah, he's been punished here or there. That's also Eric Heck being the most uh, aggressive and only <laughs> Arissa in the lobby. Um, <laughs> and, and Kaya just well adjusted on Flashpoint to go for safer rip tires. And it always converted, no matter if there was a sound barrier. And it's a good effort out of Ataraxia to try and deal with that. But there is no dealing with that. There really isn't. And I think, like, even when we saw those pivots over to something like the Sombra, uh, being able to play around that is something that a good Wrecking Ball has to do. Because you're probably plagued by that in all of your ranked games, all of your scrims, <laughs> when you look at just how many counters there really can be to a hero that's this mobile. But Chasm shows us once again what these Wrecking Ball changes have done to really help enable the Wrecking Ball to be a bigger team player. Whether it's giving over health to the rest of your team, those mines are way trickier to destroy now that they've gotten that extra little HP buff to be 60 instead of 50. So you can't just bat around and feel like that's going to be enough. And I'm sad that Sauna didn't stick to the Sombra that sounded like the kryptonite for chasm whether it was to own all the the mega packs but also the amount of assassination sauna gonna coliseo onto the back uh, line forcing transcendence forcing just cooldowns i thought the sombra was really impactful and everyone has sort of figured out some cracks in the oh yeah armor whether it was the diva swap from amelia in another series to the sombra swap from sauna here there's ways to beat uh oh yeah in fights in terms of beating them in a series, that's a different story. And Kaya, eats, is he him in this lobby? Because that's how much of a difference maker he was for his team. He is him. Yeah, yeah. I think Kaya just is him. I would be <laughs> so nervous for the rest of these teams to have to deal with a Junkrat like this. Because there are so many different ways with the Arisa meta right now that you would have to take some engages into these small rooms. That's where Junkrat gets to come into play. It doesn't matter how many spear spins you have, these grenades still might just weave past that and hit yeah. a stray in your back line like poor Fi was on the receiving end of that so much and like what <laughs> like these aerial <laughs> shots are crazy and he's popping people up too in front of dead eyes whatever that whenever that happens and kaya plays hidden too so it's hard to track him down and sometimes he'll just pop out surprise you and you think you're in a 1v1 when you're actually in a 1v2 and kaya has the burst power to pick you off before you even have a good reaction to that and yeah sometimes his rip tires were a little little kooky like this one but he always gets a kill out of it he does it shouldn't work like that doesn't work like that when i'm playing it anyway and let's listen into the winning cons for this squad i'm, I'm going left i'm matching left i'm okay with them happy soon the big one man nice block nice block no spin no spin no spin no spin no. No, no, I'm shooting him from the side. I'm shooting him, Don't me, don't me, don't me, don't me. They're all right, all right, all right. All right. No spin, no spin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm playing good, I'm right. I'm tired, I'm tired. Nice job, nice job. Let's go! Oh my oh. god. Oh. Nice. And that's how oh yeah, got it done. Darkseid Phil joining us now. Love the hoodie, by the way. Didn't know you guys were making merch, Thank so you. I'm gonna cop that as soon as I have the opportunity. Um, Darkseid Phil, it's the year 2021. Oh yeah, enters the lobby, and the ball is always in the starting five. I can make the assumption that this would have happened or been the case even without the recent patch changes. Are you guys just leaning so hard into the uniqueness of your comp and your players? I mean. We were kind of struggling in uh, stage one because of the the MAGA meta. Because, I mean, I, I wasn't that bad at MAGA, but like our team failed to adapt when the, uh, uh, what is it called? When the meta changed. And then stage two, yeah. there was a RISA meta. 
so we we kind of we kind of wait i gotta close my discord we kind of <laughs> struggled to adapt to that meta as well uh hey, so we started playing you, ball you play drink, to your own strengths though it, yeah yeah we started playing ball drink and they were pretty good pretty yeah, good yeah i mean you guys made the main event you know and also i think you and i and everyone watching we'd love to ignore that the moga meta ever existed <laughs> i don't think that was fun for anyone involved yeah <laughs> um, I mean, love, and, I, and I, phil i actually like playing Mario. Yeah, and how did you adjust Say against that. some of the changes that came out of Ataraxia? Because they started bringing out the Sombra, which I'm sure annoyed your friend uh, Chasm there. Uh, how did you adjust against the Echo and the Sombra and stuff? I mean, I wasn't really in the comms. I was just watching the, the oh, screen okay. today. So when I when got swapped in, I was just I trying my hardest to beat them. Do you ever feel pressure when that happens, knowing that uh, Chasm has been in the starting roster to be able to play this Wrecking Ball, then you get subbed in to play New Junk City in these Flashpoint maps? Yeah, I mean, like, I have to perform really well for my team. Or else, uh, like, I feel like I, I get blamed if we lose. Because <laughs> Chasm oh. is so good at ball. I mean, they always find someone to blame, right? <laughs> but yeah. today, it shall not be yours because your <laughs> Razor performance was incredible. We'd love to see you in that lineup and we can't wait to see more from you and the team. Congrats again for making it to the main event. We're going to see you guys there. Thank you. And that was Dark Side Phil from Oh Yeah. It's hard. We talked about this yesterday, right? You're getting subbed in, gotta perform. <laughs> gotta, uh, yeah. gotta, gotta make it worth everyone's while. But yeah, Dark Side Phil, obviously, it's great that they have the opportunity or rather the, uh, the the option to also play, you know, a little bit more to the standard. Playing that Orisa, I feel like you just have to have a good and solid Orisa composition in your, in your sleeve right now, in, in the meta as it is. Uh, and they do have that. Uh, let's actually uh, take a look back at uh, some of our favorite moments of the day because this was the last match of our EMEA group stage. So I'm sure we have some uh, fancy schmancy highlands to choose from. Ah, uh, the Impero. Oh, the reverse sweep out of the Impero. This, I ran out of breath. Like, I needed a lung check <laughs> after this because it was 1v1, 2v1. Rockstars were coming back. Doom fist swaps, everything. <laughs> and the Impero got in Rockstar's head. We had our first rage quit. I don't, well, I don't know. You guys keep track of that. But our first rage I quit I've seen in a hey, long time. The, it ruined our stats, but it, it made us laugh. This was a series to go and rewatch. But I totally get it because everything was on the line for both of these players and you were right on the cusp of being able to take the series, get potentially a big upset over a team like Diampero, but it just all got taken away from you when Diampero clutched up in those final moments and were able to play together as a team and just get the better of, of your team comp. So I think like we're set up for a really good main event when it comes down to how EMEA is going to perform. Form. We are indeed. Let's take a look at the main event bracket on the EMEA side of things as we wrapped up stage two groups. Man, I'm seeing some juicy matches wow. right here. Yeah, oh yeah, they just uh, got themselves the, the absolute pleasure of going up against uh, Twisted Minds. So that's going to be at the Battle of the Pinks. I can appreciate that. Uh, the orange teams we put all the way in the top. Uh, Peps going up against SSG. So many good ones to choose from. Each of you gets to gas up one of the matchups. Uh, Necra, starting with you, what's your pick? What's your uh, pick to watch? Space Station Gaming versus Peps. So I think this was actually a team that Peps called out that they would love to be able to try to take down. And I think they have a really good shot to do that. Let's not forget that Peps versus Ents was a really close five map series. And Space Station, I think that they are one of the top teams at EMEA, but they're not unbeatable. Yeah, it, I'm going to skip the quarterfinals and just say we could have a rematch of Ents versus Twisted Minds of the grand final of the last main event if it goes the way of Twisted Minds and Ents in their quarterfinal. But judging by how all, oh, yeah, are just such an unpredictable team and they got backup plans, I don't think this is guaranteed for Twisted Minds. And they are extremely talented. They are the favorites to maybe even win it all again. But keep an eye for the semis, too. Absolutely. I love that you just skip the quarters. Like, you know what? Screw <laughs> your question. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I 
absolutely love that for myself. Thank you so much. But uh, yeah, that wraps up our EMEA group stage. Uh, that has been so much fun, honestly. We saw a lot of great surprises yesterday. It was a day of upsets today. Also, just incredible matches all around. But that is it for this portion of the day. And that also means that I have to say goodbye to Lemon and Necra. Thank you both so very much for joining me. Uh, we're now heading into a very short break. And uh, after that, we get ready to close out the NA group stage after this.
in an absolute shutout. Some kings were born to rule. Welcome back. Zoe here and joining me are Jaws and Mr. X. Are you still doing this casting thing, huh? This is a great script, so. Uh, it is. And honestly, flawless delivery is giving actor. 
That's what I've been doing in my off time. I've been practicing my acting skills. What have you been up to? It's been a long time. Obviously, my acting skills. No, I was. I went to Australia. Maybe you should take another few months off for that one. Yeah, I was on the. Uh, yeah, I gotta get a refund if those are my acting skills. <laughs> I went to Australia for a bit, had some fun. You know, uh, it was like kind of cold down there. New Zealand, you have lots of grass and sheep. I went to New Zealand for a bit. Uh, you know, the good good people, uh, decent coffee, I, okay, lots of animals. You should do. Me. Are you and a you travel okay. influencer now? I used to build you stuff in New Zealand. Like, There's nothing there. Okay, well, look, I mean, it's a long way away from New York. I expect a little, you know. There's a lot yeah, of grass. Mars. You got a lot of space to build some stuff. No. It's like, please, American Sprawl, please. Get some, get some stuff going over there. <laughs> a thief bug. Right. Uh, yeah, and follow Matt, Mr. X Morello for more traveling. Yeah. Very please. worldly. Input, very worldly. Such insight. Thank you so much. Uh, we will now move on to almost as interesting things as whatever Matt just said, and that is OWCS. NA is about to go down, and we're finishing off our group stages, and this is what our teams are playing for. Prizing, of course, as circuit points, and we've ramped it up a little bit, so uh, they get to take home a little bit more of those fancy fancy points, which they certainly want to have if they want to advance further into the season. Of course, the number one spot uh, from the main event will not just get a lot of cash and point nope they'll also get a direct invite to our first line event of the year taking place at the dream hack in dallas texas quick matt three reasons to join us at dream hack uh, i mean uh one obviously we're gonna be there uh two i mean if you just like video games in general dream hack is awesome to just experience all different types of games with your friends or whatnot uh and then three like pretty awesome location dallas you eat some good food down there Wow, Our you actually came out with the list. I was like, barbecue. Wow. <laughs> I was yeah. surprised that you actually came out with the list. I'm going to be honest. I Yeah, same. I yeah. Didn't, uh, didn't expect it. it. I, I went to Dream Hack Dallas last year. It was awesome. Pretty good yeah. time. Damn, pretty he is time. really well traveled, huh? That's crazy. Who'd have thought? Yeah, it's crazy. Who would have, who would have <laughs> indeed? Well, uh, now, of course, uh, before we're heading into all the action today and figure out who's going to get a little bit closer to getting at that number one spot at DreamHack, we have other fun things to talk about and see. Because, uh, you know, one of the great things about DreamHack as well as uh, the open competition we're playing through right now is that you see a lot of new faces. So you get to meet a lot of people from all walks of life uh, and you can watch them having a crack at it, like this guy season of Face It League is about to kick off for Overwatch. For some players, this isn't their first rodeo when it comes to competitive team leagues. Before rising to the top of the Overwatch scene, Emon was a player in Counter-Strike Team League, known as ESCA, who started from the Open Division and made it all the way to League Finals at LAN. From Rising Star to Player of the Week, Emon went through the full spectrum of a player's journey through team leagues. Legends have to get their start somewhere, while Emon's path led him to Overwatch. His teammate Skadoodle on Curse eventually became a Counter-Strike Major Champion with Cloud9, winning the E-League Boston Major in 2018. Registration for Season 1 of Face It League and Overwatch closes April 25th, and it's time for everyone to start their journey. Whether you're new to the game, a seasoned veteran, or ready to make a jump to the next level, Face It League is the place to be. Register for Face It League Season 1 today. And we do have Emong joining us now for a quick chat. Uh, I believe your mic is muted because I didn't hear the wow. Is it? No, is it actually. It? No, <laughs> so he's lying to you. So he's trolling. Maybe you should, maybe you should. But you saw his lips were moving, but I didn't hear his sound. Just saying. Well, I, I, uh, I didn't want to okay. step over, so it I was, went wow. Okay, it was a subtle wow. Also, I absolutely love the video because you decorated it yourself with the feathers and the achievements of a former teammate. <laughs> That's my way to do it. It's like, and that dude became champion. I yeah, he went and won the major. Yeah, he was a great friend. It was good. You know? <laughs> Thank you. And all of that thanks to you, Imong. Yeah, we can go with yeah. that if you'd like, yes. Yeah, like that's, that. narrative. that's the narrative we're running with. Yeah, Imong, you played a ton of different games competitively, right? Uh, I know in your past. Yeah. What do you think makes Overwatch like really kind of uh, different or even you know better in some ways than some of those other games? Very fast paced, and that's all it's, what it's always been for me. Like, there's a lot of games where it's a little bit slower, and like, you know, that's fine. I always enjoyed playing that, but I love Overwatch because it's fast paced. You can play, what, 40 different heroes now? I don't know, it's just a really fun team game. It just feels like it's very 
you know, it was a, it's a little bit different. Like, you know, when I played those games, it was more about like, you know, you throw a smoke grenade, you wait, you get down in 15 seconds. Overwatch is more like fast paced, go in there. And they're both great games, but just different play styles. So I always enjoy that. So I, same, actually. I, I love I love how dynamic and just alive it all feels and is. Uh, how's the face it experience uh, been like for you as a player? You know, it's been, we've been working with our, one of our support players, Custa, on trying to improve a little bit, but overall it's been like really, really fun. I've enjoyed it. Like it's been, being able to stream matches, I mean, as you know, we haven't been able to do any of this for like eight years in Overwatch almost. So being able to stream matches, watch matches, co-stream, you know, Team Overwatch is having a blast. And, and that's why I'm also excited for the Face It League because we're going to be able to like play in it and just kind of have matches every week now, which is super exciting, which is what we were used to in esports for a long time, where it was we had weekly matches, not like we have a tournament, three months off, tournament, three months off. Now it's matches every week, which I is great. I love that. Uh, okay, sticking on Overwatch then, do you have any grand plans mm -hmm. on how to carry Scott? Because my, I cannot carry that guy <laughs> for the life of me. Like, it is so no. hard. Like, I don't know how you do it, but you guys, I mean, relying on you mostly, like, how? how, how just how? There's, there's, there's nothing. We've we've kind of just accepted the idea that Custa will make sure that our roster is there and, like, readied up. So, like, Custa's become more of, like, the ready up person part of the team, making sure we're good mm -hmm. to go, making sure we're playing. And that's that's good enough for us, right? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of the rest. Okay, you only need one person to do that, thank god. <laughs> Costa just catching strays every single day on broadcast. I'm keeping the train, that's what everybody was doing! I love that. <laughs> <laughs> everybody was doing that, I had to keep it going. That's true, that's true, you gotta, gotta stick with it. Uh, now, I mean, you've uh, you've had a, a very long esports career already. Has it been like a favorite memory uh, for you personally that you would like to share? I, I've been doing this for way too long. I honestly, like, I just feel like I've been, always enjoyed just when I win. I think that's been my best memory. I know that's just like, oh no, like, it's this good, one yeah. moment, you know. It was, yeah, I just like won one. <laughs> yeah, winning was great. I loved it. Just winning games a lot was was always fun for me. Um, actually, it was a funny story too, because they mentioned Skadoodle there. Uh, actually, the reason why I got into Overwatch is because Skadoodle's best friend playing games growing up was Sefi, who was Brad, who became the coach. Huh of, oh. uh, you know, obviously yeah, became world. a coach in Overwatch. And he also was the one that got me to switch to Overwatch to play Overwatch. He's like, hey, I want you to play here because I met him that way. And that's how that all started. So Brad's actually the reason why I ended up playing Overwatch. So well, thanks, yep. Brad, I guess. So <laughs> we got that one. OK, then let me let me reframe the uh, the question then. Mm -hmm. What's what's on your list of things you want to achieve? Like what's what's out there? What are you striving for? Oh, okay. Well, uh, we need to get um, Team Overwatch all the way to the highest division, and we actually need to make it into one of these games so we can show you that w we can meme our way to the top eight one day. That's it. You know, I'm, in I'm inspired by Aw oh, Yeah. <laughs> I'm inspired by Aw oh, Yeah, right? Look at that. <laughs> Playing some Wrecking Ball, Junkrat, doing whatever they want. We can do it too. Or we can't. Anything but it's is possible. Fun. That's right. Yeah, Everything exactly. is possible in the world of Overwatch, especially if you have an open competition format like the Face It Leagues as well as OWCS. Imong, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck for what's next. Thank you so much for having me. And then, Matt, I didn't know you were still casting. <laughs> I'm, I'm, gone. I'm gone for two weeks. I'm gone for two weeks. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, people take vacations. People got birthdays. I mean, come on, man. I think it's because uh, you literally took off without even saying a word. You just yeah. don't show up. Well, I also think as well like, because maybe like, something bad uh, happened. Because like from uh, Overwatch League season one until the final season, I had only missed like maybe one week for like all those years. Uh, so it's kind of rare, you know, I, I mean, Mitch, right? I mean, every every weekend he's on a different, you know, luxury yacht, right? We expect him not to be here. But, you know, I'm I'm like a, I'm like our Cal Ripken, our Iron Man, you know, I'm, I'm here all the time. So it's a big shot. <laughs> it's not true. Like, what are you saying? <laughs> Brad, is, I, I kind of tuned out, honestly, like half the sentence. And I was like, this is Matt just jumps into Splat references. I'm like, boom, I just go straight out of my head. Yeah. Like, sure, yeah, it sounds There's good. Yeah, great. I understood that one. They got that one. Yeah, and just for those five people, it was absolutely worth it. Now, of course, Matt is a man of many talents. You know, he's a caster, a travel guide for some none and uh, also he will be registering himself and his lucky teammates for the season one of uh, the face it league did you know that yeah i mean i'm yeah. excited to play like Imong said 
Uh, there's nothing better than having like a, a set time of week where you can like have some games like ready to go, right? Uh, you kind of bully all your friends into playing with you. You have like a set time to game and that appointment gaming is always fun. Uh, it's yeah. always great to play Overwatch in like a serious group as well. That's right. So use the link right there. There, there. Wait, I got it. There we go. Almost pointed. There, there we go. We Down there. Uh, yeah, signups open until 25th of April. So we have four more days to get the team together and potentially win it all. Now we're moving on to our first match of the NA region group stage. Uh, uh, group stage two uh, is on the way and almost wrapped up. First things first though, let's take a look at the group standings to see who's already qualified and who's still in it to win it. Yeah, I mean, Group A, that was a fun match yesterday with Who is Goldfish. I think there's a lot of teams that have, have the aura of like, oh yeah, and like some of the one trick teams. And I think Who is Goldfish is a little bit of that, uh, which is really exciting. Group B, obviously, this is going to be the big decider. And one of the best games, I think, this weekend is the Timeless versus uh, Citrus Nation, which is going to be super sick. But I'm still excited for students of the game. They're still 2-0. I expect them to go further in main event, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, students of the game was a team in the, you know, the last stage we were all really excited about, right? With kind of like how they were looking, you know, with a uh, PG. I I'm excited for like that timeless Citrus Nation game, like you mentioned out of all the games today, obviously like, you know, on paper, right? We have to see how they kind of play out. Seems like this could potentially be the closest one, uh, but we do know how strong timeless is, right? With their great performance yeah. in that first stage. Well, you're in luck because we don't have to wait long for this one. We're actually going to kick things off with the Group B Decider match between Timeless and Citrus Nation. Now, looking at the rosters, starting with the Timeless roster, the last time we saw them play uh, was a week ago in the Midlands match against Luminosity Gaming, and they pushed that to a very close 3 to 2 3 to two series. I had it right. Uh, which, yeah, don't doubt I mean, honestly, they, they could have won it. They're just... Yeah. This is such a stacked roster. It's crazy. It is super sick. Like Rocket and Chopper are the standouts for this team, like for sure. But the backline is also super solid. Open has like a wealth of experience to kind of pull from in the Overwatch League and just in general, like even in like uh, Korean contenders in the Korean scene and CJ as well. Like this team is just ridiculously stacked. The tank players too. And it's funny, obviously we always kind of uh, talk about DPS, but Winston's gotten a little bit more popular even though we're seeing a lot of Orisa, but they have the flexibility there too. This team is one to watch. Um, this group is going to be pretty hard for them, but going that close against luminosity is uh, just unbelievable i think a lot of people have them pegged at winning this game but it could be close against citrus nation who've proven themselves uh, a couple of times in the past so we'll see i mean it's always a really scary scenario when you're in like a one and done type of game right like even if you know citrus nation you know you play this series 10 times right you know maybe you think timeless wins you know uh, all 10 or you know maybe nine right you just need that one game uh, in this type of scenario uh, for Citrus Nation to move on and like be a huge upset here. So uh, really looking at Lethal on this roster. Uh, I know we've uh, seen some good things from him in the past. So uh, seeing if you can bring that into the series today, especially with how strong the DPS are for Timeless. But we yeah. do have to talk about Lethal here though, because he's one of oh, the yeah. new pieces, right, for the Citrus Nation. They had made quite some adjustments from stage two to stage, uh, stage one to stage two. They say goodbye to Manually, Eric Ek, and Z-Man, and then they added Footloose and Lethal. Uh, also, in their support line, Neutral uh, is joining them this stage as well. Do you feel like they have that synergy already? Have they gelled well enough, Jaws? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty tough. There's pretty, still a pretty short amount of time, right, in, uh, like, changing your roster up. But Letha's also a really solid player. He's always been solid. And I think even on his time on the London Spitfire, he just proved himself as, like, a, a consistent player. But now we're on a new playing field, a different... You're not facing proper and, like, he sang every week, yeah. you know? Like, you're not facing, like, the goats to touch the game. So I think Lethal has got a really big chance to prove himself here. I mean, Citrus Nation, too, they've made it to both the group stages, but they've never managed to make it to the main event. Like, this is right... This is it right here. This is their chance to really punch up. And, uh, I mean, viewer predictions here are very much clearly going in favor of Timeless. Rightfully so. They are the favorite to win it, but it wouldn't be a massive upset either if Citrus Nation would take sure. this one away from them because they have what it takes. Let's see if they can get the job done. Guys, take over for our map set. Oh yeah, Citrus Nation versus Timeless. Matt, let's get well, into it. Map number one. I, I was going to say, Jack, it feels like Citrus Nation is in the same spot they were in like stage one, right? I think we thought like, you know, in stage one, 
like oh their match is going to be the closest one like you know they they believe they had a three two uh you know it was like a rematch in their stage one where they ended up winning the first time uh was it lg if off the top of my head i think they ended up beating right it was like a big of a, a shock and then uh they ended up playing them again and ended up losing uh there in the lower bracket so uh, kind of in that same situation i think though here against timeless right uh very difficult opponent i think regardless you know of you know, what the the meta will be right um so they had their work cut out from today but also a much different citrus nation roster from stage one to stage two yeah exactly and yeah that that upset game was against lfo like an lfo were stacked as well coming into yeah, a, a, yeah it was like seeper uh, seeker top dragon like liar mcd etc um obviously mcd now playing in, in eu but it was a ridiculous upset that was a f five mapper too like a, not a lot of people kind of predict that was like one of the biggest upsets i feel like we had in stage one definitely like, overall yeah. like, like it may yeah, have been, for sure you no know, at least in groups right all right oasis though our first map Timeless versus Citrus Nation. Citrus Nation dying to get to that main event after losing 3-0 both to LG and LFO in the group stage to side of matches last time around. Let's lock in, see what's up. And uh, what do you think we're going to see here, Matt? Obviously, a lot more of a risk there, but we've seen uh, different shades of monkey. Not sure we're going to see Wrecking yeah, Ball, I mean, to be honest, but a little bit more dive uh, sometimes in, in NA at the moment. It just feels like Orisa is just so well-rounded, right? Like, let's say you come out and play the dive, the other team plays the Orisa. Like, the Orisa is pretty decent against, like, Winston, you know, base compositions or even, like, Doomfist stuff, where it feels like you eventually end up back on the Orisa anyway, where I think that's kind of how we end up in metas like this, right? Where, you know, dive is really strong, then somebody runs Orisa, and then that kind of works against it, and then it becomes a, okay, well, you know, in order to, you know, not fall behind in terms of, like, ultimates and, uh, you know, in terms of like team fights, right? You kind of have to play the same thing, right? So I, I think you know, the Arisa comp is probably the the safest, best one overall at the moment. Uh, where both teams will be running the Sojourn with this, so it'll be Citrus Nation here trying to control high ground over the point early. The point. Yeah, done a good job of it so far, stopping Rocket from getting into the backline. Chopper trying to find an off angle, gets instantly speared. Now they are putting pressure on the point. Someone from Citrus Nation is going to have to touch. I mean, they've got Zeb on the point right now, but Zeb is super low already. All the cooldown juice, and Riker just kind of runs at him. Pretty easy peasy. Chopper save there, but with the Suzu. And still in control of the point are Timeless. Citrus Nation kind of putting Zeb on a little island there, just unable to get support. And it'll be Timeless capping first. Uh, yeah, and especially like if your Arisa kind of gets caught off on, on the side there and, and gets taken out. I mean, between the spear spin and fortify, like has so much survivability on the point, especially if you're going to have like DPS play off angles, right? There needs to be somebody there to be able to contest. The Arisa is it, and then once it falls, it's uh, all timeless. All right, Lethal just trying to build up a railgun against Riker. Slowly but surely now, Citrus Nation are making their move. Onto the point. Looks like Riker's gonna forgive a little bit of this space for the time being, but can't get, forgive too much more. There's a spear here from Zeb, and a spear as well, actually, just thrown straight at Riker to force him off the point, and that's a cap for Citrus Nation. Trading Jacob for Rocket here, so here's a four on four, with Zeb still holding down the fort. Riker trying to find a little off angle, spears the enemy Arissa away from all those heals, but here comes the rush. Easy kill onto Lethal. A return rush from Citrus Nation, but they haven't really got much else to really use. I mean, it's only the Kiriko and the Arissa utilizing that rush right now. Susan Gold already used, and Riker's still got this Terror Surge. So Citrus Nation just trying to buy as much time as possible as they still have control. And it's actually CJ that falls first. Terror Surge coming out for Citrus Nation. Just grab everybody in and plump them all together. There's a bit of a messy trade of kills here, but Citrus Nation still in control, forcing the swift step of the Suzu. And Timus are going to have to force it to use Ultimus. They use the sound barrier to keep themselves in, and Citrus Nation, they're going to lose the point, but that cost time is big. Yeah, and I think Timeless was looking to try and, like, hold on to Sound Barrier there all through that, right? It's like an early Katsune rush they use. I think they probably wanted to actually hold on to that beat getting through it, right? Because now they know that Citrus Nation on the other side is going to come back with their own Sound Barrier here to potentially even open up this fight, right? So, see how Citrus Nation decides to use this. Zeb will move on to the point. This will just get, you know, Riker to come down here. And just this step up to Pulse Bomb that goes uh, from Rocket on the upside doesn't connect with anything. Is Chopper's going to end up 
Oh, using the overclock here and finds one. And this is actually great, though, for Timeless, right? Now you're not going to invest in this fight if you're Citrus Nation. You're just going to hold on this beat back up. It allows Timeless to gain some more percentage. Bro, Tap recalled into that railgun. I don't think Tap even saw the Sojourn either. Rather unfortunate, as one might say. Tap's back, though. All good. They're chilling. Sound by available for Jacob now in Citrus Nation, but final fight for Timeless. Or at least they want to make it back. 90% on the board. There's the beat. They take high ground. They're trying to push people off. And you can see Opener just skirting the skies. Nice little two-person boot. But they managed to just surf their way back onto the map. Time is now at 99% almost. As uh, Chopper does end up going down. Riker just hugging this small corner. So that's Terra Surge. A lot of ability to kind of stay alive and stick onto the point. He even received the Suzu in time too to stay alive for a little bit longer. But Time is happy just to lose this fight, Matt. As they know they got yeah. one fight to go. Yeah, I mean, that's totally fine if you lose that for Timeless, right? Like, as long as you get 99, which they obviously did, right? So they now get that sound barrier out. They come back. Kitsune Rush, right? There's going to be one on the other side for neutral, but you can just trade those out. You have the extra survivability with the, you know, kind of extra fortify with Terra Surge. And then by that time, Opener's got a sound barrier again. You have a huge advantage. Tap just set. Harassing the back line there. Oh, just spot the uh, enemy tracer in a rocket. But here comes Lethal. Still playing on that rush too. That's a double hit on CJ. Second shot didn't even need to land. Zeb finishing off the kill. And now Lethal taken to the skies and taking Chopper's head clean off. As Tynus, they do lose a lot here. But still another fight in the books. They got beat. They got, they're got. they going to have a pulse bomb. And they've got Terra Surge for this next one. Good to see yeah, it just makes it a bit scarier, right? You know, they kind of obviously end up trading out those rushes like we talk about. But kills come in for Citrus Nation early on which now is going to allow them to get to 99 where this is pretty scary you have to capitalize on this sound barrier here if you're timeless otherwise citrus nation going to steal his first point all right jacob is he going to be able to get the sound barrier i mean 75 percent a couple of amp ups might do it but will the fight last that long there's the beat from opener wants to set the pace of the fight a spear lands straight in his chest pushes him back a little bit but time is up capping over the pressure of that sound barrier. Tap with the pulse bomb. Gets the stick too. But the Suzu came in just in time to save Chopper's life. And CJ there with a revenge kill too. A kunai from across the map. Riker does end up falling here. But I mean, Zev is in no man's land. He has no support to back him up. And Timeless looking like they're going to take this round. And that they do. Citrus Nation end up going down. Is that just overwhelming advantage of the beat? And like I mentioned, is Jacob going to get beat? No, it's 8% off. Probably would have been the difference maker. I kind of like how Citrus Nation played that, though, towards the end, even in a loss, right? I mean, uh, Sound Barrier Aggression comes in for Timeless. They just try and, like, back out and disengage from it because they know that Jacob's really close to that beat. Uh, it's just they lose people when they, you know, the point ultimately flips. They have to step up to contest, right? Uh, and they lose people when they're doing that contest and Jacob just a little bit off from that Sound Barrier. But... Uh, Kind of like the strategy and the, the logic is there from Citrus Nation, right? I think that was a really nice way to play it. It just doesn't work out in their favor at the end. Wow. All right, same kind of comments here, but Luther running out on the cast. Me and, talk, me and Scott talked about this the other day, just how cast and Sojourn a little bit interchangeable right now. Do you just call them up and be like, hey, what do you think about cast and Sojourn? Like, yeah, that's know, what I do in the middle of the actually. night. You just like FaceTime them. Hey, just need your opinion on this real quick. <laughs> just, I'm in a rank game right now. What do I pick? <laughs> Maybe I pick Sojourn, actually. Jacob got insta-killed. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's kind of the, the thing with Sojourn, right? Uh, just the, the ability to... It, it's so difficult to determine, like, when the opposing Sojourn, like, has enough energy to insta-kill or whatnot, right? Like... All of a sudden, you just take a big burst of damage you weren't expecting, right? And it just kind of throws your team into chaos. And you know, as we're talking about that, it's lethal actually <laughs> taking out opener there on the high ground. All right, they trade Lucio. It's all good. Shop hunting for this Kiriko. Oh my word! Okay, neutral. Oh, oh, I mean, no switch, <laughs> I suppose. Or Suzu available. Very unfortunate there for the back line of situation. All good though, because the front line won the fight, and Jacob's back, and they got a kill too. Yeah, I mean, probably, uh, I know the, the best scenario there is even trying to get for that health pack, like, but that probably didn't have Swift Step available to even make it back towards the point. But also, his teammates were so pushed in towards the opposite side, it was probably even out of range uh, about a lot of them. So, it'll be Citrus Nation controlling the point first here and controlling the high ground. I think where the Cassidy, like, wins out is just, obviously, survivability, right? Mobility, you know, first damage, the Sojourn's going to win, but... I uh, know in these like long, prolonged fights, that's where the Cassidy can really make an impact. All right, Luka trying to dig some heads across the map. That magnate. Oh, that did land, by the way. Yeah, it was yeah, right in the did. corner, but it did. Turnball. Don't worry. 
High Noon available for Lethal as well. Should buy a lot of time here for Citrus Nation if they need it. There's the rush. Lethal a little bit scared now, I would imagine, to unlock the High Noon. You're a bit of a... Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's a good spear from Riker. I don't even think he saw that one coming. Terra Surge comes out for Citrus Nation. Uh, Riker even, Susan. sorry. There's a timeless... Still have that sound barrier from opener, but unfortunately dying here. It's not the, not the best look for the Lucio when you uh, definitely need it. 60% for Citrus Nation now. And like you said, man, good Suzu to help out the rest of the team is Citrus Nation. Taxi's back, or Jacob does. And with this sound barrier on both sides, like, uh, it's a rough fight now for Timeless. Yeah, and I also feel like the you know, what we saw there, there's so many ways to just evade the terror surge like right there a lot of players stuck inside for sister station but a really nice time suzu there for neutral keeps everybody topped up and i, I think this is a, a must win fight for timeless right you're getting up to like 80 percent on the point like if you have another attempt it's just going to be junk after this is this a speed boost oh they kill Riker. i mean that is massive they don't want to invest the sound barrier there because it's just really early and now they have to to try and push on through yeah. it's going to be a great response there from jacob they can't even kill Zeb either. I mean, no. by Spear Spin, it was like, oh, I see a critical health Orisa from across the map. Don't worry, she has two uh, CDs to help her survive. I mean, that should just be it, really, for Citrus Nation. 99 to 0. That's uh, really rough, losing Riker there, like you were saying, Matt. Maybe if Riker survives, they can go for the re-engage with the sound barrier, but yeah, the Cassidy, the classic Cass moment where you pop high noon, then just drop to the floor and insta-bin somebody. Stop. Yeah, and I mean, you know, if you were gonna, you were asking Timeless, they had to sacrifice the time, target, right? Riker would not have been the one. Yeah. Uh, sound sure. barrier as well. They probably were gonna try and put some real pressure on the high ground, like push all the way through. Uh, but as soon as you lose the Arisa, they, you know, they, they just get Zeb in a position where he just spear spins into the opponent, just starts taking names there at the end, picks up a few kills. So, uh, thought this would be a close series. Uh, you know, obviously, I think Timeless a pretty heavy favorite, but Citrus Nation, no slouches. And we're going to go to a final point here on Oasis. Oh, yes, we are. Uh, my favorite point, City Center. We see how long the fights take, because uh, <laughs> yesterday, the game, some of the points you, you, took so long to take. You get first point, you get first point control here, right? Like, you know, it, it's wild because you can almost get to like, you know, 80, 90, right? But yeah, then it doesn't even guarantee game. a win, right? Because the fights <laughs> go for so long, you, the point flips, right? Like, yeah, it's a little wild. It's a little wacky and wild. I like it though, good stuff. Uh oh, well, well, that's rough. Lucio players do what Lucio players do best sometimes. A little, little feed to start off with. Not great. That's the second time now a Lucio player has died first. And yeah, really there, was tough. An, there was an assist there from Zeb. I wonder if it was like a, you know, a, a, a javelin into, you know, some damage there from Lethal. But that is a sick shot there from Chopper at range. I, I think Lethal kind of did one of those things where you back up into a wall and you're like, there shouldn't be a wall here, there shouldn't be a wall. And he just got Yeah, stuck you're trying to walk and you're just you're <laughs> not, you're moving nowhere. Exactly. Little rough from Lethal. Citrus Nation did end up capping that. Like you were saying, you can kind of perma stall here, but you haven't really got the damage to sustain you through. And off angling Sojourn versus the Arista on the other side, you can see Zeb kind of juggling the point, juggling the cooldowns, making sure they stay alive. Here's the Fortify now. Just trying to push Riker away. As Citrus Nation gonna have to back off. Zeb waiting for the cooldowns yet again, but I mean, uh, Timeless already at half the point already caps. Here's a Katsuna rush for both squads now. There's Zeb setting up for a nice little off angle on to the back line. As they're trying to run away, don't want to get speared out, but it didn't matter in the end. Pulse Bomb goes a little bit wide there for Rocket, doesn't end up happening. And even a, uh, a Railgun shot, I think that was a Suzu eat, but it's uh, the wrong icon. Uh, not a Suzu, a Pulse Bomb eat, but I think that was the wrong icon. But a Pulse Bomb did land for tap, at least, onto opener. That'd be Citrus Nation once again, like wiping the floor with Timus there. But Timus with a good uh, initial reflip grants him 26%. Yeah, and before you were saying, like, oh, you know, they may not have enough damage to, you know, hold on, like, or win a fight, right, where Citrus Nation had to control the point. Like, it's almost unnecessary. Like, I feel like at least, you know, in my opinion, like, it, sure, if you win that fight, great, you're going to control a point. But, like, just keeping the point contested and forcing the other team to waste ultimates is also just as good here, especially on this point, right? Just extending that percentage even further where... Timeless here should have a big advantage, right? You know, they're going to have this overclock plus sound barrier combo and nothing on the other side. Oh, lucky CJ was there to help Chopper finish that kill. He couldn't quite catch Lethal on that second shot, but those Kunai's landed straight and true. Both of is doing a uh, staring, <laughs> staring contest as Jacob was just circling the inside of the pavilion trying to stay alive. He was asking for him there, I feel like. He kind of was. <laughs> he was, he was <laughs> kind of asking for it, I feel like. 
Okay, like, team, please, I'm stalling point as he just circles the high ground. Yeah. To be fair, Matt, they got 80%. You're not too mad about that if you switch a station. No, I mean, you're just trying to look for ways to just keep the point going, right? Uh, we, we see Lucio's kind of just you know, wall riding everywhere, just d dancing a little bit around that center column. So the Jacob is trying to do there just gets uh, timeless. They, they were just not playing any game. Sometimes you see the Lucio linger for a bit. They just turn and everybody just burned him down. Oh, nice spear there onto CJ. And here we go. The Arista's trading CDs. Oh, narrowly missed out, CJ. A little bit quicker on the mark there. Sound barriers very far away, but those rushes are not neutral. CJ just getting those online in time for this uh, preceding fight, you'd imagine. Both racers kind of dueling out on the sidelines. Of course, Timers want to extend this fight as much as possible. Rocket with control of that mega health back. Here comes the Terror Surge for Zeb. Actually, he's oh. opener of all people. And that is a Riker trying to turn the ties there. Just jump straight in yet again to try and spin someone up but nothing happened at all and i think that was another pulse bomb eat there as well from zeb that spear spin just denying rocket over and over again rocket even switching to winnermaker to try and find some find some shots and uh, nothing could be found timeless lose the point and now we're in final fight citrus nation in control yeah i mean they're gonna have to get a contest right zeb with a spear spin knocks the arisa back it looks like it'll be rocket who just gets a touch send it into ot now you get the arisa on the point I mean, well, ultimate, she really got to play with here. Time has got the sound barrier coming up, but they've got to imagine that Jacob's going to have the same thing available. Of course, we know it's about 15% away. We'll see if Time is just kind of want to enter onto the back line. They've got it just now. Open is in a good spot, too. Could catch five if he wanted to, but this is going to give Citrus Station enough time to earn a beat for themselves. Here's the overclock from Lethal 2, trying to catch the head of the tracer, but that overhill just making sure Rocket can stay alive. Really well. Where's the kills for Citrus Nation? Finally, they end up coming through. It's opening a sniped. Both sound barriers gone. Now you're hoping Chopper can come up big with a railgun of their own, but they actually just get pushed off. And that will be Citrus Nation with the cap, with the win. That is a 2-1 on the first map to take a lead in the series. Uh, yeah, probably a, a, a bit of a shocker, right? Maybe a little bit of a wake-up call uh, for Timeless. But, uh, you know, like we mentioned at the top of the show, we probably expected this to be the most competitive of some of the games we have yeah. today, uh, for NA at least. And man, it delivers there in that, you know, first map on Oasis. I think it's so scary when you have matchups like this, you know, teams that... Uh, no, obviously Timeless are very talented. You say Citrus Nation, you know, in the ballpark, right? Uh, with Arisa and Sojourn in the mix, like, it, it's just, uh, what, like, your, your Sojourn hits shots, the other one, you know, doesn't, right? Like, a few of those fights come down to, what, them getting a kill on opener early on? Like, the yeah. the margin for error is so slim uh, that that's where, like, a upset could easily kind of happen. Oh, this was Tap Regal. That's a real rough if you're Tap. You're like, where did the Sojourn come from? Just uh, re You don't even see him. it. Yeah, exactly. It was behind him. Unfortunate. Unfortunate scenes. Yeah, the, a lot of the times, Matt, I think you're right in saying, like, it was Opener or Jacob getting caught out first, either body shot the railgun or, like, there was a couple of times Lethal managed to land a couple of nice little shots uh, on the Cassidy. I mean, that boot was so nice. Lethal didn't see that spear coming either. A lot of, uh, lot of environmental potential there on the side of the, inside of the map. That was a really good high noon as well. I think Citrus Station did a really good job of uh, also recognizing the ring condition. And uh, something that me and Scott talked about a lot yesterday as well was how different teams kind of approach the Arisa matchup. If you just want to focus down the Arisa and just force the cooldowns, force the enemy Arisa back, or do you want to focus on everything else around and then kind of deal with the Arisa later? Both teams are opting for, for the latter, it feels like. Yeah, that's... Oh, Two Arisas right. dueling, and then, okay, we're going to try and, like, get the supports with the help of the spear, or, like, pick up someone with a railgun. Like, that's how these teams both want to play right now, it feels like. Yeah, I mean, you see the, the stats here for, you know, uh, map one. I mean, fairly even, like, across the board, right? Uh, I know the in terms of damage dealt, I mean, 6k is really kind of, like... You know, minuscule in terms of the the damage difference between these teams so really close uh competitive map number one with citrus nation taking it yep we're gonna jump to a quick break though timeless versus citrus nation a decider match for a place in the main event do not go anywhere we'll see you in a sec
Okay, let's push, let's push down. Ready? Yeah. Okay, yeah, push, push down, push, push. Just hang on. Walk me, walk me. Never You can't walk me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 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 Come on, come on, <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Dude, I love I love it especially when there's like someone does social like why are they here bro? Like why? That's so funny. And they did uh, just to highlight something in that clip as well, they did a really good job of like stopping opener and the Soj like getting behind them. Like Chopper was trying to set up for a big flank with the sound barrier with the overclock, but they were just not able to get it done. A little rough there. A little uh, substitution though. Coming in for Timeless. Sunjun in as Chopper takes a back seat. And normally when we see uh, Sunjun in Mac, it's normally a yeah. Sojourn perma pick. Yeah, we, we've seen them make this sub a few times, right? Uh, I know whether it be this or last stage, right? Where uh, Sunjun comes in. Uh, I know we, I think in like the, even the finals, right? Uh, I know I think last uh, stage, you know, really they had Chopper in early, Sunjun in the middle, and then Chopper in late. Like, uh, they do move around these DPS quite often. But yes, I think this is probably a, we're going to do a Sojourn insta-lock all, all game long. Yeah, you don't you don't mind that at all. We could play another long range hit scan, but so just is so powerful. I was curious. If Why would you at this like point? A, yeah, it's just like well, I mean you can also play Widow, but especially if you're on the attack. People stop doing that, by the way. The the Widow we saw a little bit in EU before uh, NA started, but the <laughs> you can do it with a Life Weaver, but the Mercy Damage Boost jump shot with the Widow, like I think it, look people who poke at the very beginning, you might as well. It takes like five seconds. How I mean, many times it. has that been successful? Probably like I know, but it takes one like out of five a seconds. thousand. It does not take that long. It doesn't take like a whole attack's worth of time. I know Jake doesn't like it, but like, come on, it's it takes like five ten seconds. It's one grapple. It's one grapple. Jake, Jake is so anti-fun, right? Yeah, exactly. He is. Yeah. Each one's Quake model characters for everything, so everything looks the cool. same. Yeah, they're not doing it optimally, right? Though they don't have the Life Weaver, they don't have the the Mercy. The Mercy, I think you definitely need, but oh, Sunshine's not even gonna do it. He's gonna switch to us no. so straight away. He's like, nah. You know what? That's fine. Yeah, Jake in the other rib, bro. That's what it was. Uh, another mirror matchup, though, right? Just kind of like how we saw, you know, for most of map number one, we did see some Cassidy uh, from Citrus Station, uh, but. Mirror matchup here is it looks like Sunjun trying to take a little bit of an off angle, right? Trying to like bully Citrus Nation back towards the point, right? That allows him to get like, you know, fire from both sides. You see where he kind of right, rotates around that pillar. You want to try and push them back towards this payload here at the moment, right? And then create a really nice crossfire. So it's taking so much damage, a really early use of that four fly as well. It's not a good look right now for Citrus Nation's defense. Riker is dead, but I don't think they've really got the firepower, especially with Sonjin, again, taking crazy off angles. It's doing so much work, man. Well, what's your opinion there? And like, I, I feel like Citrus Nation just gave up so much space, right? I feel like Timeless was able to just get in, force them back to the point with relative ease. Uh, and then even then, like they were able to just kind of like push them off the point. I almost feel like you have to, you know, play around that central pillar and either play like close and really fight that, you know, for that yeah. space or force them to one side, right? Not allow them to kind of take both angles and then just you kind of get pushed back. Ooh. I know kind of where Lethal is standing at the moment. Oh, nice stick by Rocket. Pretty early push there from Timeless. They wanted to, or uh, from Citrus Nation either. They wanted to stop that gate from opening, but yeah, they're unable to do so sadly. We've seen a, little, uh, a couple of little first holds um, over the last uh, day or so. It's been quite successful almost, sometimes, yeah. but it's if, kind of tough. If you're going to go for the gate, like, hold, though, you're almost better off on the first point before you even have it taken it playing close, right? Like, because you're almost not going to get that second fight anyway. This will be Kitsune Rush on the high ground here. Is I feel like Timeless is in a position, Jack, where they can really blow this over. I mean, you see where the payload's moving? Like, you know, Timeless, you know, it ends up, you know, using this beat, maybe, you know, uh, taking advantage here. You can see the payload get through most of the bridge. Yeah, especially with this beat as well. They really want to prolong this fight. Speaking of sound barriers here, Citrus Nation just running into Riken now, pushing me off the high ground. They want to be able to secure this space. Railgun overclock here from uh, Sunjun. Quite far away from the rest of the fight, and CJ and Rocket are already dead. A terror surge from Zeb, a little interesting. I thought maybe you want to save that one. It was, I think it was a 1v2 on the point, or like a 2v2 at least, but all good. Just uh, securing that one. Not the worst thing in the world, especially since Sunjin doesn't have that railgun anymore. But they did get that payload quite far, Matt, but I don't think far enough to really, uh, really mean a whole bunch here, because now Citrus Nation, they just retake control of high ground. 
Yeah, and this is, I think, where, like, it really starts for Timeless. You know, I, I think they were kind of, like, cruising all the way through. But now that Citrus Nation has control of that high ground, right, how do you go about pushing into this? How do you go about breaking it? Typically, we see teams take, like, loads of damage on the walk in, right? But it looks like Riker and at least, uh, you know, one other player underneath here just trying to get some pressure on the cart, right? Just allow some open space for the rest of the team to make it on through. Yeah, you can't put Riker on that Polo Tally. Player model a little bit too big. You can put the Tracer. Lethal with the overclock. Oh, spot Sunjin with the dash. Oh, nice shot from Lethal. Cross map. Hit Sunjin directly in the skull. They're going to try and stop uh, Lethal getting away with more damage as they do a uh, assume position on the high ground now. You see Rocket there double blinking off a fight just to get back to the payload. Just further pressure in the payload. It's going to force Citrus Nation to do something, and uh, that something is forced Riker to, uh, to low ground again. Citrus Nation, their ability to just counter-rotate over and over again is really nice. Timus is still getting a lot of time on the payload here, as Timus end up flipping the map on them. Here comes the rush on the bridge as well. It's going to be a little bit rough, so it will be neutral responding with a rush of their own. Right, taking a lot of damage. Pulse in the back too. I believe that was Suzu. No hit marker to be found from Taps Pulse. These rushes are going to fade away eventually as time is going to kind of steal the bot or steal the payload even. As Zeb just has to step forward to be able to contest, but he requires so much support. Somehow he's being kept alive and with Rocket's demise here, time is in a, a sorry state. Luckily though, Sonjin ends Zeb's life quick sharp as Riker now tries to hound down this Lucio with the help of this sound barrier and they still got control of the bots. A late B from Jacob does hit four and lethal. Neutral, they're all able to jump on the, uh, the payload eventually. Three meters to go as Timeless with a little bit of a cheeky play stealing that uh, payload away they, almost managed to get the cap yeah they kind of like back out to the opposite side right uh, and they end up taking the payload and forcing citrus nation across the bridge and making it really difficult to do so and you know jacob comes in with a sound barrier there at the end probably needed is uh now you see one player here from citrus nation just kind of guarding the payload right it's so close you don't want to allow like a back cap from like a tracer or whatnot uh, but I do feel like how you mentioned, Citrus Nation done a great job of like almost just beating Timeless to the spot most of the time, right? Like knowing where they're going to rotate and being in a position to fight or cut that off at the moment. Well, they're going to do the dosi do again. Another slow waltz on this high ground. Looks like Timeless have decided better of it, especially with these rushes coming up again. But it will be Citrus Nation reclaiming a lot of that space. Good spear on to Zeb. And here comes the overclock, Riker. I mean, he is in no man's land right now. Desperately needs support. Both uh, Sojins have unleashed their overclock. But here comes the terror surge to stop Sojin doing really all of anything. Kind of trapped in this small room. All good, though, because Opener landed the kill. Does end up getting taken out, but here's the rush on the point for Timeless. Neutral's only just early his, but I don't think Neutral's even going to really need it. Ends up popping it anyways. Jacob doesn't end up falling. Spawn positions are pretty close for Citrus Nation here, Matt. But Timeless, yeah. they're trying to hold on, but are unable to get anything done. Yeah, and Tap did a great job just staying alive, right? You had Tap and Neutral there, able to contest, stay alive. You get Zeb now back on the D.Va. Going to go back to spawn here, switch to Orisa as... Now you have it down below 30 seconds here. Riker's going to go over to Winston just to be able to make it back, get back in the fight. Because also, look at this. I mean, you have high ground control for Citrus Nation, right? You can just put so much damage down as they come in. All it's going to take is getting a one-player advantage here going into this final fight. Riker gets low. Riker is just going to get uh, just detonated on the point. Like, there is no way you survive against Orisa in that close quarters. And this looks like the end of the road for Timeless's push here, just before that second point. Desperation swap there onto the Winston to try and get some more sticking power. But Citrus Nation with a fantastic defense. Bro, they are oh, right in map yeah. on this map. Like, they're uh, just counter-rotating over and over again. The defense is sick considering they basically played no defense on point A, and then they really allowed the payload to get, like, what? Like, underneath that first archway, right? I mean, that was basically just kind of like one elongated fight, right? They tried to like fight for door, they end up losing, they give up all that payload progress. After that, it was like, you know what? Timeless had the opportunity where they kind of like, you know, got the cart, were running away with it, like where they were kind of like almost, you know, back happening in a way. Uh, where Citrus Nation was pretty much dominant throughout the rest of that, right? So I think if you're Citrus Nation, you have to look at this and be like, hey, Let's get a good point A take, give ourselves some time, right? You're really like, what, two fights, you know, from you know, point A, from being able to put yourself in a spot to go up 2-0. Uh, 
Against a team like Timeless, you can't give that opportunity away, right? Especially in a, in a decider must-win game. To be able to start off the series going 2-0, uh, you, you feel really good about your chances the rest of the way. It puts all the pressure on Timeless from here on out. You can't allow them to steal this map, especially with how good you did on defense. Yeah, Sisters Nation feeling like a brand new beast right now. Coming off of a, a high, obviously, winning against uh, Daybreak in the elimination match. Let's see how Tynus end up with this defense. Same kind of compositions, no real shocks here. Let's we'll see if Citrus Nation can uh, outwalt uh, Timeless this time around. Because they kind of, like you said before, Matt, they kind of let first point go pretty quickly. I mean, they let first point go, and then they also didn't really have a first fight with like high ground control, right? They opted to like push in, go for that door and they end up just falling there, right? And I uh, you know that's when you get the picture-in-picture the picture of the Lucio just moving the bot uncontested as they took it to the high ground. Shroud to the back line for Zep, using four to five. Oh, that Suzu went a little bit wide. Which one might uh, regret missing that one. Yeah, there it is. There's the damage. Went past the Orisa, sadly. Good first fight from Timeless. This is what I this is what I thought that Citrus Nation should have done, right? When you, we talked about, you know, their defense, like did, did they kind of gave up so much space? I just kind of like how you just push into the choke here, right? Like cut them off, take a fight to them. Like it feels like you're dead on defense when you push back to the the point, and then now you have fire coming from both sides, and what you just have the either the house there, the kind of like broken down uh, castle to push into. Like I mean, those are like just terrible spots to have to back up into. All right, here come the rushes. Time is playing a little bit more passive here with their positioning. Both rushes on the point. Riker just taking so much damage. The healing resources they have to put into someone now is just absurd. Sunjun uh, lining a lot of people off these railgun shots, but it's actually Riker that falls first. Not a good spot for Sunjun to be in. Does ascend to the high ground, but needs to land some railgun shots, needs a body shots, so needs something to keep them in this one because they're just going to get flattened, and there it is. Made a pancake out of them. So, so now I think he, here's a question for you. If you're timeless, do you play for the gate here? Do you try and push in and play for the gate? Or do you let them in a little bit and play for high ground control early on on defense? I mean, open a died last. Maybe they speed to gate, but I think you just play for height probably. I think, I think, I think height's the way. I think height's the way safer way, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try yeah. gate. I think the thing is, is like, yeah, you look at it, like you have like now a 419 time bank, right? To not even take second point. Like, you kind of need to take a little bit of a risk, right? Where, like, maybe playing safe, like, you're just going to allow some progress. But uh, it looks like they're not going to play for where the gate would stop opening as uh, Riker gets in a really tough spot here. This is going to be an overclock. It's going to have a sound barrier in response. Just keep Riker up. That's actually pretty good for Citrus Nation. Oh, yeah, super good. Now they can just have a better B. Here it is. Opener hitting the five, man. Terra Surge is both used, which is just <laughs> staring at each other. One will fall, and there it is. Riker down as Lethal lands the Railgun shots. It's going to be the most ridiculous, like, Overwatch moment in this past matter as two Orisas ulting at each other. Looks absurd. Now Zeb can surely finish off at this fight. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. the leak into him. Oh, okay. Tracer's traded. That was a sick stick from uh, Rocket. I feel like... I, I feel like these players on Timeless, they either need to, you know, I mean, now you have Riker getting the high ground control. I was like a little bit worried, right? Because if you have players get staggered out there, you're going to give up that first corner here underneath this archway, and then you're in a lot of trouble, especially considering, you know, now you'd have a Kitsune rush advantage as CJ uses his from the high ground. I think this is just to like try and buy space, right? But look at this, Citrus Nation rotates out and they take high ground. Yeah, the rotations are so good. Here comes the later rush, and uh, yeah. you're not gonna push into the rush if you're if you're timeless here. So you have to kind of like back out. The cart's moving the opposite way. This has gotten really funky. Yeah, this is rough. It's just Citrus Nation kind of out rotating it. Oh, Jacob, unfortunately falling there for Citrus Nation. Not a good look so far. Oh, double heady on the Rissa too. That's gonna that's gonna force some cooldowns for sure. There's the spear spin and the gold already gone from Zeb. I mean, they still take Sunjin out, which is kind of sick, and Riker's just trying to pin down somebody, but everybody is way too slippery. Actually, just gets away from him. Jacob is back in the action. Same with Tap, just trying to pin down Riker at this point. There's players everywhere for, for Citrus Nation. Like, there's players on the flank. There's players on the other side. And yeah, like, there's no way they can actually track anybody down. Just over. Surely it's just over. What? They can move him away. The there's the spear spin. Oh, eats the pulse bomb too. Okay, you take that. 0.87 meters to go, but Riker's dead. 
dead and buried on the point. Citrus Nation, they can't even get out the doors. There's the sound barrier, met with the Terra Surge. Whoa. Citrus Nation up two maps. Match point as well, one more away from locking their place into the main event. Uh, in this one, Noctime is like out at the group stages, which is like bonkers to like yeah. even think about. Uh, but they are towards the end. I mean, you mentioned it and like, it's really bizarre to see like, Riker is like looking for the next target as Orisa, and there's like players under the archway, there's players in the back line by like the spawn, like <laughs> you're just kind of stuck in nowhere. And it also like typically like in Overwatch, right? Like if you can like kind of like isolate one of those targets, get them out, like you're in a great spot. The issue becomes is like when all of those targets live and now you're standing in the middle of like three people on one side, two on the other, and that bridge is like so terrible to be in that spot. Uh, and that's where they get stuck. And you lose the tank, you come back off a of spawn. Uh, you know, you have sound barrier, but Terra Surge just eats it up. And I mean, this is a, this is a huge shock probably for Timeless, right? I think they probably expect this to be a close series, but not to find themselves down 2-0. Yeah, the defense from Citrus Nation looks so good here on uh, Eichenwalder. And we'll see what happens on map number three, because yeah, Ty, this is not looking like a, a, a Timeless we're used to seeing at all. And Citrus Nation, man, like we mentioned before, they uh, they have not made it to a main event. This will be their first main event if they end up coming out on top in this series. Stage one, uh, they lost 3-0 to both LFO and LG, and that was it. Like, they were done out of the groups. They're not making it to main event, but this time around, they're looking so much better. And timers have not had uh, any roster changes since finishing um, stage two in second place. So you're thinking that, well, this team's definitely going to make it once more. Like... Even the chat was thinking it as, as well. The, the predictions were way in favor of Timeless. Uh, I mean, uh, everybody would have thought the Timeless ropes. would just, you know, maybe not run through them, right? Like, oh, it's, sure. a, uh, it's one of those uh, like kind of like gentleman sweeps, right? Maybe it's like a 3-1, right, type of game where uh, it just to find yourself down now in this scenario, uh, it's a bit frightening, right? Because now, uh, obviously, making to the main event, probably, you know, just getting there was never even on Timeless's mind, right? That it would be an issue. Now you're like, oh man, like main event is on the line. Dallas is on the line. Like, you know, it's a long break, uh, you know, uh, just uh, not being able to play. I mean, uh, there is so much on the line here. And to find yourself now you know, forced to have a reverse sweep to keep this going, uh, it, it's a really difficult spot for, you know, considerably like a young team, right? You know, one that's had a lot of success now to find like a lot of pressure on themselves. It's a pretty tough spot. Yeah, I mean, maybe the Citrus Nation roster swaps. Hey, they're working out for them right now. Esperanza yeah. is our map up next. We'll see if there's any uh, substitutions Bro. too. We'll see if anybody wants to come in, get chopped out. But like, yeah, I mean, how are you thinking to, about to, this? To find yourself down 0-2 and then go into like push with Flashpoint after, like push, right? Like you lose this first fight. Like you're in lots of trouble. Just generally right uh now now you're now if you're citrus nation right you control obviously the entire series at this point right up to zero but you also control kind of like the pace of play winning that first fight i mean uh two game modes that you know can get kind of you know, get kind of funky at times so like it's probably like you know obviously best case scenario here for citrus nation yeah, super, super good. Well, at least Timeless get a chance to play on a map that they chose. We'll have a look if uh, there's any small substitutions a little bit later, but here's a player comparison on your screens. Rocket, who is hailed as uh, one of the best Tracer players in North America, last stage, just kind of getting beaten out right now by Tab. You can see the, the stats from the first couple of maps here. Yeah, I mean, we're like we know, we know the uh, Rocket obviously a tremendous player. Tap having a fantastic series thus far. Uh, I, I think a lot of what we've seen is just Citrus Nation, like seeing something on the other side from Timeless, where they're going or what they're trying to do, and reacting to it so fast and adjusting so fast on the fly uh, yeah. that every time you know, uh, that, like it's almost like every time that uh, Timeless throws something at Citrus Nation, they know the proper response, they know where they're supposed to be, and they're there first. All right, Esperanza, the decider map is up next. We're giving the players a quick couple of minutes. We're going to jump to a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a sec. Begin excavation log. Sloan Cameron here on side of Petra. Me and the Wayfinders just found the coolest artifact I think I've ever... Again? 
Come on! Whoa, whoa, whoa! If you want to mess with these artifacts, you gotta go through me! Hey! I'm on to you! I gotta tell you, I wanna scream it out! Ah. Hey! I'm gonna show you, here's what it's all about! Welcome back. So decide a match and a decide a map for Timeless here. They need a complete reverse sweep in order to lock themselves in the main event. Citrus Nation up 2-0 right now, and it's looking, well, pretty one-sided, surprisingly. Uh, with the way that Timeless played in stage one, it like almost even seemed inconceivable that like they wouldn't make Dallas, right? Right. Like, because you thought that like there was just only upside like moving forward right um like th there's only going to be better performances with more experience you know playing together from here on out uh don't think anybody had you know potentially losing the group's decider uh on their bingo card but citrus nation have put themselves in such a fantastic spot 2-0 up in the series moving over here to push they look to really have all of the answers at all times here some just you know, really great you know positioning and calling coming out of the citrus nation squad and a lot of like we see on push right you get an early lead it can be a difficult amount to come back so i think this first fight's huge esperanza was the map picked by uh, or played by timeless and citrus nation in their matches against daybreak they both obviously ended up coming up with a win there. So you're feeling pretty confident, I mean, coming up uh, with a W, but especially after the match against Luminosity, Timeless in a little bit of a rough shape currently. No substitutions either, of course. Your screen doesn't lie to you. There is just uh, the same players, so Timeless happy to keep Sunjin in. You can see both teams just being so cautious, right? Nobody wants to have that, you know, first pick go down. That'll be the kind of sign on the other side is Zeb gets really low, takes another shot there from Sunjin. It's going to be four to five from Zeb, but they get rid of that really fast. They're trying to get rid oh, of the cheeky oh, angle oh, from Sunjin. The short hop onto high ground, disrupted shot, and then lethal did not stand a chance. Okay, time is off to a good start. Taking down the so, just a lot of their main damage gone, and I mean burst power as well. Can they actually get more kills? There it is. Okay, one more onto tap, and here comes the roll. I mean, you said cheeky angle. I mean, he just slides on up, gets in Lethal's face. I mean, just no, he's like, no fear, no respect, just takes him out instantly. Where uh, Timeless now gets a nice lead here. You're going to have another fight here for Citrus Nation to stop that first checkpoint. There's, wow, it's actually going to be CJ using the Kitsune Rush really early. Look at this. I like, really like that. them down. Yeah, really interesting. Okay, now they force their rush, and then we just back out. Okay, sounds good. You got the ball almost to the checkpoint there, so it does force Citrus Nation to try and do something. But here comes the railgun. This overclock from Sunjin. He's already taken care of Lethal once again. And he's got Seb in his sights. So with the help of Rocket, that's an easy kill on the tank. And that is going to be checkpoint for sure. Timeless. Looking like a different beast now. Yeah, I mean, this is the timeless I think we expected to see, right? As uh, that'll be that first checkpoint sound barriers for both sides. I uh, you know pretty even in terms of ultimate economy across the board, where Lethal probably going to end up getting this overclock next but you know, how do both teams use the sound barrier you have to feel a little bit of pressure here if you're citrus nation to get a fight win kind of stop the bleeding is uh timeless you can kind of play around this corner we see a lot of teams do it like they want 
They want Citrus Nation to get the control of the button, push into them because they control the high ground. Opener just hanging around on the high ground. Lethal just jumping off, not even getting into the window. A little bit too scared, and I would be too. You know they got beat. Lethal saved narrowly there. You can see that white health slowly ticking up now as he uh, ascends to height. They've already taken down Rocket. Sanjay trying to even this one up. Really happy oh, to take man. with these 1v1s. I, I say 1v1, it's a 2v1. You get the Lucio oh, there as well. L Lucio, yeah, helping him out. And uh, honestly, Opener and Sanjay have done a fantastic job of uh, just being a little tag team. Quick steal of the ball here from Citrus Nation. As we see Timeless going for a rotate, they're going to lose that. We have some players ball. from Timeless, I think, on the opposite side of the map still. Not exactly sure who it is. Uh, looks like actually it was uh, Opener makes it back kind of through where that, you know, forward spawn is. So you're going to get everybody back here for Timeless for this next fight. This Citrus Nation doesn't want to push into that high ground. All right, reset back to mid. Back for Sunjin to get another pick. Almost exactly the same positions here, but they've sold the bot yet again. Here comes the Katsunia rush from CJ and Timeless as they push over the high ground and just flood onto low. Pulse Bomb on top onto the barrier of all things. Uh, didn't end up at tagging anybody, not even for a lick of damage. Rocket receiving a lot of that damage from that disrupt shot. A little bit is cautious. Dalji straight onto the mega health pack and steals it away as well. Is it a 2v1 at the moment? Has to get out of there, but no, actually just gets pincered by Zeb. Good forward thinking there by Citrus Nation as they push back in. Knowing that they can maybe catch that tracer. But Riker under a lot of pressure too. That's another person down for Citrus. All right, third time this evening. A Citrus Nation push on forward. Yeah, Sunjin and Rocket wanted the kill on the lethal so bad. Lethal was so low, he fires like that disruptor shot in the doorway. Uh, and Jacob is there to actually help lethal. They take out Sunjin and then get Rocket as well as uh, both players just kind of like a little bit too bloodthirsty there, right? You know the Sojourn was weak. He wanted that kill so bad, he felt like it probably opened things up after that. They push in a little bit too far. They get taken out. And now Citrus Nation with an opportunity to tie this one up. Oh, everybody was, oh man, that looked like a, a collat in the making. Fortunately, though, for a Suzu, Sunjin didn't create a highlight reel. Just still trying to find some headshots. That Pulsar on the window frame, my word. Don't know how Sunjin managed to get out of that one, but he did so quite nimbly. There's a Fortify Spear Spin for Riker as he ends up backing off. And here comes the return railgun from Lethal. This overclock looking quite deadly and it's going to provide a lot of space here for Citrus Nation as they are trying to escort themselves down and drop onto low ground. They cannot afford to let this uh, bot push any further. This checkpoint in the firm gaze of Citrus Nation right now. And there it is. There's the back off. Citrus Nation not wanting to fight this one uh, any longer. Yeah, Riker was so weak. Timeless had to back up all the way around the corner, but they got rushed. Yeah, Citrus Nation wasn't going to dive on in. Yep, this will be a rush from CJ. As Citrus Nation backing up, you have the sound barrier now. Oh, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, Riker's dead. I mean, Jacob's dead. Riker lot unlocking that terror surge. There's the beat two for Timeless. They want to make this fight decisive. They got that forward spawn now as they made it back to that point, and uh, they are going to be able to push this spot. I mean, Zeb is completely alone, but it looks like lethal and neutral on the opposite high ground. Man, should kind of stay up there. They've sold the bot back too. Terror Search on Sunjin drags him straight back in as he was trying to wow. slide away. Somehow, some way, lethal and neutral being able to stay alive on high ground punishes timers for overextending, trying to kill Zeb. Jack, how bad is this as well? Is that's double support ult used by Timeless? They're going to give up. The checkpoint in Citrus Nation now gets a basically a free use of their double support ultimate, right? And you're less than 10 meters away from taking the lead. I mean, that's probably worst case scenario there for Timeless. I think about Rush too. Yeah, it's pretty rough right now for Timeless. I mean, you're looking, hopefully, Sunjin getting a pick with a railgun here, but it looks almost too easy. As soon as they start rounding this corner, Neutral can lay down the rush, and if you need it, I guess you can sound barrier too, but I wouldn't imagine you do. There it is. There's the rush. Oh, the spear spin into the corner too. They're trying to prevent Riker from leaving. Manages to get the Suzu in time, so they're able to get out of the fight and regroup, but this is a bad corner to be stuck on and tapped with a double kill with the pulse. There is no way. Three minutes to go in Citrus Nation, taking the lead, taking the check Point, and timeless is just falling apart right now what and, and they don't have to use their sound barrier i was gonna say i actually didn't really like how citrus nation started that you knew you had an advantage for sound barrier and for kitsune rush and they just kind of like are poking in that you know archway for a while you had such an advantage you need to press that there before like allowing them to get anything going is to be overclocked for both sides jacob will end up using a sound barrier citrus nation now with a 30 meter plus lead yeah, ending up to 100 meter mark, and there it is. Here's the rush from CJ. They've got to gain some control back, gain some momentum.
them. Only two and a half minutes to go. Rock is hunting. He's searching for Jacob. Jacob just jumps up to the high ground, just way up in the skies. Unable to uh, land anything from that pulse bomb either. It's stuck to the Orisa, but immediately cleansed. And Citrus Nation, they kind of, uh, it was like a springboard. They were to just run back into the fight after CJ even used the rush. Time is needed to win there, and they might just lose this preceding fight. Rocket Lethal Map, they do end up trading here as Riker for Timeless has got the Terror Surge. But Tap is making it extremely tough for Opener to even land this sound barrier. He's permanently being checked by the Tracer. Finally, they kill Jacob, and it looks like Citrus Nation. Their time might have run out after this checkpoint. As uh, to be honest with you, I don't think they mind all too much, Matt. They've got such a yeah. ginormous lead and forced so many ultimates out of Timeless. I mean, below two minutes, even if Timeless gets the bot where their barrier's located, you're probably like two fights from taking the lead. So, in the, and you're pushing into the Citrus Nation spawn, right? So a lot to like here if you're Citrus Nation and how to work. I think the biggest thing for Citrus Nation here is kind of keeping like tabs of obviously alts and understanding, okay, there's going to be double support alt on the other side. Can we get both of those out by using our rush? If you can, and even if you lose that fight, it feels like you're in a phenomenal spot to win. Oh my god, <laughs> Rocket just got vaporized by Lethal. Rush has come out for both sides, but they've already lost Rocket. A response sound barrier here for time, but Citrus Nation going to have to survive. They've got to amp it up, oh, they've got to beat in 3%, but Citrus Nation, uh, a later beat, a stick onto the Orisa, it forces the Suzu out, and Citrus Nation can now pounce. They've got their prey in their sights, Riker down, and overclock from Sunjin, finding almost nothing, and Lethal's doing infinitely more here. And Sunjin, he's playing in the periphery, he's playing in the background of this painting, this masterpiece that Citrus Nation are currently whipping up. 30 seconds to go, 111 meters, they've just won the fight, they're getting the checkpoint, they're getting board spawns, and Sunjin is on the wrong side of the map. Yeah, he's like in Toronto. He's got to walk all the way back as you're going to get to 20 seconds here. Getting into OT. I wonder if they realize that Sunjin's behind them. They, they know. They've got to know. They have to know. Yeah, Sunjin's right there. Oh, don't worry. He's not on your backline anymore. He's dead. Back in Spawn, yeah. Neutral does end up going down, but I mean, there's no ults here for Timeless. There's no bodies left on the point. Citrus Nation just clean sweep. Timeless. They come back with, with a miracle push, it felt like. Timers were in such good stead, in such uh, good positioning. Citrus Nation with a little spin to win on the bot. Zeb used that Terra Search to finish off opener. Timers are going to be out to touch, but it's just cost them so much. I, I mean, what? They're going to get control of the bot, but this feels like such desperation territories. Riker here. Back on Doomfist, right? Just got rush. get out of the spawn, get back on it. Yup, Neutral will have the rush, and so does CJ. Looks like you're gonna back up for Citrus Nation, try and use some of this high ground. Really early rush? Oh, don't worry, we can just leave. And we use our rush in just a moment. It's an OT and you need to push 50 meters, bro. There is no chance you win this. Citrus Nation, and they're just walking it in now. Timeless needs a miracle, but it will not come. Zeb sticks it to him. And time is slowly bleeding out. Zeb with a triple. Almost made that a quadra as Jacob steals that kill away. Citrus Nation advance a 3-0 as they knock Timeless out. That is a crazy result. <laughs> uh, I, I think like when we all talked about this probably being a really close series, I don't think uh, I mean, I, I, I don't think any of them. That was not close, bro. All, but, like, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying when we all thought this would be a close series, I think it, we all thought it would be close, but you, you, nobody ever thought that Timeless would, like, lose it, right? Like, oh, it's going to be a competitive series back and forth, and Timeless will just, you know, win in the end. Nobody had, I think, a blowout, really, in favor of Citrus Nation, just like an incredible performance. And, and they did it with some good, honest Overwatch. No shenanigans, no ball, no junk, no no whatever else we've seen today and yesterday. No, they just straight up took that Orisa mirror and took him for a walk, man. What yeah. a performance oh, from yeah. Citrus Nation. I mean, heading yeah, into those, this, <laughs> thanks production throwing uh, chat under the bus there. Those viewers are lucky they didn't have real money on the line. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all be have, you, You'll never know, you'll never know. <laughs> But I mean, it was not a, a wrong bet to make, right? Time no star started roster. Like they should have been considered a favorite coming into it. No matter how much weight you want to give the individuals of Citrus Nation, it was more of an unknown. Like we know what to expect and what we see from Timeless. Uh, but yeah, Citrus Nation, 
Wow, what a performance. Unbelievable stuff. A 3-0. Looking like a brand new team, right? I mean, Citrus Nation and Timeless coming into this. Um, they ended up defeating Daybreak. Timeless had an incredibly close game against Luminosity, who ended up, of course, winning that group. Uh, Citrus Nation also took a game off Luminosity. So you're thinking, yeah, this is an extremely close game. But uh, a lot of the time, it was Tap and Lethal just landing consistent, like, final blows from um, uh, the Overclock. And, like, Tap landing some incredible Pulse Bombs. Of course, you saw that double uh, in the last uh, map there. And it just all-out stellar play. Their team play was just sick. Their rotations on Iconvola yeah. were just unbelievable. Like, out-rotating Timeless over and over and over again, just controlling the map. It was rough to watch, if you're a I, I, mean, I just maps? think... Yeah, sorry. sorry. Go, no, you go. No, you go ahead. Oh, I please, was going to say... Friend, I, please. <laughs> I, thought the, I thought the positioning all series long from Citrus Nation was just perfect and just really impressive, right? It felt like every time that Timeless was going to do something or make a play, that it was such an easy read for Citrus Nation that they just, you know, adjusted to it perfectly and knew where to be and beat them to the spot in terms of like how to counter it. I thought they also did a great job. Like, you know, a lot of times in a series we see like a wasted ult or a bad ult here or there. I mean, pretty flawless throughout the entire series. Yeah, I actually just wanted to talk about uh, the adaptations we saw from Citrus Nation because especially when we were uh, on Eichenwalde, initially on their defense, like they gave so much space and so much respect to the opposition, giving up that point A so quickly. But then they rallied, they made the adjustments and completely held them uh, with a, such a stellar defense. And of course, a lot of that came down to individual performances like Tap on Tracer putting in so much work. Those flanks were nasty. Like, like, Tap was just everywhere. Yeah, and dealing with the flanks too, as well. Like, yeah. on Oasis yeah. uh, City Center, there was a time where um, it was Chopper and the Lucio uh, opener. They were trying to go on this big flank. They had the sound barrier. They had, like, a charge up railgun. Like, you can go for a flank, catch one of the supports off guard. But there, there were people there to meet them. Or they just kind of just get run over in the front line. There were a lot of good ideas from Timeless, but they just couldn't end up executing. Tap had a fantastic series. I think you could have given it to almost anybody, to be honest, on yeah. Citrus Nation. Um, just the whole, like, uh, rotational game was just fantastic for them. And it they won out. Unfortunately, though, I will say, they faced Toronto in round one <laughs> like that's a rough yeah. game but like hey you made it to the main event for the first time that's a, a big w for citrus but look i mean <laughs> tap has a tremendous performance right you know on the tracer going up against rocket who's a tremendous tracer player as one well. of the best like tracers in north america also, yeah like rocket also had a, a, a pretty good series like it wasn't like you know you caught somebody on like a super off day or something uh, i also think it speaks to you know a lot of uh you know, a lot of people have great performances in Swiss and early on in groups, right? But to be able to do it in a decider match, like that is something that, okay, these are matches that every match matters, right? But like, this is a prime time, like match, like a big oh, match, right? To be one. able to do it, to do it in that type of series, right? And raise your game. Uh, that's pretty impressive where uh, t Toronto, look, I mean, Toronto is obviously going to be like a heavy favorite in that matchup, you know, with how good they are. But it's definitely a little bit of a Waco call to Toronto that they can't, you know, sleep on Citrus Nation. Yeah, and I mean, there's uh, plenty of tape on the squad from Toronto Defined, right? So plenty of time now also, of course, uh, for Citrus Nation to prepare for this very matchup. It's also a double elimination bracket, so you can learn from your mistake yeah. getting a second chance. For now, though, if you want to celebrate the victory, and what better way to do that than talking to one of the winners? A lethal is joining us for an audio interview. Lethal, how are you doing? Congrats. Oh, uh, yeah. It was easy, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> it was easy. Best first sentence in any interview ever. I mean, that was some some, some fantastic Overwatch. You guys uh, took that Orisa mirror, uh, you got the job done, making it look very easy. However, you were uh, considered by many, uh, calling out chat here, uh, the underdog coming into this match. Um, how do you feel about being given the position or the title of the underdog and also was this an unexpected lack of resistance from Timeless, or did you just know all along this is going to be an easy match? Uh, underdog is actually good for us because we come into the game without like any expectations, and then they're kind of scared that oh wow these guys are underdogs. But then they get you know, I, ca I can't say the words they get you know on you know, so, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't even like they were better like scrims wise they were shooting the bed I think I mean they didn't show that well in the official, and we were playing really really well in scrims so. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's uh, interesting. If they're, if, yeah, if they're doing that in the bed, yeah, I mean, in scrims, you're feeling pretty confident. How, how confident do you feel against uh, Toronto Defiant, though? Obviously, uh, going to the main event now. Wait, are we playing them first? Yep. I believe so. Uh, Congrats. <laughs> Oh, okay, well, I guess we can we can run it back in losers, or we can you know try to do something well in our winners. <laughs> but right. uh, the fact that we got through qualities is already enough, so we gotta like actually go back to the drawing board and you know get a new plan set. Yeah, you, you, you get a bit of time. You get to play the underdog role again. I, I'm yeah. quite curious. Uh, you now, when you're when you're in this series against Timeless and you go up like one map to zero, like. Could you guys almost feel it as a team, like, oh, like the pressure was kind of mounting on the other side of things, right? And they were kind of, you know, maybe maybe falling a little bit. And you guys had a great opportunity early on. Oh, yes, of course, 100 percent. Well, you can definitely tell like their their body language. Yeah. I think their tracer blinked into a wall twice, like a thousand times for fun. <laughs> that already gave you like a big giveaway. And then um, yeah, their curios you... got kited every time as well. So that's like Zeb, Zeb, like actually, I think, called every single curio kite. Which is unbelievable, so... Like, already those body languages show a lot. And we can just use it to our advantage and say, like... If we play normal, if we just play calm, we just win a thousand percent, you know? You can smell the mental breakdown in the air on that map. Uh, watching it was uh, absolutely fantastic. What a dominant performance from you and the squad. So once again, congratulations! And we can't wait to see what you have in store for us in the main event. Yeah, I want to shout out again Zeb and uh, Jacob. They played really well. I think I think Zeb is super underrated. Best racer right now, so if Toronto takes the mirror, I think we can actually have a shot to be honest. Yeah, Toronto, I'm don't be sure. cowards. Toronto, they take don't the mirror. Don't be cowards. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure with the performance from you and the entire team, you put yourself on everyone's radar. So might not be the underdog for much longer. Thank you so much, Liesel, for joining us and good luck next week. Alright, thank you. See you guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Of course, always a oh, pleasure yeah. chatting to our players. Lethal coming in as a new phase on this roster uh, anyway. And honestly, they look like they've always played together. Even though there were quite a lot of changes being made to the roster of Citrus Nation, it looked cohesive, it looked like they gelled well. Uh, well. No problem going up against Timeless, which made no changes from stage two, uh, from stage one to stage two. Right, you you wouldn't make any changes though, right? I don't no. think your your, ex your you? expectations yeah. for the team are just like so high because of how well you did in the main event last time around. So yeah, I mean this is a like Lethal said, playing as like the underdog is some kind of secret power for a lot of teams, and I think they kind of proved it here uh, today, and even more so, right? They didn't even let them have a single map. It was really nice play from Citrus Nation. I'm super excited to see them again yeah. in the uh, main event. And hey, if they can take off a map off Toronto to fight, I mean that series might be a little spicy. I'm just saying, like that's uh, that's gonna be a good one to cover. And this is what's awesome about kind of like formats and scenarios like this, right? You know, just because you placed well in the last one doesn't mean you just get guaranteed to go to the next one, right? Like you have to like earn your spot and like new teams form and like, you know, it's, a, it's the right team at the right time. They kind of like make their way. I'll also be curious. I mean, this is like looking a little bit further down the road. Now, Timeless, they earned a ton of points in stage one. Those are now like uh, uh, the opportunity for more teams to potentially qualify for Dallas, right? Because you're now not having to surpass a team that had that amount of like points, right? So right. there's probably a little bit, you know, with Timeless out of the equation now, like uh, for some of the teams that are just making it to the main event here in stage two, right? Maybe there's an opportunity to, you know, go even further, right? Like, oh, we didn't expect to go to Dallas because there's five teams in front of us in points. Well, now it's a little bit more open. Yeah, or timeless uh, roster, mentals in shamble, they will disband, and that means other teams have the opportunity to pick up the players who have those points because the points are not awarded to the teams, yeah. but to the actual players, right? So uh, a lot of uh, teams could give themselves a little boost with some uh, timeless players. I'm trying to like break up a team here. I was always like <laughs> dismantling a team of live on broadcast, like <laughs> and, and sabotage. I'm just spitballing <laughs> some ideas, all right? So For now, though, drama. grab your tickets to Dream App. We hope to see you there. <laughs> You can cheer on your favorite teams, keep their mental alive, and keep their runs going. For now, we're heading into a very quick break. And after that, Pirates in Pajamas and Unk Inc. will be fighting for the remaining main event slot of Group C after this.
heroes. This is your game, your team, and now this is your league. This is your community's future, and this is your prize pool. Win your matches, battle for your progression. Go far, go further, even as far as the Esports World Cup. It is your time to shine. Build your team, register your team, go the distance with your team. Face it, Lee. Powered by you. Yeah, what she said. Sign up. They're open until April 25th. I was you. to play against friends and foes. She sounds really smart. No, Cannot I know, deny uh... or confirm whether or not <laughs> that was me, but that person sounded smart. <laughs> so true. true. Very knowledgeable. <laughs> Super knowledgeable. That's right. Um, Sign up. I don't have a good chance. Sign up. Link uh, yeah. below. Sign, yeah. Sign up. Sign up. Play. This. Play with now friends. Now we're shifting gears to another great Overwatch competition. That is, of course, what you're watching right now. OWCS. We are about to close out our group stage here. And now we're looking at both Phoenix Guard, Pirates and Pajamas, and Unk Inc. Uh, because. Uh, Men, I mean, we could also just not play the match because we can use transitive properties for this one. Uh, both mm. won against Shikigami, 3-1, and both lost against M80. Unk Inc, they lost 3-1. Uh, the Pirates lost 3-2, therefore we could just declare them the winners. Uh, <laughs> they've, uh, no, but in, in all seriousness though, like obviously uh, this Pirates roster, they've looked great. Yeah. They, uh, taking a group favorite M80 to map 5. They looked like they had the upper hand in the Orissa mirror, which is so crucial to have right now. And also, we got to see some fun ball play coming out of Strider. <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh... Oh, I will you? say, Chronic was just the kind of the goat, actually, <laughs> on his scan or on uh, the Soj <laughs> in their in their match the other day. Just ridiculous. That also the Widow, Widow play it was uh, absurd. I love seeing a lot of Widow, and uh, I'm glad we saw some Junker Town. I think that's the only place uh, we're ever going to see the Widow Maker. But my God, it made my heart sing. That is for sure. No, of yeah, course, their, uh, their backline yeah. there as well, sick. Other side though, uh, Matt, uh, Joss got to cast Unk Inc. How do you feel about this Unk roster? Inc. We just saw them play yesterday. Uh, well, I, I mean, look, I, I think uh, Paintbrush probably like the, you know, leader of this team, I would say, probably, so to speak, just off of like experience based. But uh, it's really kind of like this matchup that like matters the most. Like you were saying, with, like the transit properties, these teams have basically beat every, like the same teams lost to the same team. So it's like fairly even competitive match. But I also think I, I definitely would favor, you know, Pip in this matchup. But just like the last series, I mean, who the hell knows what happens today? Oh yeah, I, I did, uh, I did. I'm slowly starting to remember now. Yes, the uh, the Alari on Midtown. <laughs> I really hope we see that again today. I thought that was really fun. A really interesting way of playing it. Me, I was kind of okay. I was kind of bashing on about it for like a good ten minutes, and Scott was just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Alari, mm-hmm. I was trying to sell it really hard, and hey, maybe they end up playing it again. It was we'll not see. the difference maker. Like I still don't understand. <laughs> it was Alari cool, had no man. bearing it's on the cool. outcome so of that match it. at all. I'm not against Alari. I just. I'm not going to sell people on on playing Yalari either. Seen now, uh... Boom, <laughs> like, got to. Uh, here, here, here's, here's how this is going, though, Zoe. Okay. Is that I'm Jack just me. doesn't want to play Lucio in rank, so he will try and sell people all of these other supports. So when he plays, like, Bap or Yalari and, like, everybody yells at him for throwing, he can be like, no, that one guy in OWCS said it was pretty good. Bap is... Okay, Bap's not a throw pick. He's, like, okay? trading no, insider no, information not a throw pick. You on or... Bap is a throw pick. This well, uh, yeah, okay, listen, all of our games look like throws, to be honest, because we're just not that good. Our players, well, however, to, they exactly. know what they're doing. Um, well, compared to everybody how, here. Exactly, and that's why we're heading into this game, watching We'd be a play. super wide group. Super a wide. super wide group. <laughs> yeah, if we us three played, yeah, probably. I haven't seen you crawl out of bronze just yet, Matt. All right, Samoa. I mean, that's a lie. That's not a lie at all. There's a crab. Now they removed Sully to defend me, so now it's just me. <laughs> yeah, no one. You don't need to defend him, bro. It's all good. Look at the crab. He's so cute. Oh. So, uh, we'll get into this uh, first round. Samoa. Uh, it looks like Pip could it be going with the Orisa base comp, at least at the start. Unk Inc. Still, uh, still some time to make some changes, but like on this specific point, the Sigma is actually pretty good, right? The, there's like a little bit of high ground here and a decent amount of space to like cross where the shield and playing some of this high ground and just like poking damage consistently uh, can beat out like, you know, the, the brute force of like an Orisa. Yeah, we've seen Sigma quite a lot, especially yesterday. 
We're all going a little bit wide there, but thing is with the Orisa, you can just kind of do this. You can just walk past the uh, the Sigma that's already used accretion. Can be a little bit rough for your backline. Haven already dead. Will we pip end up capping that point first too? Nice stuff. And now Chronic can set up really well here. It's hard for the Sigma to get much stuff done, especially when you lose a lot of that shield. You have to play passive for so much longer. Your abilities and your tools to survive aren't as great as the Orisa, but you're good at anchoring the point, that is for sure, when you have control. Yeah, for sure. If anybody is wondering as well, uh, Tricky Tracer, that is uh, Anion. So uh, if anyone is wondering, like, who is this new player on Pivots now? Just I believe that's the new streamer mode where you change your names into something else. That's like Overwatch related. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. She can't trick us, though. We know. <laughs> we know she's there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah, they're on the roster. Inside her info. <laughs> <laughs> inside our, yeah, okay. we had the screen before telling us Anion she was playing. Yep. We also have the official roster, which it would be very easy to have somebody in at this moment. They also probably wouldn't, uh, as uh, if they push actually up into like the door here, where I think against the Sigma, this is like what you want to do, right? Take away the space. Like the Sigma really kind of like lacks if you like bully him, get behind a shield, close quarter, you know, pack him up, where they push up a little bit. Uh, now they'll back up as, I mean, Chronic finds Ryan here at the start of the and back up again if you're on gank is uh, not the best of starts. Yeah, Chronic. I was already uh, big and Chronic up a little bit earlier on. Uh, the Flux is available soon as well. I mean, with Chronic dead, that's not good. You can Flux the backline pretty easily here. And you can always guarantee yourself the point. Spear's already gone too. This might be a good time for Kaman to go. Might not even need to use it, to be fair. Little juggling there. Onto the point, just making sure they hold on for as long as possible. Painbush already down though. Stone lands the uh, Blink Smack kill. And Hanbei too. I mean, uh, this is all falling apart for Monkey. They took down one of the key carries for Pirates in Pajamas. And they still end up uh, not capping the point. 90% on the board now. As Chronic comes back, kills Haven. This is a very messy fight at the very end. Unking should be able to get a touch though, as Paintbrush is alive. Are you even gonna get like a good use of this flux, right? Uh, you're still building up towards a dead eye as this will be a contest there that comes in from Ryan. He gets quite low, so you're gonna have to have somebody else step up contest. Oh, Chronic's got the overclock. There's no way Paintbrush gets away from that one. Both supports down. Cowman with a flux, not mining much purchase at all. Even a sound barrier on top. And that should be round 99. Ticks over to 100. That's 0% for Unkink. That's quite one sided. They had an opportunity there, though, right? Like, uh, you know, Pip gets aggressive. They push on in. Hanbei drops the amplification matrix, right? Uh, and they're able to pick up a kill. Uh, it's just the distance they have to cross, right? Allows you know, Pip to get back at full speed uh, In at that point, right? You have the Sojourns over the point. Very, very difficult to dislodge Chronic from that position. I think Unkinks, one of their biggest storylines from yesterday was the fact that the team was formed an hour prior to the start of Swiss. So like getting this far and having uh, the chance to go through will be massive for the team. Of course, going down one round like that, not the best start, but control can be a little bit of a control moment. So, uh, you know, we'll go again, we'll go again. And now we'll play the Orisa, no more Sigma, just pure Orisa duels. I like the Cassidy here on this point uh, versus the Sojourn, just because like the sight line is so effectively good for Cassidy is that Haven takes out that first pick where, oh, like there's not like a huge massive sight line, right? Where Sojourn can like kind of like railgun somebody cross map. This is very mid range. All right, there's the fight win. That should be cap two for Unking. Pretty quick. Hubei is going to switch over to the Kiriko. Was on the map previously. But yeah, it was just Haven landing some nice shots there. Now we'll see where they decide to play. Like, do you kind of like push up towards that main choke, try and control some of this high ground here uh, towards the side of the point? It looks like they at least want to contest this. They don't want to let Pirates and Pajamas just push on up. Get control. A few shots in Haven. That's going to force, uh, force him back. Oh my <laughs> god. Like, you can't even react to that. You got speared as soon as you peeked. Yeah. He Rough start for Chronic. Did. Yeah, actually. Ooh. Okay, okay. Good start from uh, Unking. This is looking exact. It's now Haven's. Okay, it's now Haven's chance to uh, click heads. Chronic doing nothing on the Cassidy. It was the opposite when they were playing Sojourn on that last round. So I'll see. Uh, they can. For a second there, I was like, ah, oh, they're considering some changes, maybe. Like, uh, really, the only change you would make, what, is maybe Sojourn, right? But uh, you see how effective the Cassidy is for on Ink. Uh, that, that's kind of why you like a hero at this point. This headshot oh, into Haven Cowman wants to get into the back line. That is a large terror surge. Anion perfectly timing the Suzu, but still the damage follow up. A little bit too much there for them to deal with. 
Oh dear. And uh, only using one ult two for Unking. That is a very nice team fight win. No oh, 10 Black Hill Street 2. I'm going to say no to that one. And Phoenix Guard, Pyrus in pajamas, 0% still on the point. They got ults coming back into this one, but so did Unking. They could go fast here. I mean, 0%, but also not even close. It feels like Unking is just completely dominated so far here. They're going to go fast. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they do push in a little bit. I think just a spear spin push up. Oh, it's actually going to be the dead eye. Right in the Kitsune rush. Nice spear there. Okay, everybody here in queue at once. Unking have no ults left. Terra Surge comes out from Strider. Hitting Haven to the wall. They've traded Cassidy's, but more kills are to come, I would imagine. Strider with no CDs left after this fortify. Disappears in about a second or so. Just as Light Pirates in Pajamas have rotated to the point and do manage to find the cap. So Unkink a little bit uh, slow on that rotation. There's more, uh, I think, Phoenix Guard Pirates in Pajamas getting the better of them there. But they're still in this one. As Cowman can set up for another big Terra Surge in about 20% or so. But, uh, what? Uh, Magic Maple just dies with across the map. That's, that's got to be with a spear and a couple of extra Kunai Slammer on top. No sound barrier now for Pirates in Pajamas. Is, well, I'm getting these. This is a go button right here. Chronic isolated from the rest of the team. That spear charged off from Strider to knock Kalman off the map goes a little bit wide. And the cap's going to come through in just a moment. Pirates and Pajamas are going to try to push their way back in. And they do so quite successfully. And they stop that cap going through. Somehow they manage to hold on to this fight, killing Kalman and just forcing Pirates and Pajamas, the rest of their team, to push on to Unking's backline. And they're going to force them away. That looked so one sided for a moment there. But Kalman falling is bad news. When they lost to Lucio with beat, it was like, oh, this is a wrap. Like, just, you know, let, let's get on to the next point. But somehow they're able to kind of can keep the point contested. They get everybody back at full strength. And now you have another fight where now uh, Pirates in Pajamas, Jack, they're a little bit, you know, they're they're still in this game, right? You're going to have Pulse Bomb, Terror Surge, plus Katsune Rush here. You win this fight. You're in like a final fight territory where they might, they might be able to do this. And they've got a priority position on the point too. Really early Suzu, straight into the rush. That Suzu comes back off in a little bit, a little quick, a little bit of a quicker time. Stick onto the Orisa. Cowman just going way too deep. You could see the rest of the team were just kind of trying to jostle with the front line. A lot of that was actually on stone there. He actually just basically tagged down uh, Haven and Ryan and Hanbei, just forcing them to like go nowhere near Cowman. They were able to isolate the Orisa. Final fight territory for both teams. As Pirates in Pajamas, stone is lurking. Yeah, so uh, both teams end up dropping the rush where the Arisas try and like push through the rush, separate you know, some of the players on the opposite side. Cowman just took so much damage as the Unking stepping up to the point. Tie game, it'll be Pit taking the lead here with a chance to win the map. 99% to 97, there's the high noon to dissuade any members from Pirates and Pajamas from touching. They do get the touch eventually. That high noon was almost perfectly timed there. Almost catching out stone. Soundberry did save them. Magic Mabel comes in clutch, but now Haven's in trouble. Terra Surge after the Fortify. That's a lot of damage and Paintbrush down. An isolation kill there onto Paintbrush with that Terra Surge. You had to continue that touch. Strider just put his whole self in front of Unk Inc. Made sure the entire team was split. And that will be round. Pyrus in pajamas come up with the first map win. Yeah, yeah, Unk Inc. looked really good on that second point, right? Uh, they were able to get a really early lead, but I feel like the fight that you get Magic Maple dead early, and you don't capitalize, I mean, that. that's, where that, that's where it ends right there, yeah. right? Like, if you're going to allow them to kind of stay in the game like that. So uh, it's just that one moment they're not able to capitalize. That keeps Pirates in Pajamas in it. They do a great job of, like, kind of kiting the Deadeye there at the end, keeping the point contested once it gets flipped, and they take map number one. Oh yeah, we're going to go to Midtown next, our next map. This is where we did see some Liari, so we'll see if uh, they end up whipping it out again. But um, yeah, that, you, you can't lose that fight, Matt. You really can't, especially when you take down the Lucio. Um, but it was just a small out rotation oh. there, and uh, Phoenix uh, Guard Pirates and Pajamas ended up taking the map. I mean, the win condition is killing the Lucio. They did it basically instantly. It had to be yeah. like a spear and Very you know, some shots from the Cassidy and the Orisa. Uh, and when you when you don't capitalize on that, right? Like Magic Maple makes it back into the fight. They win the fight. And then also they win the fight without using the sound barrier, right? Like you can almost make an argument they would have been better off just, you know, running in, forcing Magic Maple to use the sound barrier, dying, coming back on the next one. Like they pretty much got the worst case scenario for themselves there uh, by getting that first pick, losing the fight and not having him lose it, so use it. So uh, pretty unfortunate stuff there for Unk Inc. if you're an Unk Inc. fan, but uh, they, they looked pretty good there in uh, you know, round number two. So uh, do have signs of life in this series. I really like the way Strider was uh, playing. Oh, just, okay. Strider bouncing up on the uh, main 
like the middle. I always forget there's a middle, like a drop down there with a bounce pad. I always forget. I always fall down. It feels pretty bad. But I like the way Strider was playing. Basically, just isolating the back line. Like, you have to deal with me before you can help Cowman. That happened two fights back to back where Cowman was getting isolated in um, in the front line of uh, Pirates in Pajamas because the rest, uh, the rest of his team just couldn't get to him because Strider or like the Tracer was kind of poking them down or like basically being a brick wall that Arissa is and just stopping them from moving up. Midtown up next, Matt. Yeah, and uh, we'll see. You, you're, you're a big Alari Midtown enthusiast. It could. Uh, make, make the case. Why, why is the Alari good here? I already made the case yesterday. I don't need to Nobody make it again, stop Matt. Stop it! But I, I'm, I'm intrigued. Sell me, sell me, sell me on Ilari. It worked just super well yesterday. Ilari. There's so many little pylons watch you can kind of hide it around. Neb is coming in. Okay, they're definitely playing Ilari. Is what I'm saying. Double flex support coming in. Alari. There's lots of different hold spots too. You play more of like a poke style, right? And Alari does a lot of damage in terms of like just the raw output. Just if you land a headshot, Tracer can follow up. Sojin can follow up as well. It's too like a body shot from a Sojin Railgun at 100 charge, right? Is enough. And then a headshot from the uh, from the Alari. Like that's enough for a kill on like most people. So I'm just saying it, a lot can be done on the defense. A lot of places to hide the pylon too on the little fire truck at the very beginning and yeah, I really like the pick. I'm not sure if it's the strongest, but if you're playing more of this poke with the SIG, like, it can work out. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, it looks like we're going to see it here uh, on defense to start. I feel like Ilari, uh, in terms of just, like, the general, like, kind of sense of the, the, the meta, right, like, is not very strong. I think, though, like how you mentioned, like, a situation here, right? Like, you're so reliant on the pylon, it feels like. They've tried to, like, move some of the power, like, into the, the right-click heal, but to, to do the, you know, alternate fire heal and the range you have to do, like, it's just pretty terrible, right? Um, so we'll see if they can actually get some use out of it here early on. As, uh, for Pirates and Pajamas, they'll actually have Magic Maple played the Brig here, so Brig Bath. They're trying to play in some of these close quarter areas where you kind of have to fight. The break's pretty decent. So when Neb was playing before in a match the other day, or yesterday, just holding this uh, flank with the Tracer, that pylon's pretty tough to kill too. Even if you round that corner, you have to get quite, like, you have to get quite the distance on the pylon. Stone should be able to spot it right next to him. Yeah, it should be an easy kill on the pylon there. Can't hit the reset either. It still goes on the cooldown. Neb's in a little bit of trouble. A little outburst to get away from Stone. So take a fair bit of damage for us to recall, and now Stone might be in a little bit of trouble. Has to get out of the window. All good. It's actually Magic Maple that falls down first to Haven on the Ash. So really hard cross here, as you can see. Stride is just getting pummeled by Caravan as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that's kind of like what you're trying to do with this comp for On King, right? Like, that, you know, a lot of comps we see they want to play together, they want to move as a unit. This comp doesn't care about that whatsoever, right? Uh, you no, know, everybody's pretty much gonna put, play on their own, try and just like do, do punishing amounts of damage as Pirates and Pajamas works through the choke, and they're working through the choke without speed or like a Lucio, right? Oh, quick. Starts off with an arc kill. I'm down a bit. Shots in the back line as well. Still going to be tough, especially without the healer for your team. Oh, I'm getting high, but still. Yeah, so that's going to be the gravitic flux there uh, from Calman as uh, they kind of push everybody in towards this firehouse here to lift. But Pirates and Pajamas is going to get healed up. Probably an opportunity here to make a play for the point, at least thus far. So. Looks like uh, with Haven on the high ground, you see Neb in a distance. He's gonna actually get uh, pressured up by the Tracer here up on the high ground. So Stone making a play for the Alari. That's gonna force out the ult and he connects with a few players, but there's absolutely no follow up. And now things seem to be falling apart for Unk Inc. As Pirates in Pajamas getting all healed up. Very difficult to pressure with this brig inside of the room. So they'll move their way onto the point. They'll get first tick. They'll make their way towards a second one, and this should be a point A take for Pirates in Pajama. So that's where that kind of like spread out nature of that comp really falls apart. There you go. Should be back now. All good. Yeah, now they can set up with another pylon on the high ground now. I'm just saying, it can work. Nice little first point take load, like you were saying. I mean, Pirates in Pajamas too, they've got this flight for the next fight. They were early push here, early window too. Nice angle from Haven, has Bob, doesn't really want to use it in this situation, just wait for a push into the high ground perhaps. Well, uh, the defense. 
Yes, uh, they decide to push up a little bit closer here, right? I know with that uh, Lara, you probably don't want to allow them to just kind of like walk on in and force you into position on the bridge. Oh, no, oh. shots there from Cowman. That uh, that seems like may have, may have warranted a, a, a talk in the chat, right? Uh, I know it seems like a little bit of a stop, maybe a, maybe a lull thrown in there and getting the kill as the door closes. That was... <laughs> there, is the chat enabled? The chat definitely should be enabled. I want to see the BM. But yeah, that's kind of frustrating, just getting a couple of spheres weave through the doors. It's closing. All right, Cap. Can we get a battle of the Sigmas, right? Just kind of forcing out on the side here is, uh, that'll be the Bob. Doesn't make it fully around the corner, right? Looks like it potentially gets stopped there. Uh, just by the body. Uh, of Strider is uh, he's quite low gonna go for the great big flux anyway is uh kills all that up gains some shield this will be a flux back on the other side lifting up chronic while in dead eye so everybody's gonna get out of the way uh, seems like we've lost jaws again so you'll be stuck with just me for now but a uh, nice play here from Nev actually rotates around the opposite side as I say that Magic Bay Ball with the Brig ult rolling, ends up, you know, uh, beating him down with the shield, stunning him, then finishing off with a whip shot. Is, you know, in those close quarter scenarios, I mean, that is gonna favor Pirates in Pajamas, right? You you have the Brig there, obviously, with the ultimate Brig, great in close quarters. And you also have the benefits of having the Immortality build. This will be a Matrix from both sides. Up on that high ground, his Unking knows they can't really give up this position, right? That's the type of position they wanna play from with this composition, with that double fl flex support setup, so. Right now, you do have the cart moving underneath the bridge, but it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to move this for long if you're pirates in pajamas. You're going to have to back up, wait for some of your teammates to come off a of spawn. And on the other side, you're going to have Neb going over the Zen. So uh, you're probably going to find a little bit more consistent value here with the Zen, right? Discord, just an empty amount of damage, always a positive. Uh, and then being able to play a little bit further away. You're not going to get stuck in those close quarter scenarios, especially when you're going up against the Brig and the BAP, so they were able to use this, take a little bit of advantage, it's gonna be the Discord onto Strider, he's gonna take serious damage, and then just a headshot from the opposite side, from Haven, will finish the tank off the Pirates in Pajamas, so Punking, looks like you're gonna be able to get another fight win here, is now it, it's the, it depends what you wanna do, right? You can play a little bit further back, you do have that Zen set up, right? You have the Ash, you have a little bit, you know, more range, especially with no speed with the brig on the other side. Or you can play up here for the high ground, uh, as it looks like, you know, at least Calman's setting up there on the high ground. So, see now, with Chronic going over to Widow, this seems like, uh, you know, maybe, maybe this is a, a swap where you think they're going to be playing at range on the other side. You force them into these corners, right? Because they're so scared of the Widow, especially the Zen. Pretty good advantage. Nice shot there. On to Neb. Finishes him off with a headshot. So that's a perfect start here. If you're Pirates in pajamas, that'll be a Gravitic Flux there. From Cowman. Gets quite low. Doesn't really connect with anything. Rally rolling here for Pirates in pajamas. As Immortality Field keeps Hanbei and Cowman alive for just a brief period of time. But not good enough as uh, just that early Widowmaker pick. Widow kind of falling out of the meta pretty much completely. Uh, you know, just for situations like that, that time it pays off as Chronic able to nail the headshot onto Neb, and then be in a great spot to get the payload moving after that. So, some more changes here for Pirates in Pajamas as they've uh, gotten that second checkpoint. So, uh, you do have Stone going over to the Genji now. So, with uh, some of these squishy targets on the other side, the Genji could be quite good. Are you? No, this is a new, a new, a new Jaws era. Positive Jaws era. Yeah. That's the new. Uh, the I've new. always been a positive a human being, Matt. Don't worry. I, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be positive and say you're right. Yeah, that's so true. So true from you. Nice little window there from Unk. However, even better one here from Pip. It's gonna be tough for actually Neb to really play at a nice angle here. However, Transcend is still available. Doesn't want to blow it too early. It might have to. Oh dear, though. Uh, I mean, I know the reset hit will be quite... It will be needed for Unk. I mean, they've got ults, but... I mean, Strider can build up towards a Flux in just a moment, I'd imagine. 60% and spamming the spawn doors might be quite easy to get, but Hanbei going down super late this is a tough spot for them to be in. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to get out and contest, right? You're going to get the... 
the diva, the Kariko, but it's gonna be Chronic with a headshot as the Widow is definitely paid off. That'll be the D-Mech right before the Transcendence. Tough timing there for Ron King. Good stick onto Anion though. She ends up falling over, but it might not matter. Their team are just gonna clutch it out. So there we go, OT finish for Pirates in Pajamas. Zero seconds on the board. All good though. That was a yeah, heck of a defense from what I saw. Yeah, from, from what you saw, yes. <laughs> from, uh, I mean. from, 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 the, the, from the dominant fights on point A, uh, yeah, it, it would appear a dominant defense. Uh, but no, it, it, was, it was a pretty good defense all throughout, right? Um, the, the Alari, I, I would actually tend to agree with uh, So. We take a shot here from Chronic taking out the Zen. Uh, I, I don't think the Alari is like the linchpin of the comp, right? Of like, oh man, it's, it's you know, it's working because they have the Alari in the mix. I think it's just like a nice addition uh, where maybe they don't want to run Lucio. Zen's a little bit too easy to get caught out where like Alari is the next one up. Um, but they make it work pretty well on the defensive side of things. Curious to see how it works on offense. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, the offense is a little bit more tricky with the pylon. You have to hold it pretty defensively, like uh, on the archway thing, but as soon as you get it past there, it can be easily spammed out. That's the problem against playing Sigma too. If it's in like a spammable spot, the spheres can just like ricochet and hit the pylon, and then it's just like, well, it's dead. Which is the majority of your healing. Like I said to Scott yesterday, it's, it's tough to play the uh, Alari with like a Lucio, like a Zen. You have to have like another healer that does the majority of the healing, which is the BAP. Yeah, so we'll see how it uh, ends up working out. Well, I mean, I, that's why I feel like the issue, though, is is like if you have to play with the, you know, a character who does a bulk of the healing, you're just such a disadvantage. So we get a quick listening, though, on this first attack. Yeah. Trish is top right now. Yeah, Trish is top. They just have breaks. Wait, wait, wait. No. Uh, are they pushing, Donnie? No, no. I yeah, love, I love yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm back. I'm back. Free glow, free glow. Nice. Wait, four sec here. We have yeah. no line. Just around, just around. I can't, I can't, I can't. It's fine, it's fine. We won't, we won't. We won't take, we won't take. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take it to the ship, take it to the ship. We should push. Break down, break down, break down. Yeah. yeah. But they're all fucking one. Take space on left. Nice. Nice. Tracer above me, Tracer above me. I'm not playing too hard, I'm not playing too hard. Yeah. Just break down, break down, break down. I'm touching point, I'm touching point, I'm touching point. They're taking so much damage from me too. Same stuff we did in our form up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tracer's, uh, right. green. She went, Tracer's above the... Right right. Yeah, okay. it's fine. She can look you be there. Back Dude, this is back from in. She's back main. I can't, I can't, I can't. Uh, you let me? I'm going back one, back one. I'm gonna try it. Try one, try one. They have no bap, they have no bap. They still have. Try on me, try on me. I'm dead. They still one. They still, they still, they still. They still really one. You're only two there, only two there. Dead. Okay, it's fine. Nice try on that first push. And you can see Cowman was like, we, we can win this. We can win this for sure. Like, I'm, they're taking infinite damage from me, like poking them in the train. But it's just the spawners that kind of rolled back in. Those first initial picks kind of biting them uh, in the butt there. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, look, a uh, pretty good first push composed there from Unk Inc. Uh, knew exactly how they wanted to go about things. Uh, and they get two ticks, right? Pretty important. Set themselves in a good spot where you get some ultimate now to be able to take it. Rough. That was uh, not a stick and goes down to Neb. Mm. There's the Flux. Lamp's still active as well, so they should be good to at least sustain through some of that damage. Even though Pops around the corner just uh, dinks Chronic in the head after Anion's lamp ends up going down, and that will be the point. Second time's a charm. Yeah, I don't think someone want to use recall there, want to hold on to it, but with both damn matrixes out and like just being around the corner with low health, probably needed to in that moment. So, Unkink. Makes this a lorry work here uh, and gets the payload moving with a good amount of time. I mean, four minutes plus. See what Clarence and Pajamas decides to do. A uh, pretty conservative comp, right? Holding the high ground here, probably the best option. You do have a Flux to try and get an early fight win. That's like a huge advantage that they have, right? Is that there's no support ultimate on the other side, right? So any of this damage that comes in from the Flux uh, isn't going to be counterable with like a sound barrier. Yeah, you're relying really on that lamp staying alive. Well, there's the Flux, there is the Lamp. That pylon does end up going down, but both Neb and Hunbei are able to heal each other up. And they got an initial pick too. This was Strider trying to like turn the tides of this fight, but was just really unable to do so. Went super aggressive with the Flux. They've got a couple, but there was no follow-up to be had. And Unkink now taking the underpass.
Yeah, yeah, when I said they don't have a support ult, I misspoke because they have immortality field. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're oh, no, it's but it's I, very strong. I, I mean, it could very well be as uh, they just throws on the ground, the Flux. Uh, yeah, sure, everybody gets weak, but he just looks at the ground, starts firing some shots, heals everybody up. Is this going to be a dead eye here from oh, Chronic? So you can't exactly get too aggressive from Nip. Fantastic, either by Strider. Even a little bit of trouble, but there's the sound barrier. Nice and pajamas, good to stay on this point for a little bit longer. Now, but Strider gets up, focused out. Magic Maple sound barrier uh, doing absolutely nothing. There was a window there, just supplementing the damage. That overhealth not lasting long at all. Clown Man with a double, and Unking with four minutes in the time bank. I mean, it may not be the Alari, Matt. Obviously, Neb now changing over to what I can imagine is going to be the Zen. But Unk Inc., and they spoke about it in those uh, that listening, do what we did on warm-up. They're very, very well practiced on this map, it seems. And you can tell just by the way they're playing. Four minutes to go. That's cool. uh, I like the swap from Pirates and Pajamas because, like... You're not you're not making the Lucio really work, right? Like you're not able to get into the the backline, cause any problems, right? Also, everybody playing so split for Unking. There's nobody you can really collapse on. So, ditching the Lucio now, going with a double flex support look of yourself, Hanzo. really interesting. And the Hanzo is just so much burst damage coming in, right? A little bit, uh, I know, deadlier at range. Where it's interesting playing that Hanzo, especially now uh, against the Widow, right? Chronic playing really far back by the spawn. Like our Magic Mabel is also changing over to the Zen. See how many headshots are going to hit. I mean, Magic... Okay. <laughs> I mean, Magic Mabel played so far up past the Sig Shield. Okay, well, Nep took him out. Chronic at least got a kill onto Haven. No Pretty nice angle for the Widowmaker, especially with these sights, but... Too much pressure from Cowman. There's a lot of bodies near that point now, so Chronic's going to have to use that grapple to get away. In fact, ends up using the onion, ends up using the lamp, but Chronic was already out of there. Both lamps have been traded, however, and the stick from Ryan's going to be good for one. Both traded their Sigmas, but on the defense, Paris in pajamas, especially with this Widowmaker, they're going to have a priority flank angle or a off angle, but Haven takes Chronic's head off with an arrow just as Chronic was trying to get up into the sky. So that's a complete flip around, and Unk Inc. just pushing towards this final checkpoint now with time in the bank. Yeah, a lot of time as oh, well. Is uh, Calman actually going to come back on the Doom Fist here? So <laughs> I wonder if the Doom was just to get back towards that cart. Maybe he thought they had an opportunity to win or they want to stick with it. But Chronic deep in the spawn lands some sick shots there. Oh, 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 oh. oh they get another one there. Okay, okay, uh, Chronic. Uh, so do you switch now off of the Doom? Do you want to keep playing the Doom? Yeah, the Doom was just to make it back. Give yourself an opportunity here to the end. Uh, here's the scariest part, I think, if you're Unk Inc., is that, like, where the cart is, you know, you can push up here if you're Pirates in Pajamas, like, give yourself, like, a two-fight scenario coming out of the spawn, and then you're going up against Chronic, who's been hitting some sick shots on the Widow, where these slow comps with, like, you know, no speed, nobody to collapse on him, uh, no, he, he lands a shot here, you're, like, looking at, like, one more fight after that, but it doesn't matter, he even takes him out. Yeah, body shot to Anion, too, Anion pretty low, has to retreat. Bad news for Pirates and Pajamas right now. Widow's coming back in just a moment. Only just spawning here because the Transcendent to stall. Pirates and Pajamas still with bodies on the point and health to boot as well. Chronic activating the sights, but as a, a trade from cross map, you can see Haven not caring about these sights, but maybe should uh, maybe the rest of his team Chronic should care. Chronic still ripping face on the Widowmaker. I mean, surely another one. Wasn't a headshot onto the uh, Sigma, just a SMG fire. Haven does it end his day, but it doesn't really matter. Anion's there for the backup. She takes him down, and with one minute to go, Unkink's time bank of four minutes looking quite piddly now. Yeah, where you win that, uh, you know, you, you get that first pick, right? But then pushing in toward that spawn towards the end, Chronic ends up with three. So, uh, Magic Maple no, now will answer Nep. Nice. They're going to both play Lucio here towards the end. As this is Infrasight, but, like, no, uh, not the highest value Infrasight, right? You know, pretty, pretty good idea where all these players are going to be playing. Yeah, it's more keeping in the window check. Here comes the window. Even with those sights, you might want to go for a little peek. Good stick onto Chronic, but even better land from Annie in there. We we'll see if Chronic can land some more headshots. They're going to need to at this point with Anion and Strider down. Kaman to follow. Chronic waiting for the Tracer to re-blink, but I completely lost the Tracer who's uh, now on the point. Yep, uh, destroying your Tracer. Stone Chronic down. Neb oh. dead, but doesn't matter. Chronic comes out with big kills once again. The Unkink finish. They do get under a minute, so both teams now granted an attack.
Yeah, now with like, uh, it, it really interesting because of the compositions that both these teams are playing, right? Where now with only a minute, do you play something with like Lucio to get through that choke a little bit faster, right? Uh, now Pirates in Pajamas playing the Brig and then Onk Inc. obviously playing the Alari is... Dude, Sonic this hard scope is crazy. <laughs> Ooh, my God. That shot off the Neb was kind of nasty. No yeah, hard scoping on the enemy Widow Maker, but yeah. That looks good. Looks good on the Widow. A lot of variation in this map. I'm, I'm loving it so far. So it looks like, uh, yeah, Unk Inc. will be on defense here. So we'll get that one swapped at the top of the screen. So I, I actually think it makes sense to run the Alari on defense because you're just in like a better spot, right? Uh, I know you, you've, you've proven that to work. Probably better on defense first point than anywhere else on the map. Uh, I'm curious if Pirates in Pajamas, they want to stay with the brick. I think their idea is to get control of like that, you know, uh, firehouse on the left side, make it really difficult for Unk Inc. to kind of push in with that brick there. Uh, it's just can you get that control without, you know, taking so much damage from this comp that Unk Inc. is going to have on D. Yeah, so a little low. They running the, um, the brick yet again. Is Magic Mabel going to stick? Okay, they're going to stick on the brick. For a lot of support to the Tracer, of course, throwing those packs out. We'll see how they want to rotate too, because we've seen it over and over again. Ryan and Neb just holding this left-hand side, this uh, this alleyway. Could be quite frustrating, especially if they want to uh, cross. Requires a lot of that connects. <laughs> that connect. Yep, of course it does. Magnate. <laughs> Too mad. It is. It's so silly sometimes. Well, Stone takes the pylon down. A lot less healing. It's actually going to force Ryan and Neb to retreat back to that mega health pack room. Yeah, and trying to land a big dynamite, right? Just make it costly in terms of HP pool crossing this, but Chronic takes out Ryan is and uh between uh, you know, Chronic on the widow and then Haven, you know, playing the widow as well. Some hit scans, some crazy stuff here on Midtown. Yeah, Chronic looks so good. Yeah, this should be uh time on the point hit. No C9, all good. Magic Red Bull is firmly on the point. Ryan's going to come back after swiftly dying to that Magne, but that will be the cap. And honestly, on this map, that sometimes takes a long time to kind of breach first. That's a pretty quick and impressive uh, thing to do in a minute. OT still here, though. That payload's going to get it going. Unkink. They're going to be able to hold fairly far up as well, Matt. You can see how close they're holding. Look at the Neb's positioning. It feels like, though, like you're playing with house money at this point if you're Pirates in Pajamas, right? You only had a minute on the clock, like, to just get the cart and now get it moving. Uh, it feels like, you know, especially getting it through that gate, you're at a pretty... feel like you're in a pretty nice spot regardless of what happens. Look at this. I mean, oh, imagine people, that's like going to knock players down. The pylon's gone as well. Maybe this is an opportunity. Yeah, good relocation by Neb, forcibly. Big dynamite. Dynamite hits, then there's the window. A little retreat here from Unking. They cannot lose anybody. In fact, they do. A shot through the window ends the BAP's life, and it's now only Neb to kind of heal up the team, and Alari needs the pylon to do so. Chronic does end up falling. There's the outburst straight into the ult. No ET there. That's a lot of damage, and that's insta-kills. That sunburst just exploding, detonating the team. That will be where the payload ends, but what a push after uh, only scoring a single minute. Pretty impressive stuff from Pirates in Pajamas. They did whittle the time bank down on uh, Unking's attack too. It was four minutes they went into, so they were lucky to be granted this extra attack, and they do a lot of work with it. Yeah, and you see Neb there towards the end, right? When the flux is going down, ends up moving to the side to avoid uh, kinetic grasp. Uh, I know it doesn't want the Sunburst getting eaten, right? And then just a crazy amount of damage, even with the immortality field when all those players land. So yeah, really nice stuff there on D. From Unk Inc., they're able to, uh, you know, uh, they give up point A, but, for, you know, stop any type of bleeding, especially after losing the first player, right? You lose uh, Hanbei, like you mentioned earlier, right? That's, like, the large right. source of healing, the one who's, like, responsible for keeping everybody alive in Immortality Field. Uh, to lose that player first and then to still be able to hold on is uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, the Captive Sun is just so good. And then, yeah, the, um, the Sunstruck, sorry, the explosions especially comboed with the flux right they're already down the ground and the, the, the explosions just happen like the lamp is great just for the <laughs> just for the flux on top of the captive sun ain't no way you're surviving that yeah really nice little combo really well good it's just, just like an almost instant team fight win if you um end up hitting like a couple of people which they did and the brig was rallying too mind you so a lot of health well let's see what unking can do on their attack 
Like I mentioned before, it's always been Ryan and Neb just trying to take these off angles uh, as the Alari and the Tracer. I can imagine we're going to see the same thing. Last time when we listened to their comms, they were just waiting to see if Pirates in Pajamas were going to kind of just run at them, knowing that the plan from Unking is to send Ryan and Neb on a flank. We'll see if the same plan will be put into action here by uh, Phoenix Guard, Pirates in Pajamas. And this is kind of where I worry about Unk Inc. here is like for their comp, like it's about poke damage, right? And it's just going to take a while to develop that if they lose a player early, that's the uh, immortality field gone. It finishes off from uh, any end, but they're going to end up losing Haven, right? The comp takes so slow, so long to develop, right? You lose this here. These players are still alive, just kind of lingering, right? They're going to push in, get rid of the pylon. They're going to kill uh, Cowan and the supports here, probably. And they're kind of waiting that. and staggering these players out. Yeah, you're going to have, like, what, a junk attempt here with, like, 10 seconds left? It's not good. It's not a good push. I feel like you... you got to go... Well, I guess Trace could touch. But, yeah, you have to go Lucio. Oh, and aren't they... Oh, they, there's no way they get out of that one. Yeah, there's no shot. Perfect play there from Pirates of Pajamas. Just punishing the uh, overextending back. Well, not even overextending. They're on their side of the map. Calman just walks in and kills two, though. Just get... <laughs> what? Wait, what? Okay, Calman okay. POV uh, just walks in, kills the back line. I can imagine that was obviously help with the Tracer. Pulse Bomb does land on the shield of Calman, though. He sends him extremely low, and there's no healers to be seen either for Unk Inc. They did get the touch map, but no, no, nothing else. Nothing other than that. High Noon on the point. Stone is dead. And they're still going to be able to kind of trickle on here. But is it really going to be enough? Ryan with the Pulse Bomb straight in the back line. Kills Chronic, too. Okay, they're sticking in this one. Unk Inc. might have just done it. Haven switches over to Soldier. What a scrappy fight. Starting off with Calman killing the back line of uh, Pirates in Pajamas. A lot of ults, though. That's the big problem here for Unking. They had to make a lot of swaps, so they've not got much left for this next push. <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, I mean, Pirates of Pajamas, they do everything right. They stall these players out, right? They kill them late. Uh, so they're not, like, able to just kind of uh, no, get, get a full fight together. And Cowman with Haven just, like, walks through the choke uncontested, kills uh, a bat, and then just, like, runs through two other players. Like, makes... <laughs> Very limited amounts of sense how that developed there, but Unk Inc. with a, a real opportunity here to steal this one would be huge, right? You can't fall down 0-2. Gotta accept Pirates in Pajamas know that Cowan has this flux. And he just came up. There's the flux, almost instantly hit it. Focusing out, Strider will be perfect. Use the flux of his own. Not sure where it went. I don't think it hit anybody. Maybe. Just got booped out, not entirely sure, but Kalman are never dead. Just the overwhelming ult advantage here from Pirates in Pajamas. I mean, they had to survive against a four-minute time bank against Unking on third. They were granted a free attack, and they end up claiming the win. Match point now for Pirates in Pajamas. What an absurd push there from Unking on, uh, on first position. They managed to unlock it, but man, Pirates in Pajamas, the sheer tenacity, and along with a couple of headshots from Chronic on the Widowmaker, they end up making it work, Matt, and they're on match point now. Chronic with some really nice shots. It feels like for Unk Inc., like if this is a series you wanted to win, like having the opportunity right there on the map like Midtown, uh, I know where they, they're probably in the driver's seat for a lot of it. Uh, it is a must win scenario. Crazy that they were even able to take point A, like in their overtime on offense. It looked like Pirates yeah. Jumps had it sealed there, but they're able to kind of like battle back with Calman and Haven take point a, uh, but then the, the rally plus the game matrix up on the high ground. I mean, just too strong there once they get control of the point. That was so rough, man. So, so, I mean, this is the... Boop, boop. There's, like, what is that? There's no way that gap <laughs> yeah, fits silly. two spears. Like, that's so ridiculous. Insane stuff from Chronic on the Widowmaker. I mean, this is what you really need uh, on this point. You just need, like, please, just to insta-kill people. Please, Widow. Like, you cannot stall this point out for long if you're on the attack. Like, the spawn point is so close, and the line of sight to the spawn is also incredibly close. It's really rough to finish it off if it's not a quick, decisive team fight. Unbelievable comeback from Pirates in Pajamas. Here's that combo we're talking about, the Captive yeah. Sun. Even with the Brig Rally, it's like, yeah, that's uh, that's game. That is You game. shoot at Sigma's big old feet, so it dodges the kinetic grasp. And yeah. uh, <laughs> nice play there. Sick pulse bomb stick from Ryan. I mean, this is like just a crazy scenario that they're even able to get it to this point. But... Oh, yeah, didn't it? Oh, no, we got Haven. Okay. I thought they didn't get anybody, but little Suzu at the end there to help Haven survive that flux. 
really nice stuff. And this was honestly just an old disadvantage coming from Unkink. They had to send people, they swap over to the soldier to try and get back in time to try and cap first. A very close game, but Pirates in Pajamas ending up coming out on top. Close to that main event once again. It, it, it's, uh, you see the stats, right? Wow, look at Unkink's damage, right? No, but obviously they have the Alari in the mix, and then also it's just 10k extra healing on the side of Pip, right? So it's like, you know, any of the damage that they were doing was pretty much negated, right? <laughs> you know, in terms of the, the more damage mitigated and the extra healing, right? Where uh, Overwatch, uh, I mean, Overwatch, you know, one, two, it, it just feels like it's so predicated at this level about like survivability, right? Uh, I know what, what, where if you can have the, the 10k extra healing and the extra damage mitigated, you may as well take it, right? Oh yeah, I mean, I love the Alari. I think it does end up working out and it's clearly something that they practiced tough to combo with anybody else especially when lucio is like almost must you're not going to play like a lorry brig right right or you Alari's need that defensive ult it's just yeah it, it can feel a little bit rough but when you get the combos off it feels pretty cool it looks pretty cool too so uh yeah next map is esperanza pirates in pajamas that was their map choice as we jump over it to that in just a moment but there's a small substitution here so stone is stepping away for the brief moment and uh tejong is coming in yeah, so uh, we'll have a sub as well for uh, Unk Inc. as uh, Nebmu comes in to play the Alari there on Midtown. We'll step out for Paintbrush. So uh, we'll see Paintbrush back come back Lucio. in here in a must-win scenario. Yeah, back to Lucio now. No more double flex support. Very rarely do we see double flex now, so it's good to see a team uh, play that one, even if it's only for one map. But Esperanza push, yeah, you need Lucio. You need to be able to get back to the point ASAP. Plus, defensive ult, like we mentioned before, just so important. As we load yeah. in what could be the deciding match here for Unk Inc., a team that was formed an hour before the Swiss stage, making it this far pretty damn impressive. A lot of uh, history to players here, to be fair as well, especially Paintbrush. We we'll see if Pirates in Pajamas can just close this one out. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, double seeing some extra double flex support would be awesome, right? I think just with the way the game has changed and the nature of the game, like Lucio providing mobility to everybody is always going to be, you know, as close to required as possible in most scenarios. Uh, and then with Lucio, you need somebody who puts out enough, you know, healing output, right? Uh, so you're looking at like, uh, you know, Bap, Kariko, like uh, uh, characters like that, right? Where kind of pushes a lot of some of the other heroes away, especially in that flex support role. So Pirates and Pajamas, let me take switching over to Tracer. So you're going to get a mirror matchup on both sides outside of they're going to run that Cassidy again. So Chronic playing the Cassidy, going to play a little bit more in that like medium range, right? I would say like uh, now with the Sojourn, like high ground definitely like matters, right? Being able to put some extra damage down and like getting advantage for those real gun shots. But with the Cassidy, it doesn't really like matter. Cassidy can really kind of fight in any area perfectly fine. Yeah, we'll see how that matchup ends up uh, working out. Bit of extra defensive uh, countermeasures for the Tracer too. Speaking of which, they're trying to poke around the side here. Uh, Ryan, the Tejong is going to be able to match them. Oh, yeah, Chronic seeing the <laughs> Sojourn lit head. up. Uh, I don't want to mess with that. No, thank you. You remember when Sojourn was released, there wasn't really like a massive glow with the rail guns. So yeah. Like, I don't know if they've got rail. Uh, I hope they don't. If I be oh, I'm dead. <laughs> that was a little crazy. Luckily now, of course, you can tell when the Sojourn's fully charged and you know exactly when to duck. Yeah, her railgun at the start also is about the, the, the width of the push bot as well, so... And it one-shots. One shot. Pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, pretty strong ability. You know what's pretty strong? strong? Hanbei's uh, rush that they're going to get out first. And you're not too far behind. She's about 5% away. There's the rush. Super Strider gets so low. My god, she got nuked. Woo, Strider down. Anya to follow. Yeah, Anya just like 5% away from that. Maybe if they had it, like... They just matched the rush there, but Strider just got blown up. Yeah, they set it up quite well, right? They get, end up getting the rush, but Strider is really weak even before the rush. And then Ryan actually is on the opposite side of that pillar. So even when he tries to disengage, run back, the tracer damage on the backside just enough to finish off the Arisa. So uh, an early little bit of progress there from Pirates in Pajamas. I mean, what, 12 meters or so? But uh, Unkink wins that first fight ultimately and now gets a little bit of a leap. Only small, though. 
was that first fight. If you can get it around this corner as well, it's just so much more beneficial. But taking the high ground control here, you're again just waiting for your surgeon, waiting for uh, your casty, whoever, just to line up a shot and get a kill. Strider, though, a little bit of revenge there, killing a paintbrush, but it's actually flipped all around on his head. Anion goes down first for pirates in pajamas, even after using that rush. And now Unkink are in a little bit of a precarious spot. They've got the high ground control of their own, of course, but this bot, I don't think it's going to move all too much. They're going to have to guarantee themselves a couple of kills because Anion's going to come back really quickly. Yeah, they're going to swap over and play the Sojourn here. So Chronic uh, probably says uh, at this point, right, when you're now playing at that midfield, so to speak, where the bot is, like now you're going to get much more value, right? Being able to slide, get up towards that high ground, being able to actually put a little bit more pressure on Haven as the overclock comes out. Oh, they're trying to find them some shots, but no, there is the sound barrier coming through. Oh my god! That beat from Paintbrush, I believe he was like 1 HP. Cowman comes up with a big Terror Surge kill, though. That's the main factor of this fight. Unkink with a good lead now, 35 meters, and then some. Yeah, as, uh, they may actually even get checkpoint here off of this, so... The sound barrier used by Magic Mayball able to keep everybody alive, especially when that overclock came out, but... Huge terror search there from Cowman right around the corner, and that will be checkpoint. So, fire some jumps from today's spot with a solo spot looking to close this series out, but you know, now find themselves down, you know, more than 40 meters. It's just gonna be Ryan as well, jostling the payload because they don't have to get down from height. Winning a fight here would be perfect. What tools do they have? Well, they've got Rush, but fire some jumps do want to step up. Definitely going to get a Russia planted in their face. But they've got a lot of DPS ultimates of their own, to be fair. This Pulse Bomb could be a mean thing to deal with. And he's just uh, playing a little bit more passive right now. Doesn't want to get sniped. Speaking of getting sniped, there's the Overclock. Ripped. Are they dead? The Chronic does end up falling over. Even, uh, even after getting run at, you'd imagine that slide would help them out. But unfortunately, not to be. Right now, trying to chase down the enemy Tracer. A little blink smack onto Tejong. And this bot still in firm control of Unking, even though they've lost Cowman. These are very scrappy fights, Matt. And nothing definitive here is bad for Pirates in Pajamas. They need a definitive fight because look who's already back. The Unking, they're back at full strength, pretty much. Yeah, no, it was actually Ryan putting some pressure on the back line there. Uh, Magic Mabel needed to go help uh, Onion. She's got pressure down there. Really tough by the Tracer. Is Now you're in an opportunity where you turn the corner here. Maybe you get that Katsuni Rush of your own. A little bit of an advantage here for Pirates in Pajamas. Because you do need a fight win to kind of get the bot in a, you know, into the territory of Unk Inc. Put some pressure on. Oh, this is something you can do that exact thing with. It's just uh, that rush to push them up onto heights. And the onto Ryan's really nice too. No one that can juggle bot. And now Chronic's in a position where he can find a lot of success. Anion takes down Cowman as they round this corner to the checkpoint. Yeah, and a sound barrier available here for Pirates in Pajamas. But look at this. They're going to back off the bot just a little bit. They're going to have one player consistently move it forward. But they want to play for this high ground. It's Haven with the overclock on the other side. Could be huge here for Unk Inc. Feels like... You need to get a stop here. It starts to feel like momentum starts to swim in favor of Pirates in Pajamas if you don't. So many ultimates for King though. See how they want to end up playing this one. Because it is Pirates in Pajamas with high ground control. <laughs> a little boop off there. Nice. Paintbrush getting down, the, getting the Sojourn from high, but you can slide back up pretty quickly. There's the beats. The Terror Surge as well from Strider. Oh, one HP hitting the Terror Surge. Okay, gives you a little bit of damage resistance, but not, not as much as uh, that Railgun does. Invincible. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately not. That Railgun firmly planted between the eyes of the Arisa. That's a nice little fight win there. I mean, you, you have to win that fight. Are you popping three ults, you best win. Yeah, and I would say what's the positive there for Pirates in Pajamas is they actually hold on to their sound barriers. They get close to tying the game, right? I uh, know it'll be a little bit more, you know, progress here for Unk Inc. as they get back to the barrier pretty fast, but you have the sound barrier to use, so potential to actually kind of get back in this pretty quick here if you're Pirates and Pajamas. It's going to be a Katsuni Rush to use, like, on the side here. Really interesting angle, so difficult for Pirates and Pajamas to fight it. So you can push super far, too. It's always a really rough going to get this far, to be fair. I mean, one team fight here might just be the end of, uh, end of the push. Now, at least, uh, with Haven dead. I don't think I can try and match this one. I mean, they've got no walls. They just ideally want to die on the point. Just try and find some stagger kills. Try and find... Not stagger kills, but, like, try and find some pick-offs. Trying to force some ops. Doesn't look like it's going to be possible, though. Yeah, they just... 
Pirates in pajamas just playing that too cleanly. No, they can't afford to use any ultimates here. They are a little bit further behind. They need that checkpoint. They need to get this bot push in. Only two minutes and 40 seconds to go. Well, that's what I liked about what they just did there, right? It's like, okay, if you lose that fight in their scenario for Pirates in pajamas, you're pretty screwed, right? Uh, if you win it and use both support ultimates, you're probably pretty screwed as well because you give yourself really not a great chance to win the next fight, in which ultimately matters. Yeah, and this is interesting. A wrap. This is going to give like high ground. This might be a little bit of a mistake here for Ron King. Yeah, I mean, Chronic is trying to split the team up right now. That bot is in the mid too, mind you, or close to the mid. Now it's finally been taken by Pirates in Pajamas under that bridge, back to that wall. It can finally push the barrier. And it's up to Tejong now to try and get that checkpoint. Oh my god, what a snipe by Chronic. Snipe's paintbrush high in the sky, and Cowman using that Terra Surge up on the high ground, but no one was there. He's trying to isolate Chronic, but the sound barrier's come in to save his life. I don't think he even needed it, to be very honest with you. And that will be checkpoint for Pirates in Pajamas. They've got Rush, they've got Terra Surge, they've got Pulse Bomb for this next fight. They're in a very good spot where they can just take the lead now. Well, that feels like we're on. Inc. should have just played from the spot we see right here, right? Play from that choke, force them to use some ultimates, you know, disengage, come back around, right? When they wrap, they end up giving so much space to Pirates in Pajamas in that high ground and kind of falls apart. And look at this, they're in a really rough spot. Hummy's already oh, they lose. Yeah, oh, that was going to be their rush. Hummy. Dead. Onion. Pulse rush. Still gets stomped out by Haven, though. Okay, they're playing in the rush, but Haven says not today. That overclock. Oh, it's dishing out some mean damage. I mean, Tejon sure takes him down, but Honey was oh. hoping she could teleport into the into the front line, use the rush, and they can win the fight there, but they don't even get the lead. It was five meters away, and with only a minute to go, this is Unk Inks to lose yeah. now. They've got a rush of their own. And a, they and get, a beat. They get pretty fortunate, though, there, Jack, right? I mean, they end up, they gave up all that space. You're basically in a spot where the game is going to be tied. You lose your Kariko right away, and the other team ends up using their rush. Uh, and, you know, Haven just hit some sick shots there. Uh, now, with the overclock going, where, and that, he, he didn't land those. I mean, you're in a lot of trouble. Oh, Haven almost getting blown up there. That rush on the high ground, really easy way to clear off Pirates in Pajamas. They are still pushing the bot, though. Tejon making Ryan's life a little bit more difficult. Can't, like, get into the fight, into the engagement. Has to pay attention to that bot. 20 seconds to go. Still unkink in the lead. See now if Chronic can get a spot, right? Gonna have a railgun charge, but really trying to play for this overclock. You're playing for OT. Over overclock comes out. You probably see unkink answer with a really fast sound barrier. Seems like it. Chronic sliding forward, taking position. Here is the beat. Trying to match that overclock. I imagine Mabel's already dead. Terra Surge comes in to protect Chronic. Chronic snipes Haven out of the skies and takes the high ground. A double kill for Chronic using the OC. Cowman spinning to win him on the point, but Chronic's up on the high ground. You've got to kill the carry, but the carry is refusing to die. Taejong kills Hanbei, and the bot is still in contention. Ryan manages to take down Taejong eventually, but it's all onto Chronic yet again. Anion is there for the backup, for the support. Stride is working over to the Doomfist, and Chronic takes another life with him to the grave as Ryan is stepped up on the bot, but Anion takes him down. They've still got a rush mat, but it's just slowly trickling members of uh, Unk, Unk Inc. right now. At least they get back to the bot, sure, but there's only four meters in this. Yeah, it, it's not far at all. I mean, you're going to have the Lucio Lucio the bot. Yeah, <laughs> boobs paintbrush away. This is going to be a Katsune rush. You have to get over here. Players are so split. Strider's back into the fight. There's the sound barrier coming through from Magic Mate Ball. The hold up of the fist there from Strider just tries to isolate Cowman, but a spear spin is going to push him away and take him down as well. A railgun shot and a couple of bullets from Ryan do take down the Doomfist. The pulse one goes a little bit wide from Ryan, but it does not matter. He's still chasing down the back line. Magic Mate Ball dead. It's a 2v5. A Strider and Mate Ball 4. Painbush is there to follow, so a 4v3 on the point. And Cowman just perma sticking on the bot to make sure it doesn't move a single inch. And there it is. Unk Inc. keep themselves in the series. A 2-1 lead for Paris in Pajamas still, but by the skin of their teeth, they managed to make it work. Unk Inc. with a miraculous comeback. I mean, that is uh, too close for comfort if you're Unk Inc., right? You get a pretty nice lead. You kind of give up some space there towards the end, and it's pretty dicey, right? I uh, know you're, you're separated by you know, a, a meter or two, uh, but they have Holy. some ultimates there at the end uh, to keep it going. Jeez, I mean, look, you missed the post one there at the very end, but Ryan just went just like sicko mode, honestly. Like taking yeah. down the Doomfist, like you've got to just focus that down. You can't let the Doomfist get 
cooldowns off over and over again. Really nice isolation from Cowman, using the Spear Spin to push Strider into their own line of fire with the help of Ryan and a uh, Railgun shot. They take him out. It looked so winnable. Onion, she ended up using the Rush super early to keep everybody alive. It really was just the spawn advantage there coming through from Unkink. They keep themselves alive in the series, Matt. Pirates in pajamas, they're still on match point. Suravasa up next, and it was uh, Unk Ink's choice. Yeah, it, I mean, if you... It, the, the Doomfist there is, like, necessary at the end to probably get back, but, like, right. the Arisa does so many things to just punish the Doom, right? Uh, you no, know, when the power block, easy spears to land, you know, spear spin to just kind of knock him off course, where it was going to be very difficult for Strider to stay alive, so... I can't really even hold that against him there towards the end, just trying to get yeah, back in the fight to help the team in any way. You can't survive, bro. Again, like, against the Orisa and, like, all the yeah. damage, it's, it's tough for the Doomfist to really get much done. I mean, if you've got ults, like, sure, maybe, but, yeah, it's... Stride is there to get back quickly, stall the point out. Very, very close uh, finale there. That, that was four meters in it. I mean, there were a couple of times where... Um, Pirates in Pajamas, Phoenix Guard Pirates in Pajamas, they ended up almost taking that lead, but Hunk Inc., the tenacity of this team cannot be understated. And these are some crazy shots. I mean, just to be able to kind of win this fight in OT, right? Tanger doing a crazy, crazy. job. Testing. Oh, yeah, that pulse is... bomb. Okay, that pulse bomb looked like it should have landed on maybe. Yeah, it was there. close. My God. Well, they got, they got him in the end, but yeah, Ryan. The, the sheer pressure and then Calman's doing a just I'm just gonna sit on the bot <laughs> like Ryan go kill I just CC everybody from the bot I throw spears to try to help you succeed a very very close game between so. last map and this map these teams are really evenly matched right oh easy uh, yeah I mean almost the same damage literally the same damage mitigated really close in terms of like healing output where uh that map really close uh in terms of uh the both teams playing pretty strong. Uh, Midtown was a really close one as well, where even Unkink may have, uh, you may even look at that and say Unkink kind of gave that one away, where uh, this series could go the distance. Oh, well, it looks like Jack doesn't want to be here anymore, but yeah, let's take a look at the uh, winning comms here from Unk Inc. and we'll be back to the next map after this. Yeah. Hey, you have to, you have to. I got it, bro. I'm almost I'm there, almost there. You want to go I got you, Finn. I still carry back. Still carry back. I got power. I got power, bro. Okay, I'm living. Yeah. One, 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 one. I can live. I can live. I'm chilling. Doom, 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 I'm dead, I'm dead. Only so, only so shy. Oh my god, I'm Oh my god. I'm Thanos. I'm pretty sure that was said of the comms. I am Thanos. 1v9, the god. Beautiful stuff. Thanos, Thanos is, uh, he, he's, uh, he, he's just, uh, using the stones on your internet. Uh, snapping yeah, his, actually, snapping okay. his finger yeah. and every once in a while the internet comes back it goes to, it goes out the play is too electric and my internet keeps dc and bro <laughs> i was like man jack is really not excited to hear these winning yeah <laughs> like, again yes he doesn't want to hear him but stone will come in here four pirates in pajamas so a uh, little bit of flexibility here in terms of what you can play right i don't have to play the tracer all the time here uh you know i i expect the lucios for both teams going to stay in uh, which they do uh, uh no subs for Unk Inc. Yeah, stone back in. See what's up on Suravasa. What an unbelievable finish. Suravasa was uh, the map Unkink won uh, yesterday. That was against Shik Agami. That was a 3-1 victory in their game to secure their spot in this decider match. See if they uh, bring out anything different here. Paris in Pajamas 2 ended up winning um, Suravasa against M80, a team that everybody thought would kind of roll over their group, but Paris in Pajamas proving they're quite formidable before MAT did close out on Junkertown. So Suravasa, the last couple of games for both squads, they end up taking those Ws. Uh, and on, on a map like this, I'm really looking at like the damage dealers, right? Whether uh, they're going to see the tracers after these, uh, you know, Symmetra TPs and then the Sojourns. Because uh, on a, a map like Flashpoint where the map is so big, right? You get a early pickoff, like uh, the, the walk back is so far. 
you can give yourself a huge advantage, right? And with how fast the flashpoints tick up, you're like a, you know, always a, a really like one or two fights away from being able to win one. So seeing which team can get an advantage first, look at how aggressive Unk Ink is pushing on down. Super aggro, yeah. Haven there exchanging railgun shots from Chronic, but Haven Bash a booping strider for the little kill. Good start uh, from Unk Ink. Yeah, extremely aggro. Normally, you see your teams jostle forever yeah. at this point, so Unk Ink kind of flipping the meta script and just taking the fight a lot quicker. They do lose Hanbei, which kind of sucks, but it's Kiri, so the Tracer's going to blink back a couple of times, just get the pick up. It, it may have caught Pirates in pajamas off guard, because like you mentioned, you know, both teams usually just kind of like jostle for position around that, uh, you know, choke. Uh, where Unk Ink, I mean, Kelly just spun his spear, ran on in, and everybody followed. I mean, there was just no <laughs> fear, no respect given, and they had pushed them all the way back, but this is going to be a point flip. Nice Suzu there to try and keep Cowman in this one. Yeah, that uh, early kill onto the Kiriko is biting them now. Well, that late kill, sorry, onto the Kiri is biting them now. Just not back quick enough. And uh, yeah, Pirates in Pajamas, they recognize that. They end up running them down. Just a uh, flipping script on them this time. There's a lot of flipping script. It, yeah, so I mean, look, you lose that first fight. You come back rather quickly. You end up taking the lead with how Flashpoint Ooh. builds up as... Hello. Here. Stone with the pulse bomb. Same with Strong. <laughs> Strong is there too. Yeah. Oh, good okay. stick. Little Suzu. Oh, uh, nice Suzu. Recalled just in time there. Stone almost going down to his own pulse bomb. Here's the rush playing super aggro. Wow, Pirates and Jones and Unkink. Very willing to take these fights super early. This should be last fight on this point too. A late kill onto Paintbrush. No. That might be the difference maker, although 70 plus percent. You're thinking here that Ryan can get the touch, but they're playing super far up again. Like Stone's hiding in this spawn. Okay, they've sniffed him out this time. It's uh, Ryan making sure Stone doesn't get in the way with any funny business. Yeah, I mean, there's so much space for tracers to like hide and flank and whatnot. And I think you have to determine here. And they touch, fine set. It, but is it worth it at this point, right? But I mean, so now it's almost even worse, right? You don't get a chance to touch and then you may end up losing some players here on the rotation. Nice pick off from Annie, and she ended up just headshotting the tracer as they were trying to touch. The little overclock uses there by Chronic. Not, not ideal. Didn't get any kills, but at least dissuaded uh, anybody from Unking from pushing it. A Strider hiding again. Okay, hiding with a Terror Surge. All right. All right, okay. Spear into the wall. Haven going pretty low. Still got all your cooldowns. There's the rush. There is the Terror Surge. For like half a second, that was like a 1% Terror Surge from, from yeah. Strider. I mean, it pulled in the Kiriko at least for a second, I suppose. Trying to set up the rest of the team, I would imagine. It's Annie just trying to get away. Little bodyguard action there from Strider, trying to keep her safe. I mean, it does manage to get out, but Strider not quite so lucky. My word, the, the tempo, both these are risk. You'd think they're playing Ryan yeah. or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it, it, it's like, uh, I mean, double it's, boot. it's just so aggressive, like very aggro. I mean, you see both Arisa's spear spin fortified, just kind of like cycling those cooldowns. Uh, the Kitsune Rush seems to be kind of like the, you know, signal to end up using your Terror Surge, right? Like, kind of just deter the team from running into it, hold on to it for a pretty brief period of time. It's uh, Pirates and Pajamas, though, they did end up losing first fight the last time and end up flipping the point. So we'll see if on Gang can actually hold on. No more funny business, they say. All right, Ryan with the pulse. Gonna wait for that slide. Oh, nice prediction on the pulse there. Unfortunately, Chronic sidestepped it. Because they were hurtling at about a million miles an hour using that power slide. Paintbrush it down. Pirates in pajamas still with double support ultimate, but they do not need it. Just end this one with a pulse. And that's going to give them a huge advantage, right? Because you're not going to have uh, the Onk Ink support ultimates online for probably another fight or so. Uh, in which Pirates in pajamas put themselves in a position where, you know, with how fast the flashpoints stick up. Hey, we need one fight to win. Everybody's probably going to have support ultimates across the board. Uh, you, you have to take your chances with that, right? Where you win this one and you go to flashpoint point here. 30 plus percent. Yeah, you aren't half wrong, Matt. And you're looking for someone to TP to. Oh, good. She ends up just clambering over the wall. Oh, what a headshot. Oh, what? <laughs> All right, Ryan. See you. See you in another life, sir. Any late kills here would really suck. All good. And no crazy late staggers. They do get a team kill, 60%. But, yeah. I mean, they're just going to play up, Matt. This is the scenario I kind of described, right? You win one fight. They're still not going to have support alts. You have another fight here. And you're in last fight territory with double support alt. And then, uh, 
Yeah, you also have your overclock, right? So you're in a fantastic position if you're pirates in pajamas. I think the discussion has to be like, can you win this without using all of that, right? So you can kind of go into the next point without having to give it up at the start. Ryan's there to touch, good sound barrier from Pirates in Pajamas. I mean, Haven doesn't stand a chance. I mean, it at least takes care of Stone. Rotation from Monking onto the point. They actually managed to get the flip too. But is it enough? I mean, 99% for Pirates in Pajamas. I mean, this is a point hit, surely. Onion kept alive by a magic made ball up in the skies. Double kill for the Lucio. And there we go, a 2-0 lead here for Phoenix Guard at Pirates in Pajamas. They might just be able to end the series. Unk need, Inc. need a miracle comeback. They already set themselves off to start a reverse sweep, but a, a reverse sweep plus now, I guess? New game plus kind of vibes? <laughs> Here's the positive for Unk Inc., right? They're gonna get to the point first. You have double support all to work with. Uh, if Chronic ends up popping his overclock, you just have that sound barrier in response. The, the issue would be the fight after, right? You, you lose that fight, obviously, it's terrible, right? But you, you think you would win that fight. The fight after is really the decider. Point unlocks in about seven seconds as they use that rush. Nice spear kill. There we go. All oh, right. A clean victory hit from Unk Inc. Is that point unlocks and they get the cap. The best thing is, is they only use the rush, right? Right. Uh, you, you would thought maybe you have Chronic end up using that overclock, maybe try and bait out Sound Barrier, but uh, doesn't decide to use it. Oh, Chronic. Oh my, uh, mid slide mid too. Dash too. Damn, okay. Pretty clean, pretty clean from Kamen. Terra Surge to mess around with as well, like you said. Only using the rush is so good. Kamen just jumping into the back line. Using that Terra Surge, doesn't find much. Just drags a couple of people in, but that distracts Magic Mabel long enough for Ryan to sneak around, get a pulse for. In fact, two kills, two. Looks like Stone was also isolated on the sidelines. Unking trying to pile on the pressure. 60 plus percent now. Losing anybody here would be disastrous, but they're cool, calm, and collected. They actually four CDs out of Strider, who tries to make their way forward to the point. Yeah, and I wonder if the talk here with Pirates in Pajamas get another fight, get them to use beat, and then just call it, right? Uh, no, maybe, maybe you think, like, just don't invest anything here, is this will be the overclock? Looking to see if you can get that sound barrier out. Unkink decides to disengage instead. Nice, big disengage, too. They don't end up using that sound barrier to kind of counteract all that damage. They can just run in here. But what do you think As long as Anion doesn't have all... Oh, they might be able to just walk away with this one. Because because Anion's going to get the Kitsune Rush here, right? And then you also have Strider with Terror Surge, and maybe you're able to get up towards the Sound Barrier for Magic Maple, where would you have been better off just using a Sound Barrier of your own and just engaging? Well, there's the Rush, Anion with 1% away from hers. It's actually gonna force the back off hit from Pirates in Pajamas and the Flip too. They should be able to get a, uh, a small little touch here. There we go. Trigger OT, and here's the later Rush. Terra Surge, there's both sound barriers coming out as well. It's actually Calman the first to fall. Strider's playing on this rush too, so the CDs are, have been reduced quite significantly. That spear landing directly into Haven, and with Ryan dead, reset angle. So that's the bad part about disengaging there, right? Is you gave the opportunity for Pirates in Pajamas to one, get position to kind of like fight you around that, you know, pretty much the pillar, right? But you also gave them an opportunity to build up to some of those support ults of their own, right? So when you come back, everybody's got Kitsune rushes to trade, sound barriers as well. And now you find yourself in a spot where, okay, we have overclock. Can you nail the shots? You know, uh, that's going to be a nice uh, uh, Suzu there. Uh, prevent some damage. I would have went down there on a Haven, but Stone finds Haven in the background. Uh, so now this the, the idea of disengaging oh, is pretty bad. It's all falling apart, man. Oh. Oh, 99%. Ryan with one, Ryan with two. Ooh, wait a second. He's not out of the woods just yet. Hasn't got a recall because he's got a blink in a couple of seconds, but he can't get away. Oh, Strider and Stone just hound him down, and that's just it. Just like that, Pirates in Pajamas take the map, take the series, and we'll see you in the main event. Yeah, no, that is a, that is a scenario there towards the end that uh, no, I would love to know if Unk King would love to have back because... You end up disengaging. You don't really get a great use of your beat. You give an opportunity for Pirates and Pajamas to build up some of their stuff of their own. And just giving a team that much space ends up coming to bite you. But I certainly expected to see Unkin getting um, maybe at least one map. And they got so close. Esperanza was like... Honestly, ah! 
that was formed an hour before Swiss. Like, actual huge, yes. yeah, legendary yes. W. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Up. And not to take anything away from their performance thus far. Yeah. And they've been entertaining to watch as well. Early in this match, we've also seen some variety. I love that both teams were willing to throw a Widow into the mix on Midtown uh, for those uh, long sidelines. It was just, that was a good match to watch. Uh, but, man, I would have loved to hear the comms <laughs> when they dropped Esperanza <laughs> like, on, on the side of... <laughs> yeah, that side was funny. I mean, one of one of the players literally just screamed. Oh god! I would have loved to hear what the opposition had to say there, though. Yeah, yeah I mean, map, map one, I thought like uh, you know, pirates in pajamas was like clearly in control, right? But from there yeah. on out, like Unk Inc was very much in this series, right? Uh, you kind of look at Midtown, right? Felt like uh, I know they were controlling the pace for a little bit of the game there. I uh, know Esperanza, obviously, I uh, know the, the the one they end up getting, right, uh, ends up working out in their favor. And in there towards the end, like, Suravasa could have, I mean, they could have in their favor as well. So, I mean, Unk Inc., you, like you mentioned, Jack, like, formed pretty late with a good, pretty good showing. Yes, super, super good showing. Oh, man. These Widow plays um, on this point specifically, my word, highlight reels in the making for both Widows. And this was another incredibly close map too. Unkink had four minutes going into third, and then they get it with 23 seconds remaining. Granting Paris and Pajamas a free cap, uh, a free attack, sorry. And then they end up coming out on top. This was an incredible series thus far. And like you said, Zoe, too, like there's been a lot of variation in terms of compositions, which is always really nice to see. But even just kind of the standard Arissa with a Soge slash Cast and Tracer and whatnot, also ridiculously entertaining. But the um, way they played the Arissa on both sides, oh, uh, yeah. you guys it's mentioned it, it was so aggressive, which actually made this so much more entertaining because quite yeah. frankly, I mean, Orisa mirrors are not the most <laughs> riveting experience for hey, anyone you watching. Know what? Hey, look, it's better than with the Orisa mirror when she had the, the ball and the shield. True. I'll take this Orisa mirror the any ball. day over oh, that Orisa mirror. Yeah, oh, the I, ball. I hope, <laughs> oh, the whole. I hope all the teams who have been uh, making it to the main events, though, maybe take a leaf or two out of the book uh, from uh, Pip here because the aggressive Orisa, I'm loving it. I honestly think that can give them the edge in quite a few mirror matches to come. Definitely, yeah. I mean, Matt was talking about it too. It's like, well, a lot of teams maybe just kind of like, oh, we'll wait, you know, especially on this first point on Suravasa, a lot of the times it takes a little while for one team to kind of take control of the point or even get a first kill, but both teams willing to just kind of go <laughs> bare knuckle boxing, just kind of run at each other. Yeah, speaking of taking control, Chronic, man. Yeah. Chronic is sick. <laughs> Actual I sick. actually cracked so many highlight worthy moments from Chronic uh, popping off on the Widowmaker. Sojourn, of course, absolutely crisp and clean. This was so much fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, the Widow shots were nasty, right? Uh, especially, you know, here to really seal the deal on Midtown. And it's a really nice play on the Cassidy. Sojourn in the mix. So, I mean, Chronic got a very good series uh, that they're going to have to kind of carry over right into the main event. Uh, the competition only gets tougher. Dude, Chronic kept them in this one as so. well. Like, unbelievable oh, yeah. stuff on the Sojourn. That was, uh, yeah, I mean, ridiculous maps. And yeah, one of the more fun series today, for sure. Just how scrappy a lot of these fights have been, too. It does, it literally breaks down, and then Ryan comes back and, like, lands a pulse and, like, kills two. It's like, <laughs> what is happening? Like, yeah, really, yes. really sick stuff. It was bonkers. Let's actually listen in to the winning comes of Pip. I've got beyond Sojourn. I'm committed. I'm committed. Carry yeah, one. I'm with you. Carry one. I'm with you. Carry one. Sojourn 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 one. First half point. First half point. Sojourn one. 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 Sojourn one.
It is okay. Well, you you get to chill out with us for a few minutes and answer some yeah. very interesting questions, I'm sure. Um, oh, let's talk that. a bit. Oh. Yes, anything you my, want to say? My mom's this is your I just want to say that. Oh. My mom's is happy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that because editing into the interview I'm thinking of questions and like I just want to shout out her mom but I don't want to make it awkward for her so I'm not going to do that so yeah hi <laughs> it's so nice to not see you but hear from you I um, right yeah. love you mom top three mom for sure uh, now about the match though and I hate to be that person but I do want to talk about the Lost Esperanza. I mean, I was so, so very close. Um, after you dropped that one, what did you try to focus on heading into the fifth map? Fourth. Well, I think we kind of Fourth. messed up our, our, our neutral a bit. But, I mean, it was close either way, even though we made so many mistakes. And props to Taejong too for coming in. He did a lot. But I think after that, we just decided to just say we're going to lock in next map. We're good at Esperanza, so we're good at Flashpoint, so I don't think we were too worried about it. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And, like, you change up the tempo, too. Like, we spoke about it just a second ago before you came on. Like, you guys played so quickly. Like, we're normally seeing, like, oh, oh can't wait for the 30-minute stall to Arissa shooting at each other. Hopefully the Sojin clocks somebody and yay. Like, but you guys just a whole new level of, like, okay, we're just going to go in, like, super fast. Like, is that how you guys like yeah. to play normally? Or did you think maybe it would throw Unkink off their game? We definitely always like to play fast. I think it's very good to play first with the Orisa. We just, I don't know, it's its mostly just Strider and I think Magic talking a lot. And then with everyone else kind of, kind of calling their alts. And it just kind of works, I guess, like we mesh together. I love the comms, yeah, I mean, by the way. <laughs> they, yeah. they just go sick. I love them. The comms are great. Also, like, the, the speed in which you guys play, uh, very aggressive. Uh, going into the main event, uh, are there any teams that you're looking out to potentially you want to play would be excited to go up against and uh, pretty quick turnaround from here to the main event is there anything you think you could work on or improve coming into the next weekend uh well besides Arissa, I think we probably need to work on our monkey comp but I'm not too worried I'm not like too worried I think we're fine we just gotta we got some more days to practice you play Arisa against it. Why not? Yeah. I mean, yeah, she might change the working system, right? The guys look phenomenal True. on that Orisa comp. We did see some variety there as well. One last question before I let you go. You said you're feeling like the team is really gelling well. Uh, you joined them for this stage. What's the experience uh, been like for you with your team? Uh, it's been really nice. I, I like the way we work, I guess. We are, we're like, I like how they talk to each other very well. We're always talking to each other about things that went wrong and botting after scrims. It's all good. And I think the best part... Const a constructive environment then. Yeah. The best part, I think, is... It's been a while, but getting full playtime is very nice. That's right. I feel like you've been robbed in the past. <laughs> so I am excited to see that Onion Revenge arc. It's, uh, we're going full anime in OWCS and I'm loving it. Uh, Onion, thank you so much for joining us. Once again, shout out to you and your mom because uh, I love you both. Thank you. Big fan of both. And you I can't wait too. to see more of you in the squad. <laughs> Heading into the main event. Best of luck, Onion. Perfect. If you guys have ever met her mom, though, she's actually goaded. Like, what a <laughs> yeah. lovely lady. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's so great. It's so great to see players getting more playtime, which, you know, have not had the opportunity in the past. Not because they were lacking the skill at all, but just because there were only so many slots. Um, there were, of course, lots of, like, head-down coaching where the players themselves may not have gotten as much say. I love that these teams are a little bit more team-led, more player led uh, a lot more make constructive your own conversations slot now. exactly you just make your somewhere space. get own slot somewhere else <laughs> that's right uh, yeah, you love to see it you absolutely love to see it now we have about one more match for you coming up after a quick break so don't go anywhere to see how we're going to end things up in NA
It all started with Talon stealing artifacts. But wait, who's that? Those boots, the drill, that perfect smile. It's Venture! Whoosh, flashback. I researched this artifact, last seen in my favorite place, Cairo, and the reliefs there led me all the way to the Shambhali, who were kind enough to direct me, after a lot of digging, and I mean a lot, to the hideout. Oops, hi, Talon. They ran with the artifact, but I dodged their spikes and juked their darts and blasted my way through the base, and... Here we are. Artifact, safe and sound. Whew. That was a doozy. And you at home can, of course, already play Venture. Everyone in our competition has to wait just a little bit longer. We'll be available for play once we go on LAN. And that's where the real magic is going to happen. Oh, yes. Oof, I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, wonder, I wonder if she's going to, uh, if they're going to be like, played a ton. Um, it's hard to tell. I played a bunch, uh, no, on live. They're a ton of fun. Uh, <laughs> but I wonder. I know how they're going to be used. Yeah, we were wondering about that. But I think just yesterday, like they are, they're having a, a very high skill ceiling. So yes. if you're not really good at venture, uh, you're going to drag your team down. So you got to be a very confident uh, venture player. So the feed into this or one. just dominate. Like is, is every Absolutely. new character that comes out, you either have the teammate that feeds or they dominate and they are like 20 and 0 in like the first two minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's just... I like playing them and throwing. Like I, I'm That's pretty very nice. Them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm totally fine. To, I'm I'm gonna go in, try and make a play, and then die. It's that uh, it's that widowmaker situation all over again. Like if you're in lobby, someone like hovers a widow, and either they're gonna like lead your team to victory, or me. it's it's. I <laughs> Well, Trust well, man. you can sometimes. Uh, sometimes. I also like how uh, <laughs> they went into comp straight away. Like. Uh, no, it, it makes no difference, right? Uh, no, somebody either is going to pick them and have no idea what they're doing in two weeks or, you know, on the day <laughs> of launch. And it was tons of yeah. exciting stuff to be able to jump in a game and, like, they're there straight away. Yeah, yeah and this is uh, giving our teams, so. of course, uh, a lot of, you know, opportunity to play them before uh, they're uh, heading to DreamHack. For now, though, we still need to decide who's even making it to the main event. One more slot up for grab. And yes, I said slot chat slot oh <laughs> Aston coming in strong well. very unfortunate hey, is that a, is that a, i got that a thing? i got oh, dinged on it in my bra like at the end of the onion incident uh interview because i said it and apparently my accent may or may not have been a little heavy i don't know but people people just hear what they want to hear that that's how i'm seeing it either way let's talk about the match at hand uh, this time for the last match uh, of our stage two groups uh we will be uh seeing vice taken on fmcl and just like our previous match uh, we have not really been able to gauge the strength of either team because their losses and wins were one-sided affairs in their match against yeah. students of the game last week we saw fmcl uh, buying into the winston mirror which well, didn't look ideal. Uh, will we see more of that today, Joss? Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure. I think it might have been the. Um, uh, I mean, it was the Seeker versus PG show. Potentially, PG <laughs> haircut diff probably ended up winning against Seeker. That was a really it strange game. I thought that. I thought that match was going to go all the way like Map Five kind of deal. Um, but yeah, it was a bit more of a one-sided affair because this team is kind of stacked too. Like, God, Seeker especially. Leopard Renko, I watched League Experience. Seeker, just a god-like player on Soge. Um, but against Vice, who had... It wasn't the closest game of all time against uh, <laughs> Nightmare, which a more of a fun yeah, team, okay. the OTP team. A nice way to describe but... it. Not the, not the closest game of all time. It was we, we, we learned nothing of that game, though, because they went up against so the Roadhog Bastion. <laughs> Warrior come being thrown at them, and then they went so MAGA. So, um, great MAGA team. Will we see that? Probably uh, not. Uh, yeah, that was not. one of the funniest games I think of yesterday. I'm gonna be honest. Like me and Scott. It was a game of all time. For it sure. was a game of all time. <laughs> yeah. Slot did a very, very good job on Tracer, but yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you. So it was like very hard to gauge, especially on the, that broadcasted game. So, yeah, a lot to play for here. But FMCL, I would say, are the heavy favorites coming into here. Yeah, I, I, I would say that as well, right? A lot of known players, uh, you know, from stage one and obviously in the past, right? In terms of, uh, you know, owl experience <laughs> where uh, I, I think they would definitely be the favorites. But the, the chat is rolling with Vice, though. All right. Trying there to make some money back after they recent, all lost. Some recency bias <laughs> because they were so entertained by Vice's game yesterday. I guess. I yeah, think that, I mean, that must be it. 
Then, okay, I mean... Well, we'll find yeah. out. Strizat has not been like, right a lot today. Yeah, Just throwing okay. it out there. There's a lot of value betters in there, probably. Yeah. That's probably what it is. <laughs> hey, the odds take, are good. Take a flyer on Vice here in the last one. <laughs> and then everybody decided that, and then it's like, oh, wait, it's not a value bet anymore. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Nepal is our first map, then the Midtown, then Colosseo. Matt, let's get into it in just a moment. I, I like I'm saying, it was one of the most entertaining games yesterday, Vice playing a Nightmare, but we'll, uh, we'll see how this one pans out. But how do you think this is going to play? Well, it, it, I think uh, I'm curious on Coliseo. Uh, it'll be the first time we see that for NA today. So uh, we, we've seen Nepal, uh, we've seen Midtown, probably don't expect any Ilari. Uh, I know as we, we move into Midtown with these two teams, uh, but I, I'm interested when we get to that push. Uh, have not seen Coliseo in NA yet today, typically plays a little bit slower. So excited to see how things play out there, especially with Seeker and FMCL being able to play that Sojourn at a really high level. Yeah, I mean, Seeker's still a beast. Still a beast on the Sojourn, will always be. And this is the perfect meta for the uh, first Sojourn, first Seeker. We'll see how FMCL want to roll out. I wouldn't be too surprised to see a Sigma here, but probably the Orisa, my moment with the TP forward. But they do stick with Sig. I'm uh, not too against it, but the, if you play it at a high pace like we saw in the last game, the Sigma can just get run over by the Arisa. Wow. This wouldn't be the point to play Sigma, it, it, it feels like, right? Because if you're going to play for point control, like uh, just kind of gets bullied out uh, by the Arisa, but they're going to be playing up uh, here on the high ground, right? Uh, I know maybe some poke damage. Kinetic Graph's going to build up lots of shield, almost 800 HP there now. Uh, on damage. aerial is some good damage out on action. They're gonna push this point. Well, I think I got a feeling this Arisa might just fall over. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Sky couldn't even keep up the healing there. Same with Hinge. Nice little boot from uh, Lev. I want to point out there, just a uh, booping Hinge off of the high ground. Had to like rejoin the rest of the team. And uh, my moan just cleaning up the front line. Okay, that was a fast fight. And now the Sig is in a very good spot because you can defend with him. Vice weren't quick enough. Off yeah. the mark. Yeah, I mean, now it's even in a better spot than it was before the Sigma, right? Like, you can kind of uh, play on the high ground. They have to run in, kind of like Vice playing for the high ground as well, but they just take so much poke damage and, like, splash from the Sigma that uh, very difficult. And look at this. I mean, pushing out, right? The shield's there. And Suzu. Actually taking so much damage right away. Uh, Suzu, Spear Spin, Fortify. Everything's been used already. And, uh, and Sloth's dead. So that's a reset. <laughs> that's a little reset angle. All good team. <sighs> I mean, uh, reset or fight loss, right? I know it's just only you know, one kill that goes down, but essentially now you're going to you know, have to wait, give up even more percentage on the point. And it's brutal, right? You train, play for that high ground. You're walking in at Sigma doing tons of damage. You go for that low ground, right? There's like a disruptor shot in the choke, tons of damage from the soldier, and you just can't avoid it here uh, if you're Vice. Well, Axa can step up, but they haven't got Sloth to kind of back them up. There's the rush. Little slide into the back line there, but Seeker more than equipped to deal with it. And I think so with the rest of FMCL. All right. Now the fight quickly dissolves into a one-sided affair. FMCL with a lot of ults. Unfortunately, Vice there ended up using that rush. I mean, nothing used from FMCL at all. So, yeah, feeling pretty confident, I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of one-sided fights so far, right? You really haven't seen Vice being able to get kind of like any type of footing, you know, in, in a in a fight by the point that is going to be close, right? The struggle shot just turned in from Seeker there just to buy some time as they will work through the choke as a uh, Hinch and Co going to make their way to the point, but FMCL is all six, uh, all five volts. Oh, it's good stick. Even better lamp. Oh, Sloth. <laughs> Fancy me, you knew that. Instant kill from Seeker onto Sloth. That window with the overclock. Real tough thing to normally deal with. MVM trying to get the off angle. Still with a power side available with Seeker. Oh, that was an aggressive slide. <laughs> Looks like uh, maybe they wanted to slide to the rest of their team. But mm, yeah, I mean, if you've got to make the play, you've got to make the play. But FMCL with Hunter to zero. That felt a little yeah, bit that too was easy. pretty one-sided. A little easy. Yeah, I mean, uh, pretty one-sided there when... Uh, they get control of that high ground early on with the Sigma, makes it very punishing to even get through the choke, uh, where Vice really only had one good attempt at it, right? Uh, I know a few times they lost a few players before they were even able to get near the point, uh, and then they just had that one shot at the end, but all five ultimates available for FMCL for that fight. Uh, 
and they're in a spot where they couldn't make anything happen. So now Vice looking at making some changes themselves, uh, potentially having Agshar go over and play the Sigma, but gonna go back and play the Arisa here, where Jack, I actually think this probably plays into what FFCL wants to do a little bit better, right? Uh, the, the Sigma has a more inherent advantage on this point, I feel like, than just the previous one we were up. Very pretty confident around the Sigma wherever it feels like. I would be too if you can end the fight pretty fast. Good dynamite from Seeker. Switching over to the Ash now instead of the Soge. Good off angle too. This is a pretty uh, nasty off angle. You really have to check Seeker. Yeah, just kind of poke him down. Otherwise, he's going to be up there for eternity. Just uh, dynamiting your whole team. There's no way. Goodbye. There is no way. <laughs> there is no way. There is, there is a way. There is most certainly a way. That was the way. Well, that just happened. That's a lot of ult charge for Lep too. Looking for more boobs. Well, oh. it, it's tough as well because even if Axtra gets into that area, like, what happens, right? I mean, no, nobody else can really follow up. Yeah. Like, maybe you kind of you know, get, get your Lucio in there and with a Tracer, but it, it just feels like you're running into a death trap, especially because they're playing Sigma Bap, right? You get into that back line, they just drop the Immortality Field, then what happens, right? Uh, so it feels like you know, even if you want to play aggressive, if you're Vice, looking at what you're going up against, it's going to be pretty tough. All right, well, okay. Yep, happened again. Led with a boot kill onto Sloth this time around. Seeker just in a very down for a long range shot from NVM. NVM now having to deal with the front line. Ariel standing very tall up, making sure NVM can't say anything in this fight. And uh, yeah, it looks like another kill coming through for Renko. Oh, a little triple there for the Baptiste. We'll call that all 100 to zeros for, for Renko. Oh, led with it. Okay. Oh. We need to get the chat enabled. <laughs> if you if you actually try and now like push in yet again, right? This is like it's you've got to come up with a different strategy here, a different plan of attack if you're vice. You can't kind of keep you know trying to run down the sigma because the, the space to you know close that distance is very difficult. So it's going to be a Katsuni rush, but they're going to answer by just dropping an ant matrix and Seeger just one shots the tracer walking on through it. Uh, Memon gets a pulse bomb kill as well as uh, we may be looking at another 100 to zero as it's a full team kill from FMCL. They're going to hold on a sound barrier. You're going to have Bob even just run to the point and test. Uh, and Gravitic Flux. So that's going to be a Flux here. You the in the... They're fluxing like a... NVM. <laughs> I mean, sure. Is, uh, he's going to... That is a... Uh, you might the carry. Okay. Uh, it so, was a positioning. It was for positioning. Someone kill Ariel, please. They killed Sloth. And the Bob is going to kill people. And that's the round. Okay, that's map over. FMCL. Oh, I take it back. Hinge with a one-man beat. Oh. NVM takes care of Renko. Hang on, maybe I spoke too soon. No, I did not. There is the boot on the Lucio. Hinge with a one-man sound barrier. It's FMCL with a 200 to zero control. End up taking map number one. That's about as strong of a start you can uh, get for it. Yeah, uh, in control as uh, FMCL, regardless of what uh, you know, Vice was playing on the other side, just absolutely dominant. But also you look at kind of like this matchup, it's like somewhat expected uh, thus far, maybe not to that degree. Right. Uh, but you would say that FMCL is like the stronger roster, but just uh, I think just uh, if you're Vice, you just got to pretend that one didn't happen. Just chalk it up as an L and move on to Midtown because uh, you obviously believe you can play closer than that. Yeah, just uh, say what I say. Just fraudulent game mode. All good. Don't worry. We go next. A little rough though. I even if you go 200 to zero, like, yeah, you're thinking FMCL definitely have the upper hand. They're like underdog uh, is very much vice, but man, it's it's just rough. I think pound for pound, the team well, is just better. Like straight up. Uh, at this but moment. Vice on this first point only got one attempt at getting it. Seeker just like with the slow mo rotate there to just kill. That was so, nice. Uh, they only got one real crack at it. They just kept losing players early. And then the one that they did, it was just five ultimates on the other side. That one extra just run on in. Maybe he didn't know that Lep was up there. Didn't have any knowledge. Uh, no, maybe he wasn't called out or something. Just kind of like runs right into Oof is Such a good pulse too. Yeah. I mean, that, that, but look at how much distance they have to cross, right? Like they're not playing on top of the bridge, FMCL. They're playing like on the back side of it. Uh, and then using the rush to get all the way across that distance going to be tough as a... Uh, I think you see the score reflected here in some of the stats. 20 KDA, not 2.0, 20. 20. Yes, 2-0, and a 0.2 on the other side of things. Yeah, a little rough, but you know, 200 to zero on that control. We'll see if Vice can come back on Midtown, like you said, Matt, but yeah, that was, 
I think FMCL might be a little mad about the 3-0 against uh, Soon's the game the other day. Um, <laughs> let's listen into the winning comms, though. Let's see how enthusiastic they were about uh, finishing that last map. Um, side, no side, no side. John, 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 John. I'll I tried to have no side. I'm taking top left. I'm taking top left. You missed your flat. Oh, 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 no. Be careful, CP. Be careful, CP. I'll bury you. I'll bury you. I'll bury you. I'll bury them, guys. We're still on the ball. We're still on me. We're still on me. We're still on me. We're still on Shoot point now. Shoot point now. Wait, I want to beat point. I'm beating a point. I'm beating a point. Wait, it's on point. Who's on? But my Sigma sucks balls. How are you dead, man? Rico. <laughs> he ulti he's so ulti. Nah, I'm, I'm not trying anymore. I'm not trying anymore. I wouldn't expect anything no, less no. from Seeker there in the comms. My Sigma sucks. Uh, happens. Like a, it's like, you miss your flugs, and they're laughing at him. They've taken this like pretty lightheartedly. 2, 2 a.m. 2 a.m. ranked comms there. Uh... <laughs> I, I love the uh, help Ariel, and he goes, nah, I'm fine, as yeah. he's in their spawn. I'm good, I'm good. Like, to be fair, uh, yeah, I'm good. Ariel was like 2v1 in the back line, uh, 1v2 in the back line. So he was like, kind of good. We're chilling. And I saw Renko as well out of the periphery, just like jump up, get a couple of shots in, throw the lamp down. Didn't end up hitting yeah. Ariel, sadly, but yeah, ended up uh, winning. And then the lamp was like, I'm going to beat the point, I'm going to beat the point. <laughs> like, <laughs> sure, okay. Like, jumps in, hits the oh. two person. Good stuff. Uh, you know what though? They're they're pretty relaxed, I would say, over there. Yeah, they're on vibing. MCL. They're chilling. They're vibing. Good stuff. I like that. All right, let's jump into a quick break. We got Midtown coming up. FMCL's map choice. Could it be a 3-0? Could Vice come back? We'll have to wait and see after this. Begin excavation log. Sloan Cameron here on side to Petra. Me and the Wayfinders just found the coolest artifact I think I've ever... Again? Come on! Whoa, whoa, whoa! If you want to mess with these artifacts, you gotta go through me! Hey! I'm on to you! I gotta tell you, I wanna scream it out! Ah. Hey! I'm gonna show you, here's what it's all about! Welcome back, Midtown up next. Venture available in Dallas for all the uh, pro teams to play, so maybe they end up getting uh, picked. I'm not sure. There's a lot of burst damage from Venture. I've been frustrated playing against Venture sometimes as oh. support. Insta-bursted, but you know, that's how it be. A lot of players don't know how to play against them yet, including myself, apparently. So yeah, hopefully they end up getting picked up, but we'll have to wait and see. But uh, back to the present, Midtown, FMCL mats, only four deaths in that last map uh, against Vice. That's not a lot. That's not a lot, no, that's a... Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> there. They, so he said, "Great math." There wasn't really any math used there. It yeah. was just kind of. Oh, they're so bad. Judging how many deaths there usually are. Okay, Matt, are you scared of pigeons? Four. Why would I be scared of? Oh pigeons? yeah, you live in New York. I forgot. Well, why would I be scared of pigeons? I'm... There's no reason. Well, look, when, when you're in New York, terrifying. there's like cats the size of rats. The, the the pigeons are your your best friends with the pigeons. Look at those. They they ain't hard, no they. Look at their eyes though. They're just so. There's something messed up about this. Well, those, those are clearly fake pigeons. So, like, uh, amazing deduction like skills, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable I mean, stuff. Show me a picture of real pigeons side by side. I bet you their eyes are look a little <laughs> bit more normal. I should hope so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sure. If the pigeons' eyes looked like that in New York, I would think they're plotting an attack. What? Maybe. Attackers Birds aren't real. All right, little TP out. Yippee! Straight to the high ground. Let's see what uh, 
Vice have to say about this one? Little uh, rotation up onto the high ground. Very rare one, in fact. Yeah. You don't normally see this. Uh, well, we used to see this, like, ages ago, right? Uh, but not really much anymore, so... Yeah. Uh, instead of trying to fight... Instead of trying to fight this, they actually back up. I got to control from Seeker, too. Axe are taking so much damage on this uh, on this flank. But, I mean, my moan is just doing a good job, just kind of peppering down Axe, making sure Sky has to play perfect attention. When Offered is being thrown their way. Nice little Suzu to keep them up, but I think it's the go time now. There's a lot of abilities. Pretty much everything in the kit used by Axe there. Apart from the Spear Spin, they used to actually get back to that Mega Health Pack. And that FMCL put themselves on the point. MVM ends up falling over. We'll see if Ice can come back in here. They've already uh, lost one. I think Axe is soon to follow that shield, stopping a lot of that healing coming through. There's a Sloth trying to even this, trying to get on top of Renko, but Renko proving quite uh, a mean beast to take down. Although in a 1v3, yeah, you'd hope that they end up falling. But five minutes on the time bank, man. That's uh, yeah, that is a really fast take there on point A. A lot of time left here for FMCL to kind of work through point B, and they're going to get some staggers here as well as take out Sloth. Uh, now maybe you can try and play for this high ground here as a memo. Gotta be careful. Takes a big shot of damage, but look at that position that Ariel set up there on the high ground. Really nice spot there. Be able to put down some damage. My no. Okay, okay. Just hunting for it at the moment. Oh, wow, my moon. Just uh, did about 720 degrees of spinning there. Trying to uh, stop Sloth from pulsing him. You're gonna have five ultimates here for FMCL, like kind of a lot of what we saw the last round, right? By the time Vice was able to fight, get a fight that they felt was on even footing, there was so much, so many ultimates on the other side, it almost didn't matter. Yeah, a lot of ults. I mean, that window is definitely gonna help and stop Vice playing super far up. Lep's already uh, managed to kill Sloth somehow. A couple of uh, stray Cheerios hitting the Tracer's head. And now Aria in a good spot to hit that flux. Here comes the rush on that. Uh, Railguns being eaten up by the grass. That, I'm not sure what's happening in that corner, I'm going to be honest. That was a lot of ultimates, a lot of abilities used. Sound Barry comes in, but unfortunately a pulse bomb from my moan as they descend back down to earth. That overhealth disappearing, and so are their lives. Three minutes and 50 seconds. FMCL walking. A leisurely stroll onto second. Yeah, it was like, uh, so it was Deadeye. Uh, so Vice ended up using a Kitsune Rush. Seeker returned with a Deadeye with the Kinetic Grasp around the corner. Uh, then Axur kind of like Spear Spun into it, fortified. Then had the ultimate used there, but then the Gravitic Flux came in from Ariel, picked everybody up, slammed everybody down into the Pulse Bomb from Raymon, and then the fight was over. Yeah, there you go. Lots of stuff used there, but... Uh, you know, I, I, the way I said it, I mean, it sounded like it lasted 10 minutes, but all of that happened within probably 15 seconds of each other. So that's why the fight just went went from 0 to 100. Ah, not a good spot for Sloth to be in. This court's not stopping. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Um, got a double turbo in there, maybe, in the uh, in the engine. All right. MVF. Plug the exhaust pipe with a potato oh, and uh, takes there. down Lep. I don't know. I mean, I think Seeker's having a little bit of fun with the magnate. Yeah, it's one kill. Yeah, that was a long, long range one there. Renko doesn't get out of this. Surely they punish him. They got it. Nice. Sky gets him. Uh, so, so we'll see now uh, if Vice, obviously, they've given up a ton of time already, but can they hold up a little bit now, moving over and playing a Baptiste of their own with a Sigma, right? Uh, now it'll be a little bit different, right? Because they did have a range advantage with uh, NVM playing the Soldier uh, versus the Cassidy, but Seeker's going to match... Ooh here where a uh, nice kill there from Slaw. so uh, maybe that buys him some more time Ooh, okay that was a really good boot from left there actually pushing sloth into the los of seeker bit of trading okay okay here comes the window and now actually is in a little bit of trouble but sky on the side using that lamp and that pillar for cover but now there's no lamp lampington it will be an easy kill to accent however these uh, kills aren't exactly going the way of that mcl a very messy fight sky's yeah. under a little bit of trouble as uh, my moan was in the back line, hits the recall, and yeah, this time bank it looked rather impressive. It still is, to be fair, three minutes on third, but slowly being whittled away. Now, I was gonna say, uh, although a few fights in a row they end up losing, still over three minutes now, uh, now under three uh, for FMCL to get this one across the line. It'll be a Ramatra switch here, so 
Uh, potentially they want to get a little bit more aggressive, right? Put even some, put some pressure on the Sigma, dislodge and force them into a bad spot. Aero with the uh, Nemesis form. Oh, instantly gets rocked. Holds up the gloves, wants to be able to get back, but receives that sound barrier. However, might be a little bit more trouble now. That flux perfectly timed there by Axa. Just taking it down the Ramatra. Now with only 2 minutes and 30 seconds to go, FMCL, okay. Again, being back a little bit here, a little bullied in the front line. Yeah, now Vice is coming alive. You're like, oh, where has Vice been the first two maps, right? First uh, point, second point, didn't really look like any signs of life. But now that we get uh, them playing the Sigma, looking a little bit better here as they've started to put together a pretty good defense. This was like, you know, four minutes, high four minutes uh, when FMCL started this. So now they've cut off half of that time. Looking like potentially they can get a hold. Oh, my moan did find Sloth. Let there for the help. And just chasing Sloth away. And here comes Seeker with this railgun, this overclock over the periphery of the uh, the payload here. Aerial, or oh, actually, sorry, taking a lot of damage. And now, I mean, MVM can try and return the favor. Oh, Seeker just jumps out behind the new stand there. Hits him in the head. And that will be a kill. It's a 4v5. And Sloth has found himself up on the high ground, just forcing Renko, hits the lamp, and uh, Skyr ends up taking him out, aiding Sloth in the kill. Yes, uh, Skyr actually drops the Ant Matrix when they lose NVM, and that, like, delays any type of push there from FMCL. And you have Sloth up on the high ground, able to pick up yet another kill, as uh, playing quite well on the Tracer, put a ton of pressure down on Memo. And you know, gets the health back and have to recall out. Doesn't want to go in too deep, but... Man, well, it looked to be a terrible defense. Looks like it might be a good one now. Yeah, the Annihilation is going to force Vice back. Sky still got this lamp, so if Aero does step up a little bit too far, might need to use it. Sound barrier for Hinge. Oh, lands it at the perfect time, too. Saving Axe's life, but how long could this overhaul for really last against this window? Not sure for very long, and there you go, yeah. Straight around this corner, aerial nemesis form just punching through well, at least two or three of them. Just so much AoE damage, you can see the assists in the feed. FMCL was like, what, like a five-minute time bank? Ends up getting wheeled down to like 42 <laughs> seconds. It's pretty good, right? I mean, pretty obviously, sick, you don't want to give up a full map completion, but to go from, like, five minutes to 40 seconds, like, I mean, in this type of scenario, it's almost, like, as good as you could ask for, possibly, right? So, uh, FMCL, uh, I think the, the, so, I mean, the, look at this from a different angle, right? Like, FMCL could have felt like they were, like, you know, having fun, playing with their food a little bit, right? And now it's like, okay, we need to focus, right? Uh, and then now they're going to really, you know, put, put, a, put pressure on. Uh, or Vice has now said, hey, we kind of have an idea of how, how they want to play, right? Sloth is coming alive, NBM's hitting some shots, and you kind of work your way back into this one. Yeah, focus up, focus up. Everyone's still running. I've, I uh, have found that usually the, the, the saying of the focus up results in people just laughing and not focusing up. Yeah, that is historically been a trend, um, at least with yeah. our play group, at least. The, the focus up is usually a I'm about to go throw watch this. I'm about to troll yeah that's rough it's a, hey I'm gonna pretend I'm, I'm I'm trying here real quick but they can't hear us so we're all good we can say it but they can't yep. hear us, so uh, it's fine so they will be focusing uh, TP, up TP TP hook here maybe uh, you know this what is it It'll be like a sleep TP hook combination we're gonna get here Oh, the, I mean, honestly, <laughs> what the attempt there? Wow, Lef, uh, that would have been rather rough if Lef got caught. Oh, oh right, quick brutal. reset. There we go, back to the Sigma. Skier back on the bat. What's your thoughts on the Sigma versus the Ram? Uh, I just, I don't know if Ram is, I feel like Ram is not crazy good right now because he gets beaten out by the other side. Oh, Skier gets caught on the rotate. That's a little rough. I mean, if you're playing super yeah. fast like this, um, pretty easy um I would... that's what i think it is i i think if you are gonna play the ram you are committed to being the aggress aggressor team right like you're the one who has to start the engagements you're the one who has to kick the fight off right be aggressive uh it feels like that's the only way that the ram has the advantage here against like the sigma yeah we'll see if um access changes over to the Arisa trying to counter out the ram nothing for the time being at least oh sloth gets the uh, lights getting knocked out of him there by Mimo in the alleyway. Rough stuff. Oh, that was so low. Yeah, this is a uh, 
They're all looking a little worse for wear our vice right now. So they have to back up. I mean, this is going to be hard getting through the choke, right? Without, like, they're doing a nice job at FMCL, like, separating at least one player every single time. Uh, now, looks like extra just trying to put some pressure up on the high ground, but here comes the Ramatra. Drops the shield, Nemesis form forces them back. It feels like this is just kind of like a dance going on. Yeah, little trades. Ooh, yep. Instant grass there. Don't want to take that railgun from Seeker. That's a one shot through that window. I'm almost post one. Not sure where I went, but it doesn't matter. Still managed to get some kills. Dodge out of that railgun too. All right, Vice. Uh, they do end up getting a tick. They get a tick. They do with the tracer and the Lucio. You can see Slot trying to back off with him. Can they get out though? No. I need to break a chip. Probably not. And they're also staggering, kind of. I mean, this is worse, right? If you don't believe they can get out, this is like not, I read. not good. As uh, uh, there, there goes both. So uh, another probably what 20, 25 seconds off the clock. Look at this. They so push up even, f you know, further, right? Like. Now that's gonna be the immortality for you. Oh, can they get another kill? Oh Extra. my god, oh, the triple uh, bling uh, into the back line. I mean, okay, a minute and 30 and five ults. Surely, mm -hmm. surely. I mean, do you have to use the ults to get through the choke? That's the problem. That's what FMCO are gonna try and do. They're probably just gonna run in with the annihilation, I'm gonna be honest. They see the Soju to slide right? and then, or they try and force Soju to slide and they just run in with annihilation. Or they could just like, vortex and use your own beat and push forward. Well, there's the nemesis. I think Ariel's trying to bait it out, right? Pushing a little bit forward, using nemesis. Oh, there's the nemesis. Bait stuff out. There it is. There's yeah. the sound barrier to kind of counteract. But I mean, Ariel can just kind of see it with arms crossed. And yeah, the MBM just gets burned out. Oh dear. Vice looking like a one sock right now. There's a 15 and that seconds is to just, go. That's three ult, That's by the way. just annihilation sound barrier, right? Uh, Annihilation sound barrier, that's Gravitic Flux, sound barrier, and overclock used by Vice. FMCL, they'll probably have one of those amp matrices to kind of like set up on the side, shoot straight through as they try and work their way. If it forces anybody into an odd spot, Maimon's there to drop a pulse bomb. We have right around one of these pillars. So Going again. Really rough spot. Force that lamp out of Skia. And now Seeker with a really nice angle to use this overclock. Ends up running out, still got a little bit of damage done. Sloss doing out a Lucio on the points. Has to hit the recall, 30 HP, looking for a pulse bomb to target, but I think Gillette just outplayed him, just 1v1 in the neutral, outplayed by the Lucio, and I think that's about it. Yes, it is. Seven seconds to go, a team wipe for FMCL. Joking around a little bit, it seemed, like on third point, but this is nothing but serious business on first. Oh. FMCL, take the win, take match point as well, a 2-0 in quick fashion. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if they were like necessarily, I mean, maybe they, they were going around, around there on the last point, right? But I also think that the way they wanted to play that Ramatra comp, like that first choke, it gives them so many options to be the aggressive team, right? Like, you know, they see the Sigma go one way, they know how to answer it. They see it go the other way, they know how to respond that way. So uh, they're able to just drop down in the choke and just cause havoc uh, for Vice, where Vice was never even able to really, you know, they, had, they got a tick, right? But it wasn't like a, you know, team fight earn tick, right? It was just like a Tracer Lucio just kind of back up and taking it. Yeah, I mean, a 2-0 like that. I mean, Colosseo, we'll see which way it swings, but you got to think that MCL are just going to run away with this one and then head to the main event. It's looking real rough here for Vice. And what was quite an entertaining game yesterday um, against Timus Nightmare? It, it, it would be shocking to see a reverse sweep at the moment, right? Uh, you know, with the way things have gone thus far. Uh, this is the fight that was a little bit chaotic. You see both those players land inside that pulse pop. Uh, but I do think Vice are to come alive here, specifically uh, Sloth. I thought Sloth on defense uh, looked pretty good on the Tracer here in the last point. Yeah, it looks super good. And it was, a it was getting a little bit hairy, yeah, like we said before. Wow, that was, that was ridiculous. Um, it was getting a little bit hairy. Five minutes in the time bank, you're like, okay, this is an easy dub. But they didn't finish uh, with over a minute, which is kind of insane. The winner here does play against M80 in the Ooh. main event in round one. So FMCR have got a tall task ahead of them. What a, it's like a, well, what, what, what a nice gift. Congrats, you made the main event. Here's M80. Here's right? M80, how <laughs> exactly. A little warm up maybe for against Vice, but yeah, that's going to be a little rough next week if they do end up taking it here. FM oh, yeah, look at okay. the viewers. Okay. Yeah, They're just changing jumping, their mind. Just, just jumping off that Vice bandwagon so fast. Everybody out there, oh, we love Vice, uh, favorite team. And now they're into the goal. I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> 
And um, oh, Evan. Oh, Oh, they uh, oh, I see. It was uh, it was this way around to begin with. I think we had the teams mixed up last time around. No, but no. no. <laughs> okay, okay. No. <laughs> Don't cover for the people. FMC out of 60% wrong. to 40%. That's a pretty big lot of Vice fans out there, is what I'm saying. Doing pretty nice, but yeah, I do believe... Lots of Vice heads out there. A lot of Vice heads, yeah. FMCL, I think maybe take this one 3-0. We're going to call a CO next. A little more, more RAM. I mean, I want to see if their um, Axe is going to bring out that... Uh, Eraser again. Surely you run the Eraser here, not the Sig. Yeah, I mean, you could play uh, Ram, right? Uh, you know, play a little bit of distance. You get that first pick. Then you want to use Nemesis form, push up. Like, it's not out of question. Uh, probably see some Sojourn here uh, from both teams, right? Uh, great to just build up those railgun shots. And uh, really, it'll be both teams just kind of playing slow here around this uh, first, uh, you know, the, where, where the bot spawns, right? It's kind of what we see on this map. Well, let's have a little look what they're going to play. Any silliness afoot, we will see. Probably not, though. Wouldn't mind the mirror, actually. That'd be kind of fun. Aerial Doomfist. Mmm. Mm. Aerial former rank one player. <laughs> I mean, it allows you to access the backline rather quickly, right? Uh, but, I mean, Doom is very, uh, like, against Orisa and uh, Sigma, right, with Not between good. Spear right. and Rock, becomes pretty difficult. Orisa, uh, yeah, this will be Orisa, so. Uh, both teams uh, match this with a bat, right? So, uh, not seen not seen as much as Kirika uh, in this series thus far. Yeah, no Kiriko. Rego looking pretty sick on the bat, though. So, no real surprise here. Same as Skia. Skia's on the Baptiste as well. So it's the Sigma versus the Orisa. See how fast FMC want, uh, FMC want to play. Oh, my moan goes down first. Not a good start. Yeah, it's pretty massive, right? You needed something positive for Vice at the start of this, right? And get the enemy tracer out of the way. That is huge. You'll get control of the bot. Not going to get like a ton here, right? But just to be able to get it towards that choke is going to be uh, important. Pretty smart disengage from FMC. Oh, you see that? Instantly, as soon as they lost the tracer, my moan's down. Okay, we're backing up. Back off the high ground. Luckily, Bap and the uh, Soldier can instantly get up there and then get a nice little angle on the side. You can see MVM trying to poke out a height, but it's making it's making quite tough, his Renko. It's a lot of damage. Ooh. Well, you don't want to push into the high ground, right? That's what they're kind of having to deal with. But the issue is, is like they didn't they didn't back up far enough, right? So you're just taking so much poke. Like it's, you don't you don't push into the high ground, but. You're just at a disadvantage in terms of the damage, you know, in versus damage out, and you're gonna lose the bot anyway. Oh, and then Sloth gets found. Man, that health back spawned in like three seconds or so. That's rough. It's a rough one when you're a tracer in the back lines. A little stagger kill too. There's the lead from FMCL. Bit of a Chad move here from Renko, yeah. Unlocking that window. Instant railgun shot from Seeker. It finds NVM, and uh, that is going to be quite the push now. You cannot let, also, you cannot let Seeker just survive up here. Surely no, not. I mean, you're getting, look at it, you, you can't get bullied back in that corner, okay, right? You like, you kind of have to, you have to push forward, whether it's like kinetic grasp, right, into a shield, it's a shield into kinetic grasp, like, you got to figure out a way to create some space, right? Okay, okay. There's the window. Aero surely goes down here. No, ends up using the spear spin to get away. And even Seeker not scared to uh, pop his little head over the window, try and get that overclock in. 50 HP. Someone heal the boy. Someone heal the boy. He's one HP. Luckily, though, my moan is here. Someone heal both the DPS, in fact. Both the DPS extremely low. Uh, all good, though, because Renko got the point. I've got the point, guys. DPS don't need heals if I just get the objective. There's the flux. Oh, it misses too. Yeah, that's a little rough. Uh, that's immortality field and Axe's low, so you figure they're gonna kind of like either you know, push up after that. They have to use sound barrier back in their spawn, so they use it. They're able to pick up two and at least stop the bleeding, right? Because that could have got out of hand if uh, they would have lost that fight. Okay, Lep. Where is Lep going? Where is my guy going? He's up there. All good. Can you get out? Yo, straight in the underground. Nice, <laughs> nice movement. Oh, I mean, okay, he do some. I mean, that's oh, just rough. <laughs> nice movement from Lep there. Managed to get out alive and help his team pick up a kill. Good stuff. Yeah, because you know that uh, you know, uh, Sloth is actually probably playing for the health pack that 
flap his oh, thing standing on behind him. Yeah. He's like gonna blink backwards into it. Oh, oh. <laughs> And Vier was like, this is my time, I'm gonna hit the clip, I'm gonna hit the merit clip, the triple clap. Window lamp insta kill. That's just mm, and then the bots are uh, gonna gain some progress here, right? So Ariel goes over and plays the Romatra. This is gonna allow them to get pretty aggressive here. Uh, on this bridge is that actually gonna respond by switching to the Aresa. So when I was talking about like trying to take some space, right, where they were forced in the corner with a Sigma, you, you probably feel a little bit better about taking that space now with the Aresa. All right, show us what you got. Vice, no ultimates though, sadly, Matt. I mean, I, I guess they've got, oh, nice tracking from Mimo. Tracking a Sloth all the way down to the floor. Skier's got Window. Yeah, they're doing up using it. Quick Nemesis form there from Ariel. So it's managed to get out of the line of fire. My moan getting a diff on the uh, on the floor there. So uh, Sloth picks up a nice little kill, and now they can hold this corner. But problem is with uh, Colosseum, or just like any push map, to be fair, Matt, you need to use ults to get the lead, and it's rough because FMCL have such a, a gigantic one that it's going to be a lot more fights for Vice to win to even get it past this midpoint. And I mean, Renko's dead. They trade for Sloth. I mean, look how Area was still playing up. Like, does not care. Uh, zero care in annihilation. Uh, that, uh, that is immortality field. Uh, that is. <laughs> that's gonna force sound barrier out, right? You have your own sound barrier now that Lep uses. It's gonna be annihilation here for Ariel. So you're gonna push on up. It's, uh, players on Vice to help are just getting weaker and weaker. I mean, FMC, oh, they are just different beasts right now. Seeker, try and throw something a little bit cheeky, but it's all good. Ariel has got the one, two, three, four punch. As he finds four kills in the Nemesis form. Vice, they're only just spawning. 114 meters and counting. Seeker plays a little bit here, a roulette there. Swaps over to the Cass. A few more meters, make that 120. Yeah, I mean, if you're Vice, you have to say, like, you know, Ariel's here alone, just... Push well, down this for a mantra, drops down a little lower. This is what they've been doing constantly. They're trying to like bait players in here. What? Axer goes right on in. Wait, where is Axer? How did Axer get here? <laughs> All good, they got kills. Renko left down, no healers for FMCL. No supports left. Seeker is still moving the bot. Well, well, Seeker is still, 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 still moving the bot. Still moving the bot. Still Seeker is still moving the bot. I was like, I was like, where? I was like, why are we watching? I was like, where is this? And I was like, wait, <laughs> the bot's still going in their direction. Seeker All right. got like an extra five meters too. <laughs> Probably like got Cassidy's the sneakiest hero to get into the back line on, uh, especially in that gladiator skin, the new one, <laughs> the bright purple skin. Not the sneakiest. Uh, so FMCL does make changes though, right? Uh, Sojourn plus Sigma here. Uh, the, the Cassie just doesn't make sense where the bot is. Like, the effective range is pretty bad. And then also oh, it allows uh, Ariel to just poke at range, but you lose slot. That's tough. Yeah, a little rough. Max it out. Get stuck. No, the answer to that uh, quiz is no. I think this might be a full cap. Matt. It is. It's in position to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Valuable and that's immortality field used there by Renka. So uh, just a reminder: the winner of this does go to the main event. FMCL up 2-0 in a pretty good spot here. They face N80 as well. one fight away. Oh, there's the window. Okay. Spear eaten net by Ariel. A window doing a lot of work for FMCL or uh, for Vice, sorry, as they do end up using it to push past. Uh, this choke point. Ah, Axer is just so low, just running into the front line. Manages to find Renko at least. But here comes the sound barrier. They're still wanting to fight this. MVM tried to get in the back line with that overclock. Is the sound barrier coming out from Vice too? Just forcing ultimates over and over again are FMCL. And they're going to be able to come back with three of their own. No, Lev doesn't get that kill. All good. Uh, this is what's so difficult though on push when the bot gets so far. Is like, great, we want to fight, we have to use all our ultimates. And then the bot, like, doesn't even make it back to the starting point here for the next fight, right? Uh, so you have to win, you know, five, six fights in a row to get to an right. even game, but the one team can just chuck all their ultimates at it. The other team, you know, can be pretty selective, right? And just hold for the best fight possible. That's what makes this very difficult. Slot permanently getting checked on the sidelines. Seeker with the railgun. I think he hit MVM initially with a railgun and just like overclocked straight afterwards to try and get the double tap. But it's actually Axa that goes down first. 
Skia does have the window again, so they can take control of high ground, but it's looking quite unlikely here. They're all split. Oh, good flux too. Oh, well, oh. Skia can't get the window down because uh, the lamp's dead and he's dead. So that is the bot continually being pushed. And yeah, the team is still split up. Yeah. Oh, uh, it looks like Hinge and maybe Sloth are on the uh, bot trying to contest. Uh, they now have nobody on the bot. Uh, okay, now we're going to have Seeker get this one around the corner. Is uh, They have to be careful about trying to push in because Ranko does have this Amp Matrix. Axa, yeah, again, same use of the... Oh, okay. Well, Pulse Bomb on the lamp. There it is. Oh, look at the Amp Matrix from Ranko up here. Though. I mean, that is just... Okay, that's it. We're getting a little silly with it. I like it. Joe doesn't need Seeker to do some damage, does Ranko? He's smiling all the way to the bank. Still is. 132 meters to go. My own toying with the Lucio. Or maybe the uh, the other way around, potentially. I mean, Hinged uh, is somehow surviving. Oh, Aerial's on Doom now. We are seeing some Doomfist. But it's 30 seconds to go. It's the longest, longest 1v1 ever. Though. Axa is also on Doom. Two Doomfists. Seeker's getting Yo. chased, and someone needs to touch the bot. Well, look, Vice has had a pretty good defense by their spawn. Uh, the issue is they need to win, like, five fights in a row here. Five. Uh, I, maybe more. <laughs> maybe more? Yeah. yeah. Uh, five's being pretty conservative if they give up some space. So we'll see as we head into OT. Vice's uh, lives on the line here. All right. OT. What do you got for us? Now you have to perma hold the bot. Do Vice. Doomfist versus Doomfist. Yeah, this is what we all wanted to see. Aerial versus Axa. Who comes out on top? Nice little bit of damage there from Axa using that slam. Same with Ariel. Oh, it's catch a sloth, in fact. There's a sound barrier. I mean, this should just be a roll now. Hinged almost AJ, and they got knocked up in the air. What I could imagine was left. So only three people received that beat. Skier not quite so lucky. As uh, Seeker takes down Sloth. There's MBM, and there is the map and the series. FMCL. Toying with the Lucio a little bit. There you go. Okay, my moan finished me off. There you go. All right, FMCL. Finish the Lucio off at the very end. It hinge goes down and they take the dub and they will advance to the main event to face M80. Yeah, I mean, they, they looked really good today. Uh, M80 is going to be a really tough opponent for them, but uh, you know, I, think, uh, I think FMCL, that's a team that uh, they have players with experience and probably the ability to even take it to another level, right? I think today probably uh, I know some shenanigans in the series at times. Uh, I think they can probably kind of uh, you know, tighten things up and uh, give M80 a run for their money. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, not too much to be said about this particular series, but also like heading into it, it was really... FMCL, they were the favorites to win it. So like, I, I don't yeah. think uh, anyone like should be super shocked about this particular result although we did try to throw chat under the bus there with the wrong graphic <laughs> sorry no no matt doesn't care matt no, okay matt matt will die on this hill honestly it's a great hill to die on keep on at it <laughs> i uh, i love that uh yeah just i mean dominant showing obviously from the side of m uh, f m c l oh man i hate the, the acronyms. You're letters. about to say MCL like they were yeah, just a meme like, like well, <laughs> it's, it's hard. They're making our lives really hard. Do not like. One out of ten. They love it though. That's the funny thing. I don't know anything about it. They look really strong though. Uh, you know, pr pretty much able to play a bunch of different comps, right? You know, Seeker. Uh, no, we, we know he's uh, great at some of the hit scan stuff. But being able to play the Ramatra, some Marisa, some Sigma, I think uh, they definitely they, they have some options, you know, going into the main event against M80. Yeah, it's um it's going to be a different beast facing M80, of course. I think uh, they've got to work out out of them. This this wasn't really that much of a test, sadly. Uh, unfortunately, Vice couldn't put up uh, too much of a fight, but it's going to be good to see them in the main event. Maybe they get the chance as well to get some revenge on the game. So. On the upside, though, since it wasn't a big test and they were just playing, you know, the vanilla version of what they got, uh, they didn't have to show anything up their sleeves, right, you know? Yeah, they didn't show too much. I mean, 11 KD is not bad. That's also that. Sick. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's good eyes. Pretty nice. decent. It's good eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, you know when you just see some of these graphics and like you're like oh all these numbers look normal but then some of them pop up and one number is just like whoa what is that it's like that was like a and the first thing i saw was like 11 point and i was like oh that's high and then it was like kd that's very high <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's pretty damn high my mode 
Wales gift to esports. I mean, look, it was a one-sided affair, and it's always a good. It's always uh, easy to look good on the tracer, especially running against competition like this. But my moan's mechanics on the tracer specifically are just kind of nasty. Tracking wise, uh, my moan is just a beast. He's always super fun to watch. Yeah, it was a great pickup. Uh, Maimon and Ariel coming from the EMEA region, of course, uh, joining them for this very stage. Uh, formerly, they were playing for Left Right Ignite. And I was interested to see how this team is going to, you know, fit together. But it seems seamlessly. And we actually have a winner's interview now with Seeker. So I am excited to get another opportunity to talk to Seeker. It's been a hot minute. Seeker, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for asking. Politeness on point, Seeker. Let's chat a little bit. Uh, honestly, I don't even want to talk about this match because that was very one-sided. So not too much to really say about it. I want to chat about your team. Uh, I just actually started talking about how this is a very interesting uh, team you guys put together for stage two. Uh, Zero and you from LFO. We have Memon and Ariel coming in from the MEA region. And of course, you snatched the uh, M80 backline, Renko Lep. Uh, how did the team come together and do you feel like you're all dialed in already um i kind of we kind of had our eye on uh will and ariel from you after the last stage we were kind of looking at them to bring them into our uh, roster coming into stage two and then uh well honestly we just got a great opportunity to get lep and renko coming off m80 because you know lep has a lot of circuit points since he played with uh, m80 and that'll <laughs> help us get to the land and also like I mean, they're just a solid backline to have. I play with Lep and I play with Renko, both contenders, and uh, you know, they're solid players. So I just knew that we'd be able to make a good team together if we got all of us. I did want to ask you about not this series again, but like your students, the game match, the one you went down 3 0. Like, how are the feelings come out of that? Because it was like the Seeker versus PG show, and uh, yeah, PG kind of got the upper hand of you uh, in that one. It was a fun match, um, but like, what were your thoughts like coming out of that? Because that kind of felt good. Um, yeah, I don't think we play like how we played it all in scrim. Like, usually we play with a lot of confidence, but I think in that match, yeah, we weren't really playing confident at all. Like, we, we kind of expected that we were going to win. So once we started losing, we kind of like started getting more anxious. It, even though like, I think Susan the game is uh, honestly like a top five team right now. I think they're really, really underrated for some reason. You know, they have like one of the best Arista players and they also have like, you know, PG is a great player, but uh, I think after that match, we kind of just had to take a step back and think about like the problems we were having as a team and that we uh, should just play with more confidence and uh, play to win the game. So I think next time we play them, if we play them, I think it'll, it'll be a good match. Yeah, so you guys are actually in the main event gonna play uh, M80. Uh, in that first round yeah. a little bit of a i know a lot of players from your team you know you played with some of those players before right i know you kind of get lep and uh renko pretty much gifted to you guys right i know from m80 uh <laughs> how excited are you for that matchup are there any things that we should look out for you know when you guys play them um i'm excited to play m80 i think that they have not been looking as good as they used to i think they looked a lot better last stage this stage they're looking kind of shaky so i think it'll be a good game you know we got the underdogs so it's all, all the pressure's on them. They get paid to play. I'm not getting paid to do anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. Well, we're looking forward for a little bit of a revenge bonanza secret. Thank you so much for joining us, and best of luck in the main event. Thank you. Oh, I See? love that. Seeker and I, same wavelength. They got the circuit points with the back line. Oh, double you. I was, I was like, that's smart. And it is, of course, a very strong back line. So you get the get a twofer right there. And I love how, like, it's like, oh, well, you know, they're, those teams, oh, they're fully salaried. They got a whole, you know, they got, they got jerseys and stuff. We're just making up a name, getting a paint logo. <laughs> like, hey, all the pressure's on them, right? It's like, well, he's also, True. they have, like, a ton of experienced players on their team, right? They could easily be, you know, in a org, right? But I love just throwing the extra pressure uh, on some of these teams, right? It's, it's gonna be fun, and they're gonna be in each other's head, ex especially because there's so much, you know, former teammate stuff going on. So I am excited for this match. For now, let's take a trip back to, uh, well, a very short memory lane, really, because it's just been three matches. But let's take a look at some of our highlights from our NA region as we rounded out our group stage. Uh, it's crazy to even, like, like, obviously, it's like Citrus Nation be timeless today, 3-0, yeah, like to kick ridiculous. things off. Like we've obviously watched two matches since then, 
But like, I feel like I won't process this one for a little bit. It's, it's just a, a crazy scenario. It, 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 insane match. This is definitely like the match of the day. Like, good God. Like, Citrus Nation played their hearts out. It was so sick. Here was the comms at the end of this, too. I go, I go, I go, I go. Tristan, recall. Tristan, one, two, one, two, watch yourself. Don't see nine, don't see nine, don't see nine. Tristan, one, Tristan, one. Kira one, Kira one. One, 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 one. Kira dead. Tristan, recall. I'm done. I'm dead, I'm dead. Only so, only so shy. Just ending. Oh my God. I'm Thanos! Yeah, yeah, nice, I'm 1v9! Nice, oh nice. my god! <laughs> yeah, I love that clip so much! I want a 1v9! 1v9! Like, dude, it's so sick. I love it, man. <laughs> there was just so much goodness in those comms. Um, I mean, fantastic performance. They were excited. It was great to chat with Onion afterwards. Great to see those players, you know, getting a stage to show us what, they're go uh, what they got. And now we get to see them in the main event. Let's actually take a quick glance at the bracket for NA and uh, discuss some of our favorite matchups. I mean, we already talked about M80, FMCL. Um, we got the storylines for days in that one but the same can be said about some of the other matches yeah. m80 versus fmcl is going to be my one for sure i think seeker seeker's always been one of my favorite players to watch um on the sojourn and i think m80 is going to be a really good test for them they're going to be underdogs for sure like i think seeker uh, like even in the interview it's like hey we're playing we're not getting paid not salaried or anything i think that's uh it's a really fun <laughs> storyline to kind of like build up and build into and uh that one for me is going to be fantastic citrus nation though as well like Against Toronto to fight, it's going to be rough, but there could be a chance. If well, they played their way that they played today, maybe they'll get a map in there. Yeah, I, I'm almost looking even like a little bit more forward. Like, I think if Toronto wins and, you know, students of the game win, I think that'll be a crazy matchup. Uh, you know, the, those two teams, uh, that'll be really good, especially, you know, Toronto obviously winning stage one. Pretty, uh, pretty comfy lead in terms of points. Students of the game ha would have to go into that series. Like, if we win this match, you know, what you're guaranteed top three at that point like you feel like uh you got a, a puncher's chance to go to dallas right like that's their chance to go to land so for me that's like a huge matchup uh, i'd be looking at I'm actually very excited, and that's a weird thing to say for uh, what the what the lower bracket is going to look like. We're playing double elimination, right? I, I think a lot of those teams are going to stack up really well against one another. If we're seeing Citrus Nation fall and who is Goldfish, I think I would love to see those teams and how they measure up against one another. Yeah, it's going to be sick. I love double elimination. Double elimination is like where where like the mental is. It's life. Is it is yeah, and I think P um oh as soon as the game that team and I, I liked what Seeker said in the interview too said they're a little bit underrated they definitely shouldn't be anymore by anybody that's uh, in the community right now like no. oh, yeah. I agree with him wholeheartedly Infected is one of the craziest tank players right at this very moment like that guy is super young too like up and coming star for sure up against obviously maybe Toronto Defiant if they both uh, meet each other in the upper bracket but I think soon as the game are going to go extremely far Wait, but how young you say super young I don't know what that means to you oh that's in right. esports because, so, I mean, because you're a baby right like now. I don't know I mean, no so he's not like a child. That is, that is, yeah, okay, yeah, so, so that's like an infant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's in daycare with Elodie. Uh, yeah, yeah plays, they're homies. He's casually on the side. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I do think that loser bracket's going to be crazy, and I think it'll be crazy because, you know, with, uh, with, with kind of how the bracket's shaking out, like one of those teams that's expected to go to Dallas will fall down into losers and have to make a run, and there's going to be a ton of pressure on them, and to see how... Uh, those teams react with that type of scenario, especially with a ton of teams in there that are pretty hungry uh, to, to get to get in. It'll be really fascinating how some of those teams deal with it because uh, like, like, I, I don't think anybody would expect the time was not to make the main event, right? Uh, no, I think maybe like looking at a potentially a dip in performance from stage one to stage two, but not not to this yeah. extent. Yeah, For some of those teams now uh, you got to look at way differently, right? Coming up in the ranks. Uh, it's it's super exciting. We got the upsets in the EMEA region. We get them here in NA, and that will make for some really exciting main event brackets, which will come at you next Thursday of stage two. The main event is going to go down for now, though. We're going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching us. However, we're not quite done with Overwatch action as a whole today. We're raiding Emong. So stick around, say hi to uh, the man himself, and uh, we will be back, as I said, next Thursday for for the main event. I'm really feeling the heat. Robots pushing. 
feel that one tomorrow. My mom actually had to stop me from eating a worm once when I was like three. I was like out playing in the dirt, uh, and I just like I held up an earthworm and I wanted to eat it. Oh wait, Sky's in trouble! Crocs is gonna kill him! You can't let that happen! TVNT fumbled and let his backline die! There is no one left to heal this team! Rock stars! Oh, the glimmer was there, but it dies out at the end! DM Peril will have the reverse sweep! Primal Rage is nice to fat everything away, and especially as a response to something like this Wrecking Ball mine. Just uh, get them all out of the. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just went to the moon! It's time. Terra Surge, but no space for Ataraxia. Oh yeah, have a sound bearer in the bank and another Katsune rush. Saipei is building these so quickly. Kai has a rip tire. Does he have a safe place to use it? Apparently he does. Around the corner. Hiding, dip dive. Oh, there's no one touch him because of the rip tire. You know, I'm I'm like uh I'm like our Cal Ripkin, our Iron Man, you know, I'm I'm here all the time. So it's a big shot. <laughs> it's not true. It's... <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Citrus Nation, and they're just walking it in now. Timeless needs a miracle, but it will not come. Zeb sticks it to him, and Timeless slowly bleeding out. Zeb with a triple, almost make that a quadra as Jacob steals that kill away. Citrus Nation advance. Don't get on, don't get on, don't get on, don't get on. Don't get on. Here, I'm dead, I'm dead. Only so, only so shy. Oh my god! Thanos! I'm Thanos! I'm on B9! Oh my god! Man! Oh, 99%! Ryan with one! Ryan with two! He's not out of the woods just yet, hasn't got a recall, just got a blink in a couple of seconds, but he can't get away. Oh, Stride and Stone just hound him down, and that's just it. Just like that, Pirates in Pajamas take the map, take the series. Kind of poke him down, otherwise he's going to be up there for eternity, just uh, dynamiting your whole team. There's no way. Goodbye. There is no way. <laughs> there is no way. There is, there is a way. There is most certainly a way.